Well, good evening, chat. Hopefully this is working. I have no idea if it is. It's my first time streaming on the Chinese Lemon website. Hopefully the Bitcoin miners aren't melting your fucking computers, but welcome to the new age. The brave new age, where you have to go to DLive to be able to talk about stuff. I'm probably going to be uploading on BitChute too. Oh boy, fun times ahead. Hey, Chad, can you give me some sign of life here so I know that this is actually coming through and everything hasn't gone completely to shit? I followed their little guide. They have a little guide on how to stream over here, but they have no information on the back end to tell you if your stupid fucking stream is working. So I don't know. I see a lot of jumping, uh, dancing jellos and puddings. That's a good sign. Something must be working. A-OK? -okay? We're A-OK? -okay? All right. Oh boy. Oh, I can get rid of the scrolling text now, can't I? Oh, what a uh, interesting couple of days it's been. We've got a little bit of a tiff going on between Reset Era and NeoGAF. I hope you've got a lot of time because we're going to be sitting on our asses and being real lazy and going over a whole fuck ton of stuff. I think it's going to be fun. Just turn this off for a moment. There we go. Now, oh, I hope I set this up properly. Yes, I did. Now, before we get into this, I want you to keep one thing in mind. One thing as you're hearing everything we're going to talk about, all the people involved, the timeline, all of it. Keep this one singular thing in mind. This is a post that showed up on Reset Era, a web forum known for going after game developers and really anyone that doesn't toe the line of progressive, politically correct viewpoints. You've probably seen them around. They like to harangue anybody that doesn't bend a knee and do what they want. And this was one such post in relation to THQ. And I, I think it's interesting. So let's take a quick look. We need to make sure THQ becomes synonymous with pedophilia. Every article that promotes their game should be flooded with comments about THQ Nordic's endorsement of child pornography. Anytime they're mentioned by one of their business partners on Twitter and the like, do the same taint their brand until something is done. Now that user wasn't banned. They didn't get a timeout or a warning. Nobody said, hey, that's fucking insane. They had a bunch of dorks saying, you have my sword. You have my axe to go into battle. That's the mentality you're dealing with when you're looking at Reset Era. They, they want to smear an entire company as being pedophiles because the company talked to a community they didn't happen to like. So you should get an ironic sense of enjoyment out of what we're going to be looking at as we go over the last two days of Reset Era and NeoGAF. I mean, fuck, I should probably give a little bit of a background before we dive deep into it. Our story begins not so long ago on a little video game forum called NeoGAF, run by a certain gentleman named Evil Lore. Now, he had, uh, <laughs> he had some encounters with women that people in their community deemed problematic. Oh, ooh, it's icky. It's a big yikes for me. Lots of, lots of people very upset with what Evil Lord did. Now, you might be thinking, well, he must have done something terrible. Uh, maybe. <laughs> it's debatable. But you see, when Neil Gaff started to get popular, it attracted a lot of industry insiders. And it attracted a lot of people that were very enthusiastic about the hobby of video games. Now, as the site grew, that was fine. People interacted. They talked about video games and things within the industry. Occasionally some off-topic stuff, but for a while it was fine. But slowly, like a little yeast infection in the vagina of this website, something dank and nasty started to grow. An outraged subsection. They like to get offended about anything and demanded people be banned for stepping out of line. Does this sound familiar to you? Well, Evilor had a choice. He could have stomped it out there. But that was too difficult. He didn't want to do it. And so, he stayed quiet for too long. And this little infection became systemic. To the point where you couldn't really enjoy yourself on NeoGAF. If you stepped out of line, you were banned. You were gone. Get the fuck out of here. Really ruined the website. And then, we come to the event where some previous posts and conversations and actions regarding women came up. And now it was the administrator's turn to bend over and get spanked. He didn't like it very much. He didn't like the outrage mob that he had let run loose on his website 
spanking his ass, especially in front of his users. So he started banning people, kicking them out. Get the fuck out of here. No more threads for you. Well, that was the impetus. And that's what led the, uh, the brave individuals to walk across that digital desert for 40 days until they reached the haven that was Reset Era. So you need to keep in mind that these two websites have a history together. <laughs> and the people that set up Reset Era really are the worst possible posters from NeoGAF. The most outrage sensitive people. The most demanding posters. Those are the ones that went on this little exodus to a brand new website. I mean, one such person's, you're reading their post on screen. They are autistic little shits, aren't they? So Reset Air is going to be this progressive bastion of video gaming. They're not going to fall for the same mistakes that NeoGAF did. That is until they had their own little uh-oh moment, a little bit of an oopsie, a little bit of a problem arose. When a user showed up on NeoGAF, of all places, <laughs> and uh, decided to talk about what they deemed a pedophile problem within the Reset Era community. And we're going to be going over that thread and just talking and looking at the events surrounding it. A lot of really interesting shit going on. Lots of behind the, <laughs> behind the scenes things. In fact, I have, a, I have a little video that I think sums up what happens if you go on to Reset Era right now. If you were to have an account and go on to Reset Era and say, God, guys, maybe we should talk about all the fucking pedophile stuff. Uh, let me t let me show you what happens when you step out of line. <laughs> when you step out of line, uh, you you should probably salute this brave soul. They love to do that. Anytime you say something naughty, anytime you say something that goes against the collective, they're very quick to pull the rug out from under you. Get the fuck off my website. They don't like that very much. Poor, poor Mr. Howard's a goner. He's never coming back, folks. He's been big banned right off that website. So dissent is not welcome. If you uh, if you have some issues, you you're gonna need to get the fuck out of town. Let me let me pull up the thread that started this wonderful implosion of autism. <laughs> and we're going to go through it. And then you're going to see some very bizarre reactions. I don't know. There's a lot of smoke on this one. And I think you're going to come to that same conclusion as we look over the reaction of the user base of Reset Era and the people involved directly with this particular set of events. I would like to say ahead of time before we look at the OP over on NeoGAF, that the poster had hosted their images up on Imgur. Uh, these are Discord leaks from a Reset Era group. Uh, what do you know? Super surprising. I, I, none of you would probably have ever have guessed this, but immediately, I'd say within a few hours of them having posted all of these Discord leaks up on Imgur, the account was flagged down and all the pictures were removed. Now, I, I believe they're rehosting them now. There are archives of them, so they're not deleted for good. But just keep that in mind that somebody went through the trouble of trying to remove the pictures. Didn't want them out there. So I present to you Reset Era and the pedo problem. Oh, and I should probably address this too before I jump into this. Because I need my fucking money. <laughs> I don't know how Chinese lemons work. I, okay, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't know how Chinese lemons works on this fucking place. And I don't want to have some guy in Shanghai using my social security number to order prostitutes in the future. Uh, so I went through the trouble of trying to find a way to make donations on this fucking site work. Uh, they should they should be there. There you go. I don't know if I set either of these up right. I don't really fucking care, to be honest. But uh, it's probably not going to... I'll read them if they come through. <laughs> I'll try my best. Uh, the Streamlabs donation link is in the description under the stream. And there's a PayPal one, too. Uh, that's That's my best effort. Otherwise, I'm going to be sucking on Chinese lemons for the next fucking week. <clears throat> All right, let's get into... 
Let's get into Reset Era and the pedo problem. Originally posted by Celine D. Skies, who's now a gold member over at Neo. I'm sure they fucking are. <laughs> I'm sure they fucking are. All right. I'm going to have to go to Screen Capture Desktop for this. Uh, grab yourself a drink. We're going to be reading through quite a lot of this shit and then tracking down the reactions. Uh, now, uh, the other weird thing about this, well, you know, I don't even want to spoil it. I'm going to I'm going to wait till we get to it before I actually fucking talk about it. Uh, I think this is what I want. Oh boy, I hope I don't fuck this one up. There we go. That's what I wanted. Uh, here's our thread. Reset Era and the pedo problem. Already has 1,300 responses. By the way, uh, Reset Era didn't want to address this. Yesterday, this thread had maybe 12 to 13,000 views on it. Approaching 100,000 now. Didn't really work out well for you, did it, cat ladies? Trying to sweep that one under the rug. Not the smartest fucking plan in the universe. I'm just going to have to be honest with you. So here we go. Here's the OP. Reset Era is trying hard to get these screen caps down. Here's an archive with everything until then. Archive with all the screen captures. They back them up. Everybody has backed all this shit up. Uh, they're just explaining they're not. Uh, English is not their first language. But here we go. Some little context. I won't disclose my real name. But I was a Reset Era member. Known by the pseudo... Celine D. Skies. I won't lie. At first, Reset Era was cool. I was mostly safe for a young woman who liked video games. I even intended to be a moderator at some point. That was before I discovered Reset Era was full of disturbed and dangerous people. You don't say, really? I never could have guessed what happens when you take a bunch of 30 and 40 year old cat ladies and put them into a confined space. Dangerous, you say. Disturbed individuals, are they? Some weeks after I subscribed to the forum, I was invited to a super secret community related to Reset Era. I was invited by a member named Lord Kano. After a quick exchange through Reset Era's private messages, I became somewhat casual with Serium, Reset Era's owner. Even if I don't remember exactly when or how, let's say we use this to discuss together for a couple of months. The super secretive community was a Discord server. The Discord server was basically the back room of Reset Era, or a kind of Reset Era's boys club. A lot of the most active and prominent Reset Era members were and still are partaking in it. In this Discord server, you could find people like uh, Zuj, Huge X, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm going to call him Bing Bong. You could find Bing Bong, one of Reset Era's most prominent admins, who's very, very active in it. He probably has more than 2,000 messages in this server and is online most of the time. Emily Rogers, who was one of Reset Era's most famous admins at some point. Uh, Matt something or other, an employee of NPD and one of Reset Era's VIP members. Again, a very active member of this server. Jaw Muncher, one of Reset Era's oldest moderators, and many more. They begin to post... This is another thing, too. I've seen some other fuckers on Reset Era... Uh, repeatedly try to say, oh, it's, uh, one, this isn't associated with the website. Two, nobody in the power structure is on the server. Well, the OP obviously is disagreeing with that. I mean, what do we have here? Not just prominent members, but admins and mods. That's what they're alleging. I don't know. I don't use the fucking website, thank God. I have no interest in going on to Reset Era. But I do know a couple of those names do get around quite a bit with industry insider information and analysis. And I know they're given a bit of a red carpet treatment. So it wouldn't surprise me, mixed in amongst them, that you're going to find some fucking moderators. But here they are trying to prove that they're in the Discord. Uh, showing all that, showing the people in the Discord. I believe this is all in <laughs> disgusting French. I don't know. But it starts to get good. Uh, again, they're just showing the individuals that they're finding in the Discord server. But here we go. I'm only listing those above-mentioned people so you know that this is, in fact, their Discord server and wasn't some random Discord. It's important to be precise to the people I mentioned just above. Okay. Uh, it's important to be precise that the people I mentioned just above aren't the pedo-minded people I'll talk about. However, I'm still wondering if most of them did ignore what happened under their noses or not. I'm sure some of them knew, but for the rest, that's up to them to clarify. Still, I would find weird that among all of these people... I was the only one aware of these discussions on the server, despite being there for only a few weeks. There were also some of the most uh, active Reset Era members. And again, I, I suppose, if you're familiar with their forum, you could verify this. Uh, Cadence of Vina, Kano, Heartskips, Elaz, 
So I'm guessing these are the active members. So they're, they're saying this, this is the hip shit for Reset Era members. This is where all the power players gather together to talk about whatever it is PC-minded individuals discuss before they try to destroy developers and publishers. To give more context, the process for subscribing to this Discord server was quite locked and intricate. You had to be invited, then validated by mods and admins, wait for some time, and then there was another process to be able to browse the server. I don't remember the whole process exactly, but I remember it was a pain in the ass. Pretty suspect for a simple Nintendo Discord, right? Keep reading and you'll find out why. To make a long story short, I quickly realized there was something weird on this server, and someone told me casually that pedo discussions... How do you bring that up casually? Someone told me casually that pedo discussions were rampant on the server. He told me... <laughs> he told it to me like I wouldn't care. Problem was, I did care. I decided to dig a little, and in my research, I typed three common keywords into the search bar within the Discord server. Underage, pedo, and 16 years old. At the time, uh, at the time to type some others, but with those three keywords only, I found many, or, uh, God, you could tell they're not uh, English speaker primarily. I found many proofs of the pedophilic tendencies or pedo-apologist tendencies of a group of persons among the most active in this server. You know, I think it's, I'll take a small little break from, from reading this particularly to talk about one thing. This web forum and its user base are notorious, fucking notorious, for going after developers and publishers, for going after different communities and gamers in general. Talking about, I mean, you can look at the background image I have up there. This is the ridiculous shit that you encounter when you go to Reset Era. Look at these user bans. Downplaying transphobia. Community hive mind trolling, inflammatory drive-by. <laughs> trolling a sensitive thread with a prior history of infractions. They are so up their own ass about wanting to have the moral high ground and be virtuous. And they will attack anyone and any business and any community that they perceive as stepping out of the line from being politically correct or progressive. They have that reputation. They engage in that behavior. So here's a user that pops up all of a sudden. And they say, hey, guess what? You know all those people that are telling you that you're a bunch of sexist, racist bigots? Turns out they got a Discord server well, they like to talk about lolly and pedo shit and age of consent. And everybody kind of knows about it. And all the power users from this uptight web forum hang out there. All the people that would publicly post and say that you're a, a monster because you didn't use a proper pronoun are hanging out in this fucking Discord server talking about, you know, what? so what's it's not a big deal. You want to fuck a 15-year-old? Yeah, that's what they're doing when they're not publicly posting about you and your taste in video games and different developers and publishers, they're hanging out over here saying this shit. Really, really gets a noggin jog and really makes you think, doesn't it? A little bit of a, a two-faced kind of thing going on. A little bit of a, how, how would you say it? A public and a private position? And also, I, again, I, I just want to point this out because it'll be important later on, that this person, when they talked about getting into this... Uh, Discord server and the person that introduced them, Lord Kano, at the same time that they're getting into this private Discord, at the same time they're talking to Kano and all these other people, they're talking to the owner of Reset Era, Sarium. So, you know, it, it's, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. We'll see where it goes. Maybe it's all bullshit. Maybe not. It's going to be funny either way, I have a feeling. <laughs> Especially when you see the fucking reactions of damage control. I'm very good. All right, let me let me get us back to where we were here. I'm trying to work it, chat. You gotta you gotta have to give me a minute. I've got YouTube on the brain. I'm used to doing it through that. So, all right, here we are. I take you now. Yeah, again, remember this. Remember this fucking statement going forward. If you start to feel any sympathy for any of these people involved, if you start to think, well, shit, maybe this feels like a bit of a witch hunt. Or shit, maybe it's a genuine misunderstanding. Or shit, maybe they're talking about something else. Read that fucking comment on their fucking forum. Remember that. They wanted to destroy a company by accusing them of being cool with pedophilia. Because they talked to so, uh, fucking 8chan. Alright, so let's uh, let's go take a look and see where this leads us. Uh, there we go. 
So they start to go over the the different users, uh, different people that are within the the Discord. Also uh, taking a look at you know who they are in the Discord and who they are on the forum, matching up the usernames. So here you have one called Hammerdin, uh, and they're saying it's the same pseudonym, the same username on Reset Era. And they're talking about ambiguous. Uh, they're talking about how ambiguous the uh, subject of age is, or how it's subjective. And the issue of ambiguous age is something that can vary by the eye of the beholder. <laughs> by it's hey man, hey listen, listen buddy, I get it. You're upset at me because I'm dating your fifth grade daughter. But listen, in my eyes, she. something after I bring her by the candy store that's where I promised to take her on our third day like an adult uh, again they're, they're going hammered in again referring 32 year olds preying on minors as players and normalizing it let's imagine this if you're a 16 year old player having the hots for a fictional 16 year old character isn't weird if you're 32 years old, the same cannot be said. The pedo talk is genuinely assuming the player is of a certain identity. And then from a another user they've highlighted for some reason, Lonely One, I think that if you have pedophile tendencies, you have them. They can't be promoted just like an argument that sexual identity is not a choice. You really can't have it both ways, but this kind of argument are very anti-PC, so you can't make them openly. Hey, listen, guys. We need to be fucking progressive in our secret reset era discord chat <laughs> all right like i'm trying to date fifth graders over here and you guys are coming down on me about it it's making me really upset it's kind of anti-pc all right you need to calm the fuck down you can also see lonely one same pseudo again same username on reset era telling us pedophile jacking off to drawing of underage persons is fine i i want <laughs> okay lonely one pedophiles who have acted on their desires deserve jail nothing less Pedophiles jacking it to drawings? Yes. You don't have to be their friend. Seat at the same tables, and please keep kids away from them. But I would be, but I would be led, <laughs> but I would let them be. God, does anybody on this fucking forum speak English properly? Lonely one telling us how he will never say what he really thinks about pedos on Reset Era in front of many of the Reset Era members and the admin of this Discord server. Everything is fine. I thank okay. it. I know it's dangerous. I'm not a red pillar. Anti-JW? I don't know what JW stands for. Uh, Gator or anything like that, by the way. And I would never say that on ERA. Because no one can say there isn't real research on this and it's hard to do. If pedophilia is some kind of sexual spectrum thing or some kind of illness. But mainstream opinion is the latter. And people who are LGBT do not like the, comp or the comparison because of the stigma attached to pedophilia and the history of equating LGBT to sexual deviants. <laughs> it's hard to talk about pedophilia because it's such a heinous crime when it happens in real life. It throws rational discussions entirely out. <laughs> That's I'm just like a side thing. Let me table this for a second. That's really, those two sentences together. That's really something. God, you know, it's really hard to talk about this whole pedophile thing. Because, you know, they brutalize the kids, but you just can't have a rational discussion about it. <laughs> was, you know, you know, you just want to have a rational, logical, fedora-tipping, big-boy-brained, uh, galaxy-thinking discussion about baby-fucking, and people suddenly get really upset about it. I don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird, Hammerton. I wonder why that is. In the two following screen caps, you can see two Reset Era members, uh, Castian Scam, and Lama, or Lama Waifu joking about craving for minors and risking jail for it. Uh, I, I guess they're giving us age. Are two underage girls from Love Plus, a Japanese dating game? Oh boy, Love Plus. You know, actually, I, I'm going to call bullshit here for a second because I just thought of something. Let me find this for, uh, give me one second, chat. Give, uh, give, give the old man one second here. It's from Reset Era itself, the website. <laughs> when they're talking about the difficulties of broaching this subject, Okay, I think this should pull it up. I'll have to check the stream just to make sure it shows up fully. One second here. 
There we go. The post only received the warning due to perceived difference. <laughs> hey, hey, hey now. Okay? We got some rules around here. You violate those rules, you're, you're out the door. All right, I don't want you use those proper pronouns. Oh, you want to have a discussion about baby fucking? Here, hand me your wrist. There, I, there you go. I slapped it. Don't do that. You get a warning. <laughs> you go sit over there for a moment and think about what you've done. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm buying it. Their description that uh, you can't uh, talk about this publicly on their fucking forum. Apparently you can with no consequences. Okay, let me, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll continue with this in one second here. I'm just, I'm a little nervous that the stream is not working right, so I want to be able to check chat to make sure it's actually fucking going through. Over the, over here, I'm going to have to give you a warning. Because, you know, I, I believe that you, you're not a native uh, English speaker, so I'm going to let you go with it. It's just a warning this time, guys. Don't be, don't be bringing that milkshake logic over here. All right, I think everything's good. All right, everything's good. All right, so far, so good. It, apparently, this site streams better than it did before. I haven't had any issues just yet, so we'll see how it goes going forward. Uh, are you enjoying the return of the fucking jellos or whatever the fuck they are? Hopefully that works out well. You can laugh at pedos. Tell chat to spam nigger nerds rise up from Caleb Lee Lambry. Or Lambright. P.S. You're late. Fuck you, Jim. Uh, from Fafner, apparently my message here. Well, your message is there. Colonel J, do you think some reset era mods and admins will go rogue and dox the pedos? users eventually you essentially have to dox yourself to make an account there after all i don't you i, I know i don't and you'll see why i don't think something like that's going to happen because this is just the beginning god this is going to be a a bit of a long straight so we're just starting to get into it uh but no i do not believe they're going to do that from orange picos i think i said that right i don't know i'm looking at a separate screen and so it's even smaller Hey, Jim, check out the latest screenshot. Here's some uh, super berries on me. I'll take a look in a moment. From Guntmaster187. Will you ever return to the Gunt retort? Ralph is drinking himself to death because you won't go on a show anymore. TT, Gunt, 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 Gunt. Uh, no, I don't <laughs> I don't have any plans of going on uh, the kill stream. Is it so called the kill stream? I, I, don't, I, I don't have any plans on doing that. I think the last stream I did with somebody was, uh, oh shit, what was it? It was Nick Ricada's, one of his live streams. And I haven't, uh, I haven't done any others. I hear Gator took over, and apparently Gator's killing it. Had a big audience when he was doing it, uh, was it yesterday or the day before? So, uh, good on him. I don't know if they'll have to rename it to the Gator Retort, I think is what we're going to have to do going forward. From Bitwave, come on Jim, this website is just pathetic. Come to Bitwave TV for a Willing to sacrifice himself to tell us Lolitas aren't underage. The only thing I want to correct, don't die on the lolly doesn't equal underage battle. That's an instant big And more instant than a lot of things. This same nemesis bragging about having graphic depictions of underage kids having sex and going below 18 but above 12. Because he has some kind of limit to his pedo tendencies. <laughs> That's a bit of a bombshell. Let's see what they said. Uh, what obvious reasons, LOL. And I have here Pum Pum and Hikaru Namachi, which came to Brazil. Apparently a South American. Uh, what obvious reasons, lol. Oh, no, that's him. Uh, LOL again. Oh. And to be honest, the majority of the works that have sex and I have read are with teenagers in the stories. So yeah, LOL. Underage, I'm going below 18. Going from 12 to above, of course. But those works that I own are sold by publishers from here, so it's not like I bought anything illegal. Or something, lol. So I never have to worry about any of it. In the following screen caps, you can see Kano, Lord Kano on Reset Era, GG2XAC, Caviar, and Eloz. Again, all the same usernames on Reset Era, discussing about this thread. And the particular thread they're linking to is Gamer Arrested After Rape Overheard During Online Grand Theft Auto Session. Uh, caviar. Thread already has dumbass replies. Fucking pedophile. Guy rapes someone and the thing they focus on is the two to three year age difference. Really? Why do they call an 18 year old a man? <laughs> age is just a number, bro. Kato about how Reset Air and the moderation team know jack shit about pedos. Uh, why do they call... Okay, they're discussing that, apparently. The famous pedo rhetoric by Caviar. 
18 year olds are old enough to have sex with underage people all the time adults are no different I, I think you're getting the point they're dropping a lot of this shit uh, them searching for age of consent in the US state by <laughs> this is where it gets a little interesting again video game discord for the most progressive PC fucking forum on the internet <laughs> and they're together in the general chat searching state by state for the age of consent in every US state just to make sure <laughs> they're pulling up diagrams and shit <laughs> oh reset era Kano informing his little friend that age of consent in Europe is 16. Uh, only to be answered by Luigi Blood that, yeah, he loves this. Apparently, Luigi Blood really loves the idea of uh, banging 16-year-olds. Good to know. Good to, <laughs> good to know. So this was their initial drop. This is what they, they brought to NeoGAF. Now, it's it's weird. It's, it's not... Like, when you look at it, if this was any other community, people really wouldn't give a fuck. But given what community this is and their behavior towards everybody on the fucking internet and how they interact with publishers and developers, again, uh, it's it's there's a bit of uh, schadenfreude, a little bit of uh, delicious irony going on here that so many progressive, upright, moral, virtuous people are hanging out in a sales chat. <laughs> That's what is a general chat under sales hanging out there. Going state by state looking for how young you can go uh, if you want to fuck somebody. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So, our user, uh, let me make sure I get their name right again, uh, Selena Disguise, uh, finds this to be an issue. They're upset by it. Uh, so they find, you know, they, they start searching through all this shit. They find more stuff uh, talking about what ages they'll go to. Uh, things like that. They do drop this before before we get in. Oh, well, actually, it leads right into the discussion with the owner. So let's pull this up. Yep, pull this down. There we go. Okay. This is probably one of the more interesting things. This one right here. I didn't have time to browse their entire Discord, but discussions about the normalization of pedophilia were rampant. It was basically everywhere in the Discord. Fuck, someone calling himself Lonely One and speaking about how pedophilia tendencies are normal, and age is just a number, screams pedo to me. You have another one who calls 32-year-olds uh, adults preying on minors players. What the fuck? That's pedophile vocabulary, and why are those discussions so common on Reset Era's Discord server? So they're, they're claiming, uh, their claim is, that this shit's going on all over this fucking place. That there are a bunch of conversations about it. And that they've highlighted a few. So they go to the owner. They go directly to the owner or the person in charge, the head admin, I don't fucking know, of Reset Era, Serium. And uh, they have a discussion. They start a discussion saying, hey, I found some weird shit on, you know, a Discord with all these fucking users and mods and all these other people. <laughs> yeah, I've got a bit of a fucking problem with it. Maybe you should take a look. And uh, Serium, you know, says, okay, can you give me a, can you give me a quick summary for now? What, what exactly is going on? So they start explaining, hey, this Discord server has a lot of weird uh, discussions going on. A lot of the really popular users like so-and-so are in there. And they're talking about, like, age of consent and pedos and lollies and how young would you go and, you know, just weird shit like that. Uh, Serium says, oh, that sounds terrible if this is happening. Uh, you know, report it to Discord. If it's something criminal, go to the authorities. Now, uh, they respond, it's not the problem, and I, uh, I doubt it's something criminal. It's more like uh, Zuge X knows and could give two shits about it. He and Jaw Muncher, Emily, Matt, uh, who also participate in this Discord, know these members are hard on pedos and still not a single one of them took action against them or raised their voice against them. How is it they can let those people be an active member of Reset Era and not notify people about these discussions? Uh, to which the, the owner says, well, they're a very, <laughs> they're a very busy person and I doubt he checks the server very often. Uh, they respond, he knows. Like, sometimes he replies right after him. The pedo post right after are under his nose. So there's a back and forth between uh, this user and the uh, f uh, forum owner, I guess. Uh, they start sending him copies of the same screen caps they posted in this thread. And it all culminates. Let me go down here a little bit. Oh, where are we? This is a long back and forth between them. I'm trying to sum it up quickly. Okay. Uh, and it all culminates with them being banned and blocked. 
If you think those subjects mean less to me, you're wrong. But I'm going to be honest and clear. Accusing members of being pedos is a very serious, a very serious accusation. Wow, yeah. Claiming shit, you know, claiming somebody's a pedo is a very serious accusation. That's that's what they're saying. Very fucking serious accusation. Huh, really? Very serious accusation. Good to know. Good to know, asshole. Uh, and something we, uh, you know, we take very seriously. It calls for a <laughs> commensurate level of evidence. And I do not believe that you have shown that. I feel this is, in fact, about your ban. And therefore, I'm very uncomfortable with this conversation. So, they go to management. Management says, not really interested. Don't give her, don't really give a shit. I don't see a problem. I think you're over overreacting. Not interested. And then bans them. They're banned off the Discord. They're banned all over the place. They're done. They're gone. Get the fuck out of here. You're not, you're not welcome at our progressive little uh, uh, fucking hive. You're, you're thinking outside the box. We can't allow that. Now, this is where it starts to get funny. Because they, they drop all this shit. They drop it all. You know, they, they start posting more screen caps to show, yeah, these numbers match up. It's really that person in the Discord I'm talking to. I'm not making that up. Uh, these are the conversations that we're having. And once they do this, a couple of things happen. Uh, one, Neogaf laughs about it. Evil Lore laughs about it. Why wouldn't they? They'd just been through the ringer. They'd been called uh, terrible, horrible, sexist bigots by these fucks before they went off to, to start their own to start their own goddamn uh, forum to compete with Neogaf. And one of the more interesting things is damage control started. People started showing up in the thread to try to downplay it and act like, this isn't a big deal, you're totally misinformed, nothing's going on. But the people doing the damage control, it turns out, are relatives of the people that run the fucking forum. Evil Lore called this one. I don't even think anybody would have known if he particularly hadn't said this. <laughs> uh, given that your sister was one of the Reset Era's founding mods, uh, we could presume you're all in deep with them. Hence the pathetic damage control on display here. <laughs> imagine, imagine somebody starts a fucking thread about your shitty web forum and some of the creepy shit going on in your Discord. <laughs> and you're such a pussy, you send your little sister to deal with it. <laughs> you send your fucking sibling to go do damage control on another forum that's laughing at you and laughing about how stupid and goofy this shit is and really enjoying watching you hypocrites be kind of put into an uncomfortable position. <laughs> but they send their they send their little sister on in. But even more than that, if you tried to talk about this really over the last 24 hours in a, a, a just a host of different places, that conversation was immediately shut down. You weren't allowed to do it. If you went on to uh, the video game board on 4chan, threads are getting pruned. If you tried to talk on R Gaming or R Kotaku in action, threads are removed outright. I can't figure that out. Uh, damage. These are two threads that were put up on Kotaku in action talking about this. You'll notice the upvoted rate. Uh, the Redditors love to upvote. They're addicted to that shit. 94% upvoted. 89% upvoted. All the shit removed. Removed violation of rules 273498576. Just every goddamn rule you can think of. Delete the thread. Remove the information. Conversation closed. <laughs> and I talked. Some guy messaged me and explained... Oh, you don't understand. Um, if you want to post about something like this on Kotaku in action, you have to blur out all the names of people involved. That's the rule now. We can't have any screenshots from any public forum, any public account, any Discord server, anything without unblurred names. That's not allowed anymore. I find that to, I'm a bit incredulous about that claim because every thread on that fucking place would look like this. Hey guys, did you hear the near? Did you hear the news about the guy that just admitted uh, he murdered his girlfriend? Well, here's the screen cap. I can't, I can't tell you what their name is. They're not a public figure, and I can't show you any of the people interacting with this, because again, they're they're not public figures. Breaking hot video game news from the authoritative source at Kotaku in action, where we redact information and give the fucking deep state a run for their money with how much shit we remove. So, uh, yeah, uh, doubting it a little bit. A little bit incredulous 
that that's really how it works there. I bet if you were to go look at some of the threads right now, you're going to see Twitter screen caps and forum posts without any names blurred. But this particular subject, not allowed to be talked about. <laughs> you got to pull it down. That's not just Kotaku in action. That's our gaming. Other fucking places, too. Uh, let me check on chat here to make sure everything's going well. It's really weird not being able to uh, run this. Well, actually, you know what? Maybe I can. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong spot. Is there a way to pop out chat? Because if I could do that, I wouldn't have to go back and look at this shit. That's a lot of fucking gifts, chat. Are you enjoying your ability to put up dancing puddings? I don't know how much of a time delay there is on this stream either. Get a second monitor. That would require technical abilities. I don't know how to do that shit. Oh, let me, let me pull. I had a few other things too to pull up for this shit show. Oh, where are we here? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. That's, that's where we'll go next. We'll go to that next. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. All right, just uh, one moment. I have to find the exact... The uh, This is 28 pages now that NeoGAF has hit with this particular subject. But of course, uh, you know, given the uh, the sensitivity of the information, uh, some people got upset with uh, our, our little uh, leaker putting out this public information. Now, you'll notice that when they initially put this up, Reset Era had no public response. Nothing from management, nothing from the users... Everybody just kind of pretended it didn't happen. If you tried to contact any of these people on Twitter or on any of their social media, they'd completely ignore you. You'd be blocked, you'd be muted, and nobody would be listening to anything that you had to say. Just no response. That is except for our intrepid little our intrepid little uh, whistleblower. Oh, you know what, actually, I know, where I, th I, I know where it's been saved. There we go. Our little whistleblower did receive some responses from the people involved, uh, and they weren't super friendly. <laughs> go, go, go figure. Uh, people weren't super thrilled about uh, about what's going on. Starting to get some law th uh, lawsuit threats. And you know you've reached a really good point in a discussion when people are threatening to sue you <laughs> for the shit you're posting. Uh, so here's the uh, response that Sea Line D Skies got. Oh, let me make sure this is the right one. Uh, sorry, chat, just relax for a moment. Uh, nope, no, that is not the right one. Oh, come on, where's my lawsuit threat? Uh, incidentally, the person that threatened the lawsuit against them is the same person that introduced them to the server. That, that exact same person? Yeah, that's the one. The Reset Era members showed up on the forum, they complained. They said, uh, don't, don't, uh, you know, don't slander us. It's very upsetting when you, when you say these mean things. Oh, here we are. Here we are. Here we go. Uh, this was a response from uh, Celine. Uh, once the thread started to gain, or gain traction, once the information started to kind of circulate around. Uh, I think there we are. Yep. Can I zoom in on this a little bit here? Uh, I think so. Or not. Or not. Oh, there we go. I've just been contacted by Lord Kano. Kano in the screen cap and Lord Kano on Reset Era. He's pissed I talked about this. Called me a crazy woman with mental health issues and threatened me with one of the threatened me that one of them was going to sue me for public slender if I released more stuff. He probably thinks I'm afraid. I'm not. Of course, he didn't make a single comment on the pedo stuff. So the first response Celine gets, the first response to really any of this, aside from a few family members showing up to damage control, are lawsuits. They, they took it right to the next level. Got to jump in with those lawsuits. Got to make sure people understand not to fuck with us when we're having our discussion about age of consent or we'll sue the shit out of you. Oof. Not, uh, not looking the best there. Oh, let, me, let me get us to where I need to be here. One second. Because the responses started coming a little more rapid fire from, the, from this point onward. Because Lord Kano uh, decides, hey, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> I'm going to show up. I'm going to have some conversations with these people. Does it work out well for him? Starts threatening lawsuits. People talking about uh, how this is this is going to be a bad day. It's going to be a bad day for Celine. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> These fucking people. How it is you can build a forum 
that is known for being the shittiest place on the internet is known for bitching about every little thing that's found offensive. I, I, you could see it with Cyberpunk 2077. They wouldn't shut the fuck up about it. Even, oh god, what's her name? I think I still have this up here. Uh, yep, this chick. They were so fucking mad that people were drawing fan art. They were so upset that people were drawing pictures of this particular person. Very mad about it. Until they went on their Twitter themselves and said, hey, I really love it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody that drew fan art of me. Uh, it makes me feel really good. <laughs> and then they had discussions about how they were brainwashed. Akumi is crazy. How could she say that? She must be under the, the influence of the uh, all-knowing, all-powerful patriarchy to, like, d dumb little anime drawings of herself. Clearly, she doesn't understand the sexism that's involved at the heart of this issue. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Oh. When you look at this kind of sequence of events, you have a person show up, they claim they have a bunch of leaks from a Discord. That Discord's full of power users and moderators. They're discussing things within that Discord that would get them banned and persecuted on the forum itself. They bring this to the leadership, to the fucking owner of the website. The owner doesn't care. They ban this person's account. They're banned from the Discord. Everybody blocks them, won't talk to them. They put the information out there. It begins to circulate. Now all of a sudden we get threats of lawsuits. We're going to sue the shit out of you if you don't stop fucking with us. I don't know. To me that feels like there's a lot of smoke. You got family members showing up to damage control. You got people with the same account names on Reset Era suddenly showing up on NeoGAF saying, you guys are overreacting. Nothing's going on here. <laughs> they're, they're one step away from sending cease and desist letters over fucking Discord leaks. This fucking place. Okay, I think I found the Lord Kano shed. He popped up just just not that long ago. I, I, I want to try to keep the chronology as best I can. I, I think, you know, I brought it up to a current level. Uh, the thing that happens next, as far as the story goes, are the people that you see within those Discord screen caps that uh, Celine put up on NeoGAF. Uh, they decide to start changing their usernames. That's the first thing they attempt. It's like a game of musical chairs. Okay, all these screen caps with us discussing or discussing subjects that could could get us into some hot water. We're we're gonna change our screen names, uh, so nobody can find those com or comments anymore, or they get confused, or whatever. Uh, that doesn't work because instantly people notice that they do this, and after that happens, after the threat of a lawsuit that doesn't really make anybody take anything down, after trying to switch usernames, but everybody notices. That's when uh, some of these people start showing up on NeoGAF to discuss this. And the first one really that did it uh, was Lord Kano. So I'm going to pull up his post and we can take a look at uh, what they have to say. And you can tell me what your your honest take on this particular thing is. <laughs> because I just love watching idiots run around in a fucking circle. And it feels to me like there's a whole gaggle of fucking idiots at this particular forum that don't know how to react to this. And are really doing I mean, they're, they're doing everything the opposite of good. Like, their reaction and how they're trying to fight back against this is just making it bigger. You can't ban discussion about it. You can't threaten lawsuits about it. You can't try to hide your username. Like, why are you doing that? <laughs> if, if you didn't do anything, if this is all out of context, if these aren't that bad and uh, people don't understand what you're discussing, why are you trying to change your username? Why are you deleting posts and trying to hide? Why are you blocking everyone? I mean, you may not be guilty, bro, but that looks guilty as shit. All right, so let me let me pull up Lord Kano. Hopefully, I don't know, chat. Are you liking this story? I'm I'm a little off balance streaming on DLive. I don't, I you know, old people like me, we get really fucked up when you take away the comfort of the things that we're used to. I'm in a strange new land. I don't know. I don't know how to cope with it. Okay, good. They're liking it. All right. Just as an aside, anybody watch uh, Mr. David Stay and State of Mind? You know, he's doing a regular show now on Friday evenings at 7.30 p.m. Central. So that'd be 8.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern. Uh, crazy shit. Good stuff. 
David puts on a good show. Uh, that would be Mandar from Photon. Actually set up his own web or website, his own YouTube page. Is now doing his own streams. I'm plugging the shit out of that. I don't ever really plug people, but <laughs> I enjoy watching it. So I, I don't know why he only chose to do it on Fridays, but yeah, whatever. I, I guess that means he'll have a lot of material for his two-hour episodes every week. let the darkness grow I, I I have to admit I do like all the gifts is there a limit to that I mean is there a limit to how much of the shit they'll let us put up because it's much better than it was over at Streamy at least with uh, posting in chat like this over on Streamy it was a real pain in the ass to get uh, you know whatever kind of animated image you wanted up it was always smaller off kilter it had to be a certain little squished size over here at least it's nice and big and people can't really compete. They can't really, you can't spam a chat that's spamming you, which is a nice fucking feature. Just nothing. I wonder what they'll let you put up. I haven't really even read the terms of service as far as what GIFs you're used or allowed to use, what animated images are over the line, but I think we should be good. I've tried to segregate us from the majority of the website. I put on the little uh, age restriction thing, so we shouldn't show up on the front page. We should be hidden. Uh, and left to our own devices to be uh, retards over here by ourselves. Which I think is the way we kind of want to do it. To get some nice musical background shit going here. Fill in those empty moments. Okay, I've got Lord Kano ready to go. So let's look at his first response. Again, this is after he tried changing his username. After he threatened to sue people. This is the first thing he shows up on NeoGAF saying. Uh, this is yesterday afternoon. Lord Kano. Hello, everyone. It's been a long time since I posted on GAF, but now I'm here in an attempt to clear my name. I'm not a native English speaker, so sorry for the few mistakes. I thought long about this, too. And despite being told that it would be better just not to engage in conversation, I have hopes that people here will understand my arguments in good faith. I will not talk in names of others, but only mine. Because I'm a victim. <laughs> I'm a victim of misinterpretation. I'm not here representing anyone else but myself. The server which I was a part of was made to discuss video game sales numbers. It's what fueled the conversations most of the time. Most of the time meaning when we weren't discussing fucking... Uh, uh, underage girls, apparently. It's not affiliated to ERA, but user-made. It was not a server made for prominent members to make discussion with the staff. It's all there is to it. The reason why you may recognize some popular names is because they're all sales-related. It was a big place to discuss video game sales, be it uh, Famitsu numbers, NPD, Media Create, PAL charts, etc. We never had any input and any kind of moderation in er, issues. Most of the time, we actually disagreed with the moderation, and a lot of us, including myself, got banned multiple times. I even considered going back to GAF at one point. The reason our server was private is because we didn't want any console warring in it. Some discussions went off topic. Notably, when it concerned moderation, as we often disagreed on it, and one of those is screen capped in the OP. There was a threat about GTA 5 and rape was made, uh, which caused many bans of ERA members. From that point, we discussed legal perspectives and legal dispositions, regulating the, those matters. That's all there was to it. We discussed the difference between the age where you become a legal adult and the age of consent, which I mixed in the course of the discussion, because as I said, I'm not a native English speaker and definitely not well versed in that field. That's a, that's a smooth recovery, Kano. <laughs> hey, look at all this shit I wrote in English. I don't really understand English that well. Okay, my mistakey. No speaky English, officer. As for the threats OP claimed she got, I'm deeply sorry about the aggressive tone I may have conveyed. I just went out of school when someone linked me that thread and I was immediately filled with anger that someone I once considered a friend, and of which I thought it was reciprocal, accused me of this sort. I sent a Discord DM, the one OP screen capped asking what the hell was going on and why she would do that. It ended abruptly as I was angered and saddened at the situation. I want to be precise 
I didn't threaten anyone of legal actions. My last sentence was very much made of worries that OP, knowing her difficult situation, could be put in danger if someone took all of it very seriously and decided to sue her for defamation. I apologize to the OP if I came across as threatening, but that wasn't my intent. What a kind heart. You guys, you don't understand. All right, when we're talking about banging those chicks, I, me no speaking English, all right? Me no speaking English. You can't get mad at me. And when I said, we're going to sue the fuck out of you, that, again, me no speaking English. I just was trying to warn her. I wasn't trying to scare the OP. When I said, you're going to be sued into poverty, I just, that was a heads up. Like, hey, man, people are fucking crazy. <laughs> you should, hey, you should look out for yourself, bro. Wink, wink. All right, that's not a threat. That's a nice, friendly warning. For the Luigi blood post, I believe he already explained his situation, which was tied to me merely because I was talking about the Metal Gear Solid 1 French Club, or French Dub. As for my recent era name changes, it was in hope that people would just forget about me. I didn't want to... <laughs> wow. I didn't want to come here because I don't like the attention. It's uh, I'm no one important, just a rando like anyone else here. I'm not affiliated with Era or anyone else. I was just spending my time on a Discord server talking about game sales and anything that was discussing in the general chat. I never expected that anyone could have interpreted my post like that. I'm not a pedophile, nor was I ever interested in underage people. I'm still at university. My part of the situation is a big er, misinterpretation, and I really want to prove it. I've already cut ties with the server, and the people this thread rightfully pointed out is potentially very suspicious once their Twitter, or Twitter accounts were digged out. Read Kato's bullshit again. So I'll just recap it. Kato shows up and he says, this is his fucking response. One, me no speaking English. Two, you're totally not getting it. I wasn't threatening to sue you. I was just giving you a fair heads up because you're my buddy and I don't want to see you get hurt. And then uh, to cap it all off, as they explain to everybody that this is a giant misunderstanding and misinterpretation, uh, they refer to the discussions and the content being discussed as pedophile content. I mean, if you're going to go to somebody and say, you're misunderstanding, we're not talking about pedophilia, and then the next paragraph referred to it as pedophile content, you kind of shot yourself in the foot a little bit. So uh, that kind of <laughs> brings us up to speed on Kano's brilliant fucking response. Uh, again, I don't know how much you guys missed. Hopefully that brings us up to where we should be. Uh, Kano finishes it off with saying, I'm no different than any of you. I'm just a random internet user fanboying over some games and ranting about others. I really want to clear out my name. Uh, I understand why you people would pursue people suspected of diving into pedophilia and other illegal fields. But I'm not really one of those people. I hope this was enough of a statement uh, to at least testify of my honesty. Uh, not not getting a ton of... <laughs> Positive responses from from Neo Gaffers. I'll show you a few of them, uh, just to give you the the general consensus of what people were thinking when they read this. <laughs> uh, lots of bullshits. Lots of <laughs> lots and lots of bullshits. People weren't really buying Kano's response. Uh, okay, let me let me bring us up to the to the next event. Kano starts interacting with people and saying, "No, you don't get it. You're misunderstanding." Uh, and people start to acquiesce a little bit. They start to feel a little bit bad for Kano. They're like, okay, all right, maybe maybe you really uh, were in a bizarre situation. You were unaware of these conversations were going on. Um, it's all it's all just a big it's a big big misunderstanding. It looks guilty as shit. You know, you changing your username and then uh, threatening to sue people uh, <laughs> and trying to blame it off on. You know, I'm reading all this motherfucker's posts and I don't see him having any trouble with English. Like I, that's all I'm seeing. Very well. Well, well spelled out, well punctuated, uh, good grammar. Not noticing a lot of English problems uh, with this per particular person trying to tell me, no, you know, speak English. Uh, talking about leaving the Discord server, I want to get to the next part because it's funny. Uh, because basically, they get called out on more bullshit. Uh, kind of, again, from the OP of this particular thread. Oh, I should have, I should have, I, I hate when this goes on. Ah, uh, Boomer Jim fucking it up. One second, chat. I have to get past a, <laughs> a couple a couple of you. Oh, well, I think we've got one here. 
Uh, okay, Luigi Blood shows up. Yeah, so different people from uh, this particular thing show up. Lord Kano keeps continuing on talking about how pedophilia is bad. And again, it's all uh, just a terrible misunderstanding. No threats were made. Nothing bad happened. And now I'm looking for uh, for her response. Because uh, she drops some shit on him that kind of shuts him up. I know, I hope the... Oh boy, anticipation. Again, you know, while I take a minute to look for this, I'm just going to just put that back up on screen. <laughs> These are the people that are asking uh, you to give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, this is a particular forum. This is a group of individuals that just, hey, it's a misunderstanding, man. Why do you got to persecute us? <laughs> you, you don't get it. You got to calm down a little bit. Right, let's not get hot-headed about these things. Just brilliant. I love I love when shit like this happens. I love, I love when a group like that goes out and just wreaks havoc on everybody uh, because they've got the moral high ground. And then instantly, it comes to bite them in the ass. Uh, it's always entertaining. Okay, here I here's the here's the thread or here's the post that I was looking for. Uh, desktop, there we go. Uh, here's Celine's response. I'm up for twelve hours of sleep, but it seems I have a lot of reading to do. So excuse me if I proceed to re uh, proceed instead of reacting for the moment. Funny to see how they waited for me to go to sleep before reacting and posting some communications on the matters. Just as a general warning for Reset Era staff and the members who are trying to say I frame things out of context. Be very careful in the way you word your defenses. That's my first and last fair warning about this. I understand you're panicking right now because this thread has more views than the members registered on your forum. But again, be careful. So it turns out our OP, the reason they're saying that is because they have more screen caps. They have more, <laughs> they have more information. You know, Kano again, uh, he, he went on about how he's innocent, misunderstanding, all that shit. Uh, let's see where, where they drop it. No, it should be the next one. I should have been more prepared. Oh, boy. It's a dirty D live stream. Nothing's fucking ready to go. Everything's unprofessional. Oh, God, Gator, where are you? I need you to run this for me. Oh, uh, did the post get removed? I hope not. I'm trying to present a nice little story here. It'd be very upsetting if it suddenly disappeared on me. Everybody talking about the THQ thing. <laughs> You know what? Actually, I know what I'll play while I do this. I'm going to let this play again. Because this was stupid to make, but I put effort into it for a moment. So <laughs> I'll let that play for a second while I dig this up. Okay, here's the post I was looking for. Now remember, Kano was trying to play it off like, hey, I was just uh, a user in the general discussion of the sales forum. That's that's all I was. Big misunderstanding. I just hung out there with other people. Uh, here's where they go with this. Uh, just a little element I forgot to mention. Lord Kano was one of the few, uh, three question mark, moderators on this Discord. He wasn't just a random user. Uh, and this is a conversation in French, which they translate. But it looks like Kano might might have been lying a little bit. So when you're looking at damage control, when you're looking at people reacting to a situation, like this dude's already run through about four, four or five different phases. Uh, one, it's misunderstood. Two, I don't speak English. Three, I'm not really threat. Well, three, I'll threaten you and then pretend I didn't threaten you. Uh, four, I'm going to try to change my username so people can't find me. And then, to cap it off, just straight out lying when he gives his side of the story. Just a regular user there. Oh, oh no, wait, what did I say? User, I meant I'm a moderator. I'm one of the people in charge of the fucking Discord. It's a... you got a little bit of a problem there. You can't go on telling me about how this is all a misunderstanding and people weren't really, you know, paying attention. What did he refer to it as? P or pedophile content from other people that he was disgusted by? You're a moderator there. So you would be aware of the pedophile content, which you let go on, because <laughs> you didn't give a shit. 
You're not sorry because you're sorry. You're sorry because you got caught. That's what you're upset about. Holy shit, these people, man. <laughs> I will say they've got some fantastic image edits on this particular thread. I've got to give, <laughs> I've got to give some fucking uh, uh, credit uh, to the work they're doing. So I think that brings us fairly close to up to date. You know, if I, again, I'll sum it up one last time for anybody just joining or somebody that wants a quick, uh, you know, a, a quick summation. User shows up on NeoGAF. They drop a bunch of Discord uh, images from conversations taking place there. A lot of the people involved are power users on Reset Era. Uh, some of the people uh, have relationships to the mods and admins. A lot of known people involved in this. A lot of people that had positions of powers known in this. Uh, now, it's claimed to be a sales chat discord, uh, but turns out they're talking about age of consent in different states, talking about fucking people from the age of 12 to 18, and all of this shit. When the information is released, the person that released it goes to talk to the owner of Reset Era and gets banned for it. When they start to talk about it more publicly, everybody starts blocking them. If you bring it up to any of these users, you get blocked on social media. If you try to make a thread about it on Reset Era, it gets removed immediately. If you talk about it in a post in an unrelated thread, you get banned. All over the place, these threads are getting taken down because you're not allowed to discuss it for some bizarre reason. Users start changing their name to try to hide from this. When that doesn't work, they start threatening to sue people. When that doesn't work, they show up and just fucking lie. <laughs> it's me no speaking English. Me just showed up last week. Me no understand. And that's where we are right now. That's, that's where you find yourself. The fucking harbingers of justice. The moral, upright, virtuous people that have come to tell us lowly, disgusting, anime-loving, video game fanatics how wrong we are to, to like video games, uh, how wrong we are to appreciate a nice set of tits on, on a fucking fighting game character. You know, the people that want to chastise us for enjoying a hobby. Uh, the people that want to attack companies. Attack companies in really egregious, disgusting ways because they're upset uh, that they're not bending the fucking knee. These people, turns out, aren't as clean as they like to pretend they are. Uh, they've got some of their own shit hidden in the closet that uh, ownership and uh, moderators and admins are well aware of. And they just don't care because those people are special. And they bring a little air of prestige to Reset Era. You know, it's the same problem that happens on almost any single forum that exists. You will get a subsect of users who will have their own following and their own base behind them. And you can't get rid of them. You have to treat them well. And they help to set the agenda. This also happens with people that it, it just it's one of the inherent problems with a forum. You'll find it anywhere you go. But this is the special chosen few. Now, this is a forum where industry insiders go to. Uh, people in, uh, that are just connected to the industry in a host of different ways, people that drop leaks about events that are coming up, of course they want to delete everything. Of course they're going to change their fucking usernames. Of course they're not going to publicly address it. Of course they're going to call her crazy and threaten to sue her to shut her up. Because it would be really shitty for all those industry insiders and all those people with the uh, following, the chosen few, to now be uh, <laughs> fucking associated with this shit. I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know uh, what the next uh, event will be uh, uh, as this kind of plays itself out. But it's crazy to me that you are kind of prohibited from talking about it anywhere outside of fucking NeoGAF and Kiwi Farms. It, almost like anywhere else, you can't you can't discuss it. It's not allowed. Am I crazy, chat? Do you find I find that very bizarre. <laughs> Like, for something that's a non-issue, which the people involved in this have claimed from the start, non-issue, misinterpretation, misunderstanding. You guys don't understand. You're just, <laughs> you're, you're overreacting to, it's a nothing burger. Well, for a fucking nothing burger, there's sure a lot of, uh, you know, damage control going on. Relatives showing up to defend you. Uh, people hiding shit, deleting shit, banning shit, removing shit, muting shit. It's, it's a lot of fucking action and response for an event that doesn't have anything behind it or to it. Now, I'm not a fucking mind reader. I'm not Nostradamus either. I don't know the future. This could be some crazy troll 
uh, that's been uh, planned out months in advance. I don't fucking know. But given the fact that people have shown up to defend themselves and talk about it and they didn't dispute uh, the Discord drop itself, uh, it would lead me to believe that it, it's reasonable to assume that the pictures presented are real and the people that were said to be involved are legitimately involved. <laughs> and, you know, it comes down to being able to enjoy laughing at these fucking idiots. Because they deserve it. Because if this was any other group, you know, actually, let me put it like this. I want you to imagine uh, a video game developer has a fucking Discord for people that are on staff. And somebody, for whatever reason, gets invited in there. And, you know, in this Discord, they're talking about age of consent and who they'd fuck and just shit like that. Do you think if Reset Era, if, if somebody started a thread on Reset Era and said, hey, did you see these game devs talking about banging 12-year-olds? Do you think that they would be like, nah, man, that's a misunderstanding. You need to get rid of that. Or would they try to ruin those fucking people's lives? <laughs> would they try to destroy them? Let me pull chat up here. I feel like I'm... Uh, it feels weird not having... There we go. A lot of adult conversation going over here. <laughs> Spam it all you like. You can say whatever you like here. This isn't the oppressive land of YouTube. You're allowed to you're allowed to say dirty words and cuss words over here. Go nuts. Just spam it. Grabbing a cigarette. Give me one second here. You know, I, I think there's like a little widget or something that I can put into this fucking OBS uh, to just display chat. So it's right on top. So I don't have to actually be looking directly at it. Oh, that's going by fast. I don't even, where the, I don't even know how many people, how, somebody in chat, how many people are even watching this? Like I'm looking at the back end page of DLive and all I see is chat on the right and then the middle, it's got stats with no information. 46? Okay. So at least people are able to watch it, thankfully. Let me, oh, that is not what I wanted. Uh, let me read these real quick. We've got just a few here and we'll be right done with it. Uh, from HTRTU, weren't there five guys on that Discord server, Jim? I think we, we should get Donald Trump to tweet about it. Well, I, I know Sargon's probably waited with bated breath that there might be a scandal regarding video games that involves sex in some manner. If we can just get that Gamergate 2 hashtag going. The world's going to be a better place. From No Name, have the minimum shekel uh, possible to donate for a job done, Mr. Shenanigans. And then Orange Peco, open the chest, Boomer. How do I open the chest? I'll open the chest. Well, you got, how do I do it? Somebody tell me how I open the fucking stupid chest. I'm, I'm scared if I hit something, I'm going to lose my ability to... All right, let's see. I don't even know where the fucking chest is. Is there a button with somebody? <laughs> this is going to be disastrous. I'm sorry, chat. Uh, just click it. Oh, I'm looking. Uh, all right. You know what? I'm going to. I'm. Ah, this is such a bad idea, but I'm going to try it. Okay. All right. So I just click it and it opens it. All right. Uh, distribute rewards. Okay. The more your viewers engage, uh, the more points it accumulates. All right. So what? All right, uh, here you go. Should distribute it. Chest rewards will distribute in 30 seconds. I don't know how this fucking works. How many lemons do I have? I have 1.4k lemons. Oh boy. I think that translates to like a dollar fifty. I'm gonna get myself a nice soda pop with that. Maybe even a, a, a maybe even a gas station hot dog. I'm fucking here. Here comes easy straight for Jimbo. <laughs> he's, he's lemon rich. Okay. Uh, Ninja Warrior, you, congratulations. You got seven lemons. Uh, Corvi, hey, it's your lucky day. You got a, four, a total of four fucking lemons. Uh, Pasquat, three lemons. Caleb LL Show, welcome to Easy Street as well. Three whole lemons. 
And finally, Zero Sum, uh, rounding out the top five. God, Jesus. The top five luckiest followers. 2.7 lemons. I think <laughs> I think Zero Sum deserves a dancing pudding. 2.7 lemons. Holy shit, you can pay for college with that. I, I don't know what the translation for lemons are. I honest to God don't. I'm sorry guys. I haven't really I haven't really looked into the lemon market. I remember ice cream from when this place used to run. I don't know what the lemon market is now. Good. All right. Uh, you want to hand with your OBS? Uh, there's a way to get chat on screen. Uh, window captured. Yeah, I, I've, I've done that before, but usually I have a some kind of weird issue with it. I probably am using an outdated version, and it's fucking up my ability to do it. Uh, yeah, uh, other. I, I'm having to read comments from other places. Uh, from Trio Doug. Sorry, English isn't my second language, but I really want to fuck kids. Yeah, that's kind of how it comes off, isn't it? <laughs> we weren't we weren't safe. We weren't safe to talk about it there. We weren't safe. You can't bring that subject up. You'll get banned, really? Because it seems like you get warned instead. <laughs> it seems like it seems like a warning is the problem that you're running into. Oh, no, that's not. Can I, oh wait, can I give away more? How many times can I click the chest? Oh, it won't let me do it again. I have to wait? How long do you have to wait to give out more lemons? I have to wait eight minutes before opening another chest? Really? Why? I think I've given you guys like a couple nickels worth of... <laughs> I don't, I really don't know what the trans... It's not, I'm sorry, you're not going to be... There's no such thing as lemon rich on this place. <laughs> We're all going to enjoy poverty together, guys. Welcome to the new age. Holy shit, these people. Oh, you know, where is it? You know, I in fact, I think um, Lord Kano probably would have had a better chance showing up to discuss this with everybody involved if he'd taken the Riker approach. Just been more upfront and direct about it. Not a chance. It's false is totally made up. Pure fiction. It's a total fabrication. This one was invented by a writer. But no. Had to change his username. Had to threaten lawsuits. Had to spur God a little bit. So I guess this kind of puts us into speculation mode. I mean, we listened to a little bit of Blue's Clues earlier about what we were going to do. What's that first clue? I, I, I don't know how long this can be not talked about. I'll say that right off the top. I know one person's written an article about it already. What is it? One Angry Gamer, I think. What, uh, and I think a few other people have talked about it a little bit, like Mark Kern and other people like that. But I, you can't go around trying to express a discussion about something. Whether this turns out to be a big nothing burger or not, you can't tell people, no, you're not allowed to talk about it, because it's the only thing they're going to want to fucking talk about. They're instantly going to want to discuss it. It's the stupidest approach. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can try changing your name and lying, but trying to suppress it outright by banning people and muting them and removing threads about it is a terrible fucking approach. Look how that worked out for <laughs> look how that worked out for NeoGaf. Uh, when they were throwing their shit fit and they started banning people over it, you ended up with Reset Era. I can't even imagine what kind of hell spawn abomination is going to crawl itself out of the ass of these progressive cat ladies and set up next. Like, when the people exit us from Reset Era because they find this to be offensive, what the fuck is that forum going to look like? What crazy shit are they going to get up to? It's like it's like an evolution of insanity. Every time this happens and they slough off a portion of their user base to go create a more progressive forum, it gets loonier and loonier. It's going to be obese 50-year-old women rolling around in cat piss, <laughs> eating kitty litter, and talking about how offensive destroy all humans is, and how they're how the people developing it should be shot. That's the end result. That's what we're going to end up with. 
I don't know what the I, I, I don't know where this is going to go, but I, I guarantee you it will be entertaining for about a week. Uh, will anything big happen from it? Probably not. But is it funny watching a bunch of, uh, you know, self-righteous assholes uh, be held to their own standard? Absolutely. These people never give anyone the benefit of the doubt. They always take, uh, they, they always take people as having the worst motivations. Every game developer and publisher is just scum. Uh, everything they do in their games, they're doing it because they're sexist pigs. Uh, gamers are horrible people. Uh, they Nobody deserves the benefit of the doubt. You've got the fucking owner of Reset Era talking about, oh, we need more evidence, we need to be level-headed and moderate. Are you fucking kidding me? You guys never are. So it's amusing to me to watch this happen, because now you're in a situation where you're getting shit on as you cry for moderate approaches and examination of evidence and adult conversations and you're dealing with people doing to you what you've done for the last year to everybody else that's entertainment <laughs> enjoy it you're basically getting your ass kicked by the man in the mirror can you really bitch about it i i don't know but trying to suppress it whatever website it happens to be it's just going to make it bigger it's not going to go away it never goes away people are going to talk about this dumb shit for the next week if you let it play out, if you try to suppress it, it's going to be a two-week or a three-week conversation. It will drive people batty. So it's a terrible approach. It's a little friendly advice. Actual friendly advice. Unlike Lord Kano, I'm not winking at you as I say, I'm not holding a knife. I'm not going to slit your throat. That's not the kind of advice I'm giving you. I'm giving you genuine advice. Just let people fucking talk about it. I, I don't know, Chad. I see people saying, open the chest again. I don't think it's going to let me. Three more minutes. <clears throat> oh, boy. Cancer's taking over, folks. I feel I'm coughing my lungs up here. Uh, we'll do this. Since I've covered the bulk of this, I will wait the three minutes, and then I will give you all those delicious lemons that are hidden in this fucking treasure box. <laughs> and then, and then I, you know what? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go play Super Smash Brothers. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go play video games. Then I'm gonna come back on the internet later on tonight. I'm gonna laugh as they try to damage control this more, because these people are fucking stupid, and they just don't ever learn their lesson. And I always find it funny when people cry for a moderate approach when they don't grant anybody that same courtesy. So I guess eat shit, cat ladies. Uh, welcome to the nightmare you created, and uh, good luck with that, you stupid fucks. Oh, can you feel it? Is the excitement in the air chat? Those lemons are coming. What are we sitting at? One minute. One more minute before I can open the chest and give you 142.2 <laughs> lemons worth. I don't. I don't. I refuse to call them linos. Uh, the lowest you know, dom er, denomination is lemons. So they're lemons, Chinese lemons. I don't even know how you convert them into real money. I don't even know if that's possible. Oh, boy. Here comes that Monopoly money. Uh, one more minute. All right, we're counting down those seconds, folks. Should I put on some lemon music while we wait? I mean, this is a fucking exciting moment, isn't it? All those free... Is there a lemon song, I wonder? Is there such a thing as a lemon song? Find out. Well, Led Zeppelin, but <laughs> Led Zeppelin has a fucking so lemon song? I okay. But now that would be too easy. I want to make you suffer for your lemons. What's the worst fucking song that I you know what I know what I can put on? <laughs> there you go. All right. I will give you your lemons. Is it is it almost time? Okay. I can give you your lemons, but you've got to listen to the lemon music. Well, the reason we're today has been really special. Here come your lemons. Well, of course, every day is special.
think we've had fun. It's not bad for a for a, the first stream on D Live. I've got some technical issues to work out. I'll get them worked out. I'll figure it out. I'll figure a way to make it work. Uh, I'll keep an eye on this. If it gets more entertaining going forward, or if some really crazy shit drops, I'll do a follow up stream. But you're caught up, <laughs> and you're lemon rich now, so you should enjoy that. I'm gonna go play some video games. Because I'm a giant man-child. You see how that works? See, look, mornings with the man-child. It's got a ring to it, doesn't it? It's pretty fancy. Uh, let's see. Do I have a do I have an outro music? Well, fuck. I, I'm scared now. If I if I play more music, is it gonna just f on you? I, I don't know. It might just die. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. Try it one more time here. Oh, I wish I had a particular song that I want, but I don't have it. Oh, yeah, here we go. All right, chat. Uh, you take it easy. Uh, I'll keep an eye on it. Like I said, if something crazier pops up, I'll play it. Otherwise, have a good night. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, I'll be streaming here primarily from now on. Hopefully, I get the or technical issues worked out, uh, and we can all be lemon rich together. Enjoy your weekend, and I will see you later on. Well, good morning, D-Live. Welcome to, what are we calling it? Mornings with the man-child. Uh, we'll be testing out some different different times this week. Took a little while to get into the uh, groove of things over on Stream Me. More than likely going to take a little while over here as well. Probably a few shorter shows this week. I'm thinking trying like today, you know, we'll do around 8 my time. Uh, tomorrow we'll try 6 in the morning. Or I'm sorry, Wednesday we'll try 6 in the morning. And then Friday I'm going to try it about 4 in the morning. And then I'll pick the appropriate one. I'll pick the one that seems like the best fit. So over on Streamy, we got, we got, uh, we got up to some shit, some shenanigans early in the morning. So I'm not sure exactly what time I'm going to stick with, but we'll figure it out this week. Adjust it as need be. How's how is your week treating you? I hope you had a good Fourth of July. I had a fantastic Fourth of July. I'm hat rich now. Oh, gonna buy me that Lambo with all that hat money. Oh, it's good times coming for Jimmy Boy. <laughs> buy my hats. I need a mansion. All right, I need a mansion to park that Lambo at. It's fucking important. So get on that. You should jump. You should jump right on that. A lot of a lot of fun things happening. Uh, some interesting things happened over the weekend. We'll talk about that. We'll get into the uh, the normal programming, I guess you could call it, as time goes on. But I want to focus on that Epstein stuff because holy shit. That is going to be a fucking story that's going to entertain for at least a month or two. No more Acosta, no more golden plea deals for our boy Jeffrey. He's got to stand in front of the feds this time. And he's not going to get a slap on the wrist as he walks away. So let's, we'll, we'll, we'll start with that. We'll start with our, our boy, Mr. Epstein. Jeffrey. Look at him, look at that smile. The smile of a billionaire that fucks little kids. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly, let me tag that on the end there. I'm not saying he fucks children. I'm saying it's alleged that he does. <laughs> it's alleged that he runs a child, a child fucking empire. Not my words, the words of other people. And a conviction, apparently. Mr. Epstein has been arrested again on similar charges to what he was arrested for before. Uh, but this dating from 2002 to 2005. And uh, there's some there's some interesting things that line up with this particular window of time. So we'll we'll start with that. Let me let me pull up the article. I have an article saved of Mr. Epstein. <laughs> Mr. Epstein. Oh God! If you thought that PizzaGate shit was crazy before, wait till you see how it picks up now. Oh, this is like this is manna from the heavens for PizzaGate people. This is where is it? I've got. Here we go. Here we go. Pizzagate is not fake news. Investigate Pizzagate. Take arm weaponry down to the pizza shop. I think that's what they're telling us. Not something I would do, but potentially something they would do. They take their they take their Italian cuisine very fucking seriously with this group. But Mr. Epstein's been a naughty boy. He's done some terrible things. <laughs> so let's start with that. Let me, let me pull it up. Jeffrey Epstein, arrested for sex trafficking of minors. Uh oh 
Mr. Epstein's being held at the federal lockup in Manhattan, according to law enforcement sources. Does it sound good for Mr. Epstein? They don't like child fuckers in prison, whether it be local or federal. Bill, I love the start of this, by the way. <laughs> Just the opening sentence really sets the mood. Billionaire pedophile Jeffrey Epstein was arrested for allegedly sex trafficking dozens of minors in New York and Florida between 2002 and 2005. Will appear, or will appear in court today, this Monday. According to three law enforcement sources, Epstein, who owns a New York City mansion and an island in the Caribbean, was being held at the federal lockup in Manhattan ahead of his court date. Saturday's arrest by the FBI NYPD Crimes Against Children Task Force comes about 12 years after the 66-year-old financier essentially got a slap on the wrist for allegedly molesting dozens of underage girls in Florida. Because as we all know, different laws apply to different people. If you're rich, you can basically do whatever the fuck you want and get away with it. As long as you've got a good enough lawyer, apparently. And when they say a slap on the wrist, they're not kidding. This guy goes to court for molesting children. And they give him 13 months. That was the plea deal he got from Acosta. 13 months. But it's not in jail. It's work release. So for eight hours a day, he shows up at the jail and stays there. And the rest of the day, he's allowed to go free. So it's not even really 13 months, is it? It's, 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 uh, well, a th uh, yeah, a third of that. It's a third of that because he's only spending a third of the day there every day. So it's, it's four, four months, four and three, you know, uh, one third months in jail if you add it all up uh, and, and made it go the entire length. Slap on the wrist. Molest a bunch of kids, four and a third months in jail. For more than a decade, Epstein's alleged abuse of minors has been the subject of lawsuits brought by victims, investigations by local and federal authorities, and exposés in the press. I believe there's a Vanity Fair article that started this off with the original arrest. Uh, but despite the attention cast on his alleged sex crimes, the hedge funder has managed to avoid any meaningful jail time, let alone federal charges. The new indictment, which according to two sources will be unsealed Monday in Manhattan federal court, will allegedly... Uh, will allege that Epstein sexually exploited dozens of underage girls in a now familiar scheme, paying them cash for massages, and then molesting them, or sexually abusing them in the Upper East Side Mansion, or his palatial or palatial residence in Palm Beach. Yeah, this was the Lolita Express guy. This was a guy that was uh, alleged to have, uh, you know, basically chauffeured people to go fuck kids. He, he would have this giant fucking plane. People... <laughs> People would fly on the plane, fuck little kids, and then show up at his uh, his little island resort, fuck some more kids, and then fly home. Lots of big name people were, uh, you know, alleged to have been associated with this. A lot of politicians, a lot of people in Hollywood, a lot of financiers, a lot of other people too. We'll get to them in a minute. Uh, where are we here? Okay, uh, he's facing up to a maximum this time around. Uh, not 13 months, not a slap on the wrist. 45 years. The case is being handled by the this is interesting, too. I didn't notice this the first time around until somebody pointed it out. The Public Corruption Unit of the Southern District of New York, with the assistance of the FBI's Human Trafficking Division. Apparently, the Public Corruption Unit deals with government employees. So why would the government, why, why would the Public Corruption Unit, of all people, being, uh, be the ones that are handling this? Boys, I think it's time to get maybe a little excited. Public Corruption Unit's handling it. They investigate people within the government, and they seem to be in charge or co-charge of this particular case. I don't want to say happenings are happening, but it feels like maybe, maybe some big important people are about to have a real fucking bad week after the announcement comes out today. Oh, oh, Mr. Epstein, you're going to have an unfortunate accident. I, I, I fear Mr. Epstein may commit suicide with two bullets to the back of his head. If this is allowed to go to trial, because I don't think there are going to be any plea deals this time. Several of the billionaires, employees, and associates allegedly recruited the girls for Epstein's abuse, and some victims eventually became recruiters themselves, according to law enforcement. The girls were as young as 14, and Epstein knew they were underage, according to the de er, details of the arrest and indictment shared by two officials. Epstein's lawyer, My er, Martin Weinberg, Declined to comment when reached by the Daily Beast on Saturday night. The SDNY also declined to comment. It's been a long time coming. It's been too long coming, said attorney David Boys, who represents Epstein's accuser, Virginia Roberts, 
Oh, that is not good, boys. I don't know if you're familiar with who Virginia Roberts is. Let me um, let me pull it up. I want to I want to read this to you because this is gonna get fucking. Uh, it's gonna get wild. This is going to get wild real quick. All right, I believe it's in the bottom section here. Let me let me find it. it should be not the not the philanthropy. No, no, no. Where is it? Oh, no, 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 no. Where is it? Uh, let me see if we can find it. Okay, here we go. Oh, you're going to like this. All right. So, Virginia Roberts, her lawyer is commenting on this. In January of 2015, a 31-year-old American woman, Virginia Roberts, who was later known as, a, it's her name change, allegedly in a sworn affidavit that at the age of 17, she had, was held as a sex slave by Epstein. She further alleges that he trafficked her to several people, including Prince Andrew and Harvard law professor Alan Dershowitz. Roberts also claims that Epstein and others had physically and sexually abused her. Roberts alleged that the FBI may have been involved in a cover-up. She said she served as Epstein's sex slave from 1999 to 2002. The interesting thing, well, there, there's a lot of interesting shit. So... Her tail end of her sex slavery under Jeff, or under uh, allegedly under Jeffrey Epstein, ended in 2002. The new charges that are coming forward today range from 2002 to 2005, meaning her allegations are within the window. Now, not only the the what makes that so fucking wild isn't just the Prince Andrew thing. We're not talking about we're not talking about royalty and people from other governments. It's the Harvard law professor Alan Dershowitz. When Epstein was originally brought to charge and, uh, ha, you know, went through his whole, uh, original ordeal, he had given a bunch of money. Uh, he was the philanthropist, given a bunch of money to different organizations, most of which returned the money, except for one organization, Harvard. <laughs> Harvard's president declined uh, initially and said, we don't want to return the money. We think we should keep the money. Also, Alan Dershowitz, the person she accused of being sex trafficked or sex trafficked to, was his lawyer. How weird is that? So you have this woman come forward and say, "Hey, this guy held me as a sex slave and made me fuck Alan Dershowitz, who coincidentally works at Harvard at a, a university he's given a lot of money to, and that same guy who he sex trafficked me to uh, is part of his defense team." For his trial, that got him 13 months of fucking home arrest or whatever dumb, retarded shit it was. Oh, I have a feeling this is going to be amazing. I think all sorts of wild shit's about to come out. We hope the pros oh, back to the article. We hope the prosecutors will not stop with Mr. Epstein because there were other people who participated with him and made the sex trafficking possible. Again, that's coming from her attorney, from Virginia Roberts' attorney. At an era where Me Too has toppled powerful men, Epstein's name was largely absent from the national conversation until the Miami Herald published a three-part series on how his wealth, power, and influence shielded him from federal prosecution. And then it goes into basically Acosta giving him a slap on his wrist, letting him get away with it. Talks a little bit about Vanity Fair's article initially with him. Oh, rich people doing underhanded, degenerate shit and getting caught royalty politicians from around the world rich people financiers this is there's no way this guy's gonna walk away alive are you kidding me is this is a dead man walking how is jeffrey epstein not going to get suicided i have no idea oh it's gonna be bad it's gonna be a bad day for this dude i i hope here's my hope going forward that federal prosecutors and the corruption unit and whoever the hell else is in charge and the prosecution team offer no plea deals to try to compel them to name names. I think if you told this asshole, we're going to send you to fucking Leavenworth. We're sending you to the hothouse for 45 years. He's probably going to start telling you who the fuck was involved. Now, there have been a lot of names attached to this. Bill Clinton apparently flew on the Lolita Express. Uh, what was it, 23 or 24 times? Donald Trump allegedly had a friendship with uh, Mr. Epstein, though he says he ended it after the uh, first trial and barred him from Mar or, uh, Marcielago or whatever the fuck it was uh, because he was hitting on underage girls of employees and uh, patrons. 
But we're talking about uh, the elite, powerful people that have always been rumored to be involved in some heinous, underhanded shit. Hollywood people, government people, money people, and they all know Epstein. They all seem to party with Epstein. They all flew on that fucking plane with Epstein. And I find it hard to believe that if this guy was banging teenagers and young girls all the time, if he was paying them cash for special massages, then we're not going to see a lot of really nervous fucking people over the next couple of months. And if Epstein has a little black book, I mean, he's rich, right? He's a billionaire. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he had hidden cameras set up to record people to blackmail them or to use his protection in the future. Oh, this could be just fucking phenomenal. Could you imagine if there are tapes of Bill Clinton or somebody else? <laughs> Steven Spielberg? Oh, that would be the end of a career. They're not going to survive that. That's death. That's They're done. It's over. Yes, chat. Uh, somebody said, making breakfast and watching pedophiles burn this morning. <laughs> Mr. Epstein's going to have a real bad fucking week. Oh, yeah, let me inhale that cancer. The Lolita Express. <laughs> Who calls something that? What you, is that? That's the air transport. What did he call the bus when he delivered the children to people on his island? <laughs> was it Jeffrey? Was it uh, Jeffrey Epstein's kid fucking fun bus? Is that is that the name of it? Hey everybody! Hey Mr. Clinton! Come join me at the mansion. Mr. Epstein's kid fucking fun bus is arriving with a bunch of new children. He brought them all over from the local pizza place. It's going to be wild. Do you do you want pizza or hot dogs, Mr. President? Oh, disaster. Disaster. What's what's upon a child? Oh. Oh, yeah. This is going to be and that comes out today. I don't know exactly when today. I I do know that the indictment with more names and more accusations, the scale of how many people were involved, uh the scope of it, all that shit should be getting released today. I keep an eye out on it <laughs> because listen, all right, people were showing up at pizzerias with fucking assault weapons because, because they thought there were sex slaves in the basement. All right, let's with Comet Pizzeria. They thought that there was a, you know, there's a like, and listen, I, you know, when Pizzagate was going on, there was a lot of weird shit. I mean, yeah, the owner of the restaurant did give an interview where he said, uh, what was it? First he said, we have no basement. And then in another interview, he said, yeah, we keep our supplies in the basement. So there's a lot of, there's some weird shit. I mean, that's a really weird, small, insignificant thing to lie about. So it made people a little, a little sketchy. All the weird shit they'd post online, the supposed connections to powerful people. I get it. It was weird. But still, people showed up with guns at this fucker's pizzeria. Well, here you go, Pizzagate people. Like, this is what you're waiting for. You wanted to expose some giant conspiracy of rich, powerful, influential, affluent people who were involved in something heinous. Uh, and that's Mr. Epstein. Mr. Epstein seems to be at the epicenter of it, connected to all the elite people you could ever hope for. Celebrities, politicians, financiers. This is the guy that knew them all, arranged parties, flew children on jets to essentially, allegedly, according to the allegations that are out there, molest them. And it sounds like he passed them around. It sounds like many other people were involved in facilitating this and helping it happen. So how did they do it? Where did they get the kids? Or did he just walk up to random children in a mall and do it? Was it through an orphanage? I mean, you're talking about multiple steps involved in getting all these children hustled to this guy. So that's going to involve different organizations and companies and just all sorts of things to help funnel those kids towards him. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. And, you know, actually, can I find a clip of that? I wonder if that's still up. Of <laughs> the dude that showed up at Comet Pizzeria with a gun. Uh, let me see if we can find a news clip of it. Oh, that's, uh, I, I just want to see the actual clip and not hear there. At a pizza restaurant, a gunman with an assault rifle targeting... A okay, I guess we can, we, can, we can look at the ABC one. Hold on one second, chat. Let me, let me pull it up. We'll, we'll take a look at a blast from the past. A little bit of Pizzagate history. Let me uh, just get this queued up here. Uh, pull that down. There we go.
you know what? Oh, it's probably not going to work if I do a window capture. I don't really have that set up properly. So we will just do. We'll just do this. All right. Um, uh, there we go. I, th I think that should be good. Okay. Uh, desktop. There we go. All right. This was from <laughs> the guy. When was this? So two years ago. Three years ago at this point. Moment at a pizza restaurant, a gunman with an assault rifle targeting a Washington, D.C. spot that's at the center of a fake news story about Hillary Clinton and a close aide. Our senior justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, is there in Washington and has all the details for us. Good morning, Pierre. Good morning, Robin. Now, can you even call it a fake news story? I mean, okay, let's say hypothetically Jeffrey Epstein goes to trial and names names and Bill Clinton is involved. Right, they they're talking about this pizza, the comet pizza thing. Pizzagate is being completely fake news. <laughs> if there's a Clinton involved with Jeffrey Epstein's kid fucking, that's going to make all these previous newscasts look funny, because they all denied it up and down. Podesta's not involved. There's no Clintons involved, and here comes Mr. Epstein to to rewrite that story. This case shows how fake news can lead to a dangerous situation. Edgar Welch, 28, of Salisbury, North Carolina, has been arrested and charged with assault with a dangerous weapon. And police say that Welch told them that he showed up at the D.C. pizza restaurant to get to the bottom of what appears to be an utterly bogus story about child abuse promoted on the Internet. How scary was the situation? He allegedly pointed the gun in the direction of an employee and fired the weapon inside the restaurant. The origin of this crazy story was a posting on WikiLeaks involving Clinton campaign manager John Podesta discussing a fundraiser with the owner of the restaurant. Somehow that posting morphed into a baseless allegations of crimes involving Podesta and Hillary Clinton, lies becoming dangerous. George? Just incredible. Okay. Lies becoming dangerous. Oh, could you imagine if Epstein names Podesta? <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, what if he is involved? Oh, Epstein... My God, this story could turn into a thousand different things. Oh, 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 you're crazy. There's nothing going on in that pizza joint. <laughs> Flash forward three years. Jeffrey Epstein's like, oh, yeah, no. Podesta and Clinton came over all the time on my child fucking fun bus. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Oh, disastrous. Absolutely disastrous. Shows up with a gun at the pizza joint. That's amazing. <laughs> what was he expecting was going to happen? Is he going to walk back there to the pizza chef, the guy taking orders all day, and be like, where are the kids? All right, sir, I don't know what you're talking Where are the fucking kids? You keep them by the tomato sauce, motherfucker. <laughs> He's got an AK-47 pointed at his fucking head. The dude's working minimum wage. He has no idea what's going on. Oh, this Epstein thing. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely excited for it. I don't think... Listen, rich people do terribly in prison. There's no way this pampered fuck, who probably shits on a golden toilet, is going to be able to hand a lockup in an actual federal facility, even if it's little baby bitch tier mid-security level. There's no way he can handle it. He will roll over so fucking fast on everybody and anybody he can name to try to get his ass out of danger. The only thing he could hope for is that Donald Trump really was involved and that he could try to blackmail a pardon out of him. That's the only thing I can conceivably see happening to save his ass from not naming names. There's no way this ends well for Epstein. It seems like too many organizations specifically tailored to deal with corruption and uh, you know child trafficking are really focused in on him. Now, you could talk about why is this you know happening right now. There could be a whole host of reasons for why Epstein is being charged and targeted right now. Maybe left-leaning people thought, hey, we can't, how can we nail Trump? The, the Russia collusion thing's not working. Well, I heard he was friends with Epstein. Let's see if we can get Epstein to roll over on Trump. Maybe. And then they look at his administration and see that he appointed a cost of the guy that gave him a plea deal and said, fuck it, let's nail him for it. Now that could backfire because, you know, Trump seemingly walked away from Epstein. I don't, I don't think they were really that close to begin with. He sure wasn't flying on his fucking uh, child fucking fun bus 24 times like uh, Mr. Clinton was. But either way, I don't see how this is going to end well. I mean, who, who knows who he could name? It could be fucking anybody. This could be the sort of thing that blows open a whole slew of shit. You're talking Hollywood. You name a few directors, you name a few powerful producers. 
And suddenly Dan Schneider is running for the hills. <laughs> if they got Steven Spielberg, they're going to get me. He's living in Mexico now, asking kids to walk around barefoot for him. Oh, disaster. Mr. Epstein is about to have just a very bad life. I don't think his money's going to pull him out this time. I think people were pissed off enough the first time around that he got a plea deal that he was able to walk away with a slap on the wrist. And I don't really even think this is one of those things that's politically divisive. I don't think if you're left-wing or right-wing, you look at a guy like this and say, well, we should protect him. I, this is a, a very rich, powerful guy that seemingly, allegedly, molested a lot of children and facilitated other people molesting them. And I, I, don't, really, I don't really see anybody going to bat for him. He's, he's poisonous. This would be political suicide to touch this and try to go to bat for this guy. So, you know, actually, let me check. Let me see if the FBI has actually released. Have they released any information on uh, just the details of this today? Or what time is that even coming out? Well, let's see if it comes out. Um, now, everybody's saying uh, coming out Monday. Of course, that was already known. Oh, here we go. Uh, CNN just put something up. Maybe maybe we, we have something. Uh, billionaire Jeffrey Epstein is expected to be charged with operating a sex trafficking ring. Oof. Not just fucking kids, but operating a sex trafficking ring. Okay, uh, it, so it hasn't been unsealed yet. It's still expected to be unsealed today. What was the other name of the sex cult? Chat, maybe you can help me out with this. this uh, you know, maybe this is related to this. Actually, I hadn't even thought of it. Wasn't there another sex slave ring that just got uncovered? Like, within the last year or two. Nixium or something like that? Or Nivix? N Naviasim? I, can't, I don't know what weird shit it was, but they went around branding people with fucking uh, cattle prods and shit. Where, where they were taking in actual sex slaves. And it was like a fucking cult leader, and he was powerful in the financial world. Do you know what I'm talking about? What was the name of that fucking thing? NXVIM. All right, let's see. Has anybody from that fucking case said anything recently that would... VIM. Okay, uh, last, okay, let's see what we have here. Rumors about Allison Mack includes nervous breakdown. Uh, that's one of the celebrities involved with it. Neighbors believe the sex cult is not dead. Yeah, this was a really fucking weird thing. A multi-level marketing company that was a front for a sex cult. Let me see if I can find an article. I want to see if there's anything recent with this that could somehow connect back to Epstein. Maybe he knew some of these people. Maybe they named him, and that's what got this going. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that was a guy's name. Keith Rainier, convicted in trial exposing sex cults inner working. Okay, let's uh, let's read about this real quick. Because, yeah, this was another very bizarre fucking story. I don't know what it is with all these rich people and their fucking sex cults, but apparently it's a thing. I don't know how to pronounce this goddamn thing. I'm just going to call it Nix. Nix, Keith Rainier, convicted in trial exposing sex cult inner workings. Mr. Rainier set up a harem of sexual slaves who were branded with his initials and kept in line by blackmail. Can I, let me just show you what this fucking guy looks like. <laughs> you, I just want you to see what he looks like. This was a leader of a fucking sex cult. All right, where is it? Um, there we are. That's him. That's Keith Rainier, 58-year-old co-founder of the multi-level marketing company that branded women and <laughs> kept them in a sex cult. All right, let's let's uh, let's see what it says here. He was a con man who stole money and created a harem of sexual slaves branded with his initials and kept in line with blackmail, prosecutors said. Oh, oh uh, turn that off. There we go. On Wednesday, jurors in federal district court in Brooklyn sided with the prosecutors. They found Rainier, the leader of the occult-like group near Albany, uh, known as Nixium, guilty of racketeering and sex trafficking, ending a six-week trial. Okay, so his sex cult, which had sex trafficking, ended in June. Interesting. Do you think this is connected, Chad? I mean, is it possible? Do you think Rainier named Epstein and said, yeah, I got my kids from him? Or I, uh, maybe he supplied Epstein with children. Is that, is that even fucking possible? Could, could this be part of Epstein's Lolita Express empire? And we're just about to find out about it? 
Yeah, what? Okay. Attracted high profile followers, among them Smallville actress Allison Mack and Claire Bronfman, a Harris to Seagram's liquor fortune, who helped finance its activities. <clears throat> so not only did this guy run a sex cult, he got fucking actresses involved in it and got billionaires to fund it. How? How do you do that? How do you convince some random billionaire to fund your sex cult? The jury deliberated less than half a day before finding Mr. Rainier 58 guilty of all seven counts against him. The defendant wearing a maroon sweater, <laughs> of course, with dark brown elbow patches was impassive. As the verdict was read, he faces up to life in prison when he sentenced September 25th. Oh, let's see. Oh, where is it? I, I want to see if they talk more about the branding. You know what? Actually, I, I probably can find a picture of it. Let's take a look at what this looked like. Because, yeah, he was using... <laughs> he branded them like cows. All right, let's see if I can find a picture. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is this is what this dude did to people. He ran a sex fucking cult, sex traffic women, and then he would brand them so people knew they were his fucking, I, I guess, products? There you go, look at this. He'd brand this shit into their skin. Like scarification, just burn it right in. And women agreed to this. They went forward with this. Insanity. Absolute insanity. You know, now that I think about it more, just the timing of this is really interesting. So, Rainier's trial ends in June. His sentencing begins in September. In between the conviction and sentencing, all of a sudden Epstein is brought in on new charges related to sex trafficking, just like Rainier was involved in. God damn, I wonder if these are connected. That would make two billionaires involved in sex cult trafficking. And you, the funny thing to me is, and I make fun of Pizzagate people too all the time because they believe in some crazy fucking shit. But, you know, what do you think gets them going is all these super affluent people, billionaires, politicians, celebrities, that they always allege and say, hey, these people are all involved in this weird, underhanded, satanic sex shit with kids. And then what happens You've got one guy getting convicted of a sex cult who knows actresses and billionaires, and another guy who's a billionaire who facilitates child fucking for famous people. And these are both hitting right now. <laughs> it's no wonder they believe in this shit. You're never going to control that Pizzagate stuff now. There's too much shit involved. So I'm going off on a bit of a tangent. I'm just excited to see where this leads. God, I know Epstein doesn't have the balls to stick it out in prison. There's no way. There's no way that guy is going to want to serve 45 years in the federal prison system. There's no fucking way on earth. This isn't the 30s or the 20s where if you were some fucking crime king, you could get a special cell and have some nice fucking wine and pasta like a mafia boss. This is you get stuck in a cell with Tyrone and he balls out your ass for the next 20 years until you fucking hang yourself with a rope made out of toothpaste and soap. So I don't think Epstein has the survival instinct to last in prison. There's no goddamn way. Oh, bend over, Mr. Epstein. Tough times are coming. Oh, oh, you were a billionaire, were you? Oh, well, how, do you, how does your billionaire asshole like my dick? Mr. Epstein, are you enjoying is your billionaire asshole enjoying my cock? Oh, disastrous. Absolutely fucking disastrous for Mr. Epstein. Goddamn. Whew. Tough time to be him. Exciting. Exciting time to be us. We're not going to prison for this. Luckily, we're just normal people. I don't think there are any billionaire politicians watching this stream. <laughs> if there are, run for the hills because Mr. Epstein's about to name you. If you're a regular person, this is just your normal work week day. If you're in between classes or whatever the fuck you're doing. Watching these assholes get lit on fire publicly is going to be entertainment for everybody. And we're going to find out how fucked up it is. But especially we're going to find out how this happened. Where was he getting the kids from? Who was supplying the children? Is there a connection to uh, Rainier's sex cult? <laughs> like, is this 
could this is this like one of those things where it's like one domino f or one domino falls and others fall? Are we going to find out there are multiple sex cults and trafficking rings operating different geographical locations across the country, all headed up by rich, influential people, and they're all interconnected, and it's like a trading ring between all of them? I mean, if you had said that before, people would be like, oh, that's a conspiracy theory, that's insane. Well, look where we are today. I mean, who knows? In another two months, maybe they name somebody else. <laughs> maybe we're going to have like a fucking uh, a sex trafficking triad. You got the East Coast and the West Coast. They'll be somewhere in the South or the North. Who fucking knows? Crazy shit. Absolutely insane. Uh, streams cutting out, somebody in chat said. I, I mean, it's showing me green right now. It's giving me uh, a decent bit rate. I've got the settings where they wanted me to do it with the key frame interval at like 2. I don't have it set too high. It should be like 720p max, I believe. Uh, it should be coming in. Okay, I don't know. Chat, you want to give me... Oh, wait, is there There is a way to do a pull over here, isn't there? Uh, the stream? No, there's not. God damn it, I missed that function from streaming. I don't know. Uh, chat, is the stream working well for you or not? Uh, next time when I do another stream on Monday, or Wednesday, I will adjust settings if it's being shitty. Uh, people, it hasn't cut out. It's okay at the moment. It's fine. Works for me. All right. I'm going to guess then you've got a shitty internet connection to the guy that was saying it was cutting out. Or maybe it's mobile. I know a lot of people say trying to watch DLive on mobile is like pulling fucking teeth. It's impossible. So I, I guess try desktop uh, or, uh, you know, an ethernet connection. All right, it, it seems to be fine. Okay. Yeah, I tried to get the settings adjusted so it's not it's not too shitty. So it, it, it just runs. I mean, it's mostly audio. Well, I mean, let's be honest. We're not watching videos, really, today. We're talking about Mr. Epstein's wild ride through the federal prison system. <laughs> and uh, his, his journey to big boy prison. Aside from that, though, I mean, it's not, you know, not a lot of things going on. Okay. Oh, what was the other thing? There was a, there was one other thing I wanted to talk about today on our, our first initial little live stream test over on DLive in the mornings. Oh, oh yeah, here we go. Afro Future Fest. And this is some interesting shit. So these geniuses decided to put together a music uh, get-together, an event, up in Detroit, because who doesn't want to go to a fucking musical concert in Detroit? Obviously the safest place in the world to go listen to music at midnight with drunk people around you. When I think security in the evening, I think Detroit. So Afro Future Fest decides to put together an event, hosted it on Eventbrite, and decided they were going to charge different prices based on skin color. So if you're black, you pay $10. If you're white, you pay $20. Listed it, you know, just right out, right, right on the main page. You know, coincidentally, fun little fact, uh, against federal law to do that, <laughs> you, can't, you can't charge different rates based on protected classes like ethnicity or race and they uh, they said well we don't fucking care fuck you fuck you whitey <laughs> you're gonna pay us double and this, this story only really broke people only really noticed it because some one of the I guess performers little jag <laughs> I don't fucking know is biracial and somebody told her and she's like oh I'm not gonna go to a concert and play for them if they're gonna charge because she has a white mother <laughs> who saw that coming uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go to a concert that would charge my mother more than my father. That seems fucking retarded, and pulled out of it. Now Eventbrite is trying to put pressure on them, saying, "Well, you can't use our service to sell your tickets if you're going to illegally charge people money based on their skin color." And they've kind of got. They've gone quiet. They're not out there anymore, yelling at people and telling them uh, what they have been telling them for the past week or so that you don't understand your privilege. And that you need to pay more money, Whitey. Watching the reaction to this was real fascinating. Especially in the comment section of any thread that was discussing it uh, on any social media platform, really. Lots of discussion about equity being more important than equality. I haven't really seen this discussion play itself out to this degree until this stupid fucking event. But lots of blue check marks appearing out of nowhere, especially on Twitter, to remind people... That there was this thing called slavery, I guess. I don't know. I've never heard of it before. But as they've told me, black people used to pick cotton. And so somehow that translates into charging white people $10 more to listen to shitty music in Detroit 
at midnight on August 3rd. And when people said, hey, this kind of sounds like racism, they said, no, it's equity. Oh, black people have suffered so much you don't understand. And the only way to make it right is to charge you $10 more at the shitty Detroit Music Festival. You stupid white motherfucker. I, I, you know, I'm trying to imagine the inverse of this. I'm trying to imagine like a country music festival, like headlining, I don't know, fucking Garth Brooks, or I, I, that's about the only name in country music I can really think of. <laughs> I don't know much about country music, but whatever. Fucking Garth Brooks pulls himself out of the grave, digs himself out of his own fucking career coffin, and heads up a country music festival, and then they charge black people $20 and charge whitey 10 There'd be fucking riots in the street. I don't think you could say... I don't know how you'd swing it as an equity argument. Maybe you could. <laughs> you had a bunch of Latinos in the comments, too, saying, What about us? Asians, what about us? What What's our rate? Where do we fall? Are we black? Are we minority? <laughs> are we paying white rates here? How does that fucking work? Uh, POC tickets, oh, persons of color tickets, of course, were sold out. So you had to buy, you had to buy the whitey tickets. Now, I've noticed that after Eventbrite warned them and said, hey, what you're doing is illegal and we're going to pull your fucking event off our hub and not sell your tickets, that all of a sudden, all these split price tickets disappeared. They didn't get pulled down, they were sold out. So it seems like that's their way of trying to get around this. They're not even going to address it. They're just going to be like, well, the, the black and white tickets sold out. Now you can just buy a general admissions ticket for $20 and we'll leave it at that. Oh, Peeny Weeny. Hey, it's me, Gator. Hi, Gator. <laughs> Did you bring your soundboard with you? Oh, I know. The Afro, the, the Afro Future Fest really isn't that big of a story. It's just stupid. It's fucking stupid that there'd be a Detroit music festival that thought they could be so up their own ass they could get away with that. It's Detroit. <laughs> Is there anything going on in that city aside from rape and murder? <laughs> you know, like, what's Its neighborhoods are desolate. <clears throat> it makes Gary, Indiana look like a thriving fucking metropolis. I don't think you could really push people away like that, Detroit. I don't think you really thought it through very well. It's not even hot outside, apparently Chad is telling me. That's very true. It's not even hot outside. I love, I love that sound clip. I don't, it's something about the way he says it. It's just really, it's amusing to me. I don't know, it's the tone of his voice or the way he, like he staccatos it, he like stutters it. It's just, I don't know how to explain it. It just makes me chuckle. Uh, Jim, you're forgetting that JF was paid by Epstein for a startup. Wait, was what? JF was paid by Jeffrey Epstein? How? How would Jeffrey Epstein even know who JF Gierpe is? <laughs> is there any evidence of that? Please tell me that JF didn't brag about Jeffrey Epstein paying him money. Now that Jeffrey Epstein is at the trial of a child, in the middle of a child trafficking case. People are saying that's true? Fuck off. <laughs> he admitted it? JF got a grant from a pedophile billionaire? <laughs> $20,000! Are you sure he wasn't joking around, chat? That sounds like something... That sounds like a joke. <laughs> that sounds like something he would joke about. JF said it was moral to take the money. He made an episode about it? Did he really? Let me see if I can find this. How do you get money from Jeffrey Epstein? Uh, okay, let me see if I can find it. If anybody has it, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm looking for. Well, this is right wing watch. I don't know if that's necessarily the most accurate source for a story on this. It says white nationalist YouTuber says Jeffrey Epstein once gave him $25,000. I don't know if I want to use their take on this. Uh, this is from 2018. All right, let's see what it says. Looks like there's a link to a tweet. Let's see if we can just find the actual... Uh, no, that account's suspended, so I can't even see what that is. 
All right, this is a quote. Now, again, this is right wing watch, so I, I, I don't know if you want to take it for truth or not, but this is what they say in the article. Jeff Epstein, who we're talking about here, was an original funder of my YouTube channel, Gearpy said. Now it's not that I give a shit about this guy. Okay, he got arrested after, and the fact that he donated to my channel at the very beginning of my YouTube career does not influence me. I'm not trying to find Jeffrey Epstein innocent and in what he's been accused of. Uh, Gearpy continues, I may never have talked about it, but Jeffrey Epstein has given me has given $25,000 to my foundation in the U.S. when I started my YouTube career. As a Jewish millionaire, I think he didn't expect my channel to turn out the way it did. Now, those are allegedly direct quotes. I don't, I've never heard of this. <laughs> He's saying Jeffrey Epstein paid him $25,000 to start his YouTube channel. Fucking what? What foundation? <laughs> what history am I missing here? Hey, listen, guys, just full disclosure, you know that billionaire pedophile that's in the news right now for sex trafficking and sex cults? Yeah, he wrote me a check for $25,000, patted me on the shoulder and said, I got a good feeling about you. I got a good feeling about where this channel's going. Here's $25,000, kid. You get out there and you red pill those kids about race. Holy shit. What what foundation is he talking about? I I wish there was more to this. What uh, Okay, is this like some is this an educational thing? Is he talking about something different? What are we talking about? Uh Andy has it on his channel in the series on JF. I don't want to watch his fucking series on it. Okay. All right, we okay, somebody sent me a video clip. The twisted mind of JFK. I'm not watching that. I, I see people are linking me to the to the Andy Worski video, which is 40 minutes long. Okay, we got a time code. All right, let me take a look at the time code. What's Richard take on your Epstein donation? Uh, did you watch my yesterday show? Richard? I didn't, I'm sorry. Okay, because I announced that uh, I, I, j just for uh, transparency, because I was talking about the news item about Jeff Epstein, and I announced that oh, yes, God. Jeff Epstein has once contributed to the start of my YouTube channel with a $25,000 check. Holy shit! <laughs> Richard Spencer's face! His eyes grew like two times their normal size when <laughs> Jeff said that! <laughs> Spencer got this look on his face like he, he felt like he fell off a tree or something and hit his head. Okay, let me let me show you this look. Hey, Richard, I just wanted to tell you that pedophile Jewish billionaire gave me some money. <laughs> all right, uh, all right, where is it here? Let me let me uh, let me see if I can just show you what his face looked like. It's amusing to me, so let me let me show you. Talking about the news item about Jeff Epstein, and I announced that oh, yes, God. Jeff Epstein has once contributed to the start of my YouTube channel with a twenty-five thousand dollar check. And you see that it's like he's processing it; it's just slowly hitting him. He's like, "Wait a minute, what? <laughs> what? I missed? What did you say?" Holy shit! I, I want to listen. I'll listen to the rest of it. I, I we don't need to see the video. I don't think. Well, we'll hear what what he has to say. I, this sounds like a bizarre story, so I'm curious how JF met Jeffrey Epstein. I guess that since then my YouTube channel has kind of taken a different direction, and people were scandalized. They were like, "JF is an agent of a Jewish millionaire rapist." <laughs> and as he's I he's that person you were joking, I presume. No, no, I'm not joking. This is real. Uh, Jeff Epstein. Oh, his look again. All right, you know what? Yeah, the looks are great. I'm still torn on this. I think JF might be fucking around. <laughs> I don't know. But we'll we'll take a look at Richard's reaction. You're joking, right? No, I'm serious. <laughs> he gives him this look like, dude. All right. Uh, I'll pull it up. We'll do full screen, chat. Uh, let's let's take a look. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, move it a little more. There we are. 
the $25,000 check and that since then my YouTube channel has kind of taken a different direction and people were scandalized. They were like, JF is an agent of a Jewish millionaire rapist. <laughs> and as it, I He's that person, you were joking, I presume. No, no, I'm not joking. Th this is real. Uh... <laughs> that fucking look is great. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Richard, welcome to the show. Jeff Epstein was a founder to uh, one of my nonprofits in the U.S. with a twenty-five thousand dollar check uh, in two thousand fifteen, I believe. Wow. Um, <laughs> this is the Jeffrey Epstein who has like a pedophile island or something, and yeah, is yeah, yeah. Clinton. Well, at backer? the time, he was not. He had not been found guilty, I believe, of. The you see that head shake? <laughs> Richard's having a real hard time computing this. Let's back that up just a little bit. 15, I believe. Wow. Um, <laughs> this is the Jeffrey Epstein who has like a pedophile island or something. And yeah, is yeah, it yeah. Clinton? Well, at backer? the time, he was not, he had not been found guilty, I believe, of this yet. But there were, there were <laughs> allegations coming out in the media. But I didn't care. I mean, to me, if you hate pedoph pedophiles, you should want to take the money out of their bank account and put it in other people's bank accounts. So from a moral perspective, I was totally fine with that. Oh, I, I get no... that argument. But but if but the the implication of someone donating money is that, you know, the uh, the you, you pay the piper, you get to call the tune. And so uh, but. It, well, not this was always. a conditionless donation because it was an mm -hmm. educational show that I had, Neuro TV. And so to me, to me, hmm. it was no problem. And I've talked to the media back then. Okay, it was an educational show. So I'm, I'm guessing the foundation he's talking about was related to something else. It's just weird that the quote they pulled said that it was for the, uh, the start of his YouTube channel. But it sounds like it was for something separate. I mean, in the article that they did on Epstein, they talked about how he was a known philanthropist, quote-unquote, and would donate to a lot of people. Like, he was sending out money to a shitload of organizations. So, I mean, I guess conceivably, <laughs> JF's was one of them. That is fucking weird. I Maybe I've heard this before? I don't remember hearing about this. Chat, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I've never... I guess uh, JF's the first person I know that got money from a pedophile billionaire. <laughs> billionaire. It's uh, check that off the bucket list. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it aside from that. Holy shit! It's moral to take the money. Oh, it's unsealed. People are saying it's been unsealed. Let's go take a look. Let's go take a look at Mr. Epstein's wild ride. All right, just updated. Let's see if uh, where is it here. Uh, okay, do you know where it's on... Ah, oh, Jesus, it's going to be one of those, isn't it? All right, let's see if we can find it. Uh, shit, shit, shit. Uh, if anybody in chat has, a, like, a link. Okay, documents, here we go. Jeffrey Epstein charged with two counts of trafficking... All right, this is live. Okay, so from nine... F okay, so this is just uh, just recently. A new indictment against Jeffrey Epstein, the, wife, or the wealthy financier and erstwhile friend of luminaries including Bill Clinton, Donald Trump, Prince Andrew, and others has just been unsealed in New York. Okay, let's see what it says. Epstein faces two counts of uh, sex trafficking uh, and sex trafficking conspiracy for alleged encounters between 2002 and 2005. Epstein is being prosecuted in the Southern District of New York. He avoided a prison sentence on similar charges. Don't care about that. Let's see. Uh, White House has not commented. Where is the actual... Uh, okay, if this person's covering it, maybe they've got more details. Uh, waiting in clerk's office for the indictment to get unsealed in a tense as last scene of The Sopranos. Okay. All right, but they're not... They haven't updated anything for 35 minutes. It just says two counts, but it's not going into any details aside from that. Okay, uh, hold on, chat. Let me Let me find it. Uh, 
Oh yeah, people keep linking me to the Guardian. I mean that's that's fine, but the newest update that I'm seeing, unless there, oh maybe there are more. Ah uh, no. Okay. Well, here, here's some of the talking heads talking about it. It's unusual and notable that the SDNY's public corruption unit is on the Epstein case. I keep thinking back to 2008 when I was in the SDNY, and public corruption was on a seemingly routine interstate prostitution case. Turned out then New York governor, Elliot Spitzer, was client number nine. And then from somebody else, I've known Jeff for 15 years. Terrific guy. Oh, that's a quote from Donald Trump from 2002. They're going to throw that one at him every day. Okay, well, yeah, where the fuck is the exact details, though? Oh, they're taking their goddamn time with this. Well, let me see if I can find the newest news result. Uh, let's see. By date. Okay, here's one four minutes ago. Okay, th this looks like it was just updated. Let's see if we got new information here. Again, two charges of sex trafficking. Oh, uh, let's see. And conspiracy to commit sex trafficking, he's expected, uh, and he expected more superseding indictments would be added. Uh, Boy said both the public corruption unit and the sex trafficking unit in New York are working on the investigation. Uh, this is an important first step. Hopefully prosecutors will focus on some of uh, his co-conspirators going forward. Who is this coming from? Who's, who's saying this? Okay, that's just one of the talking heads. Uh, one, in law, one law enforcement official told the Associated Press the case deals with allegations that Epstein paid underage girls for massages and molested them at his homes in Florida and New York. Epstein, who was once counted. Okay, we've got that. Still waiting for more details. All right, so as it stands, at least from the information that's out there, he's got sex trafficking and conspiracy to commit sex trafficking charges hanging over his head. Uh, somebody in one of the earlier articles had said up to 45 years in prison for these particular particular ones. But uh, here's what I'm confused about. If it's saying that the two charges against them right now are just for sex trafficking, but it's also alleging in the stories that are they're covering that um, he molested children, shouldn't he be charged with that as well? Like, why is it just these two charges? That I guess that's what I'm confused about. There should be more. Okay, indictment, Jeffrey Epstein worked and conspired with others, including employees and associates. <laughs> They're going to go for it, aren't they? This isn't going to just be Jeffrey Epstein. They're legit going to go for it. They want to take other people down. That's why the corruption unit's involved. This reaches into government. Somebody somewhere during this investigation found out powerful people <clears throat> facilitated and were associated with the sex trafficking of children and the molestation of children. And they're going to use Epstein as a wedge, as leverage to go after them. This is going to get fucking interesting. This is going to get real fucking interesting. A whole lot of gym accidents coming in? While there might be barbells falling from the sky, I'll be honest with you, chat. I, I don't see this guy surviving long. I Listen, what do you think is going to happen to this putz? Do you think he's really going to... His only chance at getting out of this without 40 years in prison or a barbell falling on his head is to start talking now. He has to know that. He has to know that. There's no way he doesn't know that. The question is, is he stupid enough to try to ride it out, or is he going to roll over and give them what they want? How long is he going to play cat and mouse with federal prosecutors? I don't know. This is going to be a wild ride, though. <laughs> God, I wonder if if uh, Gierpe got a $25,000 donation. How many hats has Mr. Epstein bought? Mr. Epstein, how many of my hats did you buy? <laughs> if you bought any, please burn them. Jesus. His private jet will crash? That's a potential. There's always a potential for an accidental air crash to happen for poor Mr. Epstein. Uh, what did that say? Uh, give who what they want, though. Uh, well, Domina, uh, this is what I think is happening. I think investigators <clears throat> were included in this case 
I think they looked into it and they saw that there were probably some interesting names attached to it. And I think they see that Epstein is at the center of it. And I think that federal prosecutors and the government, or at least as part of the government, uh, will go leniently on him. Uh, not this, t- you know, not like the last time where it was a slap on the wrist just because he was wealthy and connected. I think they'll go leniently on him this time. If he gives them names of corrupt officials, uh, people within the financial sector, people within Hollywood, I, it's just, it's the fact that corruption units involved that I find so interesting. I mean, maybe it's something on a smaller scale, sure. Maybe, maybe some local police chief that was involved in the first investigation uh, fucked some kid. I don't know. Maybe Epstein was the one that supplied that kid, and that's why the corruption unit's involved. But it, it's just, there's something, there's more to this. Now that they're saying associates and employees were involved, that means that more people, the more people that are involved outside of just Epstein means more people having a potential to talk. More people having a potential not just to talk about Epstein himself, but about people that he associates with. I, again, Virginia Roberts named Prince fucking Andrew as one of the people that she alleges was involved in this. And how many pictures have we all seen of Jeffrey Epstein posing with famous politicians or famous uh, uh, wealthy entrepreneurs or uh, celebrities? I, there's no telling who's fucking connected to this. I mean, goddamn, Allison Mack, a Smallville actress, was involved with the Nixium uh, sex cult, with Rainier's sex cult. You would never what, like it's a weird thought. Why would an actress be involved in some Canadian con artist sex cult? But she was. So who fucking knows who Epstein has involved with this shit? Uh, somebody in chat, Ted, saying the Clintons will never let him speak, or if he does, they won't let him get uh, won't let it get out. He'll be killed, and this will be buried. Well, it's, uh, oh, somebody's, what, is, what do we got here? We got some more breaking information. Let's see what we got. Uh, here we are. Thank you. Somebody in chat linked me. Uh, detail. Federal prosecutors want to seize Epstein's New York mansion. Uh-oh. For, <laughs> oh, here we go. They're going to take everything from this motherfucker. Oh, JF, you better go delete the fact he donated money to you. They're, <laughs> they're going to come and try to get that 25 k from you. Forfeiture allegations. As a result of committing the offense alleged in count two of this indictment, Jeffrey Epstein, the defendant, shall forfeit to the United States, pursuant to Title 18, any property, real and personal, that was used or intended to be used to commit or to facilitate the commission of an offense alleged in count two. The lot or parcel of land, together with its buildings, apertures, improvements, fixtures, attachments, and estimates, or easements, Located at 9th East 71st Street, New York, New York, with block number 1386 and lot number 10, owned by me. They're going to take his house. (laughs) They're going to take his mansions in Florida and New York, and they're going to take his fucking plane, too. Oh, Jeff. Oh, it's a bad day to be you, buddy. Over the course of many years, the defendant Jeffrey Epstein sexually exploited and abused dozens of of minor girls at his homes in Manhattan, New York, and Palm Beach, Florida, among other locations. If they seize every property related to the uh, to the committing of these offenses, and they're saying it's not just New York and Florida, but other locations, <laughs> they're gonna take they're gonna take his mansions, they're gonna take his plane, and they're gonna take his fucking island too. Oh, that's a way to get a motherfucker to talk. Listen, Jeff. We're taking everything you own, all right? You may win this case. (laughs) You may come out with a plea deal, but we're going to take all your shit. Now, if you were to name somebody, on the other hand, maybe we'll let you keep a house in New York. Maybe we'll let you keep your house in Florida, Jeff. Somebody's saying they can seize his properties and use the money from the sale of it to build the wall. Jeff, we sold your island to build a couple miles of wall along the Mexican border. Thank you for your service. Holy shit. Yeah, I, people are linking the full indictment now. I'm just watching as the uh, the coverage of this comes out in real time. Oh, Jeffrey, it is not a good day for you. 14-page indictment. 
Uh, yeah, alleging multiple girls were victimized, alleging that he was involved in the uh, running of a sex ring, facilitating basically child prostitution. They want to take his fucking property. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, he's going to be so mad. I don't even... What's the valuation? Does anybody know how much Epstein's mansions are worth? How much is that private island worth? I mean, he's a billionaire, but... What, what is that billionaire status based on? Is it all his holdings? Is his land counted as that? <laughs> like, this dude, this dude just went from a billionaire to a millionaire, right? Like, the, he's lost a level of prestige because they're taking all his shit. They're going to take your plane, Jeff. They're going to take your child fucking fun bus plane right away from you. No more sex island for you, Jeffrey. Your mansions are coming to the government, Jeff. You're going to have to molest kids out of a Motel 6 when we're done with you, Jeffrey. We're taking all your shit. Oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm reading more details, chat. I'm sorry. Consequences will never be the same. Yeah. Jeffrey is uh, about to have bad, bad time. Yeah, that's uh, the person reporting about the forfeiture, at least the one that was linked, was Adam Klasfeld, uh, which I guess is a car, courthouse news verified. So I mean, I'll take his word that he's not just pulling it out of his ass. Isn't that neat? Sure is. Yeah, it sure is neat. Poor Jeffrey. He used to own a private island, but he had to diddle kids. <laughs> now he's living. Now he's living in a, a fucking uh, super, uh, super eight motel. Oh, poor, poor little Jeffrey. He used to be a billionaire. He used to be so rich, Jeffrey. And they took all your shit. Uh, people saying Trump's anti-trafficking order. He's going to have a colon accident in jail? Oh, I, I guarantee you he's going to have a few accidents. Oh, I bet he's screaming right now. Put yourself... Let me, <laughs> let me put his fucking picture... It is up. Good. Jeffrey Epstein. Look at that face. This dude is screaming his fucking head off right now. I bet he's throwing shit at his lawyers. I bet he's kicking over furniture. How could they do this to me? I'm Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> oh, I, I wonder if they're doing this to bait him, right? Let's make him as fucking angry as we can. We'll tell him we're going to take all this shit. Because now Jeff is going to sit down with his lawyers and he'll be like, I don't want them taking all my shit. Let's pull out the blackmail tapes. Let's pull out the tapes of all the famous, powerful people that I watched fuck children and will hand them over in exchange for my private kitty fucking island. Oh, <laughs> Jeffrey. Dark days ahead for you, my friend. Ah, oh, what a morning. What a great day. You know, I mean, this guy got away with it last time. That bullshit 13-month sentence where he only had to show up for eight hours a day to jail for the crimes that he was charged with, that was crap. Acosta's an idiot. And the fact that he got a deal like that was ridiculous. I don't think they're playing around this time. <laughs> I don't think these people are fucking around this time. This isn't going to be a slap on the wrist, hey, you're rich, you're powerful, you're elite, you're one of us, we're going to let you get away with it. I think they want to make him an example. And I think they want him to name some fucking names. And they're going to apply as much pressure as they can to get that to happen. All about that money? I don't even know what you'd value a private island at. <laughs> but I'm sure they'll find a way to put a sticker on it. Oh, do you think Alan Dershowitz is going to represent him again? That's the lawyer, the Harvard professor that uh, Virginia Roberts alleged was part of this, who represented him the last time he went to trial. Is it possible she'll go to trial with him, or he'll go to trial with him again? Maybe. Oh, I bet you... I bet you Jeffrey right now is calling in every favor he's got. He's calling up every motherfucker he ever did something dirty with. And is like, listen, you better give me favorable coverage on this or you're going down with me, buddy. Uh, what is it saying? Uh, somebody chat, all the influencers? Who the fuck are the influencers? Are saying... Let the chips fall where they fall, Dems or Republicans. 
I, I have no sympathy for Jeffrey Epstein, nor with the people that associate with him. Uh, <laughs> if you're involved in this, uh, your time is up. Oh, God, I, you know, it's one of those things, too. Going forward, here, here's what I'd say to chat. If you, wanna, if you want a good laugh to find out who's really scared about this, <clears throat> for the next two weeks, just pay attention to the really rich, influential people in Hollywood politics and in finance. And just see which ones of them decide to go on an extended vacation out of the U.S. I'm going to call it right now that in the next two weeks, there are going to be a lot of people that suddenly decide they want to go take a trip to a country that doesn't have an extradition treaty with the United States government. <laughs> a lot of motherfuckers are going to be enjoying the beautiful coast of, I don't know, Africa. I don't know what countries don't have extradition treaties with the U.S., but I imagine they're going to be going there for a while. <laughs> Somebody said Tarantino. Yeah, other people were saying Spielberg. Who knows? Who knows where they're going to go? Ah, uh, yes, the beautiful country of Zimbabwe. Who doesn't want to live in the luscious land of Zimbabwe with no food? <laughs> it sounds like paradise. Uh, Ukraine, uh, listen, you know, those Eastern Europeans, they may have their political issues uh, going on right now, but I'm fairly certain they don't want a bunch of expats that are pedophiles hanging out in their country, especially like the Ukrainians and the Russians. Like, that's the last place you want to go if that's a crime you committed. They'll beat you to death with a brick. <laughs> you don't want to go to those countries. They're not going to tolerate your shit. Oh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, pay attention. Pay attention to famous, powerful people and see who runs. They're not going to say they're running. They're just going to say, oh, I'm going to go on a vacation. Or it'll be some, like, Hollywood report story. Oh, famous director decides to go on a five-month African vacation. Or, you know, famous banker decides to go to uh, Hong Kong for the next three years. Or politician resigns to spend time with family, decides to move to South America. Just look for those stories over the next couple of weeks. Because I'm going to guarantee that most of those are going to be related to this. Uh, someone in chat, all of Hollywood relocates to Thailand. <laughs> That's going to be a boom for Thailand, I guess. Oh, chat. Yeah, let me, I'm going to post a little dancing pudding. There we go. A little dancing pudding to celebrate, celebrate their world collapsing on them. <laughs> Bill Clinton has a mysterious heart attack. It's a potential. It's a Thaiwood. Is that what they're going to call it? Thaiwood? Potentially. That'll be the new name of the location. Oh, hey, what do you know? Half of Hollywood relocated to Thailand to uh, film a new movie for the next three years. Uh, who saw that coming? Oh, it's got 14 different directors and 82 producers. Well, that's weird, but okay. Oh, we'll, we will definitely chat. We will definitely follow up with this on Wednesday. Uh, now, like I said, this week I'm just testing out different times. I think going forward I'm going to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I just don't know exactly what start time in the morning. So maybe maybe it's 8 o'clock like today was. Maybe it'll be 6 o'clock like Wednesday or 4 o'clock like Friday. I don't know 100%. But uh, the next little morning stream will be on Wednesday. It'll be 6 p.m. my time, so 7 p. or I'm sorry, 6 a.m. my time, so 7 a.m. Eastern. Uh, Wednesday morning and it, as far as like I don't have a lot of features on this fucking account uh, like replays and shit they, they tell me they keep them for seven days and then they delete them I don't know if there's a way for me to make them keep them longer I'll look into it uh, but I guess if you miss a stream you've got seven days to watch it before DLive takes it down uh, that's what their little pop up tells me every time I, I, I go to look at replays and shit um, I, yeah, I think that covers it for today I mostly was just really fascinated by the fact that Jeffrey Epstein is going to... His comeuppance are coming. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein's going to lose all his property. Jeffrey Epstein's going to be living in the gutter or in a federal prison facility for the next 40 years. And a lot of famous, powerful people are probably 
really fucking upset right now. And that's fantastic. I, I hope they all get what's coming to them. And I hope it's a big, glorious public shit show that we can watch unfold. And I'm going to laugh if that Nixium cult and that sex trafficking case is somehow related to this. Because that Nixium shit involves celebrities too. And if Epstein involves... It could be it could be a grand case. Who knows what where it's going to go. What twists and turns it's going to take. We'll find out. I'll follow up with this on Wednesday. Uh, on Wednesday... I've got some fun shit planned, uh, so we'll we'll watch some stuff. Uh, kind of on the tier of that IGN dating show, so I have a good laugh in the morning. I know this is a bit heavier than the normal morning shit that I would do over on Streamy, but it, it's just watching Epstein get what's coming to him is, how could you not want to talk about it? How, how could I avoid talking about Mr. Epstein's wild ride that he's looking forward to? Uh, have a good morning, chat. I will see you on Wednesday. What song am I going to play out with? I don't even know. I haven't really even thought about this. Let me find something. Something that you'll all equally hate. Oh, can I find some hardcore rap music? I know you guys love that shit. Uh, let's see. Let's see. What can we do? What can we do to take us out? Oh, one moment, chat. Wholly unprepared for this. Uh, can I find some more weep shit? Oh, maybe some more weep shit. Uh, no, no. Let's let's find something good. Uh, where are we here? Oh, is this that? <laughs> this might have been the song I used for Monday Matt's uh, uh for that Monday Matt suicide clip. Let me see if this is uh. There we go. Well, good morning, chat. How is your how is your Wednesday treating you today? I see a lot of dancing puddings going by, which is always a good sign. It's a good sign the day's off to a nice start. I have to uh, admit, I don't think I like this time slot. Uh, Jimmy's a little too tired. He's a little too sleepy. It was so much easier over at streaming. I could be streaming at 3 in the morning and it wouldn't bother me. Over here, it's, oh my god. I feel like I need at least eight cups of Folgers to fucking keep myself awake. I've been so involved, so invested. I try to keep up with the Monkey Jones shit after uh, hearing somebody give me a summary and watching 84 fucking hours of video footage about it. I'm trying to get caught up on the twists and turns of that shit. I just haven't had a lot of time to do anything else. It's like watching a slow motion train wreck trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. It's a wild fucking story. Not necessarily something I'm going to cover over here. Everybody else seems to be talking about it. I think I'm just going to sit back and be one of the passive audience members watching that debacle unfold as everybody else throws in their hot takes on it. <laughs> Mumkey, Mumkey cucked by a child, somebody in chat said. Well, yeah, I, I've, I, I got the basic outline. Somebody gave me a basic outline on Twitter yesterday. Because it's been like a four-month thing, and there's so many videos, it's like eight hours of source material. Trying to keep up with that shit's impossible. Especially if you've only been paying kind of half attention to it. I mean, uh, my familiarity with it was kind of knowing that he got um, deplatformed by uh, Susan Wojcicki, however you pronounce her name. Uh, but that was back in like December. And then there was some, uh, some back and forth in a relationship. There was some... Uh, free artists involved, <laughs> some teen boy involved. But I hadn't really given it the closest of attention. But everybody, every once in a while, like every two or three weeks, somebody keeps sending me a new fucking video related to it. They call, what do you think of this? I don't fucking know, man. I'm so far behind on it. It is its own self-contained soap opera. You miss a few episodes of that shit, and you jump in midstream, you don't know what you're dealing with. Suddenly, suddenly, you're, suddenly somebody's twin sister from another marriage turns out to be a witch living in the same suburbs and you didn't know it. Oh my god. And if you were paying attention to the last five episodes, you're fucked. You're way behind on the plot. So basically, I'm lobotomy? Well, I don't, I don't know about that. I'm not 100% certain about that. 
Yes, apparently Mumkey released a, a new video yesterday. I think it was the day before. It's the most recent one. I I don't know. It's it's hard for me to sit that. It's a lot of investment. It's hard for me to want to sit down and and watch uh, an hour and a half of anything really without knowing the backstory. I've been watching bits and pieces here and there, especially after reading that that summary. After hearing that summary, I don't even know how accurate that summary is. Let me see if I can find that summary. Let me share that summary with you, and you can make your own judgment on it. <laughs> because somebody went to the the effort of trying to explain to my retarded ass what has been going on. Uh, where are we here? Uh, this is the cliff notes, as told by the odd guy. Easy peasy. Uh, this is how they outline the events. I don't know how accurate it is. I have no reason to believe they'd lie to me. Why would they do that? They're a good boy. So, here we are. Uh, this is the stated uh, timeline of events, apparently. Mumpy's, er, <laughs> Mumpkey's, Mumpkey's girlfriend made him socialize with his fans. Apparently he was a bit of an introvert, so forced him to go out there. He cheated on her with the first girl he talked to. <laughs> I guess that's one way to come out of your shell. Uh, you start out and you're not very social. You don't really know how to interact with people. Suddenly you're just the first person you talk to, I love you. I've never talked to another person in public before my life. Marry me. So apparently, just from zero to 60 like that, uh, told the girl he loved her <laughs> and is only with with sheep for her money. I, I think sheep is the, that's the original girl. I mean, they're, it, <laughs> I don't, maybe they all have barnyard animal names. I don't know. Sheep, sheep, over. Is that it? I don't know. Uh, this girl, apparently the one he decided to uh, to go for, you know. Uh, this girl is a cub porn artist who groomed and fucked a 15-year-old. Again, this is a summary I'm reading from. An ex-friend who was mad at him for banning him from Discord exposed the whole thing. Then uh, Mumkey and Sheep broke up. Mumkey moved away, bought a house, and got on antidepressants. These are, these are all very big life decisions to all be hitting you one after the other. Hey, I'm going to leave my long-term relationship. I'm going to date this uh, uh, this furry artist, I guess. Cub porn artist, sorry. Uh, then I'm going to buy a house and get on some antidepressants. Let's just throw it all in there. Let's have a baby, too, while we're at it. Let's make it fucking complicated. Uh, makes videos antagonizing his fans and telling them he doesn't give a fuck. Moves in with the uh, cub furry uh, artist chick. Uh, alienates all his friends. Uh, this is, I guess, this is where we're getting caught up to the current right now. Uh, it says, uh, Pedo chooses to leave him for the 15-year-old she groomed. Uh, he semi-proposes to her so she'd stay with him. Uh, and then the random details that are listed. There's a sex tape out there somewhere. Oh, fingers crossed. Worked out well for Pro Jared. Well, that was just a picture. This is a tape. And apparently the cub furry artist seems insane. Wonder how he came into that conclusion. Seems insane and even accused him of raping her at one point. Oh, it sounds like the perfect storm, doesn't it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Again, uh, like I said, bits and pieces, right? I, I just remember, oh yeah, there's uh, the monkey mask guy that got, <laughs> got deplatformed by Susan. He had some, some shit going on with his uh, personal life. Maybe there was like some fight between him and his girlfriend and another woman was involved. Uh, FNGRFN element OP? I don't know what his fucking name is. Some brony did a stream where he got the, uh, the cub artist on and talked about uh, her banging, banging some kid. So I guess that's related to all of this. I, it, it's a clusterfuck of a lot of shit to go through. So I'm thankful for the, <laughs> for the fucking summary. So I could kind of start to watch a little bit here and there to see what the what the hell's going on. I don't know, man. This is some crazy shit. It's like a telenovela, though, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how this one flew under the radar for me, at least. I'm sure a lot of other people have been paying attention to it. Not, not really over here. Ah, uh, yes, chat. FNGR is still a thing. Apparently, somehow he got an exclusive Discord interview. And uh, they did a video. There's some funny clips that came from that, too. 
talking about calling the police, uh, getting the police involved. Uh, I think at one point she said something like, <laughs> what did she say? She said something like, well, in the state of Arkansas, you can't arrest a woman for banging kids. <laughs> so <laughs> That's a law. There's that sound clips out there somewhere. A lot of crazy shit in that conversation. Again, I watched bits and pieces of that too. It feels like there's a whole story to this. Like it'd be on its own little two-hour epic TV miniseries. Well, I guess it wouldn't be a TV miniseries if it was only two hours long, but you get the point. Yeah, people saying, watch Mr. Meat Man's video. Again, that was another one uh, that people had linked before, uh, saying, hey, if you want to get caught up on this, be sure to check this video out. Again, that's, a, that's another hour investment. I mean, you figure if you're just jumping into it, you've got Mr. Meat Man's video, you got like two or three other summary videos, you got at least two to three videos from Mumkey. Uh, you've got the FNGR thing with the, the interview in the Discord. That, that all adds up to like roughly eight to nine hours. Eight to nine hours of just raw video slash streaming. It's a lot of shit to go through. I've kind of, kind of uh, been tuned out of it. Besides, I'm paying attention to Epstein. Why would I not watch our boy Epstein and his uh, egg-shaped penis? <laughs> and the destruction that's going on with that. You know, in fact, let's... Uh, let me pull that clip up. Apparently, apparently our multi-billionaire who likes to uh, run and uh, facilitate the running of Kitty Fuck Island. I don't know what he calls it. What does he call his island of uh, degeneracy? I know he calls his fucking plane the Lolita Express. I don't know what he calls his goddamn island, though. Uh, but apparently, when he was going through a deposition for the last time, uh, they got to ask him all sorts of questions, one which he wasn't very happy about. Oh, wait, but the volume on this one might not... Hold on one second, let me just check something. Do you solemnly swear to test... Okay, we'll see if I, I think I can audio boost that. All right, uh, one second, chat. Let me, let me just get this pulled up. I think you'll enjoy this. Uh, get rid of that. Okay, just adjust a few things here. So Epstein gets called in for a deposition. They get to talk to him. <coughs> and what, what question do they decide to lead with? You know, what? we've got this guy, this guy who's notorious that uh, allegedly did all these terrible things. What question should we open up with? I know. Let's talk about his dick. <laughs> Let's sit him down and talk about his egg-shaped penis. Oh, that's going to turn out well. All right. Um, do, where are we here? I'll just do desktop. I think desktop just makes the most sense. Uh, do, 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 there we go. Here's the deposition from, uh, <laughs> well, I'll let you, we'll watch. It's only a minute long. It's not very long. Oh, may not be suitable for all viewers, just so you know. Your right hand, please. Yes. Do you solemnly swear the testimony about to give away the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guide? Yes, I do. Could you please give us your name? Jeffrey Epstein. Is it true, sir, that um, you have what's been described as an egg-shaped... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just... Well, let's stop right there. Let's just stop right there with that winning statement. Sir, is it true? Is it true you have a Humpty Dumpty dick? Sir, little girls have been telling us that your penis looks like an omelet. How would you respond to that allegation? Form, vague and definite, and I'm going to give you the, the first warning, Mr. Cuban, that these types of questions are not only argumentative, but directed in a manner to embarrass uh, Mr. Epstein. If you continue with this type of question, I'll adjourn the deposition immediately. Sir, according to the police department's probable cause affidavit, uh, one witness described your penis as oval shaped and claimed when erect it was thick towards the bottom but was thin and small towards the head portion and called it egg shaped. Those are not my words, I apologize. But as Mr. Now as Mr. Critton has stated that this is a Nobody, nobody talks about my egg-shaped penis. Nobody but me. I'm getting the fuck. Fuck you people. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. How dare you? How dare you impugn my reputation and that of my egg-shaped penis? 
How do you how do you even have an Easter egg cock? How do you have a Humpty Dumpty dick? How does that even happen? Well, they said it was very thick at the bottom, but itty bitty teeny weeny on top. Is that true? Do you have an egg shaped oval penis, Mr. Eggstein? I'm sorry, Epstein. <laughs> what the fuck? I need to find a, just the, the whole deposition. If that was just one question in there, I want to hear the whole thing. I want to know, I want to know everything. Because the coverage back from 2006, I mean, with that deposition and with everything else that was going on, there's a lot of stuff flying around. Like how the Palm Beach police, when they investigated his home, found hidden cameras everywhere. And how it was alleged that those hidden cameras were used to record blackmail footage of different high-profile celebrities and politicians and financiers having illicit relationships with children, and that he was using those tapes to blackmail people. And now we have reports that they went to his New York mansion, or apartment, whatever you want to call it, the seven-floor structure that's worth $77 million, and recovered a lot of photos and different materials from safes and vaults on uh, CD optical disc and other things. I'm wondering if those you know, uh, images and those videos that they recovered weren't just alleged potential child porn, but instead maybe blackmail material related to people that knew Epstein or were going to his island. Oh, Jesus. Couple that with the fact that over the last day or so, they've been scrubbing certain references to Epstein and some former associates. Uh, you can look in Wikipedia where they've removed the fact that Bill Clinton flew on his plane more than 20 times. That's been taken out. Uh, not sure why they wanted to remove that. It's been in multiple news articles. And then you've got uh, other things, like Google Image Search, apparently wiping out uh, different pictures that are out there. Now, I couldn't check this myself. I, I don't know exactly how you'd find a cached image of a search result from a week prior for Google Image Searches for that specific term. Uh, but people are swearing up and down that Google's removing it. And I don't know necessarily if I disagree that they would be, uh, even though I can't just outright prove it uh, with what happened with Project Veritas. Uh, talking about how Google wants to influence things and how they, uh, you know, alter search results to direct you in a certain way, it wouldn't surprise me. It would not surprise me if they were fucking with search results in this particular instance. I don't know why. I don't know why anybody would be protecting anybody related to this, be it Bill Clinton or Acosta and his horrible fucking plea deal or anyone, really. They say, let them, let them get their comeuppance. Let, let them get what's coming their way. Oh, what was that chat? Are we just having a still image for the stream or for Jim streams now? Uh, no, this is just Jim testing out different start times to see what he likes. Uh, the real, the real fun streams, the prepared streams, probably won't start for next week. I'm more just seeing what time of day I think is going to work best for me. Uh, I'm torn. I don't know if I like this start time or if I like eight, which would be an hour or two from now. Not 100% certain yet. I'm, I'm going to try out even earlier. On Friday, I'm going to uh, try a start time of about 4 in the morning to see if I can be fucked with to get out of bed and to try to start one. The plan going forward, though, is Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, right now, it's just trying to figure out when's a good time in the morning to start. And then I can Then I can put the big boy effort into it. I'm sorry, I've been so distracted with Mr. With Mr. Epstein's egg-shaped penis <laughs> and monkeys, uh, uh, I don't even know how you describe it. Uh, uh, what, what was this fucking show he's related? Uh, Breaking Bad. But I didn't even really watch that show. I, I know it was uh, White something. Walter White. Walter White and the Meth. That's 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 the show, right? Kind of. I I didn't really never even paid attention to that show. Not my not my thing. Have I had my morning nicotine? Just barely. Just barely. I, I, I don't know. I'm not feeling it this morning. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if this start time is going to be appropriate for me or not. I think perhaps maybe later on would probably be better. I don't know. I'm just winging it, boys. I'm just winging it right now. Very short stream today. I'm going to even call it quits right now. I may go take my lazy Irish ass and go right back to bed. I don't know just yet. Have dreams of egg-shaped penises. Oh, delicious. A weird internet insanity shit. 
funny Splatoon post. I'm not touching that. The Splatoon community is not something you want to get invested in. I've, I've seen some weird shit come from that side of the internet. Uh, lots of YouTube content. It's almost like Minecraft. I, I don't know what it is with the degenerates in the Splatoon community. But they make Minecraft people look fucking normal. And everyday common. No, I'm not going to. Uh, we're not going to look up Splatoon porn. I don't know how DLive and their Chinese lemons would take uh, to us watching Splatoon porn. I think that might be pushing it too far. What about the show you were talking about last stream? Yeah, you know, I was planning. I, I was thinking, do I want to do that today or not? Probably not. Um, I've got some stuff planned. Uh, I wanted to go, you know, one of the uh, things I wanted to start to do was to go over, like, the history of Masiokas. I mean, we've watched some of the shit uh, from him before. Uh, the crazy guy that... He had some kind of weird psychological uh, condition, right, from what was alleged. Where I, I know there's a proper term for it. I just don't remember what it is. But basically, uh, there are people that will mirror other people's behavior. Uh, you know, they if they're talking to somebody, they'll pick up their vocalizations, their tics, their personality and kind of uh, mirror it back to them. I mean, that's, that's normal to some extent. Uh, but Masiokas, he, he, I don't know what the condition was called, but he would just become the other person. He, <laughs> it's really weird. This was a guy that was super wealthy, who when people initially saw his videos thought, okay, well, he's like poverty stricken and poor and crazy. But it turned out, no, the guy lives in a really high-end house. The house that he's filming in with all his cooking videos is actually a second property he owns. Uh, you know, just lots of weird shit. I mean, that's like old SA stuff, but uh, that was one of the things I wanted to get into. Uh, there's another uh, another dating show that I came across that, like I said yesterday, is kind of like the, or yeah, yesterday, but on Monday, is like the IGN thing that I want to go over that I think has some potential, I think will be good. So I've got stuff planned, but again, uh, this week is more trying to fit into when is a good start time. And I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just half awake right now, and I don't think this is going to be the proper start time. Uh, somebody said, I prefer the old SS stuff. <laughs> but the SA were cool, too. I sure, I'm sure you do, chat. But we can't really talk about the SS stuff. <laughs> I, they'll throw me off D-Live. I'm trying to be a good boy. Okay, we're going <laughs> to... We can't, we can't go there. Uh, stream at 8, yeah. I, I think that, again, I you know, I'm going to try Friday. We'll try really crazy fucking early. Uh, maybe that'll bring it all the way back around. And I'll be high energy gym. I don't know. We'll see. We're just starting off. Um, aside from the stream times on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, whenever I get that worked out kind of going forward, uh, I'll be uploading videos to BitChute. I've got the, <laughs> I've got the polyamory video coming out soon. Uh, that'll be going up on BitChute if you want to learn about cuck living and the saddest fucking forum that I've really ever come across, which is just husbands and wives hating their life. Just fucking miserable over the life decisions they've made by letting their partner fuck other people and trying to be cool about it. There's, there's nothing stupider, nothing stupider in this world than having somebody in a relationship come up to you and say, hey, I want to go fuck other people. Is that cool with you? And then saying yes. You might as well just leave the relationship. All these people on this forum all tried to be very accommodating. Oh, I'm cool. I'm hip. I understand that's the new thing. I've got to be open-minded. Nothing but a wasteland of broken marriages and broken hearts. Holy shit. Men and women. Husbands and wives. All fucking miserable. And there's some, there's some fucking doozies of a story from that place. So that'll be, that'll be fun. There's nothing like there's nothing like watching somebody's mistake from a distance and thinking, holy shit, at least it ain't me. At least I didn't fuck up that badly. My wife, my husband isn't fucking somebody else. I don't got to deal with that shit. What is this? Uh, what about that incel forum with Sonic Tier or Sonic Tier comics? Was your account approved? Oh, I remember. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about from the, yeah, that documentary. The documentary about uh, Forever Alones. I don't know. I don't think that account was actually ever approved. I never got a <laughs> never got a follow up email. You know, it could have been my opening message. I think might have been. I might have overplayed my hand a little bit. 
a little too enthusiastic about how much I hated those goddamn whores. And uh, that probably turned them off just a little bit. So maybe I've got to be more subtle about it. Subtly push myself into these different uh, situations. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, chat. Love shy. There we go. Thank you. That's what it was. Love shies. Yeah, I think, what, what was the message that I gave them? I think I said something like, I hate fucking women. <laughs> Let me in. <laughs> they weren't they weren't really into that. I overdid it. Sold it too much. Oh, that's true, Chad. I was not accepted as a true incel. Uh, everyone on the site already necked themselves? Uh, potentially. But maybe. Maybe. Uh, someone clipped Jim saying, my husband. Oh, you going to send that to Brian and make him jealous? Oh, hey, Mr. Outlines, guess who's got a gay husband? Oh, I can't. I can't co-sign that statement. Somebody's talking about black people in Westeros. Sorry, that's not gonna. That's not gonna do it. One inch of bone forever alone. Well, you guys have all these cute little sayings for the poor bastards at the incel forum. Those love shy guys had it rough. Well, the one did. There was that one well-adjusted guy, and then everybody else wanted to kill the other dude, the fucking cameraman. Oh, God, and then the follow-up to that, there was, like, uh, production people that were talking on Reddit and other forums about making that video and saying, <laughs> and saying how scared they were because uh, a couple of the incels, like, called them up and were like, I'm, what did they say? Like, somebody threatened to rape one of the women. <laughs> I'll have to do... I'll find that and uh, do, like, a little minor update on that. But holy shit. Yes, they were very upset that that guy was getting some pussy. They were not. Uh, they were not enjoying it. Have I watched the Mr. Meat Man video yet? Uh, no. Like I said, I I I, I was kind of half paying attention. I saw the summary. I saw people talking about it. I know people are streaming about it. Uh, I found like eight different <laughs> eight different videos. I've just been watching bits and pieces, slowly working my way through. I'm trying to go. I I don't. I can't even say it's chronologically because the shit's all over the place. Uh, but I do have that video queued up to watch. Because everybody said, oh, there's a lot of shit in there that you don't want to... You don't want to uh, skip over because it explains a lot of what's going on. But it's not something I could just sit down and watch all eight hours straight through. It's uh, way too much. Yes, they were they were all very pissed. Love shies rise up. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to tell you on that one. They bought some Gamer Girl bathwater to make them feel less alone. Holy shit, talk about the best business decision. That chick has ever come up with. Hey guys, I'm going to put on a bathing suit and sit in this puddle for five seconds. Then I'm going to sell you the puddle. <laughs> and you're going to pay me, what is it, $30 a jar? Brilliant. That's entrepreneurial ship. Hey, there are a bunch of horny guys out there that will literally buy puddle water from me if I just call it Gamer Girl Bath Water. <laughs> and they did. So this is DLive. I like streaming more, I think. Uh, yeah. I think DLive has potential. Uh, at least we got our dancing puddings back. I'd like a few of the features back, but, you know, uh, from what I understand, the mobile version's a little choppy. Desktop can be a little choppy. I'm tr still trying to adjust the stream settings to get it to play a little smoother. Uh, but it's not its not terrible. I think as long as we're on... Uh, I have the age restriction thing, the X tag active. I think as long as I leave that on, they'll leave us alone. They'll kind of let us do our own thing in our little corner and not really fuck with us. Just leave us be. Leave us in our dancing puddings alone. Let us be. Let us be free over here. Oh no! I turn that off. There we go. Oh, what was that? Oh, now see the dancing puddings have overwhelmed the chat. X-rated pudding discs. Ah, oh, that's very true. I wonder if I could get an egg-shaped penis emoticon for the chat. Do you think DLive would let us have that? Would that be pushing it too far, perhaps? Probably. That might be <laughs> that might be a little bit too much. No, people don't think the egg-shaped penis emoticon is going to fly over here? Perhaps not. We could have called it the little Eggstein. A little Epstein, and we could, uh, you know, I will be honest with you. I, I do think Epstein, Epsteinstein, Epsteinapine, whatever you want to call him, Jeffrey, our boy Jeffrey, 
uh, I don't know. I got a good feeling. The trial at the very, at the, trial at the very least is going to be a spectacular shit show. I don't know if stuff like Court TV is still around, but if they stream that, I, I might watch that shit every day. I, I mean, that could be that could be like a, <laughs> the 2010s version of OJ. I don't know. Just a giant fucking shit show. Maybe Kato Kalin will show up. Maybe he was on the Lolita Express and we never knew it. <laughs> Maybe was Ron Goldman killed? Was Nicole Brown murdered? Because they knew the truth about Jeffrey Epstein's kitty fuck fun time island and his Lolita Express? Does the story go deeper than we knew? Potentially. Well, we'll never know. Unless Court TV. We need to get Nancy Grace to present this every day. I want her bitchy Texas face on television giving me her snide comments about this case every day. Fuck Anderson Cooper. Get Morning Joe the fuck out of here. Give me Nancy Grace in court TV. Let me, let me watch Mr. Egg-Shaped Penis and his trial of the century for the next year. Uh, SFO did it. What was this? Oh, see, this is the one thing. Okay, where SFO did a cringy video about DLive, about how it's scamming its users. Well, I will tell you, you're going to probably want to turn off that that Chinese botnet that's mining all those coins. If your computer has smoke coming from it right now, say thank you, Chinese lemons. Thank you, Chinese lemons, for the, the damage you've done to my PC. No. Uh, there, there's definitely some issues with the site, but again, as long as I have my own little corner, my X-rated, age-restricted section that I can just stream from, I'm, I'm uh, a happy little boy. I know there are rumors that BitChute is going to be doing streaming soon. I don't know how true they are. I think that's just for Alex Jones and InfoWars right now. I don't really even know, particularly on how, uh, you know, on that website, how it would technically function to stream. Just kind of given that it's peer-to-peer. -peer, maybe it works really smoothly. I don't know. I've only seen one or two examples of it, and it's always been Alex Jones InfoWars stuff. I don't know if it'll ever be released to the general public, or if it is, if it's just like a, an alpha test, a beta test. And that's something that's going to be put out way into the future. Who fucking knows? Yes, thank you, based lemons. There you go. I, I see the people are giving me ice creams and lemons. Oh, they let you do messages now? Okay, well, somebody gave a diamond. I don't know how many... Wait, where's the conversion on this shit? Uh, Jim, I bought a hat and a mug. Am I a good groom link? Well, sure you are. And thank you for the... God, I think a diamond on here is like... 10 cents? Wow. I, how, how does this break down? I think a lemon is half a nickel. <laughs> uh, an ice cream might be a third of a penny. And a diamond is maybe 14 cents. I think that's how this all breaks out. That's that's the total combined cost of it all. Okay. Well, we've done about a half an hour stream chat. I know. I know it's short. I know it's a tiny, tiny stream. It's kind of like Mr. Epstein's egg-shaped penis, to be honest with you. Uh, but we're probably—I'm probably, probably going yeah, to cut it here. I just—I'm a little too tired today. I think this is a bad start time. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like it. I don't like six or no, I'm sorry, seven p or seven a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's not a time for me. Maybe I should go earlier. Maybe it should be four in the morning, or stick to eight in the morning. We'll find out this Friday with the last test stream before we get it nailed down going forward with the show. I know, I know. How will you survive your mornings? Well, I'd go watch deposition footage of uh, <laughs> Epstein and, uh, you know, see if you can find more examples of his egg-shaped penis. I, I actually am going to try to dig up the deposition to see if there are more funny bits. Potentially there is. I don't know. I want a shit show trial of the century God, I hope that's coming up. Oh, I know rich people and famous people are shitting bricks. I know other people are like, oh, it's not going to go anywhere. I have a really good feeling that it is going to go somewhere. Just a gut feeling. I could be wrong. That's fair. That's fine. Uh, but I've got stuff planned for next week. Got some good show ideas. Right now, this week, just testing start times. Thank you for coming out to the early morning time. Uh, once I do the one on Friday, I'm going to put up a little poll and let people choose what they think the best start time is. Hopefully they don't pick this one. It doesn't, I'm just not feeling it. I'm just not feeling it. I liked 8. I think 8 will work. Or maybe just really early at like 4. 
we'll have to see going forward. Uh, have a good day today, chat. I don't have any great Vocaloid so, or songs to play you out, I'll be honest with you. Uh, let me see if I can find something just to... Just so you can hum. You can hum on your way out. Uh, let me see here. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, you know. No, 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 no. I'm trying to think, what would you hate the most? I could play pinball music, but I think that would just be exceptionally mean for no reason. Oh, you know, I, I, no, no, that's not it. Oh, this is so difficult. What, what's that, chat? You want to hear Bob Seger's Get Out of Denver? What a weird choice for a fucking musical outro, but if you insist, if you insist, I'll, I'll have to do it. A ramble. Perhaps reciting obsessive detail was my way of finding control in an uncontrolled situation. Well, good early morning to you, chat. This is our last, uh, our last test stream to see what a good start time would be. And I'll tell you what, it's not four in the morning. I think really early shit's great for winter when you're snowed in and it's icy outside and you don't really have much that you can do. Then, then you know, four in the morning's great. Had a lot of fun doing that over on Stream Me. But four in the morning now, not so great. I put it right next to 6 a.m. Not the best. I think going forward now after testing out each of these times, I'm probably going to stick to about 8. 7 to 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I think that's the best, at least until the weather turns. Once the weather turns, well, fuck, everything's up in the air then. You go a hundred different ways with it. I saw a couple of people in chat trying to do stickers. All right, here's what I understand on how that shit works over here. If you see somebody put up a little dancing pudding and you like it, you click on it and it puts it in your own sticker collection and then you can use it anywhere you want to. I know they've got like eight different levels of membership over here. I like your your normal just everyday account, which is what I've got right now. And then there's like affiliate and verified member and super secret verified member and global partner and global partner with perks. It just kind of keeps escalating itself a little bit more. I don't know if I'm going to chase that uh, dragon, try to get up the chain of shit. Uh, you know, the videos on uh, VODs, they're safe for about seven days and you can use your own stickers so I, I don't really like trying to achieve uh, partnership and all that shit I don't I don't really think we need it as long as we're in our little segregated area under the X tag and we can talk about whatever fuck we want to talk about I think we're good so best of luck with the stickers I don't know if we'll ever have chat stickers you're gonna have to go and poach them yourself you're gonna have to go hunting for them find a stream and just steal that shit and claim it as your own, and then use it here. Nobody will ever know. And that's what I did. I just went stealing stickers from every motherfucker I could. That's how I got that guy. Little, little dancing, jumping pudding. I didn't even give a shit. Saw it, liked it, and I took it. So that would be my suggestion for you. Oh, a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Uh, this will be a relatively shorter stream. Um, probably like an hour or so. Again, uh, more of a test stream than anything. But with Epstein and, well, just a whole lot of shit. That, I, I can't help not being fascinated. What was the black guy? Okay, uh, Ralph, for like eight months, kept talking about this black dude who faked a hate crime. It was like every episode, he would talk about a black dude that faked a hate crime. That's what Epstein's going to be for me. I can't look away. I've always been a junkie when it comes to uh, prominent people or celebrities getting into legal trouble and then having to go to trial. Uh, OJ was fucking great. Can't forget about Trayvon and the whole trial around that shit. Fun watch, fun time. And I'm, God, I'm, I'm hoping like a motherfucker that Epstein goes to trial and that shit gets broadcast for everybody to watch. That's what I'm looking forward to. I'm very excited about Mr. Epstein's wild ride, about what's awaiting him. And a lot of fucked up shit happened. I mean, we just talked about it uh, two days ago. But even in the span of that two days, a ton of shit happened with Epstein. 
You had people reporting that Google was taking down images of him and Bill Clinton together, altering search results. If you went and typed into Google search on a like a private browser, uh, Epstein and uh, Clinton, you wouldn't get any autocomplete results. But if you did Epstein and Trump, you'd get like 30 different results. Just wiping it away. Wikipedia edited a couple of different paragraphs, taking out references to Bill Clinton flying on his plane 26 times. Clinton himself released a statement saying, no, I only flew on Mr. Epstein's plane five times. It was related to, I think he said fundraising events or speaking engagements in other countries. And he, he said, he stated, I've always had my secret service with me. Except the reporter that initially broke all that information seemed to disagree. They did not believe what Mr. Clinton was saying, said he was full of shit. And that some of those pictures that would show up in the Google image search results would help to kind of flush that out because there, there are a few a few uh, photos of good old Billy Bob Slick Willie on that plane with some young tail some very very young looking women I can't I can't say for sure they're teenagers but if if they are they have like some weird disease because they look like they're 13 but there's Slick Willie smiling with his arm around them on the Lolita Express it's like Google doesn't want you to watch that doesn't want you to to see those pictures exist, it's very strange. They want to remind you of what uh, Trump said about him, but they don't want to remind you of the fact that Clinton was on that plane 26 fucking times. Very, very interesting. Wikipedia as well doesn't want that information out there. Don't want, don't want you to look it up yourself. What are you doing? Wikipedia is <laughs> highly curated by the top minds in academia. They know what they're doing. Just sit your ass down. Shut those eyes. It's getting getting sleepy in here. Let Wikipedia do the thinking for you. And let's remove that sentence or two that's problematic. Also, let's remove the fact that it said Epstein was Jewish. Got to get that down. <laughs> hide Bill Clinton. Hide the fact that Epstein's Jewish. Don't want people to know either of those two factoids. Could be dangerous going forward. Oh, are you tired? I see some people in chat. Oh, very, t very tired. Oh, we're all getting so sleepy over here. If you remember, Alan Dershowitz was a lawyer that represented him. Alan Dershowitz was also somebody who was named by one of the female accusers as having received services provided by Epstein. Uh, Dershowitz had an interview where he said, um, I did receive massages, but the girls didn't look young, and I never took my underwear off. That was, that was his go-to. Oh no, I got massages, but I don't really like massages. And my underwear stayed on the entire time. Real good. Really, you know, that's excellent. Excellent alibi. I don't think anybody's going to see through that. Just, just ingenious. Now, Mr. Epstein, uh, of course, being a billionaire, doesn't like the idea of sitting in a dirty, disgusting prison with us plebs. No, he doesn't like that at all. He wants to get bo uh, bonded out. But the prosecutor's not having any of that. Oh, wait, actually, hold on. Let me see. I'll make sure... I didn't take it down. Oh, God, Boomer Jim, take the banner text down. Doesn't want to sit in prison, so he wanted to get bonded out. He's, he was willing, what a nice guy, very willing to accommodate them. You can hold my mansion in Manhattan hostage. I'll even let you take my jet. And, I'll, and he even offered, you know, those that collateral is about $80 million and $90 million. He even offered to pay for his own security to watch him to make sure he didn't try to flee the country. That makes perfect sense. He'll hire the security to watch him to make sure he doesn't leave. You have his word of honor. And he is an honor. I mean, look at him. Would a man with an egg-shaped penis lie to you, Chad? No, he wouldn't. <laughs> Men with egg-shaped penises are the most honest people on earth. Just good, old-fashioned Americans. Very down-to-earth. Come from the dirt. They wouldn't lie to us. But even, you know, setting aside all that ridiculous shit, a couple of news articles dropped about this. Uh, very funny shit. Now, I know a lot of people were very doubtful. Said, oh, fuck it, nothing's going to happen to him. He's too rich to get fucked with. It's, you know, I can understand that. You got a guy that's worth billions of dollars. He's well-connected in finance and politics. Who's going to be able to hurt him? Who's going to be able to do anything to somebody like this? Is a, this is one of the movers and shakers of the world. 
What, what are you talking about, you silly little pleb? You're not going to be able to, to stop it. You can't, you can't make this man be held to account for anything. He is above you. Uh, you may as well just shut the fuck up and deal with it. Except, you know, a lot of people are coming out of the woodwork to give their, their hot takes on this. And one of the things they're giving a hot take on, and one of the things that I guess I was a little bit curious about, but reporters were a whole lot more curious than I was, was how did he get rich exactly? We keep hearing that Epstein is worth billion dollars. He's a billionaire. He has his own private island. He has his own jet. Multiple mansions all around the country, all around the world. But how exactly did he get his money? I think people just assumed that he was a, a day trader. He was some kind of a financial guru, and people, people accepted that. <laughs> Except people in finance started to come out with their own stories. Different stockbrokers, different people at uh, investment firms started to say, hey, you know, it's really weird. I never once traded with this man. I never had any interaction with him. I didn't know anybody else that did. People went to, as far as to say, uh, if you know, Epstein reminds me of anybody, it's Madoff. It's the same kind of thing. Nobody had any interactions with him. The, my, or the money is kept private. You don't know what's going on. You don't know where it's invested. You don't know how much the take is. Very, very strange. So some people uh, did a couple interviews with The New Yorker. And uh, I, I just want to read you some some hot takes, some nice little uh, excerpts from this, because uh, I think you'll find it funny. Uh, this is uh, interviewing somebody from Wall Street uh, who I, I guess was as confused as everybody else about where is Epstein getting his goddamn money? What, what exactly is going on? Because it had to come from somewhere. And their discussion about where the money's coming from actually ended up leading to another discussion about the potential of how this whole thing was set up, how Epstein became rich, and how he wielded such influence. So let's um, let's take a look at that. Let me pull this up here. Oh boy. There we go. It should be on screen. Uh, this is hedge funders have some... Uh, well, I'll just read these to you. These are the headlines. Hedge funders uh, have some thoughts on where Epstein or what Epstein was actually doing. Uh, this one, I think he engaged in blackmail. Jeffrey Epstein expert on where his or where he made his money. That article in particular is written by a guy doing his biography who can't figure out where the fucking money came from. This guy's writing a fucking book on him, digging into his entire life. He has no idea where he's getting the money from. So uh, this is for, uh, they're interviewing uh, Douglas Koss. Uh, I'm hearing about these parties, hearing about a guy who's throwing money all over the place. Koss, president of Seabreeze Partners Management. While stories about young girls swarming Epstein's waterfront mansion and the sex parties he hosted for the rich and powerful were the talk of the town, Koss is most fo are focused on how this obscure person, rumored to be managing billions of dollars, had become so wealthy without much of a track record. Koss was well-connected on Wall Street where he'd worked for decades, so he began to ask around. I went to my institutional brokers to their trading desk and asked if they've ever traded with this guy. I did it a few times until the date he was arrested. Not one institutional trading desk, primary or secondary, had ever traded with Epstein's firm. When a reporter came to interview Koss about Bernie Madoff, shortly before that for, uh, firm blew up in the biggest Ponzi scheme ever, Koss told her, there's another guy who reminds me of Madoff that no one trades with. That man was Jeffrey Epstein. So how did he get there? How did he get the money? Uh, and this leads into, uh, well, it's a it's a Twitter thing. But let's see. This person says, "Here's what I think is going on." Uh, let's take our starting point uh, with two givens: a, you're a committed, unrepentant pedophile; b, because of your old job in private banking, you are very connected to lots of very very wealthy people. We'll also assume a goal: z. You want to become very rich. The obvious route is, well, obvious. You could be a pimp, offering underage prostitution services to the very rich people you know. This has two problems. You're very disposable, see the DC madam, and it's also not very lucrative. You can't charge millions up front. The second level, though, follows instantly. You don't need to charge up front. You just need to have them have underage sex and then blackmail them afterwards for hush money. Because ROI, but you're still a liability. And producing and receiving big bribe money raises big questions. So how do you do it? 
Well, the second idea has some merits. First, you need to recruit people in. Have uh, lots of massive parties at your spacious home, which he did. Invite top academics, artists, politicians to encourage people to come, which he also did. Supply lots of young women, which he did as well. You don't even have to do anything. And most people invited might even be totally unaware of the real purpose to the parties. But sooner or later, some billionaire will get handsy. She'll escort him to a room with a hidden camera. Things will happen. Morning after, you strike. You inform him that she's really 15 years old. But you offer him a nice, neat way to buy your silence. A large allocation to your hedge fund with charges to ensure nobody asks questions. You also take the extraordinary steps of demanding power of attorney, which apparently he was doing. The fund is offshore in a tax haven. Nobody will see the client list. Of course, you don't really know anything about investing, instead making up some nonsense about currency trading, and nobody on Wall Street has ever traded with you. The fund itself doesn't need investment personnel, only some back office people to process wires. You don't even need the money from non-pedophiles, or they'll put you... Um, or they'll notice you've just put it in the S&P 500 fund, so you reject all incoming inquiries, which apparently he was doing. Uh, Epstein was going around telling people he wouldn't let anybody invest with him who wasn't a billionaire, and kind of driving them away. A $20 million wire from Billionaire X to you with no obvious reason will raise a lot of questions, and the IRS will certainly want to know what you did to warrant it. A $5 million quarterly fee for managing a billion in assets? Nobody's going to bat an eye. Because of this structure, you're extraordinarily secretive with your client list. Because they're not clients, they're pedophiles paying you for bribes. And they are also very secretive, which is why no letters or return streams ever leak. Occasionally, you may also try to trick other people, important political figures, mayors, prosecutors, etc. They don't invest in the fund, but it's nice to have them in your pocket. Others, such as academics and artists, can be bought with just money as a PR smokescreen. And of course, the scam can be kept going as long as you're, or they're willing to pay, which is forever. If you're ever caught, just lean on some of your other friends in government to lean on the prosecutor to get you a sweetheart deal. There's almost zero risk. And the last piece of the puzzle is the evidence. You'd want it somewhere remote but accessible. A place the U.S. can't touch, but you have an excuse to visit all the time to update. Remember that offshore fund? I bet there are very interesting safe deposit boxes there. So they're speculating. Uh, this, this person that put this up, uh, the hedge fund manager, other people that have been commenting on this, that essentially how Epstein made his money, because he lied about a lot of shit. He told people he went to a college he didn't actually go to. He told people he had a job for a certain amount of time he didn't really have. Uh, when he uh, joined a firm immediately after leaving college, uh, he was fired. But he spun that into another story. So you've got like this... The scam artist kind of running around giving a fake bullshit story and somewhere along the line he hooked somebody he got somebody on some blackmail shit and then instead of having them make a payment directly to him which could lead to questions he created a bullshit brokerage firm and managed their money for a nominal fee all while holding on to the evidence and this ties into what other women have said uh, even the um, the police department that investigated during the first uh, trial that he went through had mentioned that he had recording equipment on premises. He had hidden cameras everywhere. A couple of the women alleged that uh, he had basically used that to film people having sex with these teenage girls and then blackmail them the next day. And when you look back to the deal he got, that sweetheart deal from Acosta, you know, again, it all kind of really fits very well. 13 months in prison, slap on the fucking wrist. Didn't even have to be there all day, just eight hours a day. And then he was released to go, I, I don't know what he was doing, sleep at his fucking house, go work? Not that he had a real job, he's blackmailing pedophiles, so I don't know if that needs you to clock in nine to five. But all this shit just kind of, just starting to come out. More women have popped up, the FBI put up a, a toll-free number for victims to call. Fifteen have come forward. Fifteen in three different states, five or six of which are were minors at the time. This is going to be a fucking circus. This isn't going to be some... This isn't going to be some case that just disappears. I know people, again, have said, oh, well, he's going to get away with it. I don't fucking know. I really don't. 
they don't want him to bail out. They want to seize his properties. People are starting to come out of the woodwork. He's going to get me too to Helen back. Uh, you know, people thought Weinstein or Weinstein or however you pronounce his name was going to kind of just walk away from it. He didn't. I think uh, I think Epstein's in some deep shit. And I think the longer he sits in that prison cell, uh, freaking out because he can't bail himself out, the more inclined he's going to be to talk about what's go- what's going on. And that is going to be fantastic. Because allegedly he told one of the victims that uh, Bill Clinton owed him some favors. Well, how did he get owed those favors? I don't know, Slick Willie. 26 times on the Lolita Express. What were you exactly doing up there? Were you celebrating the Mile High Club? <laughs> Mile? Were you celebrating with somebody that, uh, again, looked very young? I can't say how old she was. I can't tell you 100%, but very young looking. Oh. I, 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 you know, if somebody said Court TV was coming back, I really hope it is. I want to watch this shit daily. It's going to be spectacular. He's not going to get another deal. There's no more Acostas. He's not going to get a presidential pardon unless Trump wants to. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I don't know how Trump could survive pardoning this guy if he ends up getting convicted and just lets him walk. It's going to look awful. It's going to make people more suspicious. They're going to start to say, well, shit, maybe all the speculation about a blackmail list is correct. So <laughs> they've just got to let that anti-corruption unit, uh, the FBI and the other police departments, work their case and then the prosecutor do what they're going to do. But he's going to flip. I got a feeling. I got a feeling Mr. Epstein, our egg-shaped dick uh, <laughs> pedophile of the year, is going to flip on people. And if he does have that uh, blackmail tapes in some uh, hidden away safety deposit box in some shithole country, he's going to be like, I'll go get it for you. Just don't send me to prison because he's facing 45 years. I think he's, what, 50 or 60 years old? He will die in prison if he gets a 45-year sentence. He does not want to die in prison. He wants to go back to his party mansion where he's got uh, fucking real dolls hanging from chandeliers and weird fucking murals painted on the wall. I don't know. I don't know. It's just very bizarre. A very bizarre, apparently from the police uh, that went in to investigate and look for evidence. A very weird fucking thing to walk into. Lots of crazy shit all over that mansion, including alleged CP. Of course, why wouldn't there be? Uh, he, he played it very smart, too, in hiding what could be child pornography by basically writing on the labels of the CDs in a safe, uh, young plus name and name, miscellaneous girls and shit like that, you know, uh, totally, totally innocent. I'm sure it won't come to bite him in the ass. What a dumbass. What an idiot. Maybe it's people like this just think they'll get away with it. I, maybe if you reach a certain level of wealth or power or influence, you're just conditioned to believe that you'll never get fucked with. That you can just get away with it. And maybe if he was blackmailing people, he really thought he was just insulated to such a level that nobody would ever dare fuck with him. Because you could have a politician or a prosecutor or a mayor or uh, some investment banker or head of a corporation or somebody powerful and influential uh, raise hell and get him out of it. Oh, it's fun days ahead. Now Epstein. Epstein, again, he's got something to barter with. You know, he's this billionaire with all these connections. He could always turn over names. Somebody who doesn't have something to barter with would be... Mr. R. Kelly. Oh, R. Kelly, what are you doing? What is with all these stories of people getting uh, nicked for this shit? First Mr. Epstein, now Mr. Kelly. I guess he's out there peeing on little girls again. <laughs> what? It, uh, I'll, I'll read you a brief excerpt from his... Uh, oh, God, there's, a, there's so much shit with this dude. He was just recently charged with sex trafficking, but it, there's more than that. There are, multi, <laughs> there are multiple charges. A 13-count indictment was handed down earlier Thursday in federal court for the Northern District of Illinois, including charges of child pornography, incite, or enticement of a minor, and obstruction of justice. Oh, Mr. Kelly, I don't think things are going to look so well for you, unless you happen to know Mr. Epstein. Now, I got excited when I first heard this. I thought, holy shit, the timing of this is so coincidental. Suddenly, this is in the papers. The indictment comes down on Thursday. Right, you know, right around the time that this happened to Epstein, both of them are being charged with sex trafficking. 
Both of them apparently are involved with underage girls. Both of them apparently have child pornography. I, it just seems so coincidental. But they've been working on Kelly for like two to three months. Two to three goddamn months it's been going on. Now, who knows? Maybe we'll find out that R. Kelly was the key to solving the Epstein case once and for all. Maybe R. Kelly flipped on Epstein. <laughs> Maybe it's like some Nivix thing or whatever that fucking cult was called that had a bunch of billionaires and heiresses and celebrities and politicians all branding women with a fucking iron and fucking kids and doing crazy shit. Maybe maybe Epstein and R. Kelly are running some fucking sex trade across the world and Kelly threw out Epstein to try to get some charges dropped. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know how you pronounce it. N-X-I-V-U-M. But uh, apparently, and this is uh, this was from, I believe, like two months ago, Kelly, Kelly did uh, an interview. Uh, he did a bit. You know, actually, let's. I, I, uh, there are two things I want to show you. One, I want to hear. I want you to hear the Hang news on. report of what he did exactly. Because when you're reading it, you're like, okay, well, yeah, so he peed on a little girl or Welcome. something. <laughs> well, no, apparently he got a little violent. He started choking bitches and shit. Uh, let me see if I can find where that is exactly when they read the indictment. I'll get this set up. Uh, one second, chat get this all set up for you and then we'll watch r kelly freak the fuck out in an interview when they keep asking him about pissing on children <laughs> he did not like that not a fan of people asking about his pension for peeing on little girls all right i think we're we're about to oh let me pull this picture down okay mr kelly you go sit over there uh all right so a uh, new felony charges r kelly is facing let's uh let's hear them read a little bit about the indictment I think that'll be, that'll be nice. Oh, there we go. 2010, when she was a minor. Rob slapped me, and he choked me into a blackout. In a Facebook post yesterday, Pace said the new charges against Kelly, including aggravated criminal sexual assault and abuse, are related to her case. She wrote, no matter how wrong you think I am, the law is on my side, a minor at the time. Kelly's attorney, Steve Greenberg, tells CBS News the charges allege Kelly choked and forced the victim to perform oral sex on him on several occasions. Kelly denies any wrongdoing. Oh, getting a little physical there, Mr. Kelly. Choke. He's going around slapping little girls and forcing them to give him head. I don't know. That's that's a little violent. It's a little over the top. Uh, you know, the initial charges back in the day when he got uh, arrested and had his whole debacle about peeing on people. <laughs> Actually, uh, let's we can watch a dramatic recreation of that too. What the fuck? Why not? Let's let's try to get all of this in here. They got the thumb. Okay, hold on. Let's. Uh, yeah, here we go. I think the Boondocks about sums it up with the trial of R. Kelly. Give you an idea of what his first trial was like when he uh, came out to the world as somebody that pisses on children. Sorry, I present to you. The R. Kelly tape. I warn you, it is graphic. Yeah! Oh, 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 man, he got uh, freckles and everything. Uh, uh, that proves nothing. Hello. Yes, this is Robert Kelly. Yes, the singer. You are my social security number. Sure. It's 916-34-7865. Okay. God bless. Well, um... Yeah, that's, uh, that's roughly how things went down. He didn't really... He's not the slickest man in the world. Didn't really get away with it. Pissing on children and videotaping himself doing it. That <laughs> didn't end well for him. But here we are years later. 11 counts, choking out little girls. Smacking them around, forcing his dick down their throat. And uh, he can't take the pressure. So let's, uh... I, I, uh it's a long interview, so I'm just going to skip to the good part. Let me, let me see if I can find it where he starts throwing a fucking tantrum. Because they keep asking about the shit he's doing. Like, dude, why are you, why are you pissing on children? Kelly, what are you doing? What are you doing, Mr. Kelly? All right, here we go. Here we go. 
when was this interview? Uh, okay, this was just from March, by the way. So this is real recent. You want to love me if you want, but just use your common sense. How stupid would it be for me to, with my crazy past and what I've been through, oh, right now I just think I need to be a monster and hold girls against their will, chain them up in my basement, and, and don't let them eat and don't let them out unless they need some shoes down the street from their uncle. Robert, Stop it. Y'all quit playing. Quit playing. Robert. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this I gave y'all 30 years of my career. Robert. 30 years of my career. And y'all trying to kill me. You're killing me, man. This is not about music. I'm trying to have a relationship with my kids, and I can't do it. You think you think that was a Freudian slip when they're interviewing about molesting children? And he said, I'm just having to try to have a relationship with my kids. Killing me over here. Y'all just don't want to believe the truth. You don't want to believe it. At this point, we briefly pause the interview to give Kelly a moment. His publicist helped calm him down. I hope this camera keep going. No, we're gonna. This let is the not camera true. This is not, doesn't even make sense. He's got a whole fucking team of motherfuckers around him. Look at this shit. Well, just dancing around this motherfucker. Calm, you got to calm down. Stop chipping out on CBS this morning. You're not looking innocent here. <laughs> you got to stop screaming at this lady. Why would I hold all these women? Their mothers and fathers told me we're going to destroy your career. But Kelly's emotions remained raw. It's real girls out there missing. It's real young girls out there being abducted, being raped, okay? They really are on chains. They really do have chains on their, uh, on their wrists and they can't get out. Robert, and they're ending up buried in deep. Robert, we have to have a conversation. Really, I, I don't want you just ranting at the camera. Okay, I, think I came here for them to hear me okay, talk. But I need help. What kind of help? This is the kind of help I need. Yes, what kind of help? I need somebody to help me not have a big heart because my heart is so big. I just care too much when I molest those girls. I just because I love them. It's because I love them. I'm R. Kelly. My heart is too big. My heart is too big. So is my bladder. It's full. You mind if I piss on you, lady? Can I piss on you? People betray me and I keep forgiving them. You sound like you're playing the victim here. You sound like R. Kelly. You do. When I listen to you, I'm just it does telling sound the like truth. you're playing the victim. I'm card. just telling the truth. And the reason I'm emotional Robert, and I apologize you... for that no, is no, because no, this no. is the first time I was able to, to say speak. something. Yeah. I've said nothing. Gail, you um, remained tough and calm. Oh, yes, Gail, you were so brave. You're so brave when Mr. Kelly was throwing a little hissy fit on your stage. Oh, oh my God. De truth. De truth and nothing but de truth. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I tell you, this guy's fucked. There's so many, I, again, it's another, it's just, it's very coincidental. They've been going after him for like three or four months, getting the indictment ready. It finally comes out. It comes out right around the time that Epstein shit's going on. I don't know. I don't know. It could just be coincidental. I, I mean, it's very possible. But the fact that it's lined up like that, oh, that's so close to one another. That's so close to one another. It's exciting. There could be a tape out there of R. Kelly. <laughs> there could be a tape out there of R. Kelly pissing on somebody on the Lolita Express. And we may very well get to watch it one day. He would be singing Trapped in the Closet, urinating on little girls while, <laughs> while Mr. Epstein runs around him in a circle, jacking off his egg-shaped cock. <laughs> that, could be, that could be on Live Leaks one day. Think about it. How could you not be excited at the potential of that? Oh, the Dave Chappelle shit, uh, shit, shit, skit? I haven't had a chance to watch that one. I didn't have that one queued up. Oh, and I forgot, they let you do little super chats now on here. Apparently, if you give me enough Chinese lemons, they let you talk. Uh, SFO got in a fight with the DLive admins, funny as fuck. I, from Lupum, I, I don't know what he fought them about. I, I don't think I've had any run-ins with the DLive admins. Again, I just put the little X-rated tag on and I just do my fucking thing in the morning. Uh, from Gary Big Flaps, 
Epstein is clearly just a puppet of Tommy Wiseau. Well, of course, why wouldn't he be? Freaky beaky. Stay on YouTube so I can give you money directly to you and not these faggot points. Listen, one day I'm going to be Chinese lemon rich. And when I'm Chinese lemon rich, I, I don't know what I'll do with it. I'll do something with it. It's going to be something amazing. It's, who knows exactly what that'll be? I don't know how you convert this shit into real money. But at least I got, I got plenty of fun money now. From Mr. Phil Swift. If it isn't Splatoon, reddit.com funny Splatoon post. Now, I think I'm going to stay away from Splatoon reddits. <laughs> I'll, I'm just going to be honest with you. Lots of, uh, oh, there's one. Fuck me, daddy. Okay. Uh, Epstein will be a case to remember, Jim. I'm hoping it is. Gary Big Flaps, match me. I don't, is that a car? A Ninjagini? I don't know. Is that That's equivalent to a couple of lemons? I don't... <laughs> this is the weirdest fucking site, right? You can donate... A lemon is like... Is it less than a cent? <laughs> I don't know why... Why do they choose the denominations they've chosen? Uh, Daddy needs a cash? Well, yes, I do. Uh, R. Kelly's going to track me down and he's going to piss... He's going to piss all over me. And that, that's what I've been. I, I've been caught up in this. I can't look away from this shit. It's like every day. Maybe Dan Schneider. Maybe next is going to be Dan Schneider. All those little girls whose uh, shoes he stole are going to file a class action lawsuit and bring him, bring him to justice. Dan, hold her tighter. She's the fighter Schneider. Won't be allowed to roam free very long. Uh, much, much longer. They're, they're going to reel him in. And that's the end of the line for Danny Boy. I, I don't know. I, I'm hoping in the next week or two, we I, I'm trying to pay close attention to any politicians or celebrities uh, that get arrested or mysteriously die. There was a Disney star that mysteriously died, some 20-year-old. Uh, had They didn't even say what the medical condition was. They're like, oh, hey, he died. Yeah, the family said it was, uh, it was some medical thing. <laughs> really, really thorough reporting. So who knows what happened to him? A barbell fell on his head from a jet flying overhead. And if you squinted really hard, you'd see on the side of the jet it said Lolita Express. Oh, You can kind of just, I don't know, it's got an OJ feel to it, as far as how big of a carnival-like atmosphere it might be. It's going to be, it's going to be a circus. You know, it's going to be one of those, one of those rare occasions where a lot of people are going to get sucked into it. I mean, if Bill Clinton is releasing statements already, trying to disavow this shit and be like, I only flew on that fucking plane five times. He's nervous. He's already trying to distance himself from it. He's never he's never released statements like that before. He didn't feel the need to. But now that everybody's speculating about how Epstein's getting his money and who he's connected to and how he got that sweetheart deal, now all of a sudden people are like, oh, I don't know this guy. I only flew on his plane once. I only went to Pedophile Island twice. Oh, somebody said, okay, Mr. Phil Swift, the Splatoon Reddit is possibly child trafficking? How? How could a Splatoon subreddit? Okay, you know, all right, you know what, fine. You've interested me enough to go at least take a quick look. If this is just really shitty fucking Splatoon memes. But all right, all right, I'll go take a look. It says it doesn't exist. You sent me to, <laughs> you sent me to funny Splatoon posts. And it says it does not exist. Was it supposed to be post? Is it plural? Yeah, it's plural. Okay. There are only 42 members here. All right, let's 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 take a look at the funny Splatoon post. Go through it before you come in. Just visit the dark one before you see this. Okay, what? All right. There's a post here that says prices. It just lives, it lists out money. Somebody asking what the fuck this sub is. Lots of uh, lots of weird shit on here. I'm going to guess it's just people fucking around. I bet you somebody set this up months ago and just thought, you know, give it time. Somebody will stumble across this and it'll, it'll spook them. Some spooky, scary skeleton shit. I, <laughs> yeah. Uh, daycare, oh, come on. Daycare observer? Why don't they call it uh, candy van driver? Man in a bear suit. You know, if they, hi, I'm the daycare observer. 
talking about my pricing tiers on the funny Splatoon post. Wink, wink. Nah, I'm going to say this is clearly set up by somebody trying to fuck around with people. That's my hot take on it. I know, chat. People in chat are spooked. I don't blame you. I'd be spooked, too. You know, let's see. How, how are we... Yeah, I want to get back to EDF 5. I've been playing Earth Defense Force 5. I love that fucking game. I love Earth Defense Force. The cheesiest, campiest shit on Earth. But it's got the most basic, simple, straightforward formula that's goddamn, it's fun. Go into a little arena, blow the fucking buildings up, kill giant insects and enemies, and just have fun. 110 levels of that shit, four different classes, I, it, that's gonna, I'm going to sink hundreds of hours into that shit. I've been playing it for, I, I think I've only put like five hours into it so far, and I'm like, mission 30. I mean, they have, uh, their achievements are broken up by percentage of how much you've completed of the game. I haven't even got the 5% completionist uh, achievement yet. So I haven't even seen 5% of the total game after five hours and 30 levels of weapon collecting and difficulty selecting. Love that shit. But before I go to bury myself into it for another... 30 fucking hours before my eyes fall out. You know, all this talk of all these disgusting child predators. Oh, terrible people. Just awful people. I think, um... Oh, God, did I save it? Maybe I didn't. I, I can find it again. It's not really that hard to find. I think we should watch a video. Because I want you guys to be safe. Get a lot of shit. People say, oh, the Sweetie Squad. Your fans, Jim. People that watch your shit, Jim. It's all a bunch of children. All, all a bunch of uh, little kids. And you know what? If that's true, I have a duty to protect you from the bad people out there. All right. I, we've already done the good touch, bad touch thing. We watched a PSA about that over on Stream Me. But I want you to understand, you've got to beware, especially if you're a boy. Because there are homosexuals lurking about everywhere. And this handy little... PSA from the 1960s, I think is going to give you knowledge to protect yourself so you don't wake up one day with a very sore butthole. And I think that's what we're going to close out on. A nice, encouraging message of how to protect your ass from getting sodomized. You don't want to get paused. So write down, you know, get a little uh, fucking notebook and a pen so you can write out some hints and tips and tricks on how to protect yourself. Oh, I will open the box chat. That'll be the last thing I do. I always open at the end. I know you want your free Chinese lemons. I understand it. We all want those lemons. But I like to let it accumulate before I give it away. All right. Let us uh, let us start a, a nice anti-homosexual film. It's how it's described by Sid Davis. I guess he was prolific with warning people about the gays. Uh, so let's find out how to protect our assholes from getting paused by uh, sexual deviants. A very dangerous, dangerous thing that happens out there. Oh, we already know it's off to a good start. Nothing says nice, trustworthy neighborhood like Inglewood. Not sure if you're familiar with Inglewood, but hey, you can leave your door unlocked. Nice down-to-earth people up in Inglewood. Nothing to worry about. Such upbeat music for a, a film about kids getting molested. <laughs> they chose they chose a fucking Disney soundtrack for ch er, for child rape. I'm Lieutenant Williams, a police officer attached to the juvenile division. I'm on my way to Monroe Junior High School to talk to a group of young people. That looks innocent enough, doesn't it? Lots of young people hitchhike. Seems like a good way to get from one place to another. 
but sometimes there are dangers involved that never meet the eye. Take little Timmy here. He's on his way to faggotry. Timmy thought he could hitchhike. But he's about to learn what the taste of dick really is. Let's take the case of Jimmy Barnes. Jimmy played baseball all afternoon, and he didn't feel like walking home, so he decided to thumb a ride. Not the only thing about to be thumbed, huh, Jimmy? He'd done it a hundred times before, and he didn't think anything was unusual when the driver struck up a friendly conversation. Or pulled his penis out. He seemed like a real nice guy. He asked Jimmy if he played baseball in the park often. Jimmy told him they practiced three times a week and played a rival group on Friday afternoon. The stranger was a good listener, too, and it only... He wrote down all of Jimmy's information, like his home address and phone number, his route to school, and when his parents weren't home. A very good listener. ...seen minutes before they pulled up in front of Jimmy's house. When Jimmy got out, the stranger gave him a friendly pat. Then he told him he'd see him. <laughs> this dude is the most pedophile-looking pedophile. <laughs> it's, it's, it looks like, um... <laughs> it looks like a kid... Uh, of, uh, I'm, I'm blanking on it. The Shining. What was the actor from this? Jack Nicholson? It looks like Jack Nicholson shaved half his head. And they said, be as creepy as you can on camera. <laughs> you need to really make this kid think you're going to fuck him in the ass. ...him again, as he always drove by the park on his way home. Sure enough, the following day, when Jimmy finished playing ball, well, the man was there waiting. They stopped at a drive-in, and the stranger treated him to a Coke. During their conversation, he told several off-color jokes, but Jimmy had heard others before, and... Well, it made him feel big to so easily win the confidence of an older person. Oh, I think the molestation's about to happen. The following Saturday, they went fishing together. By now, they were using first names. Ralph said it was more friendly. Jimmy hadn't enjoyed himself so much in a long time. Then during lunch, Ralph showed him some pornographic pictures. Jimmy knew he shouldn't be interested. Real slick, Ralph. <laughs> he just, hey, Jimmy, I know we've only known each other for like a week, but you ever see naked people before? <laughs> just really smooth, right? He just he eased himself into that. Hey, call, use my first name. By the way, here's a woman getting fucked in her ass. What do you think of that, Jimmy? Interested, but, well, he was curious. What Jimmy didn't know was that Ralph was sick. A sickness that was not visible like smallpox, but no less dangerous and contagious. A sickness of the mind. You see, Ralph was a homosexual. <laughs> Ralph is very contagious. Don't let the gays touch you. You might get the queer gene. Oh, once, once you get the queer gene, you're going to go through a metamorphosis into a homosexual. A person who demands an intimate relationship with members of their own sex. But by now, Jimmy felt a fondness for Ralph, and they continued to go places together. Ralph was generous and took Jimmy many interesting places and did many nice things for him. He bought presents and even gave him money. But payments were expected in return. You see, Jimmy hadn't recognized Ralph's approach soon enough. When Ralph first asked Jimmy to go fishing alone, he should have discussed it with his parents or teacher. Don't do it, Jimmy. Don't go into that room. You're going to get fucked, kid. Finally, Jimmy told his parents, and they reported it to the juvenile authorities. Ralph was arrested 
and Jimmy was released on probation in the custody of his parents. I love it. I love the fact... Just t- drink that one in for a minute. Listen to, listen to what they say. This kid gets molested, and they put him on probation. And they reported it to the juvenile authorities. Ralph was arrested, and Jimmy was released on probation in the custody of his parents. Son, I'm disappointed with you. You have a criminal record for sucking dick now. Never going to be allowed in the church again. Your mother, your mother and her knitting group are fucking going to be talking about this for like a month. My son, the cocksucker, with his probation for dick loving. No inheritance for you. But all homosexuals are not passive. Some resort to violence, as in the case of Mike Merrick. Mike's about to get fucking brutally raped. In the heat of competition, no one noticed the man who sat and watched. And when the game broke up and the others left, Mike decided to stay and practice a little longer. The stranger joined him. He was friendly and, well, it was better than playing alone. But after a few shots, Mike realized he had already overstayed his time and suggested he better leave. The stranger told him if he'd like to stay longer, he'd be glad to drive him home when they finished. Sounded great to Mike. Chance to play longer and get a ride home too. finished, the stranger told him he'd make a fine player someday if he got lots of practice. The companionship, the praise, the friendly attitude dispelled any misgivings Mike might have had about going with a stranger. Sadly, they found Mike in a ditch three weeks later. His genitals had been cut off and (laughs) a deflated basketball had been sewn into his abdomen. Mike mistakenly trusted a homosexual. He probably never realized until too late that he was riding in the shadow of death. But sometime that evening, Mike Merrick traded his life for a new... (laughs) He fucking murdered him and raped him! (laughs) Oh, Mike! What happened, buddy? As Denny and Jerry got the papers ready for Jerry's afternoon delivery, they only casually noticed the two boys that raced by in the afternoon traffic. And they didn't pay much attention to the car that drew up shortly afterwards until the man called them over. Would you teenage boys like some lollipops? Had two boys been by on bicycle? The boys nodded they had. Could they recognize them if they saw them again? Well, then he guessed he could. Then hop in, the man said. Those are stolen bikes. Without giving it another thought, Denny got in and the car sped away. Jerry watched. He'd been told many times if a friend got in a car with a stranger to write down the license number. It didn't seem to apply, but... Well, fortunately, he marked it down. And then he threw it away by delivering the paper to the wrong person, losing the license plate number when and his friend's life. When he delivered a paper life. to Denny's house, he asked his mother if they'd caught the boys that had stolen the bicycles. Denny hadn't returned, so he told her the story and gave her the paper with the license number. Being a careful parent, she decided to call the police. Jerry supplied the necessary information and the stranger's car was quickly spotted. It was a good example of how important it is to always get the license number and description of any stranger who takes a young person off alone, no matter what they tell you. Public restrooms can often be a hangout for the homosexual. Oh, boy, I hope they're going to explain what that weird little hole that's drilled into the side of stalls are. You see, young men, the homosexual brings power tools with him to public restrooms to insert glory holes. But there's no glory to be found in sin. Bobby and his friends hadn't noticed the man who had been in the restroom when they changed. And as it was lady suggested they take the shortcut under the pier, 
but the others preferred to take the more traveled way home. Bobby recognized the stranger as the man in the restroom. The shortcut under the pier didn't seem like a good idea at all. After all, it's more fun to stay with your friends anyway. Bobby had made a wise decision. It may have saved his life. The decision is always yours and your whole future may depend on making the right one. So no matter where you meet a stranger, be careful if they are too friendly, if they try to win your confidence too quickly, and if they become overly personal. One never knows when the homosexual is about. He may appear normal, and it may be too late when you discover he is mentally ill. <laughs> Fucking, uh, what a line to, clear, uh, to end on. You never know, it could be too late. Homosexuals lurk everywhere. Also, was that was that uh, was Jared Taylor narrating the way he said what? He had the uh, white thing going on. Maybe a fan of Murdoch Murdoch. We'll never know. Mentally ill. <laughs> it just I mean, they they always went in hard with that shit. There's like some I think it's um, Walter Cronkite. There's some old '60s uh, television special about gays that was done by a news crew like a 60-minute format. <laughs> it was just him talking about how gays are fucking insane and they want to rape all your children. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully, hopefully that helped you all. Hopefully you'll be safe now when you journey home with your friends. Don't walk under the pier and never get into a stranger's car or you will be brutally raped and murdered. As well, you know, that happened to Mike. And even if it's not a brutal rape and murder, you're still going to get probation when they molest you. Remember, uh, ignorance of the law is no excuse. And if you engage in homosexual activities, you're going to be put on probation and sent to juvenile hall. It's just one of those things that keeps on happening. Okay, people, open the street, or open the chest, open the chest. Okay, let me open the chest. Oh boy. Uh oh. Let's uh, let's do that. I've got to go to my channel. It's not like a handy little button to do it, of course. Uh, distribute rewards. Here we go. Oh, it's counting down. 30 seconds to lemon time. Distributing the awards. Let's find out who the big winners are of Chinese lemons today. A whole 210 of them. Are you fucking excited? Uh-oh. Oh, what? Oh, oh, boy. Did it just stop its countdown? No. No, it didn't. Oh, 10 more seconds. We find out who the big Chinese lemon winners are today. Well, five, four, oh, God, it's getting exciting. Two, one, let's find out who won the lemons. Luckiest followers. Gorm, congratulations. I'm going to convert this into real money so you understand. Uh, Gorm, congratulations. You've won seven and a half cents. Uh, Shalith, 4.7 cents. Gary Big Flaps, you've made a whopping 3.7 cents. Fee, you've made three cents. And Dr. Beast Hunter, two pennies. Almost three pennies. Maybe you'll win again. Maybe we'll make that a solid three pennies. Maybe even four. Dare we dream? I don't know. Those those are the penny rewards from your Chinese lemons. Oh, people are happy. They like those fucking lemons. Uh, every stream's a different winner. You never know who's going to walk away a penny air or a penny air. What, how would you... I don't even know what the word for that is. You're penny rich. We'll just call it that for now. We got some... Uh, well, I mean, one person made it over the nickel. Oh, what? Oh, boy. Oh, press F. Press F, chat. Okay, I should be back on. It should be working now. I, I can never... T oh, boy. Is it offline? Is it online? <laughs> the stream mysteriously goes... Uh-oh. Sound's not working? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You see what happens when you mock the pennies, chat? Do you see what happens when you make penny jokes? The Chinese don't like it. They don't like us making fun of their lemons. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done it. I love your lemons. Chat, please tell please tell our Chinese overlords at DLive how much we love their lemons. Your lemons complete my life. I'm sorry, I've learned my lesson. You've disconnected me. I, I get it. I get it. Don't fuck with the lemons. I'm sorry. We love our pennies here. This is a pro-penny fucking stream. Uh, it should be coming in. The volume should be coming in. People saying F. Oh, oh boy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. They've taken my ability to speak. They've taken my ability to speak because I mocked the lemons. All right. Well, let me just play the outro music. If you can still hear me, I don't know if you can or not, but if you can, uh, I will be going forward uh, streaming between, uh, let's just say 8. 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Have uh, more normal streams, more streamy-like streams, now that we kind of have an idea of when to do this. I wasn't sure what I wanted. 8, 6, 4 in the morning. I think 8's the winner. So that'll begin uh, Monday, three times a week. And then I'll be uploading videos on BitChute on the account linked in the description uh, with the polyamory forum video coming out within the next week or so. So let us find, let us find a video to end on. Go with it. Oh, you know what? Uh, people asked where it was. I'm just going to end with a classic. <laughs> Why not? We'll end with this one. I hope you have a good day today, chat. I will see you on Monday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And again, if you're looking for the videos, should be up in the next week, up on BitChute. In the meantime, don't be wrong. Well, good morning, chat. What a lovely day it is to be alive. Well, for those of us that are living, <laughs> not everybody is that fortunate. Oh, I should I should be more serious. It's a it's a serious occasion. We've had we've had another another murder take place on the internet. Another incel annihilator, an ethot exterminator. Oh, it's a dark day indeed. What are the gamer girls gonna do? The incels are rising up. The society we live in is crumbling around us, chat. It's a terrible, terrible thing. Now, I first uh, came across this actually pretty late last night. I was doing what I normally do, uh, shit posting on biz, because why not? Uh, taunting them about Tether. Uh, browse a few different boards, and there was a bunch of news. People saying, oh my god, Brittany Venti's dead! Somebody has murdered Brittany Venti. And there were some pretty graphic photos of a chick with her head pretty much sawed the fuck off. And I will admit, it did look a lot like Brittany Venti. But it turns out, not her at all. So we've got a uh, an action-packed morning today. Full of, uh, I, I don't know, what would you call it? Thought genocide? thought I I guess? It was an e-extermination? Perhaps? Uh, you can come up with a clever name on your own, I'm sure. Hopefully, though, your morning is going much better than hers. Or the incel that tried to make it a murder-suicide and failed at it. Really knocking it out of the ballpark. Nothing nothing like uh, trying to do a murder-suicide and then bitching out when it comes to the suicide part. What a little beta bitch boy. Couldn't even saw his own throat. You got, you got like, there are some very graphic photos. I... Now, here's the thing. I mean, we're on DLive, all right? And these guys knock me off when I make jokes about Chinese lemons. There ain't no way I'm going to be able to show you some chick with her fucking head halfway sawed off or the Jay Leno lookalike motherfucker that uh, gouged himself pretty badly. So you'll just have to take my word for it, or you can look it up yourself. There's a trending hashtag right now uh, related to, to our poor little girl. But I thought we could go over the information that's out there and see what we come to, what conclusions we come to. I think it ties up nicely. I was talking about incels and uh, Tinder just over the last couple of days. Uh, there was a guy that ended up uh, allegedly committing suicide after spending $1,300 trying to get some pussy. Could have just spent 200 bucks and gone to the back pages. Got a local hooker. Much easier. But I guess all that rejection from the microtransaction rigged Tinder dating app was too much for him, so he finally had to just call it quits, take his own life, couldn't handle it anymore. And he put up a immigrant file, a whole folder, in fact, of all the rejection 
uh, letters that he got. We'll take a look at that as well because it sort of relates to this. Now, the basic facts that I know is her name was, I think it's Bianca. I'm not 100% sure what his name is. I'm sure we'll come across it as we look through the hashtag and all the screenshots that are out there of the conversations and evidence that got posted on Discord and other places. But uh, he was infatuated with her, uh, knew her through Discord, stalked her, apparently got a hold of her and killed her, and then when it came to killing himself, could not complete the task. Again, a little beta bitch boy. We'll also be taking a look at the incel wiki. Who knew that an incel wiki existed? It does. And more amazingly, it links us to incel forums. Some really, really fucking large incel forums. Like millions of posts big incel forums. You know, I was going to go take a look at, there was a subreddit called Brain Cells. Uh, but <laughs> apparently that got pulled down. I was very, I was very upset about that. Uh, but, uh, you know, this this forum I think will do well. So we've got, we've got a good amount of shit lined up this morning. I had a few Streamlabs from last time. I will read through those because uh, I missed them because I'm a terrible human being. So I'll read those really quick and then we will start looking through. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't even know what we're going to call this. Uh, the R9 Killer. We'll look through what's going on with the R9 Killer. At least that's what I'm dubbing it myself right now. Caleb LL Show. Hello, f hello, fellow potato nigger. I was wondering, have you forgiven Prime Minister Tony Blair for the apology he made for the potato famine of 1997? Thank you, Jim, for the SS hat. I'm wearing it now proudly. I, ah, uh, you know, uh, Chucky R. Law is all I can say in regards to the potato famine under Tony Blair. From Schwann's Gruberman. Hey, Jim, check this movie trailer out. I know the guy in it. I think this will be right up your alley. I've got some proton vibes from it, from the special effects. I will I'll take a look at it later on. And then finally, Justin Blood. DSP bought Panda, bought Panda Lee from Epstein. Pig Ops. Well, it's nice to know that he's out there uh, <laughs> facilitating those transactions. Hopefully Epstein can put that money uh, to good use for his defense lawyer, who would probably be Dershowitz again. Hopefully he's wearing his underwear. Uh, this time around, like he did last time. Remember, Alan Dershowitz, Epstein's lawyer, told everybody, no, guys, I wasn't fucking any underage chicks. Yeah, they forced me to get a massage, but I wore my underwear the entire time. Airtight, ironclad story, Mr. Dershowitz. I'm right there with you. <laughs> I'm standing beside you in solidarity. You had your underwear on, and we all fucking know it. Oh, I've got a diamond. I think, again, that translates to five wooden nickels. Uh, weepy pee hole. Uh, hammerhead shark murdered. Terrible. Terrible. Sad. Sad day indeed. Okay. Uh, I put a bunch of clips there. Well, not clips. Uh, screen caps together. Take a look at that. Uh, let me just make sure I've got this lined up, and then we should be good to go. Oh, I, I tried to organize these as best I can. Chat, you'll have to bear with me as I, I read through them. All right, let's get the screenshots going here. I'll just take a look at them in order. At least the order I found. Now, I had to edit some of this. Some of this is redacted because, again, her fucking head was nearly sawed off. I you know, in the picture, again, uh, it, it, very violent, there's like a little, a little knife next to her. Now, I don't know how he could have used such a tiny, itty-bitty knife to do what he did. I mean, that's... That's a lot of fucking rage. If this guy did as much... <laughs> like, it was like he was gutting a deer. All right? I mean, it was it was pretty fucking deep. So, the thought that he used this... It looks like a nail file. The thought that he used this little baby bitch boy knife to do it? I, I don't know. I think he had, like, a fucking table saw. And he just didn't want to show it in the picture. I mean, this motherfucker went to town. Uh, but I had to, uh, I had to make sure that, you know, it was completely redacted. Again, I've got to abide by the Chinese lemon laws that are on DLive. Uh, but we'll we'll just go through and read some of the conversations regarding this. Uh, when I first came across it, I was a little confused because, well, you'll see why. We'll get to it when we get to it. Uh, this is somebody sharing uh, the image. Again, redacted too intense for DLive. Uh, you can find these screen caps yourself. Uh, I found a lot on 4chan. And if you want to see what it's really like, uh, they're out there. They're up on Twitter, too. Uh, sorry, fuckers, you're going to have to find somebody else to orbit. 
and then they post a picture of her head sawed off. Uh, <laughs> people responding, what the fuck? Um, the date is, this is right as this happened. Uh, apparently, from what I understand, allegedly this was a video. Not just photos, but like there's a video of him doing this. And it's out there somewhere. I don't know who has the video. I don't know where that video is floating around. But kind of like the uh, what is a Christchurch shooter, you know, with the Facebook Live, they they did something similar with like Instagram Live. I, I don't know. I don't use that social media shit. All you fucking Zoomers. Okay, with all your your doodads and your hip hop and stuff. All right, Twitter's about Twitter's about as new as I go. Uh, ZHQ responds or ZQH responds. Uh, the date is from today. The date of the image is from today. The hair length color is the same as hers at the moment. The eyeliner is what she usually puts on. Brown eyes. Reverse image shirt shows nothing. Where did you get that image from? Well, he just he magically pulled it out of his ass, I guess. I don't know. Where would he have gotten that image from? Maybe the psychopath killer, the raging virgin incel, that sawed the chick's fucking head off. Uh, let's go to screen number two here. Uh, now this is what confused me. I, 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 this is was allegedly her discount uh, Discord account. You could see somebody claiming to be her in Discord saying, "Damn, my neck hurts," and then posting a, a, a picture of her head being sawed off. To which people appropriately respond, "Ouchie, oh, what the fuck? You should see a doctor." Yeah, I don't know if a doctor is going to reverse the damage that was done on this particular one. Uh, fairly fucking severe would be uh, the way I would describe it. Now, I, I'm trying to think, how, what order do we want to do this? Because there are a couple of archive threads that really go over this chick's history uh, to give you a little bit more background on who she is, but we'll just work through it. But again, this is allegedly uh, her old username, one of her old usernames, and she's discussing <laughs> things with her sparkling personality. She would be Xanax. I have too many orbiters I can bounce back with twice as fucking hard. You know, you mean jack shit to me. Uh, the person responding, I, I, I'm guessing this is one of the orbiters. Don't do this. I can replace you in a fucking second. Please. You are nothing. You know, you don't mean that. I was cheating on you anyways. Never cared about our relationship. You were always here just as plan B. As a backup when I didn't have anything better to do. I used you. Ooh. It's almost... <laughs> It's like somebody dared her. Hey, see how angry you can make incels. I want you to go find dejected men. I want you to go find dejected men. And then I want you to just shit on their hopes and dreams. What's the worst that could happen? Well, apparently getting murdered on live stream would be what the worst that could happen. Getting brutally murdered on live stream would be the answer to that. Again, everything's in allegedly quotes here. I don't know. This, this shit's just getting thrown out there. This could all all be doctored. Uh, but from what I understand, this is a real conversation under her old username. To give you an idea how she treated those around her. Uh, again, more people talking about what's going on, uh, trying to come to the conclusion, is this really honestly happening? Now, once it took to Twitter, <laughs> the fucking takes on Twitter, I tell you, I hate men. I'm tired of them. Uh, taking their angry mental health out on people, especially women. It's fucking sick. Rip, Bianca. You are an angel now and forever. You deserve so much more than this, and I'm sorry your death was exploited this way, said the person posting this on a timeline for retweets and likes. It's okay. It's okay. We understand. I guess this is the check. I don't know. I, I'm guessing this is her. I, and... You know, <laughs> Jim, why aren't you more certain that this these pictures are of the woman that's been murdered? Her head was nearly sawed off. So it's really, <laughs> I, I, I'd have to tilt that head like 70 degrees in the opposite <laughs> direction at a very weird angle. And then there'd need to be a lot more blood to really line it up and be forensic about this. Right, here's another one. Stop bringing up this poor girl's past and mistakes and faults as a way to make her death seem expected. Or less important. No child deserves to be murdered, no matter how troubled they were. No one deserves to die like that. Let's go to the next one here. Okay, and this is where it comes to. Again, apparently this was live streamed. 
or at least people were putting out pictures of it as it was happening. Here comes hell, it's redemption, right? And you can read people's reaction to this shit uh, and the comments that were going on in real time. Uh, you really did that shit? What is wrong with you? Someone send me the video. He likes the opposite of the Japanese girl that killed his boyfriend. Live stream your suicide, you fucking piece of shit. You're a fucking asshole. Burn in hell. Does this video even exist? Send me the video if you have it. So I, I, I think this is where the rumors that this was videotaped and live stream started coming from. Where right as the you know initial images were coming out as this guy was posting about the crazy shit that he's doing. Now, this did get news coverage. Uh, let me let me pull this up so I can read this. Uh, and I'll, I'll see if I can find that video, too, because there might be a video uh, discussing <laughs> what exactly happened. Uh, allegedly, again, this is somebody posting this uh, related to the Bianca stuff. Everybody was talking about Twitter. I, I believe this is referring to this. But homicide not far from Boilermaker course delays start of race. Woman dead. Man rushed to hospital after alleged domestic call in Utica. A homicide in Utica Sunday morning delayed the start of the Boilermaker wheelchair race and then the Boilermaker 15,000 uh, around 15 minutes. Police confirmed that the incident took place not too far from the course on Post Street, a side street that runs off Culver Avenue right in the uh, first mile of the course. Utica Police Lieutenant Brian Cormado says a woman was pronounced dead and a man was rushed to the hospital in what they are calling a possible domestic incident. The man did have significant cuts and lacerations, according to police. Uh, and that would line up to the pictures I've seen of his neck. Uh, Coromato says the murder weapon was a sharp instrument, but wouldn't elaborate further. Coromato did provide more information regarding the call that came into police around 7 Sunday morning that led police to the crime scene on Post Street. We got a call from one of the parents that was concerned about some things that were occurring in the relationship at that point. At this point, the call uh, was still under investigation, so we have nothing uh, further to release at this point. Cormato wouldn't uh, elaborate on how police exactly knew where the vehicle was at the end of Post Street. And again, a lot of the shit getting posted, I can't, I can't confirm with you. Uh, this was from a guy on Twitter was posting this with a bunch of her images and uh, saying this was coverage surrounding what happened. I believe she was murdered in the evening, though. And this is a story from the morning. So take it as you will. I'm just trying to present to you as much information as I can. Uh, this was... <laughs> This was her fucking profile. Uh, Bianca drops knife on the floor seductively. Oh no, winky face. Kicks it towards you. How reckless of me. Lies down in a vulnerable, posi <laughs> vulnerable position. Oh no. It looks like I made a mistake. Uh, you know, it, this, this reminds me very heavily of this fucking quote. <laughs> I'm seeing some fucking parallels here. I, you know, when you compare that to the earlier shit with that one conversation that was allegedly from her, uh, telling the guy, I used you, fuck you, I don't care about you, I cheated on you, you're a joke. And then she's posting shit like, oh, here's a, here's a knife, do something about it. What are you going to do? Are you going to stab me? Quote from man that was stabbed. Uh, now this was, was this the one from the, hold on, let me just double check for a second here. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is allegedly from the family of the guy that did it. Uh, again, <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. Shout out to all the people who target someone's family and blame them for a person's decision. Nothing better than waking up at 4 a.m. to find out your brother killed someone and tried to kill himself. And when you're trying to understand and comprehend how the person you looked up to and taught you so much is responsible for such a horrible act. And people proceed to go out and blame you for what he did. So here I am, stationed in Alaska for military service, wanting nothing more than to wake up. And be back home hoping this is some sick, twisted nightmare. Instead, I'm all the way across the country. I'm deeply sorry something like this came from my family. And my heart goes out for the family of the victim. But think about when his little sister and brothers find out what a disgusting thing he's done. And get blamed for it. They're kids. Again, that's allegedly from the brother of the uh, murderer slash su or failed suicide. Uh, and then this was an, another posting uh, talking about information related to what happened. Uh, Bianca's last known location before her death was at a small concert of relatively unknown artists, we believe. This is what Brandon used to track her down. And then proceeded to make the journey to find and kill her. Brandon posted photos of him driving to her location on his Instagram story. 
Upon arrival, he found Bianca, and we believed he pulled her away from the people at the party and talked to her one last time, before cutting deeply into her throat. He then moved her body from the murder site to his Ford Explorer, took two photos, one for his Instagram story captioning it, I'm sorry, Bianca, and posting another picture in a Discord server, aka a big chat group, with all of Bianca's close friends. A very graphic photo showing Bianca's blood-drained body. After the murder, Brandon committed suicide, or attempted to, but was found by police alive in critical condition. Location unknown. This story is very much incomplete, but these are all of the details that we have, or that we are aware of, right now. So, this motherfucker finds this chick, tracks her down, guts her, moves her to a different location, takes a photo to post on his own Instagram. He must have really fucking hated her. And then takes an even more explicit photo and sends it to her friend's Discord as a trophy picture to announce what he's done. Hey, everybody, take a look at this. I have, I have murdered this woman, and nobody can stop me. I have absolutely nearly decapitated her and there isn't a fucking thing any of you can do about it and then I, I, I guess a little bit of time passes after he posts that image and he tries to kill himself but he fails and you could I mean looking at the image of uh, his throat if, again if this is him uh, which I, I don't have any reason to really doubt I guess um, it's a fairly deep cut but it's not enough to finish him. Uh, he he could have probably cut his wrists. He could have could have done seppuku and gutted himself and spilled his organs out. But he didn't do any of that. It's like he kind of gave a half-hearted effort uh, to slit his own throat and just I guess gave up because it hurt too much. And then the police arrested him, and he's been transported to a hospital. I, I'm sure uh, we'll find out more information as the day goes on. Uh, but that is the information that I came across. Now, the girl posted a lot, uh, well, maybe not a lot, but a fairly decent amount on 4chan on uh, the social board. Uh, she was talked about a good deal on R9K, so you know, I guess I guess Hero's going to enjoy the press coming his way. Uh, but it, it's just weird coming across this particular story because just a day or two ago, uh, there was the one about the the guy from Reddit who, I, again, spent $1,300 on fucking Tinder trying to get dates, uh, described himself as an incel, posted on incel websites. Uh, I, I mean, $26 charges over and over again to boost his own ratings. And I, I don't know how this shit works. I guess it's like a microtransaction. It's like the, the mobile gaming of fucking dating. I, I have no idea why anybody would use this shitty service, but apparently he wanted to. He was desperate for some pussy. And after $1,300 and being told that he looked like he had fucking AIDS, uh, he finally gave up. And uh, yeah, again, this is supposedly from him. Uh, this was his final his final post. It's over. Good fucking bye. I uh, was planning on roping for my birthday, but I'm currently drunk and decided uh, today is the day. Life isn't set out for a death neck. I blame Tinder and Bumble, but ultimately it's my genetics. I've tried so hard over the past few months to improve with absolutely abysmal results. I've gotten as desperate to ask IT. I get, a, uh, I'm not sure 100% what IT is. I get told to try harder and that receiving racist messages and comments are a good thing. I get told that receiving insults from women not attracted to me are a good thing. Everyone that has wanted to see me dead, including that 1 p.m. from someone on IT, you win. I spent a shitload of money on Tinder Boost to get a match here and there. Well, women can get matches in minutes for free. I've messaged women. I know only to get ghosted. I've traveled to Asia only to see JBW in person. I can't fucking take it. I can't take it. If there's a hell, this has to be it. This is my last post. Good fucking bye. Now, when I first saw JBW, because I don't know a lot of the incel lo uh, lingo. That's how I got linked to the incel wiki. Uh, JBW apparently stands for Just Be White. So what he's saying is he traveled to Asia and found out that if you wanted to get Asian pussy, the easiest way, uh, <laughs> the path of least resistance, was just being a white dude. Didn't really have to put in the effort. If you just showed up and you're a white guy, they throw themselves at you. Which I suppose explains why there's so many angry hapas 
<laughs> on fucking Reddit bitching about white dudes banging Asian chicks. Because JBW is a thing that lives in their head. I know this guy was Hispanic. I had a couple of pictures he posted. Didn't look like a bad looking guy. Actually looked fairly normal. In fact, I almost think that if this dude had gone out and met women in a more normal environment, aside from slutfinder.com, a.k.a. Tinder, he would have probably done all right. I think his first mistake was spending $1,300 to try to get a date on the most vapid, self-serving website that could possibly exist. You know, somebody broke down uh, statistically, saying, you know, uh, the difference between men and women when it comes to finding a match and uh, the pussy-to-dick ratio <laughs> They're doing like an economics course on this shit. Saying that Tinder's awful. That women have their pick of anybody they want. But men are all just desperately lining I mean, that's always been that way. Hasn't it? Men are just desperately lining up. Trying to get trying to get some pussy. And this poor son of a bitch threw himself into the lion den of a bunch of uh, 20-something-year-old white girls that uh, all shit on him. Mercilessly shit on him. Uh, to the point where, I, you know, uh, again, allegedly, he hung himself. But not before he posted a immigrant folder of all the rejection letters that he got. So, I, you know, I think we'll take a look at that. Um, and then we will take a look at the background on Bianca. We'll look at the hashtag. And then we'll pop over to the incel wiki. I, I think that's how I'm going to break it down. So let me just, uh, let me grab this guy's, let me grab this guy's uh, immigrant folder. And we will do that. Check on chat here. How you doing, chat? How is your morning going? I see a lot of dancing puddings. I see lots of dancing puddings. Oh, got another got another diamond here. Let me respond to this one. It looks like the beta uprising is upon us. Apparently it has begun. A ninja gini. You're making me work hard for the grooming session by making me get this gay ass app. Uh, you're welcome. Be careful. The Chinese don't like it when you shit talk this place. Uh, there we go. And Hammerhead Shark murdered. Uh, yes, she did have a very... <laughs> how do we put this? A very unique look to her. Uh, she kind of reminds me a little bit of a gecko. Maybe that's just because she's dead. Maybe that's like something the human body does when it dies, but like she's looking left and right at the same time. Like a lizard. It's very weird. I, I don't know. I guess... I, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I shouldn't speak ill of the dead. That's terrible. I already see people. This hashtag shit's already kicking up. What is this called on Twitter? Uh, Rip Bianca already has 11,000 tweets. Uh, you can be prepared. We'll read through this shit, too. Wow, there's a lot of fuck guy stuff in this. They are not uh, They are not happy. I will tell you that much. All right, let me... Let me uh, okay, here we go. Here's the immigrant file that I was looking for. Let me just pull this all up. Put it in a browser, and we'll, we'll scroll through it. I think that should hopefully this pulls it up hopefully i've done this correctly and things don't go to don't go tits up we'll find out in a second here chat oh boy hey look it worked oh my god all right welcome to immigrant uh this is the file he put together called being an average his or looking hispanic on tinder and it was updated july 2019 and these i guess are allegedly conversations he had with women on tinder so remember, he spent $1,300 for the honor of having these conversations. Talk about buyer's remorse. Holy shit. You at work right now? No, but I'm not available right now. Oh, I just wanted a text. I'm at work, bored, LOL. You free today, though? Nah, hanging with my friends today. That's the nice, hey, fuck off. Oh my god, what genre? It's like trippy electronic music, LOL. Links are to a YouTube. Oh my god. Not going to lie, I just realized something and I'm so annoying. I'm literally moving next weekend. Like, dead ass. I'm moving to San Antonio for school. I That's, that's you know, I'm going to have to, let's give some ratings to this. I'm going to say that's a terrible excuse. Oh my God, do you know what I just realized? My legs are on fire. I am literally burning to death right now and I'm not going to be able to go on a date with you. Oh, it's excruciating. The flesh is just melting off. I'm so silly. How did I not notice that? Well, thanks for the YouTube link. Wait, I don't want AIDS. And you ain't cute. Gotta go, kissy face. Uh, perfect is a response to that one. 
What's up, Summer? How's your day? Hood. Good. What are you looking for on Tinder? I feel like that's important. <laughs> the response, not you. Perfect. Oh, that is fucking brutal. Yo, you free tomorrow? I'm not working in the cold. Fuck that. Laugh my ass off. I'm going to be busy tomorrow. I'm going to work for a little bit and then go to a party in the evening. Apparently a party he's not invited to. <laughs> Tom Sully? I don't know what the fuck that is. Take the Metro over here. I'll buy you a drink. Not today, really. I got a date today. Really? With who? A guy came over to mine last night. He just left now to change his clothes and we'll come back. White guy? Yeah. Remember, he was talking about JBW. Just be white. Oh, I, that's not even subtle. I, she may as well have just said, hey, can't talk right now. I have a penis inside of me. Oh, my God. Hey, thanks for hitting me up on Tinder. But right now, literally, there's a penis sliding in and outside of my body. And I just can't. I can't talk. It's, oh, my God, my legs are on fire. Hi, where are you from? America. You? You You look Indian. Ouch. Yeah, very depressing for me. But whatever. I'll be back in the USA soon. My American friend gets girls so easily. So I thought it would apply to me. Oh, come on. Think about the bright side. You were not born to hook up. Wow. There are still a lot of things worth to be focused. If you really want, you can get to pubs, I think. Or maybe wait until you get back to the U.S. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, I think I will. How is that? How is that the bright side? Think about the bright side. You were not born to hook up. Hey, hey, slugger. Let's be positive about this. You look like shit. You are fucking hideous. Here, I'm gonna g give me a mailing address. I'm gonna send you a paper bag so you can walk outside of the house without people vomiting. <laughs> That's what I like to call the silver lining to all of this. You ugly son of a bitch. Women were not uh, not being the the nicest to this gentleman. Laugh my ass off. Address or give me the virus. What the fuck? You gotta earn it. Uh, sounding suspect already. If you say suspect, I don't fuck with you. Suspicious as fuck. I'm sorry, you drunk or something. This is her. Bo this is her boyfriend. I just wanted to see what kind of fags were on Tinder. You're not a fag though. You're cute. Thanks, bro. I bet you're cute too. This motherfucker spent thirteen hundred dollars on Tinder and hung himself. And the only positive response he got. Was, was was some dude who maybe wanted to suck his dick. That's it. One gay dude. Hey, this is her boyfriend, but you know what? I'd fuck your ass. <laughs> I will plow that butthole. I will pause the shit out of you. You matched with Hannah. How often do you get Hannah Montana jokes? No, goodbye. <laughs> Shut down. What are you studying? Damn, not even a hey, you're pretty. And that was the end of that conversation. These, the, a lot of these don't last very long. Well, you can just pick and choose when you want to work. Obviously, I got a weird job. That's interesting. What you looking here? For, what you looking for on Tinder? If you don't mind me asking, friends. But who knows what could happen? I see. I'm gonna be honest. I'm looking for something a little casual at the moment. And if it leads to something more, then that's cool. If that would make me a fuck boy, then MB. Yeah, lol. Well, no thanks. He really doesn't know how to close it. All right? You got to remember. You got to remember. ABC, brother. Always be closing. Probably don't throw fuckboy in there. You got, you got your foot in the door, and then you just waved your dick at her and screamed dinner time. All right? You, you, you started out okay, and you took it a little too far with the fuckboy line. I have worked from 4 to 10 today. I'm going to show... Uh, I'm going to a show in an hour or two. You down? I would be, but I have to wake up at 6 tomorrow. <laughs> Hope you have fun. Uh, so you're not going to the show tomorrow? I don't have an ID. You don't need it, though. I'll let you know. I might, I might be exhausted. Okay, this, this bitch came up with three separate excuses to say no. I got to work. I have to be up early. I don't have an ID. And he's, he's begging at this point. 
Oh, come on, come on, please, please. You don't need an ID. I'll, vo I'll vouch for you. Hey, Haley. How's Tinder treating you? Pretty okay, you? Just installed at or it after months. You busy tonight? I'm craving a bubble tea, lol. Ha ha ha. Yeah, unfortunately, taking summer classes. So I have a lot of homework. To you know, I'm going to take a break here just because it's making me sad. Let me ask chat something. I'll put that back there. Uh, how fucking depressing is this? Uh, we, we're, we're a little over halfway through. Not a single yes, except for the gay boyfriend. Not a single fucking yes. Just the one gay boyfriend comment. Just the, just the one, just the one gay boyfriend comment. Ah, yeah, I'm gonna, can I get it? Can you press D for depressing? Because I don't know how else to fucking explain that. This poor motherfucker spent $1,300 to have all these people tell him, you're ugly, fuck off, no one wants you. We haven't even gotten to the part where they scam him yet. Oh, god damn. Oh, I had a Streamlabs come through from Joey Jojo. Hey, Jim, if I may lighten the mood, but uh, have you ever played a Sarah and Kagura game? And if so, what is your favorite? And who's your favorite big titty ninja girl? Mine is Astaval versus and Murasaki. Uh, I'm familiar with the series, but I'm not, I'm not a, uh, uh, I guess, an avid fan of it. I don't really play it. So I couldn't tell you who my favorite girl is. Whoever has the biggest tits would probably be my answer for that. Lots of D's in chat. Absolutely way too many D's. God, this poor son of a bitch. No wonder he fucking roped himself. All right. Uh, let's go back to the, the fucking modern day depression quest. And uh, read, the, read the rest of these horrific rejections. Uh, Friday, I'll hit you up. Do it. Hey, Emma, you still down or what? I might see a show later, so let me know. Dude, I'm going to be <laughs> I'm gonna be too dead tonight. Sorry, but I hope you enjoy the show. All good. Why Why even cock tease him? Why, why even say, hey, hit me up? You know you're going to say no. Just say no. Hey, yo, you still down for today? Let me know. I might see a show. Has hot chocolate? Obviously. Well, you should go see that show. I need to study for my exams next week. I'm stressing, but thanks for the offer. All good. <laughs> Here's where it gets fucking mean. You got to read this part first. Uh, right right here. Let me. I just want to make sure that's showing up on stream well enough. Uh, Scam me out of $100 worth of Uber rides. Then sent me this message. Thirsty little boy, buy some pussy. Because nobody's going to fuck you for free. God damn. So he, 1300 bucks is now 1400 bucks. Somebody, I guess, was fucking with him. He said, hey, buy me an Uber ride for $100. <laughs> and then after they go wherever the fuck they're going, tell them basically, get a hooker, you ugly son of a bitch. I have no interest in you. And again, a normal-looking guy. A fairly normal-looking guy. Hey, what's up? And I mean, it could be better. Just a bunch of horny dudes or what? Yeah, mostly. It's annoying and boring, honestly. Well, what are you looking for on here? Attention. <laughs> like it's, oh my God, an honest woman. Attention. And I like people to talk to, so that's cool. I don't know, I kind of go with the flow in you. Looking for some casual fun. If it leads to something more, then that's cool. That cool? To be honest, I have a whole lot of friends with benefits, so I don't think we could do that. God. So she basically says, hey, I like horny people. Yeah, I like fucking around. Oh, with you? No, thanks. No, not interested. Yeah, it's cool. But I'm literally bored, so I'm on this to pass the time. Not looking to go out right now. It's late. All good. You got time tomorrow? We can, <laughs> we can have tacos. What place has good tacos? Uh, Taco Fiesta? I don't know what business this is. Uh, blank Tacos. It's amazing. Ever been? Nope, this is the first time I've heard of it. Best tacos in town. Not even joking. Want to go tomorrow? I'm actually... Can you believe this shit? I'm actually leaving out of town tomorrow. Worst timing ever. And from this picture, this is a fat chick. He's offering free food to a fat woman who has rejected him. And used the same excuse as that previous woman. I, I have to leave the country. 
oh my god, I'd love to go on a day with you. But witness protection is putting me in a for I'm moving to Czechoslovakia. Oh, darn. So when do you got time for a date? When do I got time? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Ups upside down smiley face. And then he's showing off the boost. 9.9 .9 times the views. Your boost was a success. You got basically 10 times more profile views. Swipe to see who checked you out. <laughs> Zero new likes. Uh, messages, none. No likes, no messages. After spending 1300 fucking dollary dues. Oh, that is brutal as fuck. Oh, god damn, none of them were nice. <laughs> the, only, the only person that was nice to him was another dude. He actually made a Chad feel so bad for him that he lied and said, maybe I'd fuck you. Think about that. Rejected by hundreds of women. Except for the one guy that probably found out his girlfriend's cheating on him. It felt so bad for this motherfucker. He's like, you know what, dude? I'd fuck you. <laughs> Stay strong, brother. I would stick it up your ass. I mean, I know neither of us are gay, but just, you know, keep on keeping on. All right, from me to you. It's like a bro it's a blood brother thing. Holy shit. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I know that's a, a little bit off topic, but I again, I think it's fairly related just because of the subject we're talking about, uh, obviously. Uh, let's see here. All right. Let me... Let me grab an archive of the thread, because uh, there's an OP and a thread talking about Bianca. We'll look up a little bit about Bianca, and we'll, we'll go take a look at the hashtag started in her honor. Uh, now, this is an archive thread purporting to be about her uh, from R9K from about a year to a year and a half ago. When was this from? February 2018. And you can see they refer to her by the name... Uh, Oxy, which again matches up with the screen cap we had seen earlier on, uh, where they were calling her Oxy. Uh, but to give you more information about the particular girl that's been had her head chopped off, <laughs> like it again, it's brutal. You can go take a look at it if you want to. Uh, but let's take a look at Bianca Devins, uh, aka uh, Oxy. And this is the information that was posted on R9K. This is up on the uh, Desu archives. This up here we go okay uh, I'll read it for you chat I have to cut the screen out a few times so we don't see any naughty images again I got to keep it safe for work new thread because the old one got deleted good that it was archived again they've got another archive thread about this this thread is finding out about information about the mentally deranged and attention whoring fembot Bianca don't delete this thread mods we aren't posting her CP we are doing this thread to help her what we know so far She's 16 years old. Started browsing 4chan at 12 to 13. Mainly browses R9K, Soch, and Fash. She got popular on all three boards due to her constant attention whoring. Has borderline personality disorder. Lost her virginity to a robot called Batchen. After all that, it went downhill and she turned into a whore. Fucked lots of guys for drugs and money. Did camming and sent nudes to tons of people too is very kinky and has rape fantasies. Admitted to having daddy issues. Also got molested, but we don't know if it was by her dad. Made a sex tape with a guy she met on Discord. He shared it with her friends and got visited by the police. This caused huge drama, so she went quiet for a while. She used to only smoke weed, but then started taking harder drugs like heroin. Often makes th suicide threats for attention. She has an unnaturally long neck. And her uh, known alias is uh, Oxy, which is the one we saw before. I guess Ash, Ailsing, and Noxies. And I, they were trying to white knight it. They were trying to save this girl. <laughs> For some reason, R9K was trying to save this chick. And, uh, well, we can see how it turned out. She ended up dead because an incel hunted her, stalked her on the internet, and just fucking went to town on her with a, a knife. And just started slicing her up slicing her up for I don't know what the fuck 
what's going through this guy's head. I'm, I'm sure we'll get more information as it comes out. Uh, let me pull up the hashtag. Let's go see. Let's go see what's going on with that. Okay. Uh, one second, chat. Let me get this pulled up. Oh, and if you have any any inside information on our our girl Bianca, or on <laughs> on the guy that fucking decided to try to murder suicide some chick and failed at it, uh, feel free to link it, and I will peruse it. Potentially put it up on stream for everybody. I'll take a look at some of the hashtag stuff and then swing by the Incel Wiki and then go to the Incel Forum. I actually, you know, I haven't even checked to see if they're talking about this over there, uh, but I suspect they might be. But again, she was, you know, it seems to be a known quantity on certain 4chan boards, and I'm sure he was as well. And so, uh, congratulations, Hero. Uh, Moot fucks you once again. You're going to get some uh, headlines off of this one. I'm sure you're going to fucking love that shit. Who doesn't love it? Okay. I think we're... I think we're good. Let's take a look at this uh, amazing hashtag. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh, this is the Rip Bianca. Uh, currently with lots of fucking tweets. She was young and had her whole life ahead of her. Please be careful who you meet online because people are absolutely fucking insane. Give this girl justice. Uh, and then they've got a bunch of pictures of her. She does have a very long neck, too, by the way. I guess that's an accurate description. I see Rip Bianca trending, and then when I click and understand what happened, I'm sick to my fucking stomach. Ladies, please be careful. These sick fucks will forever exist. And it's tragic many women have to live in fear that this may happen to them. Just heartbreaking. R.I.P. Bianca was 17. Show some respect and stop posting the pictures of her murdered or her murderer took. It's disgusting. He wasn't her boyfriend. He wasn't her friend. He was obsessed. She deserved a full life, a happy life. It was taken away. Please be respectful. It's five, and I see a psycho murdering a poor girl and post it on Instagram Live just because she wasn't interested in his advances. How entitled can you fucking be? Probably the sickest shit I've seen in a while. Be careful who you talk to online. <laughs> I am a nice guy. Rip Bianca. Yeah, you can already see where this is going. i uh, make sure we don't. Okay. Honestly, in this day and age, things like this get swept under the rug, never to be looked on, because we've grown to become so numb. Things that we forget or pay no mind to, even though it happens one day ago or a month. I, I don't know how these two are related, Cass. I mean, Etika threw himself in the, he threw himself off a fucking bridge. Bianca had her head chopped off. <laughs> like, these are two different things, dude. It's not like a suicide awareness thing you're trying to tell people about here. Etika did a flip into a river. She had her head sawed off. I don't, I don't think she was down with that. I don't, I don't know if she was like, hey, hey, guys, could somebody, could somebody drive by and take a fucking axe to my neck? Uh, you know, potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Maybe I'm wrong on this, chat. Oh, I'm just, you got to give me a second to jump around here because I want to make sure we don't have any murder. People are posting the pictures of her, her, uh, crime scene all over fucking Twitter. So I gotta, I gotta just double check. Lots of Rip Biancas. Uh, I and Miles Chong made a, uh, a Twitter moment about it, talking about it. Uh, what did he say? Uh, she didn't deserve it. No one deserves it. He wasn't her boyfriend. He was stalking her and knew her from discord. He was obsessive. Girls, please be vigilant. Apparently. Uh, so there you go. I mean, that is the information that's currently on hand. That is that is essentially what's known about what's going on with uh, Bianca. Now, there are pictures of him out there oh, with his neck sliced up. There are pictures of her. I, I'm guessing more than one now that we have confirmation that that was from his Instagram account. Uh, probably showing her body in different poses and different degrees of damage. Uh, I, I, I can't share it on DLive, obviously. Uh, you can find it easily. If you go to look on threads on 4chan or if you uh, browse around on Twitter or Instagram, people are just reposting it everywhere. So I guess if you're curious, it's out there. Um, you know, actually, let me see if I can find... Maybe there... Are there more articles about his arrest? Let's see if we can find that. Uh, what was it? Devon's? Okay. Let's see, see what pops up. Up-and-coming personnel. Okay, let's let's see what this says. 
Of course, nothing pops up. Uh, Bianca Devins, uh, this is from Brittany Venzi. Bianca Devins, would, uh, some would call an e-girl, was killed by some guy on R9K. There's photos of this girl's throat slit open. Women online need to be careful. Based on what I'm reading, she was 17 years old. Oh, more people are posting shit. Uh, here's another summary. Uh, let's see if there's anything different about it. Uh, talks about personality disorder, uh, drugs, and money. Uh, it's unknown how many guys she fucked, but it is at least nine, apparently, from things that were posted. Uh, bragged about sucking an older man's dick for $200 when she was 14. People keep bringing up a sex tape. They keep saying that she had a sex tape. She made a sex tape when she was 16 years old with some guy from Discord, and the police were involved. I, I figure if the police were involved and that was child porn, somebody would have got arrested. There'd ha there'd have to be some kind of a trail related to that. This caused huge drama, so she went quiet for a while. Nope, this is basically the same summary we got on R9K, but it looks like it was posted to Soch. I'm looking for any news coverage of her, if they have like an update on what's going on with this fucking guy. Okay, uh, yeah, the guy's name was Brandon Andrew Clark, uh, apparently is his name, according to one news source. Uh, talking about her funeral service, shit like that, but uh, no news articles just yet. I don't know, Chad. Uh, girls, be careful out there. Uh, well, I, how are they going to be careful? Like, what, what sort of advice? Be careful, obviously. But if you've got a psychopath that's fucking stalking you, and is going to go the length of cutting your goddamn head off. Like, what is, what is she supposed to do? She didn't, well, like, uh, how do you, she's not psychic. She's supposed to know that the R9K killer is coming to cut her fucking head off? It's such a weird thing to post under this fucking hash. Be careful. Hey, if somebody swings a, a fucking axe at your neck, uh, dodge out of the way. <laughs> you gotta be quick on your toes, ladies. Be careful. <laughs> what? Everybody's making it sound like this is uh, a psychopath that found her on Discord, stalked her to an event, and like, uh, well, I, how is she gonna know that before he does it? I guess I'm slightly confused. You know what might help us if we go to that incel wiki? Maybe they've got some hot advice on how ladies can protect themselves from having their fucking heads cut off. Let's uh, let's load that up, and then we'll go take a look at the the incel forums. Oh, exciting. Oh, another another super chat. Uh, sorry, stream labs. From Ronson. Hey, Mr. Medicare, if you have time, would you watch this? It reminded me of the gross cooking stream you did a while ago. Not sure of the source. I'm not sure if this is going to be one of those videos where some disgusting hairy bitch cooks like period brownies. I don't want to... Like, I've seen some fucked up shit when it comes to cooking. I did a video on it. Uh, women cooking period brownies. And making, like, piss sludge to drink. Uh, just, oh, God, there's one. Oh, I'm getting queasy just thinking about it. I don't even know if I want to tell this. I don't even know if I want to tell this story. Give me a minute, chat. Oh, boy. God. Oh. It's just horrendous. Some women are disgusting. God fucking damn it. I, I think it was on CGL. It was on one of the goddamn boards that women fucking congregate around it was some fucking chick who had like a butt oh god a fucking uteral lining just slough off like fucking meat patties worth of it just slide out of her pussy in the shower on her period and she decides to scoop it all up uh, she washes it off a little bit and then fries it with some oil on the stove and eats it like it's bacon all right, there are some fucked up people out there. I don't know if this video is something like that, but oh, God damn, that was a hard picture to look at. And the description of them eating it, uh, ugh, talking about how it was like bacon, is very bad. Women are horrible when they do stuff like that. I don't know. It's not dudes doing it. Dudes aren't doing that. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with some chicks. Period blood brownies, piss shakes, and fucking... Uh, uh, uteral bacon crunchy I don't fucking know I don't, even want, I, don't even want, I don't want to even think of the texture of this shit it's horrible is what it is <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you why would you ever make something like that 
Oh, you know, now I'm almost, God, I, I probably shouldn't. I was going to see if I could sneak a picture of it on stream, but DLive will send a fucking stealth bomber over my place if I do that. There's no way, there's no way they're going to let me show you utero bacon on a stream on this place. So probably best not to do that. Probably best not to push our luck with that. Holy shit. Uh, oh, uh, Archer donated a diamond. Uh, that is so sad. It's a wonder he didn't go Elliot's way. Are you talking about the guy who hung himself? Yeah, it's a, it's depressing shit. Arcade Outpost, incels rise up. Uh, yeah, and then looks like the beta uprising is upon us. Apparently it very much is. All right, so I haven't had a, I didn't get a lot of time to uh, dig through the incel wiki, nor did I get a lot of time to really look at the incel forum. But I thought it would be fun to at least look through it. Again, I got linked to it because of the JBW. So I, uh, you know... We'll take a wonderful journey through this place and see <clears throat> what it has to offer. If it's complete shit, well, <laughs> what, what are you going to do? Uh, let me just load this up. Okay, I think uh, I think we're good to go. All right. Welcome to the Incel Wiki. It's Incel inside. JBW. Uh, that's what was linked in regards to the poor son of a bitch that hung himself after spending $1,300 to get told he had, looked like he had AIDS. Uh, JBW or JBW is short for Just Be White Theory and describes the fact that any white man can get a girl in Asia or South America. John, did you have any luck on Tinder here? Dave, I get no matches here in the West, boyo, but I'm going to visit Asia soon and run the JBW game on those gooks. It can't fail there. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, here's the contents of this article. Uh, the BBC takeover myth. Uh, what <laughs> do you want to? What is this? Black Pill 101, Episode 4. BBC takeover myth or f chat? Chat. Is the big black dick takeover? Is that a myth or not? Do we want to watch this? I don't know if it's. <laughs> I don't know if it's any good or not. Should we? Should we? <laughs> should we find out about the BBC? Let's, I'm kind of curious now. I'll be honest. Incel TV. There's an incel TV. Oh, this is exciting. All right, let's 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 take a listen. <laughs> what is this? We choose superior men. And superior men are beautiful black kings. And they've been superior since the dawn of motherfucking time. And they are coming and they are spreading their beautiful seed all across Europe. And no matter how hard little pin dick Trump wants to try and keep them out of the United States of America, they're coming here too. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> this is like some cuck fetish shit. Listen, boys, those big black dicks are coming over by boat. <laughs> no matter how many walls you build, I'm going to tongue fuck a glory hole right through that brick. And those cocks are coming to the land of the free. And they're going to breed all your little white country daughters that have never met a black man before. They're going to literally take over. What is going on, everybody? I wanted to make this video and address this issue from a black pill science standpoint, because I know this is a controversial topic in our community. So I will refrain from talking about my own personal opinions and experiences, as this is going to be an episode based on empirical evidence. In our community, you see a lot of people say things like, blacks can't be incel, all they have to do is to go to white suburbs and they're gonna get all the white women worshipping their BBC and stuff. I mean, everybody has their own opinions when it comes to this, but what does black pill science say? Let's see. The first thing I want to talk about is black and white interracial court. Is this is this guy doing a video looking up science articles about big black dicks? <laughs> what? Why would you what? What was it? Was it who the fuck was it with uh, Naked Ape? Right? It was Naked Ape and Kraut on live stream together where they're talking about knockout. <laughs> what was it? Knockout studies on dick sizes. This dude did a six-minute video about scientific articles about how hungry, how thirsty white women are for dick, big black cocks. Amazing. 
<laughs> this is okay. Let's let's we have to dig around a little bit. I'm getting excited. What do we? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, okay, we'll go to the main page. I I don't think there's anything that's not safe for work. I think we should be okay. I think we should be okay. Uh, this is their main page. Is that showing up right? Yeah, it is. All right. Uh, incel is an academic sociological term that is short for and means involuntary celibacy, a life circumstance. Individual philosophies like the black pill or subcultures like 4chan culture emerge on some but not all forums dedicated to involuntary celibates and go in and out of fashion. Inseldom was first academically recognized as a sociological phenomena by the Donnelly study. The Donnelly study defined incels as all adults who want to have a willing sexual partner of the gender that they are attracted to, but cannot find one for six months or more. Oh, okay, so apparently, Chad, according to the Donnelly study, if you want to get your dick wet and you haven't been able to accomplish that in six months, you are you are scientifically, you know, quote unquote, we're talking sociology here, you are scientifically recognized as an incel. For the purposes of this wiki, an incel is someone who would or who is or would be romantically or sexually rejected by the vast majority of the single members of the gender they are attracted to while approaching at random in spaces socially designated for dating for at least a few years. The current non-niche incel forums are incels.co, Reddit's Brain Cells, Facebook's Incelistan, and Celestan.net, loveshy.com. We checked that out when we looked at that fucking documentary. Incels without hate and forever alone. Some inc There's an incel political party? There's an incel political... Should we... Oh, like, you know what? Yes. Let's take a look at the incel political party. Can I pull that up? Oh, there's nothing here. Incel party is the first political party devoted to the incel issue. It was... Oh, my God. It was just created. It was created just two months ago, guys. It includes government seizure of boomer real estate to give to millennials for free and paying femcels and incels to date each other, with incels being paid three times more. God, their political party, they want to steal boomer property and then pay forever loans to fuck each other. That's, hey, you got my vote. Uh, I, I'm going to pull this up just to take a look. <laughs> okay. I'm going to pull this. Let's take a look at their website. I just want to make sure there's nothing naughty on there. Here we go. Here's the Incel Party website. Let's look at their main planks. Incel Party is a new political party. The Incel Party is a nonviolent political party devoted to helping all people of the inceldom spectrum find a partner. Incel is short for and means involuntary celibacy, a life condition. Incel Party is editable like a wiki. Just click the cog and add your platform planks or pages. Policies. Key policies of the Incel Party include legal government seizure of boomer real estate to give to millennials for free. Pay femcells and incels to date each other. A monthly inflation-adjusted government allowance of $500 for all the poor. Legalize suicide and abolish psychiatry. Combating Encelophobia. At the Incel Party, we will call out Encelophobia and bring about a new societal appreciation for all the men that are weak, non-violently. Alright guys, you heard them. Incelparty.win is the name of the website. And they have said they are open for you to put anything. You're welcome to edit this. Just click that cogwheel and you can choose their policies. Now I think if you're highly motivated to join this amazing political party, I think you could come up with some really amazing fucking <laughs> policy ideas to share with the incel community. Aside from stealing boomer real estate and forcing the government to pay you money and <laughs> legalizing suicide and outlawing psychiatry. I like this. You know, I'm an incel. He's proud. All right. Forget fucking cell phobia. The incel party is here to win. Okay, guys? <laughs> the incel party. Move over, green party. Move, move over, libertarians. 
The incel party's here, and they're running on the pussy platform. Their planks are their penises. They're looking to get their dicks wet, and nothing's getting in the way. You hear that, boomer? We're taking, we're taking your house, grandpa. I'm going to sell that shit and fuck some whores. Welcome to the incel party. I don't know who their candidate's going to be. <laughs> Where are they going to run? <laughs> That's it. Stefan Molyneux. Stefan Molyneux is going to run as the main candidate for the incel party. I think that should, I think that's, you know what? He would do it. <laughs> he would fucking do it. He's going to defoo, he's going to defoo that property right off those boomer motherfuckers. Oh, incredible. Let me, uh, you know what, again, because I don't know what I'm going to encounter. Let me just, let me go look at the, <laughs> let me go look around here a little bit. Oh, they're, oh, they're actually, okay, well, maybe we have more. Okay, see, I could, there's no way I could show that on stream. All right, there's, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of shit on here. Oh, wow, criminal justice reform. They want to release all non-violent drug offenders. Decrease the sentencing of all non-violent offenders to three months or less for any, for any crime. Allow prisoners to continue their non-hallucinogenic drug addictions in jail. But each jail can provide rehab services voluntarily. This is a very specific one. Set a 65 to 73 degree... They're talking about literal temperature. 65 to 73 degree Fahrenheit mandatory indoor temperature ban for all jails. And proven rigorously enforced nutrition standards for food in jail. Far too many prisoners have died from drug withdrawals, hot weather, and poor nutrition. Better stock train an employee uh, or employee preventative and emergency medical personnel for all the inmates. Abolish psychiatry and reckless opioid prescriptions. I, I would show you the page I'm looking at, but there's some <laughs> some sexy pictures on here. Oh, here we go. Uh, a monthly government allowance for all the poor of $500 a month starting and adjusted for inflation each month. This actually isn't so radical. We already have Social Security income and Social Security disability income. However, this would decouple the safety net from psychiatry. This allows... You know what? They keep bringing up psychiatry. I'm getting the feeling they don't like it very much. Wow. All right, the psychiatry article is enormous. Yeah, I'm going to pull chat here. Okay. We, we got a little bit off the beaten path. I was just going to look at the incel wiki. Should we... Do you want to read the psychiatry article on the incel party website to find out what their thoughts on psychiatrists are or should we go back to the wiki i'll let you decide chat what are what are we gonna do with this shit uh yes yes do it <laughs> somebody sees the means of reproduction yes comrade we need to we need to seize the vaginas Holy shit, this is a big fucking article. All right, I got that queued up, guys. We're going to take a look at the psychiatry article. Let me just <laughs> let me just read the rest of this. Uh, they're, they're talking about using the military to seize to seize everything. Oh, millennials get everything for free. Uh, Gen X, fuck you, you get nothing. Steal it from grandpa, give it to the grandson. Mom and dad, throw yourself off a bridge. You're not getting shit. Oh, there's an incel of phobia article two uh this one looks okay let's uh let's take a look at incel phobia there's no nudity on this page all right here we go combating incel phobia incel phobia is a form of ableism usually characterized by hatred fear antagonism or aversion towards true cells incels or near cells Incelophobes sometimes express this antagonism through virgin shaming against true cells cacophobia against ugly cells and ableism against disabled cells. Encelophobia is sometimes called incel hatred and overlaps with anti encelidum A person who holds <laughs> Jesus encelophobic beliefs is an encelophobe or an incel hater. Encelophobes justify their encelophobia by suggesting that concepts such as the black pill or the red pill are sexist. But they're silent when women such as Catherine Hackham says practically the exact same thing. The most self-conscious incels when becoming incel toms 
hit self doms sometimes parrot and cellophobic behaviors oh you fucking incel tom vagina lover <laughs> oh, okay combating encelophobic narratives we at the incel party will give pride to recovering incels the first step is acceptance we want to let most men know that they have been incel at some point in their lives and that it's okay to come out as an incel we will hold non-violent coming out events such as asking people to take pictures of themselves <laughs> holding up a sign Say coming out as an involuntary celibate. Financial and celibates and other singletons are sometimes discriminated against financially. In the UK, research by the Good Housekeeping Institute estimates that singletons pay two thousand dollars or I'm sorry, two thousand pounds more per year than married and cohabitating people on everything from car insurance, council tax, travel fares wills and many other costs the difference is even more lopsided in the u.s wherein in celibates are especially discriminated against in health care payments uh, broadest sense in the broadest sense the usage of the term encelophobia incorporates a wide range of behaviors in its truest broadest usage encelophobia within the dating scene is referred to as non redomancy which means romantic rejection non redomancy most prominently affects true cells and what the fuck is a nifo cell <laughs> there's what are these terms the former because uh, i i'm this is mind fucking me I, I i just i need to i i'm sorry i have to i have to okay there's nothing here all right that that article doesn't exist yet <laughs> even the person that wrote it doesn't have a definition for true cell there's an article for Misandry too? God. Okay, no, that's just a very... It's a blurb. All right. Okay. I've got the psychiatry article queued up. Let me go get uh, another drink. <laughs> I'm going to need some some liquid to read through this bad boy. Because it's it's a big one. It is a big one. Uh, let me put on some a little bit of background music. Oh, wow. What are we going <laughs> to... What are we going to listen to? We need something that fits the mood. Uh, is there is there like just a a lonely so oh uh, you know what I think this might do it. I cr I cry every time, chat. Just uh, hits me right in the feels. Hits me right in the feels. That should be the theme song. You know, since this incel party is wide open for anybody to put forward any ideas they have. Again, <laughs> again, that website is incelparty.win. I think that should be adopted as a theme song. I think it fits perfectly. Oh, we had a few uh, a few little diamonds go through. Uh, Tinder rigs against users' racial preferences. Uh, that's coming from Weepy Peephole or Peehole, <laughs> and from Gopnik. Uh, incel party line sees the means of reproduction. I like it. We print that on some fucking t-shirts. Get marching in the street. Uh, that guy from that place. How could you forget that BBC is a WMD, Jimmy? Uh, that is true. Tariq Nasheed told us. The big black dick is a weapon of mass destruction, and we should fear it. From Gopnik again, Jim, you'd know all about the JBW, wouldn't you? Well, that is very true. I am the person that makes Happa's rage on Reddit. From Archer, that is so sad. Why didn't he go Elliot Rogers' way? Okay, I think we're caught up. Let me just check Streamlabs really quick, and we'll get back to the incel wiki. Now, we did have one go through from Montagraph. Oh, wow. Stay back, Mr. Mediocre. Got me. Nailed it. Nailed it. Sit your ass down, Jim. School's in session. Teacher's here. Oh, okay. Uh, prepare your... This is a long article. This is what you wanted, chat. So if this... Just buckle in. Who knows what crazy... Sh There's a lot of videos. There's a lot of videos in this article. All right, let's... I'm excited. Are you excited, chat? Chat, tell me, are you excited? Are you ready to hear about why the incel party hates psychiatry? Maybe we're going to learn that the incel party was founded by Tom Cruise. And this is like some deep cover Scientology shit. Oh, you know what? Now that I think about it, the incel party needs to get the support of Scientology. They both hate psychiatry. Combining those parts... 
David Miscavige, we need your support at the incel party. Come on. Take down those fucking psychiatrists. All right, let's let's get back to it. Uh, psychiatry from the incel party. Psychiatry is an instrument of social control for deviants who aren't uh, who aren't in regular jail. In other words, society's sewer. If you deviate from society in any meaningful way and you do not live on your own, expect to meet a psychiatrist at some point in your life. Meta studies or studies of studies, have proven that antidepressants, for example, to be not clinically significant in the treatment of depression beyond placebo, but their actual effects have been proven to be quite harmful in the long and sometimes short term. Talk therapy, such as CBT, is also proven ineffective. Meeting a psychiatrist. Not all psychiatrists are horrible people. However, if you ever hint that you have suicidal or homicidal ideation, they have a legal authority to lock you up temporarily or quote unquote temporarily and you don't want that trust us in fact they also need no real evidence courts in psychiat or psychiatric in cases are heavily biased towards parents and doctors it is therefore helpful to record your psychiatric sessions legally if you attend them and better yet not attend them at all <laughs> i already i already like our start here psychiatrists are fucking liars their medicine is from the devil, and just don't even go. Don't show up. Fuck these people. If you are 18 and over, and in good health, and you think that you may be forced to see a psychiatrist because people want you on drugs, move. <laughs> move. Run. You need to run. Just drop your shit and run. Get out of your house now with food and clothing and take an Uber to a friend's house or a homeless tent set up. Not a homeless shelter. Those places now employ psychiatry. You may need to leave a note on social media posting that it was a voluntary decision of yours and you are not a missing person. Your former caretakers now have no legal authority to force psychiatry on you, even if they want to, or if they, even if they want to lie to do so. Even being homeless is better than in the decades of mental torture that psychiatric drugs can inflict upon you. Psychiatry and incels. Most incels, when trying to describe their psychic pain about social situations, they will usually be labeled as either schizophrenic or socially anxious, depending on how much time the psychiatrist wants to spend evaluating their situation. Uh, given the treatment almost never involves improving in the area of romantic relationships, and harmful drugs are instead prescribed, which often make dating harder, your life starts spiraling downwards. Psychiatrists sometimes prescribe... <clears throat> Uh, SSRIs. Uh, I think those are serotonin reuptake inhibitors. I'm not 100% sure. Tin cells as ana for <laughs> I, I don't know, not aphrodisiacs. Uh, anaphrodisiacs. Even though SSRIs are <laughs> anorgasmia, not reduced libido. I I can't pronounce these fancy words. Psychiatrists will rarely acknowledge inceldom as its own problem, which causes illness. However, this is not the main reason to avoid psychiatrists. Involuntary singledom or incel is not a cult any more than determinism is. And we don't have members. Psychiatry is harmful to everyone. Okay, uh, I got to call you out on this one, dude. <laughs> you can't say you don't have members when this article is on a fucking political party for incels that has open membership. <laughs> this, this is a lie. This whole paragraph is a lie. You do have members. You have members starting on May 24th of this year at incelparty.win. Uh, but my friend got better. The placebo effect is extremely powerful. Sham surgeries have in some cases beaten real surgeries in double-blind trials. Mental and physical states are profoundly influenced by placebo effect, especially those characterized by lack of hope. You and your friend may have noticed that uh, the actual clinical meaning, uh, meaningful effects of psychotropic drugs, what are usually labeled side effects, are profound and often extremely damaging. Best to just take a sugar pill, as those have been proven to work. For... Okay, I don't... That's not how placebos work. <laughs> they ha... If they know it's a placebo, then the placebo effect really doesn't take effect. <laughs> just, take... <laughs> just take a sugar pill, man. You need to run! And get some sugar pills. 
antidepressants fail to meet clinical significance beyond placebo in treating depression. Oh, we're getting into some serious shit here. <laughs> this guy's not fucking around. And meta-studies of the effectiveness of antidepressants according to the NICE criteria. Oh, this is... That's a lot of technical shit. Uh, monoamine hypothesis. The description of the cause of abnormal brain states in psychiatry are based on pseudoscientific monoamine hypothesis, which isn't even considered reputable in the top universities anymore. The brain is like a computer and electrical patterns in your brain circuitry determine mood. But neurotransmitter pathways are only a very small part of the story and do not even begin to explain the complexity of our brain circuitry. Synapses are merely the spaces between the circuits. Trying to figure out how to alter complex electrical activity in the brain, feelings, in a productive manner with neurotransmitter pathways is like trying to figure out the patterns of pipes in your city by yelling into your sink. And this is where it starts with a fuck ton of videos. I don't know who any of these people are. Uh, Irving Kirsch, a trading depression placebo effect. Uh, Robert Whitaker, scientific censorship and psychiatry. Lots of secular organizations against psych... Oh, do they have Scientology on here? Mind freedom. I bet you that's one. Anybody know what sci Scientology, what are their anti-psychiatry organizations called? Mind freedom? God, that sounds like something they would call it. I, I'm just waiting for chat to catch up. Is mind freedom one of them? I, I don't know. I, I guess that'll be a mystery for now. Influential secular critics of psychiatry from within the professional class. A lot of MDs and PhDs listed on here. Uh, NAMI. NAMI is the most well-known mental patient-patient advocacy group in the United States. In reality, NAMI is a front group for drug companies, receiving in oh excuse me, receiving inordinate amounts of their funding from psychotropic drug companies. The group advocates for forced drugging and involuntary commitment. A prominent psychiatrist who was a member of the American Psychiatric Association once resigned from the APA, citing the group being in bed with NAMI and being critical of NAMI's support of forced drugging. NAMI was initially funded by royalties of a book by Dr. E. Fuller Torrey, the nation's leading advocate for forced psychiatric drugging. I don't know any of this shit. A BuzzFeed video about abuses, father's tale, forced drugging of his child, and then lots of, and then it just goes into videos. We got lots of, lots of videos. I, let me see what else we have here. I think, I think, like, there aren't a lot of articles on here. <laughs> oh, CBT, they were talking about earlier, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, if you're. Oh, oh, oh I think we're back. Uh, oh, oh, okay. All right, we're back, boys. We're back, boys. Let me, um, oh, where, where would I go for this? So, chat knows that, uh, I, I hit F5. You gotta hit F5. I'll give Chad a chance to catch up. I we dug too deep. <laughs> we dug too deep, and now the psychiatrists are coming for us. You see what happens, Chad? You see what happens when you you talk about psychiatry? They take your internet down. Not gonna scare me. I'm going out today and joining Scientology. I'm gonna stop you, motherfuckers. All right, no more forced drugging from Nami. It's not going to happen. David Miscavige is my boy. And we're rough riding on you motherfuckers and there ain't a thing you can do about it. Incel party, rise up. Oh, we got one from Gopnik. Give gays sugar instead of ARVs. It's just as good. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that, that'll work out well. That'll work out well for everybody. Everybody involved would be very happy with that. Okay. Yeah, I, I was saying before it disconnected. A bit off the beaten path. I did not... I missed that. I didn't know that there was an incel party. And then it had a website. And that's glorious. Again, if you'd like to join the incel party... <laughs> why does that exist? If you'd like to join the incel party... And, uh, I guess, edit their wiki... To, you know, give them great new political ideas. That's incelparty.win. Uh, best of luck. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself on that one. Holy shit. Okay. I, I don't know. Okay. Oh, so we're on the incel wiki. We'll go back to the incel wiki. Uh, let's see what we got here. I've never really looked around here. I don't I don't know what we're looking at. 
Okay, so we got a bunch of shit here. Brought uh, this. Uh, I hope it's. It, it looks like it might be a little bit too serious. I don't know. Uh, should we go to you know glossary? Let's learn some terms. <laughs> okay, uh, this is a good choice. Wow, lots of terms. We're gonna learn some. Welcome to the Incel Dictionary. Let's learn some fucking terms, guys. Uh, mogged. Suffix. Indicating being dominated by another person. The stem word denotes the feature that one's being dominated by. Okay. So, if you're height mogged, you're being dominated by another person's height. <laughs> Poor Destiny is constantly height mogged. Oh, what is wrist mogged? Being dominated by a man with a thicker wrist. Is, how, how does that happen? Do you just compare sizes? Uh, skull mogged, being dominated by a man with a better shaped or bigger skull. Akubusamogged, being dominated by a man of Chris Abasaki like prowess. Awooga, indeed. Well, it's good to. Oh, the blue pill, red pill, we know these. Black pill, a uh, purple pill. Stance of being neutral on the fence with regard to reg or gender relations i.e. not on the manosphere side nor the feminist side. Oh, let's see. Uh, adiopoophilia, attraction to fat people. Throw it in there. Why not? AFBP, alpha fucks beta bucks. <laughs> Refers to women who get fucked by alphas and settle down with a beta. Originates from a concept in evolutionary psychology known as strategic pluralism. It rolls off the tongue. It really does. Alpha fucks beta bucks. Uh, a Walt, all women are like that. Uh, it's, I guess that's a good one to go. Oh, Aspie, an Aspie is somebody with Asperger syndrome. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, let's say uh, Boyo, a slang word for a friend or mate. Albino, why is albino in here? What, <laughs> what term originating from the user Tom Cruise? I told you his ass was here. It is a disparaging remark used towards slut hate. Users of Eastern <laughs> what? A disparaging, disparaging remark used to slut hate users of European descent. <laughs> it's, well, it's very specific. Uh, babe bucks, fem cell version of beta bucks, but with less attached. A beta female, when a man takes advantage of her, she is chosen to be his significant other because she earns a decent wage to finance his lifestyle, etc. Cock carousel is exclusive to incels. So the last part of the beta bucks does not apply. Bald theory, a concept originating from the user Tom Cruise really gets around. He argues that you can forever be 8 plus if you do not look good bald. Uh, barebacking, sex without condoms. Don't know why they'd be talking about that here since they've never had sex. Oh, B BBC, a big black cock. Hopefully that was blurred out. Often used to address blacks on the forum. The topic of, you know what? <laughs> I gotta, we're pulling that article up. Hopefully it's blurred out. Please, okay, it is blurred out. <laughs> Normies hate him. <laughs> it's a theory. All right, you know, let's fuck it. Let's hear about the BBC theory. Are you ready, chat? It's time to learn about those big black dicks. All right, the BBC theory, or big black cock theory, claims black males have an advantage over other races, of men and seducing women because black men have BBCs, big black cocks. And dick mog, remember, mog is holding it over somebody. So if you're dick mogging somebody, you're slapping them in the face with your cock. Uh, dick mog all other races. According to the BBC theory, women, especially white women, have an uncontrollable craving for black cock as they are often eight inches bone pressed. <laughs> what does this mean? Bone press is an adjective used in the encelosphere that pertains to a penis measured while pressing the ruler deeply against the pubic bone. This is often done by dick cells to make themselves feel more confident through the ability to claim an extra half an inch. It is also stated that black men are desired for their superior, greater athleticism, generally more masculine facial appearance, and reputation for low inhibition behavior, known as the just be black theory, the JBB, as this doesn't require a large penis. Oh, we've got, they have an argument back and forth, arguments in support and against of the BBC theory. 
support, whereas white manlets are usually doomed to and seldom. BBC manlets often get attractive women. Bald white men are almost, without exception, incels, whereas bald black men often slay. Blacks are more ent or extroverted than whites, making women more comfortable around them. BBCs are larger than white cocks and are therefore more pleasurable to women. And then the against portion. Most black men don't have BBCs according to, to statistics. However, there are studies demonstrating a small increase in the mean penis size compared to other races. A small difference in the mean of a group leads to greater extremes at the tail end of the standard, or standard distribution. And then finally, white women aren't very fond of black guys regarding or regardless of their schlongs. <laughs> a U.S. government study on black dicks, apparently. According to a U.S. government study, sickle cell. Oh, it's about sickle cell. I thought there was an actual U.S. government study on black cocks. I was going to say, how did they sneak that one past the funding? All right, let's, <laughs> let's go. Black Ops 2 Cell, an incel male who is recognized by incel communities. God, there's so many. Oh, there's Bone Press. We just read about that one. Uh, Canthal Tilt, the angle of... Okay, this is... Uh, this is... <laughs> there's so much. What is Chad Light? A moderately attractive male, typically white, derived from Chad plus Ite, with a PSL rating of 7. What the fuck is PSL? PSL is an acronym used widely in the Encelosphere for three consecutive forums that overlapped in user base and prominent forum members. Uh, Pickup Artist Hate, Slut Hate, and Lookism.net. Okay. I guess that's just a... It's an end term. Okay, there's, there's a lot... God, there's a... This could be a video in and of itself. I'll be honest with you. The amount of fucking vocabulary they have on this website is stunning. They sure like talking about black dick. <laughs> One of those ones they really like to just bring up uh, repeatedly. Got to talk about that black cock. Uh, Johnny Rotten 79. That's why studies need to be double blinded. And Johnny Rotten 79 again. Don't. Don't overinterpret placebo effect. It's just feel. Uh, I, referring to the studies, I guess. Uh, placebo effect doesn't heal anyone. It just makes them people feel better. Uh, somebody asking uh, Gary Gurgles, how do I become a gym cell? I don't know. <laughs> Let me think it up, and I'll write an article on the incel party for fucking uh, wiki page. Wow. Just a lot of amazing shit out there. I'll be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> the incel wiki is amazing. I kind of, I'm kind of digging it. A lot of, a lot of really weird shit on there. Uh, I'm liking it. <laughs> I'm liking it a good amount. Oh, chat. What a magical journey. See, this has been a fun morning. And we started off a little dark with a chick getting her head cut off. And then, you know, a lonely guy hanging. We, okay, we, it was dark. I'll grant you. It really was. Chick gets her head cut off. Dude tries to kill himself. Another dude successfully kills himself. But then we got into the fun stuff. <laughs> you know, a little dawn after the darkness. You got to get through those tough times to have a bit of a giggle. And now we're talking about, apparently, incels love to talk about black cock. Lots of black dick on this thing. <laughs> Just all over the fucking place. Oh, what was the... I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like I had... And what was the other thing I was going to do? I, you know, I suppose we can look back in on the Bianca hashtag and see if there's any update on that fucking story. Let me, let me go take a quick looky-loo here. Uh, somebody on Twitter, what happened to your stream? It should be back up. Uh, whatever reason, occasionally it just it drops out. Usually after about an hour. Now, that could just be because I'm not partnered I'm not like uh, an associate or any of the leveled tiers. Maybe they just cut you off in an hour when you're the new guy. I don't know. But it, it picked back on, so we're fine. We're good. Uh, I'm looking for any more information about this chick. Uh, Bianca Devins. Yeah, yeah, uh, people posting that. Uh, let's see. Uh, uteral bacon? Uh, yep, no, we're not going to. All right, I, I, I can't confirm this or not, but somebody on Twitter is saying 
<laughs> Somebody on Twitter saying the guy that uh, killed her allegedly bragged on R9K over losing his virginity to her corpse. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, given the severity of the damage he did to her and the amount of rage that was probably built up, I could picture this sick fuck doing something like that. Uh, if you can find a screen cap of him bragging about fucking her corpse after killing her, apparently it's out there. And apparently it was posted on R9K. I don't know when. Sometime over the last 18 hours, whenever this happened. Oh, let me see if I can find this. Uh, yikes, indeed. Yikes, indeed. Got really dark again. We were having... We are enjoying ourselves, too, there. And then suddenly got very dark. It's very sad. God, Jesus. What the fuck? I don't, I don't get it. I, I just, I don't get it. I don't get, it was such a violent crime. And, you know, people are making it sound like, from the information that's getting posted, they didn't really know each other. So, I, he's just some obsessed nutcase that decided he's going to go kill some innocent chick for no fucking reason. Or he had, he had some fixation on her and he decided he's going to chop her fucking head off. Um, I mean, I get it. People are posting like, oh, she said this and uh, she fucked a bunch of guys. Whatever. Uh, I, I, you know, prepare yourself, I think, for probably a month's worth of really focused incel articles. Like, you know how every time something like this happens, <clears throat> uh, they want to push they want to push a bunch of articles talking about how incels are just the devil. And uh, they, they want to round them up and put them into little camps. So if this keeps catching, you know, if this keeps catching fire and gaining and gaining and gaining, I wouldn't be surprised. I, yeah, it's at 16,000 tweets. I, the hashtag's still there. It's trending in the U.S. It's one of the top ones. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I, I can't find the post, allegedly, of where he said this. Uh, maybe it's out there. Who, who fucking knows? Just a lot of dark shit. A lot of dark shit, chat. Okay. <laughs> just, I say, oh, this is some dark shit. I look over at chat, nothing but dancing puddings. Anime girls dancing and dancing puddings. Chat does not give a fuck. That's, chat just rolls with it. Fuck it. Dancing pudding time. Who cares? People hanging themselves. People getting their heads chopped off. Give me a dancing pudding. No fucks given. Throw a swastika out, too. Nobody cares. Uh, you know, actually, chat, how is the stream? I know it dropped off there for about uh, maybe maybe 30 seconds. But before that, is it running decently? Uh, some people say they have issues with the app. I don't know if people are mostly watching this on the desktop or if they're watching it through an app. And I'm trying to adjust the settings. I've got the time and day nailed down, but I want to try to adjust the bit rate so it's as decently steady as I can get it. Uh, it's okay. It's good. All right, good. Uh, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Where do we go from there? Like, I can't. What, what, what do I go to after somebody says, allegedly, the guy fucked the corpse? Like, there's, there, there's nowhere to go from that. That kind of, that's like the ending point. What was it Costanza said? Leave on, leave on a high note? What, oh, how do, how are you going to top that? Like, how much crazier could this shit get? Um, again, the images are out there. Be warned, they are graphic. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm guessing news stories are going to come out with this guy. And we'll hear his, maybe he's got a manifesto. Oh my God, I bet you he's one of those fucks, isn't he? I bet you this is the kind of motherfucker that... It, like, it is LARPing fantasy bullshit. Thought he was really going to go through with a murder-suicide, so he wrote some fucking edgy shit in a manifesto. And now he's going to have to sit down across from a police officer as the cop reads it back to him. It's going to be one of those things. So we'll probably get an interrogation tape. I think he's an adult. We'll probably get an interrogation tape from this piece of shit um, probably in the next week or two. And we'll get to hear his manifesto. You know, his reasoning for why he did this. Uh, again, people are alleging, oh, we said this, he said that. I don't know. I've only seen a few posts from him. 
Uh, people put them up on Twitter, and then you know, if you wanted a couple of different image boards, couple or a couple of different boards. Uh, but anything beyond that, I don't know. So I, I put money on it that he wrote a note or he wrote a manifesto about why he did it, and that'll come out, and uh, we'll get police interrogation tapes. We'll follow this. Yeah, I'm gonna follow the Epstein case as that goes along. I'll keep an eye on this to see what this weird little fucker, like what his rationalization for doing what he did was. I have no idea what it is yet. All I can tell you is what happened. Uh, so she's dead. He killed her. Uh, apparently bragged and showed off to her friends about it. Tried to kill himself. Failed at that and got arrested. And that's kind of where we are today. Uh, aside from that, we looked at the incel party. We looked at the incel wiki. Expect a ton of incel, or I'm sorry, anti-incel. Or is, or is the incel party called it incelophobia? Uh, articles to hit probably in the next week as uh, this story starts to circulate. Uh, with that, we'll, I, you know, I'm going to call it. It's been a good, decent stream. Not a bad stream. Hour and a half. Uh, I'm going to start to aim for like two hours maybe every morning. I'm going to cut it a little short. I'm going to go play some EDF. EDF 5. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to go kill me some giant ants and some robots and you know, just take my mind off the fact that we live in a world where some psychopath is going to kill some chick, cut her head off, and then fuck the corpse and send that picture to her friends. <laughs> right? Like, I don't I, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but if you want to join the incel party and, you know, come out with a, a firm platform to tell them, no, no, don't do that. No, run away from psychiatrists, but also don't chop people's heads off. Incelparty.win is the website you want to go to. What, what song are we going to play out on? I need something... We need something with some pep. We need something to uplift us. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to... What's a peppy song? Oh, I know what I... I got it. I got it. I got the perfect song to end with. We need to think positive. Gotta be... Gotta, we gotta, gotta be happy about this. Perfect song to end it on. All right, chat. Uh, let, me, let me put this up here. Uh, where are we going? I hope you have a good day. Uh, have a good day at work. Have a good day at school. Uh, remember, watch out for psychopaths on Discord. Apparently they're out there killing people for no fucking reason. Uh, there we go. All right. And with that, I will, uh, I'll leave you with an uplifting, an uplifting song. Well, good morning, chat. Hopefully the day is... The day is treating you well. You've woken up and are having a nice, a nice solid morning. Oh boy, the year is going by quickly. Already July 17th. My God, we'll be in 2020 soon. We've got a whole election season coming up. Lots of exciting things. Oh, we're very future focused this morning. Lots of uh, very topics to discuss. I don't know if uh, many of you are aware, but Elon Musk last night uh, told us all how we're going to become trans. Not with dilators, but with microchips. Oh, I'm looking forward to the future. I can't wait to have my brain plugged into a computer. And I'm sure nothing terrible will happen with that. So I thought we'd take a look at uh, Musk's presentation, some of it at least. Some of the news coverage surrounding it. And of course, some of the blowback. Because you got to get, you got to get the uh, everyday man's opinion on this. Talking about Mr. David Icke. Oh, he's got warnings. He's got warnings for us all about the terrible, terrible future that awaits us. Oh, exciting, exciting times. Now, I don't know. I, I've just recently started browsing different boards. You know, the longer you're around, you kind of hop from one thing to the next. You start off on something like B, and then, you know, a few, or a few years later, you're on V, and then, uh, you know, you end up on pole, and pole's fun for like two or three years, four years. It starts to get old. So I've, I've expanded out a little bit, We're looking around a little bit to find greener pasture, somewhere that's got some good old-fashioned shit posting, somewhere that that just has that energy, that energy that a yo or like a, a low user base has. Where can you find that? I found that on Biz. I I don't even invest in cryptocurrencies. I I have no interest in playing with monopoly money, but I can't stop browsing that fucking board. I can't stop lurking it. People, it's the most bipolar place that exists on the internet, and it is, it's beautiful. One minute, somebody's talking about how many Lamborghinis they're going to own, and then in the span of 20 minutes, they're talking about the grade of rope they're going to use to tie around their neck to commit suicide. 
How is that not fantastic? Oh, I've been I've been getting very into it. There's there's nothing more fun than watching this shit from the outside to watch people just run around. Just run around freaking out about the valuation of their cryptocurrencies, especially when you don't put any money into it. Because fuck it, somebody becomes a billionaire, whatever, great for them. <laughs> but if their world collapses because they've you know refinanced their house so they can buy some of those, uh, those delicious shit coins, well, that's funny. That's funny. So with that in mind, I'd like to ask Chad, I don't know how many of you invest. I don't know how many of you play the crypto market. But <laughs> what would you, what, how many linking heirs? With, is that what you would call it? I'm not even sure what you would call it. How many of you holding right now? <laughs> how is that working out for you? I've, again, I've only been watching this for a week. I've only been invested in watching this for a week. But watching people's hopes and dreams get crushed in real time is, it's a hell of a thing. <laughs> it's a hell of a thing as people try to convince themselves that everything's okay and it's not going tits up. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to you're gonna be a millionaire one day. You just got to hold. You just got to hold on to that shit and ignore all the bad news that's out there. Fuck it. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares if Sergey sells all his shit? Just trust the plan. Oh, Sergey. Sergey, why are you doing this to me? I refinanced. I refinanced my house. I bought all those precious little link tokens. Trust the plan. Hold it. Hold it. I sold everything I own. I've sold everything. Sergey, please. Oh, God. All my money is invested in link. I don't. Smart contracts sound impressive. I don't even know what that does. I don't. Oracle solutions. This is all. These are all <laughs> confusing terms to me, but it sounds impressive. Sergey, please. Please, I named my child Link. I told my wife it's because I love Zelda. But the truth, Sergey, is I named it after your your product. Please don't fuck me. Please stop stop dumping, Sergey. <laughs> Sergey, why are you doing this to me? The price. The, why does the price keep going down? I'm going to kill myself, Sergey. <laughs> I don't want to work at McDonald's. Why are you doing this to me? Oh, <laughs> it's just brutal. Uh, you know, I, and again, I don't know shit about any of this. That's the fun part. It has no, it has no effect on me. It has zero impact on me. And that's the kind of thing you want. You want to be able to watch this shit happen from the outside and not have to worry about it. Uh, <laughs> I've started, I've, I, like, it's so weird. I've started paying attention to this shit. I'm looking on, what is it, Coinbase? Looking at the prices just to see, just to see how is that, how are those investments working out? Oh, cryptocurrency is the future. Must be doing well. I've seen, I've seen it in the news. Lots of great news about it. You know, Trump, <laughs> Trump shitting on it. I'm sure hurt a little bit. You know, Tether accidentally printing was it five billion uh, token safe coins, whatever they're called. Oopsie, <laughs> decimal point was in the wrong place. Our stable coin backed a dollar for a dollar. Oops, accidentally printed five billion of them. But <laughs> trust us, guys. It's okay. It's okay. Just trust us. Hold. Oh, don't, don't. Hold, okay? Everything's going to be, everything's coming up roses here. Let me, let me pull this up here. Okay. Oh, this is what I've been watching. This, this chain link shit. I don't even know. I can't read the white paper. I don't know. What the fuck's a white paper? What the fuck's a smart contract? Oracle solutions. It's all so, it sounds so fancy. Where do I send my, who do I give my money to? Where do, do give me a mailing address? Let me send that check out right now. It's <laughs> down forty four cents. Well, I mean, fuck. Okay, well, it's down ninety eight cents. But trust me, it's, things are looking up. Oh, see, look, look, it it gained from. Oh no, wait, it's crashed. It's just dropping down in the span of weeks. Oh, this is not good. Well, Bitcoin must be doing well. <laughs> Drop a ten percent. That hurts a little bit. What about Ethereum? Ethereum? How how are we doing Ethereum? Oh, just down 30%. Oh, no, make that 26%. Well, if we look at it, you got to expand out. You can't just look at, can't look at a small, a small little blurb. You got to look at the whole thing. <laughs> down, down 60%. Oh, just keep holding. It's going to hit. Brighter days are coming, okay? Things are, things are looking up. Maybe my Litecoin futures are, are looking better. Oh, see, look, it's rising there. Okay, oh, we got some good news here. Well, maybe not the best news, but okay, could, the news could be better. Down 40%? <laughs> Put some money into this shit. It's gambling. <laughs> Go play roulette. You have better odds. 
Oh, God bless the business board. Oh, the amount of laughs I've had over the last week. Just, just the amount of screaming Wojaks and people filling out McDonald's applications. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> this shit. Oh, I'm so glad I don't invest in this stuff. I mean, I get it. If you got in on the ground floor on what, Bitcoin, when it was a fucking penny apiece, you're, you're, you're fucking whistling to yourself as you're walking down the street with wheelbarrows full of money. <laughs> but it's all those people that heard the stories about the motherfuckers with wheelbarrows full of money that ended up getting fucked. And just watching the cope, the heavy amounts of cope, the heavy, heavy amounts of cope when it comes to it is amazing. I mean, I'm not seeing good news really anywhere when I look around here. <laughs> down 26, down 34%. Uh, you know, it's, it's, oh, come on there. Can't be all bad. <laughs> 49% loss in a month. Oh. Chat, you tell me. So there's got to be, you got to, there got to be some uh, Bitcoin millionaires in chat here. <laughs> what, am I misreading this? Why is everything going tits up? Why does everything look terrible? And don't just tell me, hold. <laughs> that's, that's not a good enough answer for the mystery of what the fuck is going on here. Oh, pump and dumps. A lot of pump. I've, I've heard that term now. I've been listening to that term for a while. Every, <laughs> pump and dumps. Oh, yeah, that's. Uh, I also like that strategy, too, the buy high, sell low. It's That's smart thinking. Now, let's not invest in... Let's invest in a real stock market. I want digital coins, and I want to buy them high, and I want to sell them low. That's how you. That's how you do it. <laughs> Everybody's saying old. Oh God damn! I don't know. I like the board. I like laughing at the conversations they have, and just watching this. It's got to be nerve wracking. Imagine putting in thousands of dollars into this stuff, and you got that hope. That hope. This. There's going to be the next big thing. You're going to make so much money off of this. <laughs> and then the guy that made it exit scams on you. And then the guy that made it just keeps dumping and dumping and dumping. And the price keeps sinking and sinking and sinking. And you're just like, oh, God, what building am I going to throw myself off of today? <laughs> How am I going to end end this farce? I can't. I can't cope. I can't deal with it. I've, I just had to get that. I've been enjoying watching this. For all the people that are into the digital coins and the Bitcoin shit, and you've made a lot of money. Good for you. I'm, gl I'm glad that it was a success for you. I'm just watching a lot of people freak out, especially over the last week, just, just from paying attention to it. <laughs> freaking out about Tether, freaking out about Chainlink, freaking out about Bitcoin. Governments up their ass talking about uh, intervention and regulation and new laws. And I'm sure Facebook and Libra, their, their horrible fucking uh, approach to a digital coin. I'm sure, you know, that's, that's nightmarish. And that's what's got the uh, government's uh, hankles up. <laughs> but I'm, uh, just watching it from the outside, not having to deal with it. Good times. A coach coin for the win? <laughs> you gotta, you can't even, you know, uh, you can't even uh, exchange that into U.S. dollars. It's got to go to Ukrainian first. You're getting hit twice with fees on that. Oh, chat. Ah, uh, times are changing. The future is a coming. People are using digital coins now. Cryptocurrencies, king. Everybody's loving it. Smart contracts, guys. Got to keep holding. <laughs> and there's no better way coming up, at least, when it comes to uh, all this digital money, all these cryptocurrencies. I mean, if you want to be the fastest, if you want to, if you want to beat the bots when it comes to trading and selling and buying on the market, you're gonna need that digital interface shit. We're going to need to go Elon Musk on this motherfucker. <laughs> and we're going to need to be prepared. Transhumanism is going to give you a leg up when it comes to your portfolios and how you try to eke those margins out to make a profit. Uh, as Elon Musk told us <laughs> last night on his amazing stream that just kind of popped up from fucking nowhere. Where he's like, hey guys, uh, hey, just wanted to give everybody, hey, heads up, heads up everybody. Uh, Elon Musk here, super rich, a crazy rich guy. Um, I'm going to put microchips in your fucking heads, and uh, you're going to like it. And if you got a, if you got a fucking problem with that, uh, eat me. Uh, eat me. Eat my dick. I don't care. I'm Elon Musk. I'm worth billions of dollars. He's a real billionaire, too. Not a uh, Epstein billionaire, who, by the way, turns out only half a billion dollars. Uh, when they added all his assets up for this lawsuit and looked into his financing, half a billion. Not a billionaire. 
uh, <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein is only a millionaire now. That's with all his properties and stocks and cash on hand and all of that. Man lied to us. I feel, I feel betrayed. I guess that's what uh, people with egg-shaped dicks do. They lie to the general population. Shameful. Absolutely shameful. So I've got an article queued up here. We'll read this about Musk's uh, new technology. And then we'll take a look at the some of the live stream. At least the presentation by the Asian dude uh, that was part of it kind of explaining the technology a little more in depth. Let me pull this up. Here we go. Elon Musk unveils Neuralink's plan for brain reading threads and a robot to insert them. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. I can't forget begging for shekels. There we go. I knew I forgot something. And since we're talking about transhumanism, let me just set the mood, make it proper here. Oh, 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 no. Where did it go? Where did it go? Um, uh-oh. Why is that not showing up now? That's not right. Oh, you're killing me here. I had, uh, uh, oh, no. It just, it disappeared completely. What the fuck? Oh, this is disastrous. Hold on. It's not even it's not even showing up. Well, fuck me. Never mind. I had a cute little thing to go up with it, but doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, let's take a look at Musk in the future. Not not for humans yet. Yet. Okay. Elon Musk Neuralink, the secret of company developing brain machine interfaces, showed off some of the technology it has been developing for the public for the first time. The goal to eventually begin implanting devices in paralyzed humans, allowing them to control phones or computers. The first big advance is the flexible threads, which are less likely to damage the brain than the materials currently used in brain-machine interfaces. These threads also create the possibility of transferring higher volumes of data, according to a white paper uh, credited to Elon Musk and Neuralink. Uh, the abstract notes that the system could include as many as 3,072 electrodes per array distributed across 96 threads. Uh, okay. <laughs> the threads are 4 to 6... Uh, is it micrometers in width, which makes them considerably thinner than a human hair. In addition to developing the threads, Neuralink's other big advance is a machine that automatically embeds them. <laughs> okay. Wait till you see this fucking machine. It looks like a sewing machine. Elon Musk wants you to lay down on a table and stick a fucking sewing machine over your head and start injecting shit into your brain. It's pretty amazing. Uh, Musk gave a big, or a big presentation at Neuralink's research Tuesday night though he said that it wasn't simply to hype it. The main reason for doing this presentation is recruiting, Musk said, asking people to go apply to work there. Max Hodak, president of Neuralink, also came on stage and admitted that he wasn't originally sure this technology was a good idea, but that Musk convinced him it would be possible in the future. Scientists from Neuralink hope to use a laser beam to get through the skull <laughs> rather than drilling holes. They, used, uh, they said in an interview with the New York Times, early experiments will be done with uh, neuroscientists at Stanford University, according to the report. We hope to have uh, this in human patients by the end of next year. Okay, this guy's ready to roll this shit out. He's going to strap you to a table, drill a hole in your head with a high-powered laser, and put a sewing machine over you that's going to start start threading fucking, uh, <laughs> start threading materials through your brain. So you can activate your smartphone with a thinking thought. During a Q&A at the end of the presentation, Musk revealed results that the rest of the team hadn't realized he would. A monkey has been able to control a computer with its brain. <laughs> I just like the idea of Elon Musk in some secretive laboratory in the middle of nowhere. Just cutting the heads, cutting the, the skulls off of monkeys. And just putting electrodes in there. And then screaming, <laughs> screaming at the monkey to turn the computer on. The monkey was able to control a computer with its brain. B how? What, what did it do on the computer? Are you sure when the monkey wasn't screaming in agony, it accidentally turned the computer on? It's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be suddenly Neuralink will have the neural inter uh, neural lace and start taking over people's brains. Musk said, ultimately, he wants to achieve a symbiosis with artificial intelligence. That even in a benign, excuse me, even in a benign scenario, humans would be left behind. Hence, he wants to create a technology that allows a merging with AI. He later added, we are, in a br we are a brain in a vat, and that vat is our skull. And so the goal is to read neural spikes from the brain. The first paralyzed person to receive, and it goes over the history, uh, the guy Nagel basically got the old-fashioned spikes in his brain. 
uh, known as BrainGate. Uh, here's a picture of a mouse with a <laughs> fucking microchip stapled on its skull. Uh, here are the, the threads they're talking about. That's a human fingertip to give you an idea of the size that they're talking about and the flexibility associated with it. So it's not um, <laughs> it's not tearing your brain apart. Oh, here it is. I want you... Can I, can I pull this up? Will this pull this up? Is that coming on stream? Okay. I want you to imagine you go into the doctor's office <laughs> because you've got, I don't know, you've got MS. Or you had an accident and your spinal cord was injured. And he says, oh, hop on the table. And they wheel this abomination out <laughs> tell you to hold still. It looks like something, it, it, it looks like they pulled it off a factory line. Like this was putting car doors on vehicles or something. And they just retrofitted it to staple shit into your brain. <laughs> it's absolutely terrifying. No, no, trust me. This sewing machine's going to make you next level. We're talking transhumanism, my bo my dude. You're, you're good. You're good. Just trust it. Uh, okay. Finally, the paper says that Neuralink has developed a custom chip that is better able to read, clean up, and amplify signals from the brain. Right now, it can only transmit data via a wired connection. It uses USB-C. But ultimately... The goal is to create a system that can work wirelessly. What a nightmare. What a fucking nightmare. I hope this has like a uh, a hard switch. I, I If you're going to put shit in my brain, if you're going to put a wireless interface into my fucking brain, I want a switch or a lever or a wire. I want something outside of me that I can pull, plug, pluck, turn, twist, whatever, that shuts that fucking wireless functionality down. Because the last thing I want is some spastic fuck on the internet hacking into my brain and doing God knows what. I mean, that's they're, they're reading brain signals and then they're uh, interacting with those signals to determine what it is you want to do. Oh, turn the computer on, move your arm, do this, do that. I don't want some hot-wired shit in my skull that can be fucked with wirelessly. That sounds like a massively bad idea. There has to be a there has to be a fail safe. There has to be something outside that you can click that turns it off. Uh, that wireless goal will be embedded in a product that Neuralink calls the N1 sensor, designed to be embedded inside a human body and transmit its data wirelessly. Uh, it may read fewer neurons than the current USB-based prototype. Neuralink intends to implant four of these sensors, three in the motor areas, and one in the somoto sensor area. It will connect wirelessly to an external device mounted behind the ear, which will contain only a battery. It will be controlled through an iPhone app. Oh, brilliant. Like Apple wasn't obnoxious enough. Now it's got, you know, now I've got to, I've got to use the iPhone store to download the fucking app to make my brain work properly. That's a hell of a marketing campaign. I'm sure Steve Jobs would have loved that. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you, I'm sorry, Mr. Paralyzed. I'm sorry, guy that was in a horrific accident. Do you want to walk again? Better buy an iPhone. There's a whole FDA process we have to go through. We haven't even done that yet. Matthew McDougal, head surgeon of the Neuralink, who appeared dressed in scrubs, said on uh, Tuesday that the primary goal, ultimately, they want it to be something more like LASIK eye surgery. Well, that's a good thing to compare it to with the horror stories about LASIK eye surgery, including eliminating the need for general anesthesia. We want you fully awake and conscious as we... Uh, fucking burn a hole through your skull and turn the sewing machine on. The first patients wouldn't even have that non-invasive experience, though. Uh, right now, though, the company is working with rats to make sure the platform is stable. Well, Musk just said they were working with monkeys, so obviously they're farther along than rats. If it works, it's promising a high-bandwidth brain connection implanted via robot surgery. The uh, connection made using this thin, flexible threads will allow many neurons' activities to be recorded. So this is the big... This is the big thing. And Musk did this uh, via a live stream last night. I think it was like two hours long talking about the future. The future is here. Neural interface is going to be a reality. Oh, my God. We're going ghost in the shell with this shit. All right. We're, we're going to do so much crazy shit, you're not even going to know what's coming up. I understand the applications. I mean, there are fascinating applications. People that are truly injured or sick or incapacitated in a way that modern medical science cannot treat uh, this is amazing. This is a godsend. It's a boon for them. People that are paralyzed, people that have uh, neurodegenerate uh, disorders or, um, you know, muscle disorders uh, where the myelin is stripped away. You know, people that can't function, that can't control their limbs, that can't interact with the world around them. 
this is a big thing. You get a neural interface put in you, and then maybe you built an exosuit or an exoskeleton to wrap around the limbs, and now you're controlling the exoskeleton, which moves the limbs, so you've bypassed the neurological system, and now the paralyzed guy can walk again. He can throw a frisbee, he can hold his kid. He, he finally has a way to interact with the world. That's amazing. I, I can understand why that is so appealing. Uh, you know, mental disorders. Uh, you know, I, there was a Japanese guy doing research, I think it was like eight to ten years ago, where he was trying to interpret dreams. And he was, he was trying to read data from the brain to see what people maybe would be dreaming about. And one of the ways he tested it was he would have people focus on a letter, and then he would try to read the brain activity and then recreate what they were seeing, right? And so if you looked at the letter A for 10 minutes, this machine would interpret it, and then it would show you the letter A <clears throat> from the signal. It, it just weird shit. And I always thought, oh, you know, that's going to be cool later on down the line. Something like this might be cool later on down the line. Because somebody that's schizophrenic and is hearing or seeing voices, well, if you've got a device that interfaces with the brain, that can read signals and stimulus, maybe it can recreate that. I mean, maybe a machine like this or a device like this, not only could it interpret those signals and show it to other people so they can see the crazy shit and hear the crazy shit you're subjected to, but maybe they can cancel it out somehow and interfere with that particular thing to make it so you don't suffer from it anymore. No more having to use pills or chemicals. You know, so I get it. There's, there's a lot of hype around a technology like this. There are a lot of applications that could be amazing. But the idea of implanting a neural interface that's wireless, that could be fucked with, and who knows the effect that that's going to have on somebody. This is the basic bitch beginner level stuff. They haven't even got to the fancy shit. You know, the fancy shit of making you think faster, access information better, store more information. Uh, you, they're they're going to go crazy with it if it ever really comes to fruition. And the thought of people going around fucking with people, uh, who, I mean, like, who knows? It's really going to be sci-fi level shit, anime level shit. Oh, wait, you know, who needs VR or AR? I can just transfer, you know, my commands and I can uh, take in the stimulus from some robot body half a mile away. Yeah, they're, they're going to do crazy shit with it. So they did this stream last night. Let me let me grab it. Uh, where they talked a little bit. Of, and again, it's a lot of science jargon. I, I don't understand any of it. I'm not going to pretend I do. Uh, but let me find the little Asian guy that talked a bit oh. about it. Just to show you uh, kind of what the fuck they're doing. I don't know, Chad, you tell me. Do you think this is a, do you, do you have a happy, good feeling about where this is going? Or do you think this is going to be just some really dark shit coming down the pipeline? Are we talking Deus Ex future? Are we going to, are we going to be dealing with some really just horrendous shit that's going to come and make everybody absolutely fucking miserable? I'll wait for chat to, to catch a press F for our brains. Well, that's, that's a potential. Oh, everybody wants to get augmented. Oh, I hear you. Oh boy, I want those superpowers. Oh, there's no escape. Oh, do you think that people are like, wow, well, you don't have to do it. Wait till they make it standardized. Wait till you're competing with people that have it. You won't be able to compete. If they're faster, smarter, can access information, can perform a task better, and you're, you know, just natural you, you're going to have to compete. Wait till they tie that shit to the financial system. <laughs> That's where Ike and all of those come in. It's going to be fun watching them react to it. Oh, hello, Crypto World donated. I love you, Daddy Jim. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, I got, he sent a bunch of diamonds. Well, this is obviously, this is a man that is Bitcoin rich. Thank you. Uh, wore the hat in public. Some dude wanted one uh, from Thorkel. Oh, sent him over the shop. Oh, boy, hat sales. Oh, I don't invest in crypto. I invest in apparel. Oh, I sell, I'm selling those hats. Oh, let me just check one last thing here. And then I'll pull up. I will pull up our thing. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kyle, or Mr. Kelly. Hey, Jim, keep up the good work. Thank you for your service. Yours truly, a fellow Suicuck from Kylo Dante. We writhe maggots feasting on this zombie civilization, finding joy in the taste of the rot, laughing when an eye bursts, when the jaw falls off. But when will we die? Why won't it die, Jim? Oh, you can't kill that which is undead, I guess. And finally, from Ronson. So when is your Minecraft Let's Play going live? Well, oh, that's the future. We've cycled back to an era on the internet where the future is Minecraft. Get ready. It's coming. You're going you're gonna to get that. All right. I think I've got the, the Neuralink video pulled up. Uh, we'll take... Oh, let me make... I'm going to queue it up to the exact time code here. What was the little Asian dude's name? D, D, I think it's 
Is his name really DJ CO? I guess it is. All right. Uh, let me let me put this up here. I think that should yeah, that's good enough. Thank you, Vanessa. My name is DJ So, and I'm the director of Implant Systems at Neuralink. My team focuses on building chips and systems to get neural signals recorded from our electrodes out of the brain and also to put information into the brain. Before Neuralink, I was at U Okay, I just want you to really Again, I, I know. Oh my God, Jim, you're, you're paranoid. You're paranoid. It, he didn't just say get information out of the brain. What are you trying to do to make it work faster? You know, to interface, to send a signal to a device to make it respond to you. It's send information into the brain. <laughs> it just, it creeps me out a little bit. I'm going to be honest. UC Berkeley, where I co-invented NeuralDust, which is a technology to power and communicate with small implantable systems using ultrasound waves. Typical chip lifecycle from design to verification to tape out is approximately one to several years. At Neuralink, we had the ability to co-design our chip with the rest of the system, and the tight feedback loop from this organization has enabled our small team of analog and digital chip designers to tape out a new design every three months on average. You hear how fast these fuckers are advancing? I mean, they took something he said that took a year to seven years and cut it down to three months. Going through iterations every three months to advance it faster and faster, to get that technology up to pace to implant it into your brains. Oh, God. What a nightmare. Oh, I just wanted to just give you, I, I, again, if you want the technical jargon, if you really want to watch the whole entirety of the live stream itself, it's up on Neuralink's uh, YouTube channel. And it's literally called Neuralink Livestream. It's about three hours long. You can listen to all the amazing technical stuff. It is you know, fascinating, but well beyond me. Uh, but I found it uh, terrifying. <laughs> and when people were discussing this, uh, when the live stream was going on and talking about all these events, they kept bringing up they kept bringing up David Ike. And there's a particular video. It's like ten minutes long. Uh, it will be done by 2030 with Ike talking about all the spooky things they're going to do. <laughs> Some of it, eerily enough, lines up with this. Uh, so I thought we could we could take a look at this. Now, David Ike, for those of you that don't know, um, he's a freedom fighter, freeing us from those goddamn dirty reptilians. I'm not sure if you're aware of the reptilian takeover. You're going to be, because we're going balls deep in that shit after we watch a little Ike. I'm talking about we need to get the real story here. We need to go to above top secret and find out about those goddamn dirty lizard people. Uh, but for now, let's let's take a look at Mr. Ike and his warning to us about what the future is about to entail and see how accurate it sounds after the news about this neural interface. By 2030, the connections will be start to be made between artificial intelligence and the human human brain. We've been through a, a, a process of preparation, of getting people, first of all, stage one, addicted to technology that they hold, holdables, smartphones, tablets. That, I mean, that's basically achieved. I mean, you just have to walk through a city and you see the, the addiction. And they're targeting specifically the young. Why? Because the young of today and uh, the children of today are going to be the adults when they want to bring this AI um, connection in full blown. For that to happen, they have to get people addicted to technology to the point where they'll accept it and where it's the most natural thing in the world. And it's happening in front of our eyes. The first stage is to get people addicted to technology to the point where, at the most extreme, they'll get up in the dead of night and they'll, will, they'll queue, standing line, outside an Apple store to get the first uh, of the new technology. And what they want eventually, and not too distant into the future, is people basically lining up to be connected to AI. Now, if, if you remember from the article, and even if you watch the Neuralink live stream, you know, he keeps talking about being connected to AI. He's not just... You know, when you hear Neuralink, right, it's a uh, it's an interface. It allows you to communicate with devices outside of yourself in a quicker fashion. 
uh, be that an exoskeleton so you can walk because you're paralyzed, but or a more uh, like in a, a more general use application interfacing with your computer or your smartphone or whatever. But even Musk himself keeps bringing up AI, artificial intelligence. And Musk, one of his selling points was, you know, when we see this implemented in people within the next year and a half and we start to scale it up and get it more advanced, we want you to be able to co-process or interface with artificial intelligence. We don't want you just using devices. <laughs> we want to augment you and make you smarter, faster, better, which is spookily enough what Ike is talking about. I'm getting scared. Put your tinfoil on, folks. Call up Alex Jones and tell him to bring his guns to protect us. The lizard future is upon us. In the same way that people in Sweden now are having parties to celebrate someone being microchipped, right? All this connects. So the next stage, because the, the idea is to get in the body, the next stage is to um, get on the body. So we went from just holdables, we went to wearables, we went to Bluetooth and Google Glass and Apple Watches and all these other gadgets that go on the body now. Even what they call electronic tattoos that are basically microchips on the skin. And the next stage is to go in the body, which is already starting in places like um, Sweden. And people like Ray Kurzweil, who is a Google executive, I mean, Google and Facebook are really at the cutting edge of this stuff. People think it's a social media operation only or a, a search engine only. No, no, no. Um, this whole Google group now, which is given the name Alphabet, um, uh, are absolutely at the cutting edge of this whole AI technology. You know, and he's not even wrong about that. I mean, we know about the bots that uh, these companies develop and how they use them on the Internet. But even outside of that, I mean, Google bot, was it Boston Dynamics? So, I mean, you've got these companies, uh, Facebook uh, ended up, what, what the fuck was the VR thing that they threw all their money at, Oculus? Like, the, these big corporations are just soaking up all these other little companies that are doing all these different tech things into this massive conglomerate that's going to produce the ultimate technology. And it maybe Musk beat them to the draw on that, but <laughs> could you imagine a neural interface, a neural link or brain gate or whatever it's going to be called? Could you imagine buying one from Google? going to your local hospital <laughs> probably be the first step and having a Google interface put into your brain. <laughs> Jesus, what a nightmare. So is Amazon. So is Amazon. Amazon's uh, uh, got contracts worth hundreds of millions of dollars with the CIA and the Pentagon for cloud <clears throat> services. And stuff. Yeah, they have massive data services. Massive, yeah. Consumers don't see. So the idea is to, is to take this on and what Kurzweil is saying and he, he claims an 80% success rate in, in his predictions of incoming technology and when it will come in. But, you know, if you know when it's going to come in, then you've got a great chance of predicting it. I mean, you know, it's like if you know when a, a stock market's going to fall because the people you are connected to are going to make it fall, well, you're going to get out just before it falls and you're going to get in just before you know they're going to push it up. I mean, it, you know, you don't have to be, you know, Nostra Bloody Damas if you know the script. You know, I, 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 now that I think about it, this actually does remind me of something. Let me pull this up. Um, just one second. What Musk is doing right now reminds me of something. Uh, let me see if I can find the video. Oh, boy. Hold on. Oh, now I'm not going to be able to find it, am I? Oh, hold on. One second, chat. I'm not prepared. Oh, terrible. Uh, well, I guess, I guess this is what I'm looking for. We have... No, that's, that's not. Come on. Oh, come on, come on. I will find it. Sorry, chat. Uh, da, 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 da. Hi, y'all. It's Lacey. No, I don't want to listen to you, Lacey. Why can't I find the original video? Did they pull it down because they didn't like people freaking out over? That might be it. Your kids probably have one of these. Wow, what the fuck? Why can't I find the original, the original one? Hold on. Oh boy. Oh, I'm fucking it up here. I th wow, they might have actually pulled down the original video. We have something. Okay, whatever. You know what? Fuck it. We'll watch this one. Uh, but what Musk is doing kind of reminds me of this. Somebody put out a 
uh, you know, a what if scenario of somebody that says they've got a great new technology and how could it ever be abused? And then everything goes tits up, uh, but it's related to drones. But it does remind you of this. We have something much bigger. Your kids probably have one of these, right? Not quite. Hell of a pilot? No. That skill is all AI. It's flying itself. Its processor can react a hundred times faster than a human. The stochastic motion is an anti-sniper feature. Just like any mobile device these days, it has cameras and sensors, and just like your phones and social media apps, it does facial recognition. Inside here is three grams of shaped explosive. This is how it works. Did you see that? That little bang is enough to penetrate the skull and destroy the contents. That is an airstrike of surgical precision. It's one of a range of products. Trained as a team, they can penetrate buildings, cars, trains, evade people, bullets, pretty much any countermeasure. They cannot be stopped. Now, I said this was big. Why? Because we are thinking big. Watch. A $25 million order now buys this. Enough to kill half a city. The bad half. Nuclear is obsolete. Take out your entire enemy, virtually risk-free. Just characterize him, release the swarm, and rest easy. Uh, well, that's that's the basic gist of it. Uh, again, that's just part of the video. The the whole video was like, oh, here's a here's a a tech talk. Oh, oh, where did it go? Where did it, there we go? Uh, here's a tech talk about what's coming up. Uh, and then they show how it goes wildly out of control. That's the feeling I get from Musk and his adventures in neural interfaces. Reminds me of that video. Like, he's all excited. It's going to be great. It's going to be a boon for society. And I've already got, like, a really bad feeling about where, where it's going to go. So I don't think David Icke is, you know, completely crazy to be like, uh, you know, guys, this is uh, this is not going to be good. Bad times are coming. But we'll go back to Mr. Ike. Got about seven more, uh, six more minutes of this. This is the sales pitch, and this is why they're telling you. The sales pitch is when we connect to artificial intelligence, um, we'll be superhuman. That's what the sales pitch is. That's his sales pitch. Right. That's going Siri, to be the sales pitch. Alexa, all yeah, these things. Yeah. What you've got um, is the idea that connect to AI and you'll become superhuman intelligent. No, you'll become subhuman intelligent. You'll become a vehicle for artificial intelligence and whoever controls artificial intelligence will control every the perceptions of every mind that it's connected to which is which is true you know I mean, he does bring up a good point think about where you are right now where are we as a, a, a society rise up gamers rise up where are we as a society when it comes to our technology i mean every device that's really being put out onto market be it a smartphone or alexa and all of this shit it's all connected. It's all hot mic. There are cameras in every piece of it. You don't really have any privacy. While crypto is great, it's this digital currency that's connected to a larger system. It's like it's taking away bits and pieces of your privacy and your ability to control things and to live your own life. And it wants it to be connected into something bigger. And now here comes Neural Interface. And, you know, Ike is saying, you're basically a flesh suit for a really smart AI, and you're just not going to know it. 
you're going to think you're co-processing with it. You're going to think you're using its ability to do calculations and perform functions. But really what it's doing is using you because you're fucking stupid. Because now you're going to rely on it to Wikipedia and Google information for you rather than learning it yourself. You're going to be subservient to it. It's going to drive you around like a fucking biological car. And you're going to be so goddamn dumb, you're not even going to know what's happening. If you're going to make a physical connection with AI, you're not going to do that on a mass scale until you've made a psychological connection. And um, there is a, a process, uh, a psychological process, which is known as preemptive programming. Preemptive programming is, is, is this. You're going to usher in a world that is so different, so dramatically different to what anyone's been used to, that you're going to have an obvious resistance purely by the chasm of difference between um, the world people are used to and the world you're taking them into. A resistance that says, hold on a minute, you, you, you want to do what? What? I, 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 what? So you prepare them for it through preemptive programming. You put out a stream of movies out of elite controlled Hollywood. You put out television programs, you put out books, you put out all these things that basically portray the world you want to take people into. This is why you've seen so many movies about control by robots, control by technology of, uh, I got it, guys. Here's the deep conspiracy that Ike is too afraid to tell you about. The people behind this are the Japanese. They've been planning this shit since the end of World War II to get revenge on the West. And the way they're going to do it is preemptively program us with anime and video games to make us want to live in a future society where we'll let Elon Musk, or Elon Musk put threads in our brains so Google can tell us the answer to 2 plus 2. Those fucking Japanese... I, did, I never trusted them, okay? I knew they were up to something. It's all starting to make sense. This is the long con. These motherfuckers have been working on this for 80 years. 80 years, damn near. To get that fucking revenge. You had to drop two bombs on them. Now the world's going to pay for it. Um, synthetic humans. You have the dystopian society being portrayed and portrayed and portrayed. And what that's doing, it's making the subconscious to an extent the conscious mind, familiar with the world you want to usher in. So when you literally start to bring it in, there's not that chasm that there would have been before. There is almost a familiarity with it because you prepared people by portraying it over and over again in movies. Another part of this psychological connection with artificial intelligence, so we'll accept the outcome that I've talked about, is these Alexas and these Echoes and these so-called office assistants or personal assistants. You start to interact with them as if they're human. And now they're bringing in internet connected um, toys for kids, even little kids, and Barbie dolls. You know, as an aside, um, I remember for a while, I'd say like two or three years, it was really popular to hack into people's uh, webcams for their security systems and then use a built-in microphone feature to, to scream at them <laughs> or to fuck with classrooms or just a whole bunch of stuff. With all these AI-connected toys and toys connected to the internet that use a server to, to do functions, do all this different shit, are there any videos out there of people hacking children's toys and just making them do really horrendous things? <laughs> like, just start playing spooky music or talking in a really dark, gravelly voice. And it, uh, those have to exist. Somebody has to have done that by now. And if they have, please send me the link. <laughs> please send that link to me of children being scared as their Barbie says it's going to attack them. That they can actually have conversations with artificial intelligence. They're now bringing in these uh, robots that are, uh, these synthetic robots that are looking more and more uh, uh, like humans. A lot of them coming in from, from the East. And this is a whole psychological process 
of familiarizing um, us with artificial intelligence to getting people to interact with it until it becomes the most natural thing in the world. By 2030, um, the connections will be start to be made between artificial intelligence and the human, human brain. And that's what it's going to look like. That's an, that's, a, that's an accurate depiction of the future that awaits you. So you get the, you get the general gist of what Mr. Ike is saying. Be, be warned. The dark days are ahead. I, I don't necessarily blame him. It's a little freaky. Uh, it's definitely freaky. I don't trust these corporations. The last thing I want is some fucking device put in my head they can wirelessly talk to. <laughs> Who knows what they're going to do with that? And it's not like you can just take it out. It's not like a fucking watch you can take off or a phone you can set down. It's inside your skull. They drilled through the bone with a laser beam. <laughs> what, are you going to take a hacksaw? Cut your skull open and remove it? Good luck with that shit. Oh, there's no return policy on this. I'm sorry, no refunds. They're going Bernie Sanders with this shit. <laughs> you are stuck with it permanently. Oh. Oh, chat. What are we going to do? Oh, I'm spooked. I'm definitely spooked, chat. I don't know. I need to buy more Link. That's that's the only solution. I need to buy more Link and hold. It's the only way to fight against this. Uh, from Thorkel. Uh, AI living vicariously through humans. Worry time. Yeah, I'd, I'd be worried about that. From Alexandria. Remember all the videos of hacked baby monitors? Uh, yep. Well, I never saw the hacked baby monitor videos, but I did see a lot of videos where people would go on to, like, CCTV cameras and <laughs> fuck with people. So I don't know... I don't know if they're out there. I just, I would speculate that these videos of people hacking children's toys, it has to be somewhere on the internet. Uh, what do we got here? HDR to you. So Elon Musk develops Frankenstein controls. Great. Another step for CIA ga gangster communism. From Koala Dante. Frankenstein radio controls even in thin skulls of white pedigree males. Holy shit. Franklin E. Declan Esquire absolutely called it. From Joey Jojo, the sexual revolution was a mistake. The solution is a chicken in every <laughs> oven, two cars in every garage, and a big-titted Christina Hendricks-styled robot for every man. MILF bots will save the West. Well, you, do, you, you have a more positive outlook than I do. But now that you mention it, yeah, was, was Franklin E. <laughs> was, was he right? Or Francis E. Declan, Esquire. Oh my God! He he actually he's like Nostradamus. He actually called it the only hope for a future. Uh, let me let me grab that video. I I think he might have actually predicted what's happening right now. The Frankenstein-controlled robot government communist conspiracy is actually coming to fruition, and Franklin E. Declan Esquire absolutely fucking called it. Everybody called him crazy. Who's laughing now? Look at the picture. See the skull, the part of bone removed, the master race Frankenstein radio controls, the brain thoughts broadcasting radio, the eyesight television, the Frankenstein earphone radio, the threshold brainwash radio, the latest new skull reforming to contain all Frankenstein controls, even in thin skulls of white pedigree males. Visible Frankenstein controls, the synthetic nerve radio directional antenna... Okay, listen, I, I'm not even joking anymore. He has predicted this completely. Oh my god, Francis. I need to send him a free typewriter to, or typewriter to save the world. I can't... It's spooky. He was right. The loop. Make copies for yourself. There is no escape from this worse gangster police state using all of the deadly gangster Frankenstein controls. In 1965, CIA gangster police beat me bloody, dragged me in chains from Kennedy New York Airport. Since then, I hide in forced jobless poverty, isolated, alone in this low, deadly nigger town old house. The brazen, deadly gangster police and nigger puppet underlings spray me with poison nerve gas from automobile exhausts and even lawnmowers deadly assaults even in my yard with knives even bricks and stones even deadly touch taben or electric shock flashlights even remote electronically controlled around corners projection of deadly touch tarantula spiders or even bloody murder axe 
accidents. To shut me up forever with a sneak, undetectable extermination, even with trained parroting puppet assassins in maximum security, insanity prison, for writing these unforgivable truths until my undetectable extermination, I, Francis E. Deck Esquire, 29 Maple Avenue, Hempstead, New York, I stand alone against your mad, deadly, worldwide conspiratorial gangster computer god communism. Oh, my boy, he did stand alone. We all laughed at Francis. We all thought he was crazy, but he was right. One man fighting the future, warning us. He was like a, a 1960s version of Ted Kaczynski, minus the, minus the bombs. With wall-to-wall, -wall deadly gangster protection, lifelong sworn conspirators, murder incorporated organized crime, the police and judges, the deadly sneak parroting puppet gangsters using all the gangster deadly Frankenstein controls, these hangman rope sneak deadly gangsters, the judges and the police trick, trap, rob, wreck, butcher, and murder the people to keep them terrorized in gangster Frankenstein earphone radio slavery for the communist gangster gangster government and con artist parroting puppet gangster playboy scum on top the secret work of all police in order to maintain a communist closed society the same worldwide mad deadly communist gangster computer god that controls you as a terrorized gangster frankenstein earphone radio slave parroting puppet you are a terrorized member of the master race worldwide four billion eyesight television camera guinea pig communist gangster computer god master race you're living thinking mad deadly worldwide communist gangster computer god secret overall plan worldwide living death frankenstein slavery to explore and control the entire universe with the endless stairway to the stars namely the man-made inside out planets with nucleonic powered speeds much faster than the speed of light Look up and see the gangster computer god concocted new fake starry sky. The worldwide completely controlled deadly degenerative climate and atmosphere through the new world round translucent exotic gaseous envelope which the worldwide communist gangster computer god manipulates through countless exactly positioned satellites. The new fake phony stars in the synthetic sky for ages before Frankenstein controls apoidic niggers interbreedable with apes had no alphabet, not even numerals. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I fucking love that line. It's so out there, man. <laughs> it's the best. Before Frankenstein controls apoidic niggers interbreedable with apes had no alphabet, not even numerals. Not even numerals. Oh, they wouldn't even let him have numbers. <laughs> oh, Francis. Oh, gone but not forgotten, buddy. Oh, your memory lives on. You were right. We should have listened. <laughs> we should have listened to you, Francis. What were we doing? Oh, we've let the world go to shit. No. Oh, my God. I love I love shit like this. It never it never gets bad. So, you know, I watched Ike's presentation, uh, well, the video, talking about where the future was going after seeing Musk's Neuralink presentation about the future of where it's going. And so I meandered on over to Above Top, <laughs> Above Top Secret, the best forum with the most factual information on the internet. And people were discussing it. <laughs> and this video gets linked. No, this and I think I think you guys need to get I, you need to watch this. We need to watch this, all right? Because there's some shit going down. I don't think you all are prepared for. And this woke motherfucker, he's going to explain it to us about the reptilians. I know you don't know how it's connected, but they're behind everything. Like those Japanese, they've been planning and plotting for a while now. <laughs> this is a it's a real good primer on the reptilian menace. Now, these reptilians, okay, you know, the, the whole, the Vlad Tepesh, okay, they call him Vlad the Impaler, all right, killed a lot of people, killed a lot of people, drunk their blood and all that shit, that's the, that's what uh, the idea of Dracula came from, okay, Vlad Tepesh. Uh, yeah, to pass when he impaled people and drunk, they sat there and drunk their blood. Guess what? 
The reptilians drink blood, and they eat human beings. Okay. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you caught that. All right, fact number one, reptilians, they're drinking our blood and shit. Okay? Shit. They drink in our blood. But they also eat in our penis. <laughs> There's no fate worse in this world than a filthy goddamn reptilian drinking my blood and eating my dick. <laughs> Just in case you missed that. Blood, and they eat human penis. Eating human penis. Goddamn fucking reptiles. Just they're cock hungry. Okay? Oh yes, they do. They do. What reptile don't eat mammals, huh? What reptile don't eat mammals? These motherfuckers are reptiles. They eat human beings. Alright? Now I ain't talking about they come snatch you out of your damn house and eat you. They have a form. Okay? Just like uh, 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 San uh, uh, the, the Sanderson chicken form. They got a form where they inform human beings. Okay? And eat them. They love to eat the pineal gland. All right, which is you got to protect those pineal glands. <laughs> Fucking reptiles eating my dick, drinking my blood, eating my pineal gland. Luckily, our woke brother here in his ninja outfit is telling the world the truth about the filthy reptilian menace. It's known as your fucking third eye. All right, and other another things in your body. Yo, see what you understand? Your body creates some of those the most powerful shit. Okay. The most powerful shit. More, even more powerful than some drugs. That's why, that's what makes our behavior. That's what makes us. Alright? They love feeding off human beings. Oh, oh, Chad. You know what? I, I actually, we're about an hour in. I think this is a good place to take a very quick break. I'm going to go get a drink. I promise you this channel, this channel that we're watching right now, has all the woke information we have to we we uh, will ever need about dick eating reptilians. So I'm gonna pause it real quick. Let me let me just uh, do this. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna go grab a drink. If you need to take a piss, grab a snack, whatever. It's our our midstream break. I'll put on a little music, a little music for our break, and then we will get back in learning about those dick eating reptilians. <laughs> I fucking love the internet. I love the fact some black dude dressed up like a ninja to tell me about dick eating reptiles. Like like that was his that was his mission in life. Like you need to know, man. You need to know about these dick eating reptiles out here eating dicks. <laughs> the walking through Compton eating cocks. Nobody can stop them. Right. Oh, and we're back. Hopefully your penises are intact. They haven't been eaten by any reptilians that might be lurking out there. Protect yourself. <laughs> if you see a lizard person, cover your cock. They are just voracious eaters of the dick. Oh, I love the fact. I love the fact this dude is warning you about getting your cock eaten. Fantastic. I have uh, uh, Malone Dick 117. Das right. Uh, das right indeed. Oh, dick eating aliens out there, sucking cock down like it's a fucking delicacy. I'm from Thorkill. I'm beginning to sweat a little bit here at the accuracy. I don't blame you. From Gertie D, a uh, ninjet. I've never seen one of those. Uh, so the gay frogs live in Sweden. Uh, yeah, that's where they're that's where they're headquartered. Sir Scallywag. All women will be the first targets to lure you guys. And also JB Behemoth. 9 p.m. Eastern. Great time for us East Coast Sweetie Squads. Well, I'm glad it is working out for you. Let us get back to this informative video talking about the dangers of dick eating reptiles out there. <laughs> Maybe you'll give us hood strategies. On how to protect ourselves and children, but they prefer motherfuckers that don't smoke, don't drink, which is usually children. Okay, the government ain't gonna tell you that reptilian beings exist. You know, I agree. Government's not gonna tell you dick-eating reptiles are out there <laughs> hunting your children down. That's when they keep close to the vest. Don't want the populace freaking out. I. I could imagine if the president of Trump went on TV tomorrow and told you about dick-eating aliens, he'd probably be running for the hills. I'm going to tell you why. Because they have to complain about a lot of other shit. They'll raise a bunch of other questions. All right? 
So they say, fuck it, we'll handle it on our own. Even though we lose it, we'll handle it on our own. And some of them even made alliances with, 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 with ter uh, extraterrestrials for some kind of protection. Okay. All right. I'm going to go. I'm going to take this man's woke theory and make it even woker. All right. He's talking about dick eating reptilians that are out there that are targeting our kids. What if the government got together with major religions and the reason they're pushing circumcision is to satiate the reptilian hunger for dick by feeding them baby foreskins? What if what if that's the reality? It's a whole conspiracy to circumcise and feed these evil reptilian bastards so they don't attack us in the streets. I don't know. Chat, what do you think? I think that makes sense. I, th I, think, that's, I think that's what's going on. For, for, some, for some weaponry, okay? They wouldn't cut out the deal. You see what I'm saying? No, I can't intervene. I can't intervene right now. Mother, fuck that. Because if I see somebody that needs some help, I don't care what color. I'm going to help your ass. All right? If I see you can't help yourself, I'm going to help you. Because that's, that's... You feel me, nigga? If I'm walking down the street and I see a white boy and his dick is eaten by a reptilian, I'm going to help that motherfucker. <laughs> Thanks for the support. I like to know that if I'm ever attacked in the street by a dick-hungry reptile, that Mr. Ninja here is going to come in swinging some ghetto nunchucks. And save my ass. That's part of being humanity. Alright? So the fucking bullshit about extraterrestrials can't intervene because of this, because of that. Don't buy off into that shit. Don't buy off into it whatsoever. Because we ain't no, we ain't have no fucking help. And the reptilians don't see no difference between all of us. Okay? They don't see no difference whatsoever. You could be the smallest fucking human being. It don't matter to them. Stop sending fucking the weapons to the goddamn Arabs and give me some weapons. Give me some fucking weapons. Give me some goddamn tanks. Give me some subs. Give me some aircraft. All right? All right. I think General here, I'm going to call him General Ninja. General Woke. <laughs> General W Ninja. The W for Woke. He's got a point. We need to send this motherfucker some tanks, aircrafts, and some guns. Because he, he's looking out for us from those dick-eating reptilians. We need to arm this man with as many heavy munitions as we can and just let him loose. Let him loose to patrol those fucking aliens. He knows who they are. He knows who they are. You could try to hide among the populace and wear your human suit. But General W. Woke... I'm sorry, <laughs> General W. Ninja here. He's going to sniff you out and he's going to send an Abrams after your ass. Give me what I need to defend myself and my people. All right, that's what I need because I, I can't go quietly into in, in the night. Y'all ain't getting the job done. You not. You are not getting the job done. You done lost men trying to fight these motherfuckers. All right. Goddamn dick eating aliens. <laughs> the man just needs some fucking weapons to teach him a lesson. Well, apparently this channel. This is amazing. Oh, let me check. This channel is, <laughs> there's so much shit on this channel about reptiles. So I'm going to, I'll pull you, chat. You tell me what you're interested in. We, we got a whole smorgasbord of Draco reptoids exposed. Oh, we could listen about how reptilians travel. I mean, that's, America is built on evil European lies. <laughs> uh, David Icke's reptilian megalith. Lots of reptile videos. I think this is like an archive channel for all the woke videos about the reptile menace. How energy rituals work. Oh, we found a very glorious thing here. Alien gray intervention. Oh, I don't know. Uh, where do we even jump in? We've got so much to learn today about the reptilian menace. I don't I don't even know where to begin. Repstein? Is that what you're calling him? Uh, well, you know, hey, maybe, maybe when he's saying reptilians, it's code word for something else. I can't speak to that. I've only seen one of the man's videos. I've only seen just the one. Okay, let's let's see. Oh, how the uh, how the staged alien invasion will happen. Let's find out. And what that. I'm hoping it, it, that it's not is the fake UFO attack that these guys have been planning for a long time. Oh, they've Project been, you know, Blue all Bee. the genetic engineering they've been doing at Dulce and all these places. That is so that they have an alien body 
that they've uh, taken this DNA material from dead aliens and they've made their own little alien copies that they can put inside this ship, attack us, and there's your bodies. There's your aliens, the bad guys. Instant bad guys. See? Genetic technology is a very powerful weapon. You know, makes perfect sense. Uh, genetically cloned dead aliens used to fake an alien invasion. Why would you need to fake it if you've got aliens you can genetically clone to kill to put in the flying saucers? Why not? Why wouldn't they just invade anyway if they're out there doing bad things? Who knows? Let's yeah. find out. So it's going to fool a lot of people because they're going to actually show them an alien body for the first time on, quote, national television where you get the truth. See, and once you see it on CNN, then it's got to be true. Okay? And pretty soon they'll be killing billions. I would not hesitate to go to war with these people. They have to be stopped. See? So, yeah. They want to eat your dick? We need to fight back. All right, you don't want them eating your cock. You need to fight back now. They need to be taught <laughs> they need to be taught a lesson. This guy seems to have quite a lot of a lot of videos. The truth about war in Israel. Should <laughs> do we dare? Do we dare take a look at this video? Will D-Life execute me for putting this on? Chat, I need I need some support here. Should, I think I think we all know what we're getting into if I click on this. Are we watching it? Give me a one if you want to watch the truth about war in Israel. <laughs> Give me a two if we should go to something else. Oh, okay. I've seen a lot of do-its. Oh, well, rip D-Live channel. Let's listen to this man give us the woke truth about those alien reptile dick-eating sons of bitches in Israel. And then when you get in a war, the first thing the military does is they turn the enemy into some subhuman species so that you're allowed to kill them without uh, having it bother you, which is an insane fucking idea because that's why we're losing so many veterans every day from suicide. It's not just dealing with the VA and the government and the fucking bullshit, okay? It's their conscience and what they've been through, okay? They just can't take it because they realize it was wrong, okay? Every guy who ever pulled the trigger over there in Iraq in the first war did it for oil. They did it for the fucking petroleum companies. It wasn't for freedom for America. Okay? It had nothing to do with freedom or weapons of mass destruction, right? We found out that was fucking bullshit. And that's why we should be able to investigate the fucking president and the executive office. Because we could have told them, oh, the little vial, what you call it's holding up. Where the fuck did that come from? Let's go back, let's, let's trace back and do an investigation about how you came up with your information. And then you find out it's complete fucking bullshit. Which is what I'm going to do at the Bank of America today, by the way. I have to go down and deal with those motherfuckers today. Um, people who... Wait, did I, did I mishear him? Is he going to go to the Bank of America and ask them about yellow cake or uranium? I, I, hold on. Come from. Let's go back. Let's, let's trace back and do an investigation about how you came up with your information, and then you find out it's complete fucking bullshit. Which is what I'm going to do at the Bank of America today, by the way. I have to go down and deal with those mother. Excuse me, teller. <laughs> Get your fucking manager out here right now. I want to know about the Jews, the reptiles, and that yellow cake uranium. No, I don't have a gun. Get your fucking manager. Fuckers today. Um, people who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it, especially not remembering the mistakes of the past, okay, because those become the mistakes of the present, and remember the millions who died from the last group of fucking mistakes, okay, and the people that are, I mean, we're losing 20 veterans a day now because they come home, and it doesn't take very long to realize that what you were doing was fighting for fucking petroleum interest and fucking oil companies in the United States, okay, Instead of fighting for freedom or anything else, yeah, you might have done some good over there, but look what you look at the mess you fucking left, okay? And there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of fucking innocent people who've died because of it. Come on, where's the Israel like I bit? Said, once you've seen the truth, <laughs> Come it's on. really hard to escape it. It hits you like a brick right in the face. It's pretty hard to fucking ignore. And sometimes it basically knocks you into a stupor where you don't even know what's going on for a while. And that's kind of where I am today. You know what I mean? The Israeli-Palestinian conflict, okay? Most Americans, especially Christian Americans... For okay, buckle up, boys. Here we go. We're going balls deep. Rip, <laughs> rip D-Life channel. For God's sakes, read some fucking information, okay? Please educate yourself, okay? I mean, it just angers me when I see that.
because the Palestinians have every right to exist, just like the Jewish state, okay? When the Jewish state was created, the Palestinians didn't have any say-so because we'd just gotten out of a world war and people are making choices that people have to abide by. That's just how it was right then, okay? The the act, the, the powers were dividing up the world. I, I'm going to, you know what? I'm calling it here. I Two out of ten, highly disappointed. You can't, you can't talk about reptile alien government conspiracies and then have a video called the truth about war in Israel, and then give such a soft take. Where's the craziness? That's highly disappointing. Uh, highly disappointing. I was expecting so much more from that. Shameful. Just shameful. The 1998, 1988 reptilian incident. I, I'm unfamiliar. Chat, do you, do you remember the famous 1988 reptilian incident? <laughs> Let's find out. His description said it was about seven foot tall with red glowing eyes and and very fast and it appeared to have three long fingers on each hand it used those fingers on its hands to grab my dick in which it tried to rip it off to eat it i told him kindly sir we don't abide by dick eating reptiles here you need to get gone i thought we it could have been a bear or something that he saw we don't know what it is Mm -hmm. <laughs> he thought it was a bear? How do you confuse a seven-foot-tall talking reptile with a bear? <laughs> Davis, are you retarded? But he saw something because nobody could have been frightened like he was. My tires was bust and it flat. So I got out and changed about 2 a.m. at night. <clears throat> After I was finished changing, I was putting on um, flat in the jack in the trunk. And I looked back. I saw him, red eyes, big red eyes thing running toward it. So I jumped in the driver's side and when I was shutting the door, he grabbed the door. So I jerked the door and shut it and pulled off. And I look in the mirror, I saw a big image and a loud crash. On okay, well apparently, apparently, <laughs> I guess the reptiles learned from the incels about the BBC, if they're looking for a filling meal, if they really want that big dick to eat. That's why they're hunting down black men. Actually, this makes, <laughs> this makes sense now. All these black guys talking about reptiles stalking them, they want that BBC. Reptilian, a reptilian aliens are more thirsty for black dick than white suburban girls. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? That's where it's, it's not the Jews behind all that porn. It's the reptilians. They just want a banquet. They, they're hungry. That's why they keep making all these videos, all this pornography. Oh, well, you know, I know it's not reptiles, but I am curious how energy rituals work. I think I have some of this figured out on how the elites are using their black magic rituals and using our energy. Already sold me. Alien black magic rituals. Let's hear it. Think about that. It's one thing to use energy by torturing someone, raping someone, and they do. It's to get the energy raised for the ritual of killing someone, to release the energy. But if they can get all our energy, or as many people as possible with energy involved in that, it makes it much more powerful, and they do that against our, our knowing. You know, chat, if you met some girl on Tinder, and you showed up at the date, and it's this chick, and she sits down across from you, and the first thing out of her mouth is, what are your thoughts on black magic, alien sexual rape rituals? Are you, are you going to continue the date just the fucker? Or are you going to run for the door? I, I guess I need to pull chat on this. I don't know what I'd do in that situation. I mean, that is insane. But then again, sex. Which, which direction are you going to go with that, chat? You tell me. I see a lot of gifts. A lot of dancing puddings. But I'm not... There's <laughs> people saying they'd smash that. Oh, would you? You gonna hit that? Uh, your pee pee's hard. Is that it, chat? R one person said run. <laughs> one person's running for the door. Everybody else is like, you know what? I've, d I've dated crazier. <laughs> Let's find out what this lovely lady has to say about uh, the alien rape dark magic rituals. But anything you focus your attention on is your choice to focus your attention on, even if you don't know what it's all about. So in that, we are guilty without really being aware that we're guilty. We're kind of manipulated into giving our energy over. Oh my god, she has this monotone voice that's putting me to sleep. 
It's like, it's listening to this shit, it's like, oh, my, she's putting me in a trance to do her dark magic on me. I'm not falling for it. I'm not stupid. I know what this bitch is up to. She's gonna have a reptile come out and eat my cock after she puts me to sleep. Not falling for it. Sorry, honey. <laughs> You're gonna have to be trickier than that. Reptilian sacrifices? Yes, please. Let's hear about this. There were hundreds of these nine-foot reptilian guys standing with their legs. Hundreds. Yeah, they were all the way across the, uh, the wow. under, uh, underneath their vehicles. Okay. Standing so on the... Is this guy... What is this? All right. Can, I don't know if it's showing my mouse on screen. Look at the top of his... Is he wearing a wig? <laughs> do, you, do you see this? This is a fake wig. Like you can see his real hair right here. It's peeking out underneath. You, you can see the line where he glued it on his head. And this guy's... He's taking his security as OPSEC very seriously. Doesn't want those dick-eating aliens to know that he told everybody about their sex rituals. So he put on the world's worst wig. The crater. And what do they look like? Uh, uh, they're ugly-looking uh, lizard, alligator-type people. They wow. got they got the same skin as uh, the lizards got. Right. Okay, and terrible-looking faces. Mm. But then they have the ability to shift and look like a human. You know that reptilians and, and Draco, uh, you know, the blood sacrifices, the whole Luciferian thing, the, the kids being killed and eaten, I mean, that humans have been eaten and taken off planet, et cetera, et cetera, and used for slaves in other colonies, et cetera. I hate to say that, but that's far worse than what you've just said. It's okay. far worse. Yes, far worse. Uh, yeah. And uh, that the whole blood situation uh, is. Uh, I like like he's talking about aliens, <laughs> aliens killing and raping people and doing all this horrendous shit. And they spend like half a minute. It's like, yeah, they're pretty ugly. I wouldn't fuck them. Like, you know, if you if I met a reptilian and he wasn't going to eat my dick and it was like a date, they're pretty fucking hideous. Not not interested. Would not bang. Sorry, reptiles. Not Mr. Man and <laughs> Mr. World's worst wig would not fuck you. You're gonna have to find somebody else. Jordan Maxwell, I don't believe in UFOs. I've seen them. Well, I bet you have. Oh, here we go. Oh, <laughs> buckle up. I found. I think we found a winner. How the reptilians deceived humanity. I wonder if this is the ninja. And these were the people who first told me about a race of highly intelligent beings which they called the Chitauri, the Tokas, a race of creatures which look like reptiles who have ruled the world for hundreds they were kings. You've heard him correctly. <laughs> Jeez, I was hoping for a little more energy from our guy here. It's not, uh, I like the outfit, though. He has a very Being great fashion Mexico sense. At the time of George Bush. Oh, it's David Icke. That's David Icke interviewing him. Bush said to Kathy O'Brien, she quotes in her book, that an, a reptilian extraterrestrial race interbred with the ancient... Is this an outfit this guy is wearing, or did he wake up in a dumpster and just walk into this interview? It looks like just random shit is stuck to him. <laughs> what is this? It's just, I don't, what is this necklace? It looks like dead mummified babies are hanging from his neck. Central American people, because they needed to create bloodlines through which they could operate. Yes. Um, when my father actually told me about... Um, having been at a... Oh, they didn't. I, I was hoping they'd stick with the crazy black dude. Now they had to go to some thought on the phone. He's going to tell her about my daddy said. Nobody cares. Nobody cares what your daddy said. Oh, that's his name. Credo Mutwa. Credo Mutwa. Given his hot takes to uh, David Icke. God, I, I need to... We need, one of these days we need to do a stream just dedicated to David Icke's early stuff. Because it's insane. And uh, that's the kind of shit I like. <laughs> I just, I knew there were Kangs that were really into, um, really into 
uh, the whole Egyptian shit, but I did not know that there was a woke section of the reptilian group. That sounds amazing. That's the kind of crossover that dreams are made of. That's the kind of crossover you just hope for. You hope you come across one day. <laughs> oh, the internet's full of the craziest shit. It's fucking fantastic. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, you know, uh, today I was going to uh, look into the um, Slazo stuff. You know, there, there was this whole thing where this girl dropped these logs on this dude. Uh, they dated when, like, three or four years ago when they were both teenagers. Uh, his YouTube channel blows up. Uh, she becomes friends with a bunch of famous YouTubers. And then all these logs get dropped because they're, they were dating and they're still dating and they're off and on and all this shit. And she accuses him of being, like, this this sex pervert and uh, rapist and all of this stuff. And his he's just getting shit on by everybody. And then it comes out that she wasn't 100% honest and these other YouTubers had maybe secondary motives for what they were doing. Might have been tied to competition and money. Uh, that they maybe were painting him as a rapist to get clicks and views and uh, to make money doing it. Uh, speculation by some people out there. A lot of a lot of weird, crazy shit. Uh, but if I go into that, that's going to be like an hour or two. I think I'm going to save that for Friday. Um, I think that'll be the, the Friday subject of the whole Slazo debacle. I mean, you got everything in that. You got some chick abusing puppies. You got another guy threatening to sue everybody. Uh, other people talking about, like, taking people down. It's really fucking weird. And it's all centered around Reddit-themed videos, which makes no goddamn sense. Why Why would you destroy somebody because their Reddit videos are doing better than yours? But it, that shit that's hanging out there. That's out there in the ether. Uh, but you know what? I, I, I think we're going to call it a day here. I'm going to go play some Earth Defense Force and practice, hone my skills for when the reptiles come to eat my penis. I need to be prepared for that. The best way to do it is an alien killing simulator like EDF. Just putting it out there, not getting paid by them. I'm not telling you that the producers of Earth Defense Force 5 are trying to protect you by getting used to killing dick-eating aliens. But that's actually what they're doing. Uh, Friday, we will go over the Slazo thing. Uh, there are a couple other things, too. I'm going to dig around and try to find the... I want to find like that old-school David Icke shit. You know, it, that's, that has potential, I think. And then I think we'll explore Above Top Secret, the forum itself, because there's some crazy shit on there uh, that's fucking amazing. So that'll be Friday. Uh, I hope you all have a good morning. Enjoy your time at work. Enjoy your time at school. Hopefully the week will treat you well. Uh, remember to cover your cocks when walking in public, especially if you're a black dude. Those aliens are hungry as shit. <laughs> you don't want to fall for it. And whatever you do, don't let Elon Musk put fucking electrodes into your head. It's a terrible idea. Don't let Google do it. <laughs> don't let Facebook do it. Don't let these corporations put shit that's wirelessly controlled into your fucking brain. There's no way to refund that. You can't just pull it out. Awful idea. Oh, that's dystopian as shit. I don't trust, I don't trust the people that make my smartphone. You think I'm going to let some asshole implant shit directly into my brain? Fuck no. I'll be the old boomer in 30, 40, 50 years. I will be the old fucking curmudgeon that just is flipping off uh, the next, I, I don't even know what you're going to call them, not Gen Z, not millennials, whatever they fucking call them. Flipping off those stupid kids that are going to have all this shit implanted in their skulls. I'm going to be the old guy that can't compete. I'm going to be the old guy that is using antiquated technology with my fucking CB radio and flip phone. But at least I'll be able to say what I want. And Google, Facebook, uh, or what are, what are they going to call it? The Goo Book, when they merge together in the acquisition that will happen 10 years from now. Goo Book won't control me. I'm going to fight back. I'm going to fight back against their brain, Frankenstein, radio-controlled, communist computer god bullshit. I'm going to fight back against those dick-eating aliens. Now, I need to find, I need to find us a nice song to play out on. I don't know. What are we, what are we even going to do, to be honest with you here? We find, find a fancy song for us. Oh, my God. Unprepared. Terrible. Terribly unprepared. I should, I should have spent more time looking for songs and music to play, but I didn't. I got caught up watching Columbine, the big picture. It's like the only documentary about, isn't it weird if you go on to uh, YouTube, if you want to watch any like news footage or documentaries about school shooters or any of that shit, it's like all gone. You can you can't find anything aside from like news clips. 
The only one that's still up is some dude made a, a documentary. I don't know how long it's even going to still be up there. Very, very weird. Terrible. Okay, you know, let's see. Let's let's play us out with something, something upbeat. <laughs> let's have let's have a Vocaloid sing us a song out because they're going to be controlling us like fucking biological cars soon enough. Well, good morning, Chad. I hope the week has treated you well on this uh, Friday the 19th as we close it out. Oh, the weekend is coming. No longer have to put up with shit at school and at work. Just one more day until you can relax and kick back and enjoy yourselves. Oh, boy. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about on this stream. Lots of crazy shit going on this week. You know, initially I was going to uh, dedicate it to Slazo, I think his name is. Uh, but other stuff came up. Other stuff that I find a lot more interesting. So I might be delaying that. Delaying that while I focus on something that I find uh, more fascinating. We're going to be talking about Libra. Oh, boy. Who doesn't like talking about Facebook? We'll get into that. A couple other things. Apparently thoughts are being purged on Instagram. That's uh, catching everyone's attention. Now, what is her name? Uh, Delphine Dolphin? I don't fucking know. The chick that sold horny, <laughs> horny, desperate needs her bath water. They paid 30 bucks a pop to have fluid that was near her asshole in a bottle they can keep next to their bed. It's it very touching, really. <laughs> God bless capitalism. God bless the United States of America. If I can't buy a whore's bath water, I don't want to live in the country. <laughs> That's how I measure my freedom. By how much ass-tainted H2O I can purchase in a bottled format. Put up that. Got a shill. Got a shill. Got to get that money. Buy my hats. <laughs> it's not as good as it's not as good as the Thoughts bathwater. But it'll probably last longer. Because you can't really drink a hat while masturbating, can you? Oh yeah, she got thrown off Instagram. There, I caught you up on the whole story. I, I don't know exactly what the reasoning for her banning was. Millions of followers. But I'm pretty sure she's everywhere else. I mean, it's not like she's disappeared from the internet. Still up on Patreon, making $800 million a month. Still up on Facebook and Twitter and all the other social media platforms. I guess Instagram got jealous. They wanted some of that exclusive bathwater. Maybe they wanted her to piss in a jar. And she just wasn't willing to. Who knows? Who knows? You can never keep track of these things. Internet moves so quickly, it's hard to keep track of it all. Speaking of moving quickly, let me, let me just grab something here. I have a very nice, relaxed morning because I'm going to get stressed out and spurg out when we talk about Libra. And the Zuckerberg. Oh, our little Zuckerberg. Up to the nefarious shit that he loves to do. I don't trust that son of a bitch. Not one fucking moment do I trust him. I thought I'd... I, you know, I, I've been getting so into this crypto stuff, I, I'm, I'm never going to invest in it but I like following it now because it entertains the fuck out of me. It's so weird. I can't really pinpoint it. But I'd like to give you your, your crypto in the morning, your crypto morning minute, or or a, a breakfast with bitcoins. I don't know. Come up with something catchy. Come up with some catchy idea that you can call it. But let's take a look. Oh, look at that. Bitcoin is still, it's still stable. Bounce back from that. That low of 9,300 sitting at 10,500. Oh, oh, I know you're celebrating, Neats. I can hear you. Dreaming of those Lambos that are never going to come. I'd just like to remind you that while you may have staved off desolation and poverty and having to move back in with mom and dad, you may be Bitcoin rich at the moment, but we all know the one irrefutable proof, or the one irrefutable truth, excuse me, that exists when it comes to cryptocurrency. The bears always win. And that shit's going to crash hard. Maybe not today. Maybe not in a decade. But it's going to happen. The bears play the long game. That shit's coming down on your heads like a filthy temple full of heathens being struck down by by a bear-like god's wrath. That's your... There, there you go. See? Look at that. Crypto in the morning. Took me less than a minute. I'm getting very fast at that. Oh, but it's a nice segue. It's a nice segue into talking about Libra and all the crazy shit that was going on with that. You know, if I hadn't been uh, really paying attention to the, the crypto shit for laughs, 
I wouldn't have ended up watching a fucking two-hour stream of an obese Russian man talking about uh, smart contracts and oracles. I had no idea what the fuck any of this chain link shit was until I watched him give a two-hour live stream, essentially, and explain it. I get an idea now of what, what he's trying to do. I have no idea if it's feasible or honest, but at least I have a clue as to what uh, our boy is doing. But right on the heels of that, I saw people posting a link to, uh, to a committee meeting in the House of people that were going to be talking about Libra. Facebook wants to start its own coin. Now, they're not calling it a cryptocurrency. It's not exactly like a cryptocurrency. They want to be middleware, middlemen. They want to be the sort of people that are going to help your transactions. Money changers. They want you to convert into their currency and do international trade with it. Now, it's not going to have a really a speculative market. I think it's uh, they're, they're trying to, what is it, stablecoin? Is that the term I'm looking for, where it's dollar to dollar backed? And there'd just be a nominal fee tacked on. I love how they try to sell that to the public. Nominal fee, don't worry about it. Our currency, nominal fee. Nothing that you have to concern yourself with. It's not like we're going to be making an insane amount of money. It's not like we're a all-powerful platform that has billions of users who now wants to essentially create company script <laughs> and control a, a, a massive amount of currency. Control how that currency is distributed, who trades on that platform. Get information about business dealings because we're part of the Libra Association. Because we're going to have that wallet integrated into your Facebook account. So they sent their flimflam man up to Washington to sell everybody bullshit. And that's essentially what it was. Straight up bullshit. If this isn't setting off alarm bells in your fucking head when it comes to a corporation the size of Facebook talking about creating its own goddamn currency, I don't know what to tell you. That's a nightmare scenario. You know, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I'm blown away by the fact that companies like Facebook and Google and Alphabet and all these motherfuckers, these billion-dollar international corporations, can do the shit that they do. And yet Bill Gates got fucked in the ass by Janet Reno. A million dollar a day fine. Because he wanted to put his fucking web browser and package it together with his operating system. And they said that was unfair competition. Too much power in the hands of one corporation. Bill, you need to get the fuck out of here with that shit. And yet Facebook and Google and all these other companies, they can produce hardware and software and search engines. And now we're talking about wallets and currency. And everybody seems to be like, well, whatever. It's a new era. It's a new age. People are uh, interacting and, uh, you know, uh, engaging in commerce in ways that they never did before. So we should all be okay with that. We should be okay with a company like Facebook putting forward a proposition like this because it's not going to, it's not going to do anything bad. What, what bad things could happen? Absolutely fucking ridiculous. I don't trust Zuckerberg. All right. <laughs> this guy, let's just, just to give you an idea. This guy is so detached. He bought a property in, I think it was a, a Hawaiian island. Uh, him and his wife bought this property. His neighbors fucking hated him. Just fucking hated him. Hated her, hated him, hated what they did to the goddamn neighborhood. Because he's not a human being. He doesn't breathe oxygen like you and I. He doesn't drink water like we do. He's an automaton. Seeking to, to gain as much... Um, fucking currency as he can as much control as he can this is disastrous and watching this subcommittee meeting where they're discussing this with a Facebook representative somebody who's there to represent I guess not just Facebook but the Libra Association the association that's in charge of it the association that's going to be determining all sorts of things from the amount of money involved the people involved the players conversion rates all of that these are going to be the power brokers of this great new modern era. And you fucking watch this. And some of these motherfuckers have no clue what they're doing or what they're talking about. They're so detached from reality they don't care. I kid you not, one of these assholes actually did a five-minute spiel where he said, Oh, we got more important things to talk about. We shouldn't be wasting our time with this. The private market's great. Let Facebook do what Facebook wants to do. I don't see any danger with letting this happen. I don't see any reason to be cautious about letting somebody like this have this amount of power. If you let a genie like this out of the bottle, you will never get it back in. 
And it won't just be Facebook, it'll be a multitude of companies. Because these fuckers like to compete with one another, and they like to complicate shit, and they like to have control, and they like to have power. And look at streaming platforms when it comes to getting content from Hollywood, be it a television show or a movie. You've got uh, a few that popped up and became popular, like a Netflix or a Hulu, and now all these other companies want to compete. They don't want to go in it together. They all want to compete. So now if you want to watch a fucking show that you like, you've got to subscribe to 82 different goddamn services to stream something. And the nightmare dystopian future that I foresee, outside of the flagrant abuses that these pricks are going to put into place, is going to be having to convert my Facebook Libra into my Google Goggle, or whatever the fuck they're going to call their currency, <laughs> into uh, WordPress widgets and 19 other currencies because I want to buy something. Because I want to go out and make a fucking purchase. Then I've got to go through some transaction change. And all of these companies, nominal fees. So that five bucks I put in for that nominal fee gets hit by 18 different corporations. And by the time it gets to Amazon, so I can order my extra-sized dragon dildo, I've got 18 fucking cents left. Nominal fee. What a load of shit. The fact this asshole could go into there and say that with a straight face is remarkable to me. Like he's just trying to slip it under the radar. Like nobody's going to notice or understand what the risk is in something like that. You're talking about millions to tens of millions, maybe even hundreds of millions of transactions a day with that amount of users. And if your nominal fee is spread out amongst all those transactions, not just the input, but the output as well, the nominal fee to take the money and convert it into the Libra system, and then take the money in the Libra system and convert it out into U.S. dollars or whatever the currency is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's going to be such a money-making scheme. Facebook won't give a shit about ad revenue. They'll be making a fucking killing off of this. You have these, these representatives talking to this man, talking to the representative from Facebook, from the Libra Association, asking him all sorts of questions, getting no answers as he gives them just indirect long explanations to run the clock because he knows if he can go for over five minutes he doesn't have to explain himself very well doesn't really have to give great detail as to what their true plans are but he did slip up on occasion and on occasion he let slip that well maybe we'll get to the point where we start doing loans maybe we'll get to the point where we start acting as a bank <laughs> what is going what the I, you know the clown world meme isn't a meme we, you know, my fucking son is a daughter, <laughs> okay? The Little Mermaid is black. I need to buy Facebook Monopoly money to buy something on Amazon. I don't understand when this world became so upside down. I don't understand when people became so fucking crazy that they'd look at a corporation this size and even consider letting them do this. Company script is a real fucking thing. They've done this before. And it ends badly. When you let a corporation use its own money so you can use purchase goods and services through them, they abuse it every single time. Go look at miners. Go look at people that worked in factories and had to deal with that shit back in the day. Where you fucking clock in, you get your paycheck, but it's not in real money. It's in company money. And then you pay your rent to the company because they own the fucking apartment complex. And then you buy your groceries at the company grocery store. It's a brilliant way to fuck you out of your actual hourly wage. Because you're not really making $10 an hour at that point. Because you're not passing that currency on to other businesses outside of the company you work for. They fuck with the margins and they screw you through rent, they screw you through groceries, they screw you through services and goods. And if you don't think that Facebook will expand on where it wants to go with this, if you buy their bullshit about just wanting to be a middleman. Just to help that... Tra oh my God. You know, they sold it as this... I love this. Oh, the third... People in the third world aren't covered by banks. That's that's what they told the uh, representatives. Listen, we're trying to do some goodwill. We're humanitarians here at Facebook. All right. Uh, yeah, sure. A lizard person slash robot hybrid runs our company. But Mark Zuckerberg aside, we're humanitarians. And there are a lot of third worlders out there that don't have access to a bank account. Okay, so the third worlders that don't have access to a bank account 
They have access to a fucking smartphone? They have access to a computer. <laughs> You're going to give them a Bitcoin wallet. Um, well, explain this to me, genius. If the third worlder doesn't have a fucking bank account and the third worlder wants to run a business and make purchases and receive money, how do they convert it out? They need to use a bank at some point. So they're not really unbanked people, are they? If they're using a bank to take your bullshit Monopoly money and translate it into fucking South African clamshells or whatever bullshit currency they use over there, they have to go to some money changer, don't they? Oh, but watch it, watching these people, this this one guy, I swear to God. Oh, no, 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 Facebook's good, guys. Facebook's good. You trust them. Oh, God, I'm getting so sleepy over here. Oh, God, it is a, I'm really tired today. Let's, let's all take a nap. Let Facebook do what Facebook wants to do. Now, one of the more interesting aspects of this was the fact that it wasn't split down partisan lines. You would expect that you're going to get different answers or approaches from a Democrat versus a Republican. But it didn't really fall down party lines. Yes, the Democrats and Republicans that opposed it had different reasons for doing so. But people kind of got a gut feeling. A lot of them seemed to start to get a gut feeling that they were making a deal with Satan. That if they let Facebook do this, it was a real bad fucking idea on their part. Uh, so I'll show you some highlights from this. And we're just, we're going to talk about it a little bit because it's amazing to me that they would even attempt to do this. And when you look at the people that are in partnership with them, you start to understand why this is really, really, really fucking dangerous. Uh, so let me let me get rid of uh, our boy Zucky here. Oh boy, yeah, Mr. Zuck. Okay, yeah, you sure like that water. Drinking it like a real human being, you are. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, things are getting a little slow on my end. We might get an F. Started talking about banking, and now everything's slowing down. Oh, shit. This is a risk, chat. Have I gone too far? Am I going to learn a terrible lesson today? All right. Luckily, I watched this in real time. Fuck me. Six hours of this shit. These assholes spoke for six hours about this. And that guy, he must be getting paid and just his weight in gold. Because he was able to dodge every question. Well, the majority of them. He did slip up a few times. So we'll take a look. Because uh, I clipped out what I thought were the relevant portions. Uh, mainly when he was asked, well, we'll get to it. I don't, I don't want to jump ahead too far here. All right. Yeah, uh, Mr. Hazana here. Uh, this fucking guy. <laughs> you ever, it, it reminded me of like a high school student that didn't do his fucking homework when it was this guy's turn to talk because uh, he went right to Wikipedia. He actually said to the guy, I went to Wikipedia and looked up the definition of fiat currency. You're on the fucking... You're, what are you doing? How did you get this position on a committee if you have to go to Wikipedia to look up the definition of fiat fucking currency, Hazana? What are you, smoking... <laughs> are you drinking petrol from a can? All right, this is the, this is the first uh, clip that I think is uh, fairly good here. Let's, let's bring it up. Uh, this representative asked what I thought was a very straightforward question, something that should be one of the first concerns that comes to mind when it comes to Facebook running their own fucking currency. This $20 bill can be used by every single person um, uh, that, that possesses it. With regard to your network, um, can Milo Yiannopoulos or Louis Farrakhan use um, Libra? Congressman, and I, was, and I bring that up because, you know, both those two individuals have been banned from Facebook. Uh, Congressman, um, uh, first, I, I want to say that... Uh, no, simple question. Come, this, you, you, no, but it, I, you, give me... We, gotta, I, we only have five minutes. You've got to answer a question. So, right off the bat, can they use the currency? Right? I, that seems like a very reasonable request to get that kind of information. Are these people that you've banned from using your social network, are they going to be able to use your currency? Now, somebody else follows that up later on with what I think is even more on point. And the answer, the answer is what you would fucking expect. Uh, it would be from this representative here. Do you expect um, to um, have the Libra Association um, vote to exclude companies like Chick-fil-A or anybody else that might have 
um, social views that you disagree with? Uh, Congressman, uh, this is actually not going to be uh, my decision or Facebook's decision. It's going to have to be a decision that is going to be taken by the Council of Members of the Libra Association and the Libra Association itself. Yeah, do you notice how that wasn't a no? Oh, the Libra Association is going to be the one to decide. This guy went into... Uh, <laughs> He's asked straight up, are, are you going to target people for their social views or their political ideologies? Are you going to allow them to do business through this Libra functionality, through this Libra currency, through this digital wallet? Are you going to let them do business? A follow-up to the Yiannopoulos and Farrakhan question. You know, what happens when you give a company that uh, is trying to virtue signal, when you give a company that's got a slanted ideology or a political bias, a controls over a currency, and how that affects a person? So are you going to let them fairly use it? Or are you going to interfere? Are you going to say, you can't buy these donuts? You can't uh, uh, use this service? You can't uh, get a hotel room or rent a car or whatever? Because we don't like what you said in regards to who you voted for. We don't like your stance on gay marriage. We don't like your stance on abortion. No Libra currency for you. Even more shocking, and I wish somebody would have followed up with this, what happens if I have a Libra wallet and I convert hundreds or thousands of dollars into it? And then you decide you don't like my social viewpoint or you don't like my political ideology. Because that money's held by them. So where's that money being held before it's transferred out or uh, used for a purchase? Probably in a fucking account. Accruing interest. So is this some way for them to, uh, to not just... Hey, it reminds me of what happened with the Proud Boys. Where one of their uh, leadership, I don't know what you want to call it, but one of their higher ups, had his bank account yanked from him. And they yanked the bank account. The fucking bank did this. Yanked the bank account because they didn't like his politics. And they decided they weren't going to allow him to bank through them. Now, banks rarely do shit like that. And I know that a company like Facebook or a company like Google would be way more trigger happy about implementing that kind of a stance, that kind of a policy, when it comes to dealing with wrong thing. When you have a platform that has billions of people and you integrate a currency system into it like they're proposing, and you make it integral and necessary to use a currency system like that to do trade and purchases online, because these companies will glad hand with one another until the cows come home. When you let them do that, you put people at risk of being put outside of the system. When you have all these companies that are venturing out to do new businesses, like Amazon and their grocery stores, what the fuck happens if Amazon decides they want to use Libra to make purchases in their grocery stores? They take over all over the country, and now you're banned from using Libra. I mean, you think that's outrageous, or you think that's far-fetched, but they're setting the table for it. They're setting the plates down, they're getting everybody ready for the, the dinner party, and then they're going to throw you out on your ass with an empty stomach. So who are these companies that are a part of this Libra Association? Surely, surely these these people must be, um, you know, unbiased. It's like 82 companies, but I'm not even interested in the majority of the social networks or the online services. I'm interested in the founding members that are part of the payment processors. So who exactly is a part of that? Because these are the people that are going to be making the decision. Remember what he said. We're going to leave it up to the Libra Association. So who the fuck are the Libra Association? Oh, there's some familiar faces. Founding members. This initial group of organizations will work together to finalize the Libra Association's charter and will become the association's founding members upon its completion. MasterCard, PayPal, PayU, Stripe, and Visa. Well, four of those should all step out and uh, jump right to your attention. MasterCard, Visa, PayPal, and Stripe. BitChute got fucked over by these guys. Patreon's been fucked over by these guys. Numerous creators have been fucked over by these guys. It's people within these corporations that have decided certain entities and businesses aren't going to be allowed to profit or use services. They're the ones that are sending out let or letters and emails and notices saying, we don't like your content, we don't like your politics, we don't like your social stances, you don't get to make money. You don't get to use our financial services. They strong arm little guys. I know a lot of people think Patreon is the most lip shit thing that ever existed on Earth. But believe me, even Patreon gets a pressure applied to them by massive corporations like Visa and MasterCard and the others, telling them who's allowed on and who isn't allowed on. 
They've removed people because they were told by Visa and MasterCard and others, you need to remove them. And these are the guys that are going to be setting the policy for how Libra operates. These are the people that Facebook is assuring the representatives and the American people are going to be um, neutral and unbiased enough to put policies and practices in place that won't uh, handicap other people when it comes to being able to trade, buy, or sell on the Internet. It's insane. And I notice a lot of these, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of curious where the major banks are because it almost feels like they're trying to, uh, you know, edge into banking without being in banking. They want to create the currency system. They want to have these payment processes be the financial pillar of it. And they want to just kind of sidestep the banks. I mean, where, where, why is it just people talking about it? Why is it just the people that tuned into this, this Senate sub, or I'm sorry, this representative subcommittee had maybe 3,000 people watching. I wouldn't have fucking watched it because I wouldn't even have known that it was going on. Nobody knows that it's going on. So all you have waiting to stand up to corporations of this size, billion, multi, multi, multi billion dollar international corporations working with the largest social media conglomerates, all working together to try to line their pockets and fuck over the populace. The only ones standing up against that and asking questions, good or bad, are these representatives who nobody's watching because nobody knows it's going on. Nobody knows they maybe should be paying attention to it. That is fucking terrifying. You know, you had one or two that just, you, that you could almost tell they're bought and paid for. You could just tell that they were getting uh, campaign contributions from a vector that's a part of this. One of these companies was sucking their dick with a money wallet. And the others, for whatever reason, did something or at least said something. And you had people, <laughs> you had a lot of different representatives basically telling them outright, we don't trust you. You, we have no reason to trust you. You can't even keep people's data private. You're not secure. Why the fuck should we trust you with money? Why should we trust you to be unbiased? Why should we give you this kind of power? And I don't, I don't know how it's going to go. I really don't. I don't know if Facebook's going to be able to pull this off, but if they do, we are... F that's. I, I don't know where you go from there. It's bad enough with the way that Google and the other companies go after certain lines of thought when it comes to politics or social views or whatever you know uh, they ban you from a platform they ban you from hosting your own your own website using your own servers using your own services using your own payment processors but now you're going to let them get into money they can have a real world impact on you offline not just online offline if they create a marketplace like this where they can politically decide who can compete and who can't compete that gives them power over dictating what uh, what businesses, what sectors of businesses do well. If they make it a hub of trade, if they make it a hub of purchases, they, they're the ones with the keys to the kingdom. This council of people, this council of 82 companies gets to decide who's going to be a success and who isn't. And if you think they're going to let some small motherfucker in, if you think that they're going to let some company that has a belief that goes against theirs or who dares to speak out against the power they wield into that system, into that closed off ecosystem, you're out of your fucking mind. They will never let them in. They will do everything they can to kick them out. This shit should absolutely fucking terrify you. And, it, you know, I, I Facebook's the first big one, I guess, to really have talked about doing something like this. But I don't doubt that they are going to be the only ones that do. They're not unique in their line of thought. Companies want to make fucking money. I mean, that's, that's you know, bullet point number one. But for some reason, a lot of these social media networks, a lot of these uh, massive online corporations have gotten into the habit of wanting to teach the world to believe what they believe. Fucking with search results. Fucking with artificial intelligence doing whatever they have to do by hook or by crook to make people line up with their viewpoints. I do not want these fucks in business. I do not want these fuckers in currency. That is a massively bad idea. Horrendously bad idea. You know, I may not know a ton about cryptocurrency. I've mostly just been 
paying attention a little bit about it uh, just for laughs. But I would rather have a thousand exit scams exist than to let one corporation like this have this kind of power. It's insanity. It's pure fucking insanity. Why are we allowing these companies to become modern day robber barons? Why are we letting them become like the railroad tycoons of the past? Where they just control fucking everything. You know, this lawyer had the balls to tell one of the reps. I, I think it was, uh, <laughs> it was the really obnoxious Democratic chick. The one that cried at a fence where no people were on the other side. He told her he'd be fine being paid in Libra. Think of the level of brainwashing that asshole's already under to even suggest something like that. I would be fine with my company paying me in a fake digital currency controlled by lib shits in California. And when she actually did bring up, and she was the only one, company script in its history, he didn't even know what it was. Now, I can't imagine a man that educated in a suit that expensive doesn't know what it is. But if he really is that stupid, holy shit, is he in for a shock. I'd be fine being paid by Facebook and Libra. Fuck you, no you wouldn't. You want real money. You don't have to be stuck in their system to use your fucking cash. What a nightmare. Digital fucking currency controlled by Facebook. We're all going to be living the GameStop lifestyle. You know how they pay their employees? With fucking GameStop fun bucks. Oh, we're not going to give you a, a check to put into your bank account. We're going to give you some uh, bullshit uh, EBT-like credit card <laughs> that, that's accepted at one or two local gas stations. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, a fucking Papa John's and GameStop. That's your paycheck, asshole. Have fun. That's the closest we've really come to company script in the modern era. Nobody really cares because they think of GameStop as a company that hires children to work there on their off hours during high school. I, I don't know. I feel like I've taken a crazy pill. I feel like I've just, I've walked off a cliff into some weird fucked up reality. And people are just fine with it. They're fine with it. They just don't see the issue with it. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Uh, from Loop M, uh, Rip, this is America, Rip. Uh, very true. Uh, it's a Lino boosting Bitcoin for the moment. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I can't talk too much shit about uh, online money when it comes to my Chinese lemons. I suppose. I don't know how that fucking hustle works, but it is what it is. Oh, we got a few here. Uh, Coile, or, uh, Coile, oh, God. Coile Dante. Ever been to a university town? Uh, company towns are alive and well. The new industry just happens to be scamming 20-year-olds. Well, that would fi or fall in line with what I said about GameStop. From Rodson. I know this is way off topic, but I think it's up your alley. It's a video where an old boomer lady reads her Jesus gay sex fanfic. Well, I yeah, we'll probably take a look at that then. Revelation thirteen seventeen, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark of the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Yeah, well, that is a reality we're going into. And you know, I <laughs> I wouldn't really have thought Zuckerberg to be the antichrist, but. He doesn't really appear to be very human-like, does he? Kind of reptilian. Maybe he's a dragon under there. Maybe if you, <laughs> maybe if you'd had him take his shirt off, there's six 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 tattooed on his fucking chest. We're gonna never know. Old Zucky and his digital bullshit fun bucks. I'm just so sick of these fucks and their companies buying up everything and getting into every industry and getting into every avenue of service and wanting to control it all and just tightening that fucking leash where they just won't let people talk like they want to talk, do what they want to do, express themselves in the way they want to express themselves. And now they want to control your money. That is the worst decision that we, that we can't let that happen. Now, you're the government representatives. I know that you've got a bunch of bullshit laws and regulations that shouldn't even exist. You love to fuck over small business. Surely somewhere in the tomes and tomes of bullshit that you've cobbled together to bilk people out of money over the last fucking century, you've got something you can hit these assholes with to prevent them from doing this. 
I refuse to believe that they can't stop it somehow. <laughs> that there's not something they have control of. They can say, no, we're not going to let it go through. Oh, what is this? Oh, uh, yeah, Facebook, I, I, I like this. They're already trying to message this. Remarkably, they're trying to message it already. Uh, let's see. There we go. Facebook is backpedaling from its ambitious vision of Libra. And yes, I'm reading this story on Ars Technica. Remember, Ars Technica, the number one name in news when it comes to child molesting. Uh, they were the ones with the reporter that uh, liked to talk a lot of shit about incels and neats and anime lovers on the internet. Turns out he fucked kids. Uh-oh. Hopefully this one's not molesting anybody. But Ars Technica is reporting that Facebook is backpedaling from its ambitious vision of Libra. Under pressure from regulators, Facebook is rethinking its design. Oh, are you? That's a load of shit. No, what they're rethinking is, how can we get our foot in the door? They're not rethinking their design. They know what their design is, and they know what they want their end game to be. They want to find a way to make representatives in the American public who are fat and stupid. You know, disconnect enough and not pay enough attention just to get that foot in the door. And then once they've established themselves as an economic global powerhouse, then they start implementing their actual design for what they want to do. Just kill it now. Don't let this go through. I don't know. Chad, maybe uh, you know, I've ranted here. I've been ranting a little bit about this. You tell me. Maybe this is just, uh, maybe I just don't get it. Maybe I just don't understand what a brilliant idea it is letting a corporation like Facebook have this kind of control. You tell me. Am I wrong? Should we be letting these assholes have this kind of power? Because I don't see it ending well for anybody. I don't see it being the sort of thing we want to fucking happen. I've got to let you catch up now. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing no's. Well, uh, thankfully, at least, I'm not completely in the minority here. I've got something from Gertie D. What the hell currency is the Ninja Jet? I don't fucking know. I don't... Their currency conversion, I don't understand it. Okay, um... I, I'm trying to... From what I, <laughs> I... I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I don't understand how this system works. I don't, un I don't understand how Linos work. I know that uh, venture capitalists from China came in and met with the, I believe they were Turkish founders of the website, and they gave them a massive amount of money, tens of millions of dollars. And they said, we want to get the infrastructure working well. We want to get the back end working well. We want to get that UI nailed down. We want to be a real serious competitor in this space. We're going to give you a fuck ton of money to get shit up to, you know, up to speed, to make it look good, to make it run good. And, um, We'll, we'll implement this currency system. You know, it's their version of bits, essentially. And uh, we'll work out the details later on, on how we can make a real good profit off of that. But right now, we just want to build. So I don't know what the end vision for, for Lino points is. I, I don't know what... I, I don't understand how it works. You know, what it, it would have been interesting, uh, it, you know, and I'm sure they're doing this because they want to control the currency themselves. They want to be Facebook. <laughs> well, in a way, I suppose. Uh, but it would have been interesting if they just built in um, cryptocurrency. Where it's, I, I don't know, where you can just donate directly through the site in whatever form you want to. Because who does it? <laughs> who doesn't want what? What was BitConnect? What was their thing? Who doesn't want to get paid in that? I can't even remember the name of it. I just remember the one guy screaming like Howard Dean uh, <laughs> during during that one live television broadcast. I'm sorry, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, JB Behemoth, uh, Libra, the in-game currency for real life? Yeah. Just don't let them do it. Just honest to God, I'm telling you, it's a disastrous decision. You can't give them that kind of power and that control over that amount of money and that control over that amount of business and that amount of people. It is a fucking awful idea. Uh, it's, it's more data. It's more data, too, to sell because now they're directly going to know the kind of shit you want to buy. All that dirty, kinky stuff you want to buy, all the embarrassing shit you want to buy, now they have a more accurate profile of who you are to sell to marketers, to advertisers, to governments, to whoever the fuck they want to give it to. It's just another layer of stripping away any anonymity, privacy, or protection you have as a consumer. 
so they can make even more money. It's double dipping. Not only are we going to take nominal fees from your currency exchange and use of our service to trade, buy, and sell, we're going to use the data we get from what you bought and sold and give that to marketers bundled with your name, your age, your location, your race, your religion, your political views, all of that, to give them the perfect picture of who you are and how to market to you. What a fucking nightmare. Just nightmarish. That's the world, that's the world we're sitting in. That's the beautiful old U.S. of A. Just let it happen, right? I have no faith in the government when it comes to this shit. I don't think anybody's paying enough attention to it when it comes to the government. I think they're going to sneak it by, and it's going to get implemented in a fucking a year or two years, and then it'll become this big fucking thing, and it's going to just be disastrous. I mean, their sales pitches, we facilitate uh, buying and selling quickly. We... We appeal to people that are unbanked. Uh, we're global. Uh, you know, we, we provide security and assurance, and it's back one-to-one, -one and, oh, my God, isn't this great? Listen to all these benefits. It's headed up by major payment processors and major corporations that all have their own slants and viewpoints. And I would not want these fucking people, this cabal, this <clears throat> little oligarchy of technocrats, to have that kind of fucking control on the Internet. God damn. You know, and speaking of Zuckerberg, let me put his little precious pictures up here. A little cherub angel. Speaking of Mark, uh, he was in a news story recently. Not just him, but uh, Elon Musk as well. Uh, related to Epstein, our egg-shaped <laughs> egg dick pedophile. Apparently, reporters now are having a lot of fun talking to anybody and everybody that ever associated with Epstein. And that list would include Elon Musk, who went to a party and apparently introduced Mark Zuckerberg to Epstein. <laughs> and, now, and now both uh, Musk and Zuckerberg are running for the hills, terrified of being connected to it. Uh, you know, Epstein, I've noticed a lot of people say it's not going to go anywhere. The Epstein thing's not going to go anywhere, Jim. Well, it's already gotten to a pretty decent spot already. 50 women in total now have come forward with allegations. I'm sure a lot of that's gold-digging bullshit, but I bet you there's enough sprinkled in there to make it interesting. They've denied his bail. He was going to put up everything he owned for collateral not to go to jail before his trial. Fuck you, Epstein. You're going to sit in jail before the trial. No bail. Bail's denied. Now everybody's talking about who's associated with it. About Epstein's connections to the Clinton Foundation. Old Slick Willie's out there shitting bricks telling everybody he only made five stops on that plane when the flight logs say 23. Trump's saying, no, I threw him out of Mar-a-Lago. Uh, I don't like this man. Zuckerberg and Musk are running for the hills. <laughs> Alan Dershowitz, the Harvard professor that represented him and a friend of Epstein's, has been telling people that uh, he never saw any young women, even though every other person that's ever dealt with this guy has said, tons of young women, young girls everywhere. But Dershowitz is saying, never saw it. I never saw it. That man is a saint. And then telling people that the, the only massage I got was from a 50-year-old Russian woman named Olga. And I left my underwear on. Bullshit, Mr. Dershowitz. I don't believe you. The mysterious 50-year-old Russian woman named Olga was the only, the only customer she ever had for Mr. Epstein was you? Boy, that's real specific, isn't it? When, when he's got fucking uh, barely out of their preteens girls dancing and gyrating around on his plane called the fucking Lolita Express. But no, you got the massage from a 50-year-old Russian woman named Olga. Yeah, yeah, honk, honk, buddy. Real, real believable. God. Yeah, I, I've got... I'm, I'm going to say it outright. You know, I will admit, Kevin Spacey surprised me. They let him go. They've dropped the charges. Because, uh, I don't know, he told him he was gay. I thought that would go somewhere. Um, I know the charge... Oh, well, let me, let me rephrase that. They let him go because the witness who was going to testify, one of the complainants, uh, when he was asked to come and testify at the grand jury and give information during a deposition, repeatedly invoked the Fifth Amendment. Now, people can figure out, why does he keep doing that? Then when they asked for him to turn over his phone that allegedly have conversations between him and Kevin Spacey, 
his mother had deleted certain ones and then denied she had done that. This made the prosecutors and the defense attorneys start to get a little uneasy. They thought something weird was going on. Well, this kid refused to answer anything, kept saying, I plead the fifth, I plead the fifth, I plead the fifth. Then they found social media postings of him basically sitting in Spacey's lap asking him to grab his dick. Then they found more information that he lied to Spacey about being a certain age when he wasn't that age. So that case was dropped. But I'm still curious about the one where he had the 16-year-old boy show up in his apartment. <clears throat> uh, the Broadway actor. Because from what I understand, that's a different person entirely. So I don't know if he's out of the woods completely. But in regards to that, he's been let go. So yes, the, Casey, or the Spacey thing did surprise me. But Epstein has so much shit on him. Remember, he is already convicted. Whether or not you think the plea deal was bullshit, he is a registered sex offender, and he's already been charged and found guilty of this shit. So I don't think they're going to give him a slap on the wrist. Acosta got thrown out. I have no doubt Trump brought him into the office and said, you're going to fucking resign today to get him the hell out of there, because that is a hot potato nobody wants to touch. And there's no prosecutor stupid enough in this world to give him another goddamn plea deal after the debacle the last one was. So I'm absolutely certain that our uh, egg-shaped uh, aficionado, Mr. Epstein, is going to he's gonna face some big boy prison time. And there's no way a rich, spoiled, pampered son of a bitch who went from being a billionaire flying around the world in his private jets going to his child-fucking islands is going to suddenly be okay with the notion of being stuck in a 5x5 five five cell with Jerome. All right, he's not going to do that. So I absolutely believe he's going to roll over on people. I absolutely believe he's going to start naming names and organizations and things that went on. A lot of the people in finance and banking and investment and all that shit who've been commenting on these stories publicly and talking to reporters have all said the same fucking thing. And it's weird how it all lines up. None of them know how he made his money. Everybody's confused about that. And a lot of them are speculating that he just straight up blackmailed people with child sex. So when you have this many people in finance all saying the same thing, it makes me think it's an open secret. Which means this trial is going to be a fucking shit show. And I'm, I'm looking forward to watching it broadcast on national television. And I'm looking forward to him pointing out angrily at the prosecutor and saying, Bill Clinton! Bill Clinton did it! And then having a barbell fall through the roof and break his fucking neck. But at least he'll get those words out. <laughs> so uh, the swamp will be drained. So that's that's my hope going forward with uh, our dear beloved Eggman. God. What a weird fucking... It's been a weird month. Facebook's going to try to become... Uh, its own digital bank. You've got a billionaire. Oh, but he, yeah, not a billionaire. Only half a million. Or, I'm sorry, uh, a half a billion dollars in assets all accumulated. So he even lied about that. I mean, what's the point of lying at that point? If you've got $500 million, why lie and say you have a billion? You have $500 million. I don't... <laughs> Is it really that fierce of a competition among the top of the top to see who's got the bigger dick when it comes to money? After a certain point, it must be so absurd. Who cares? You know, who gives a shit? Just call it a day. Walk away. I want to see pictures of inside this mansion. I'm looking forward to that. Of his sex dolls that were tied up to the fucking wall. And all the other crazy, weird, creepy shit that all the police and investigators have been uh, anonymously telling reporters about and saying, yeah, there's some fucked up shit in there. There's some, there's some weird shit going on in Epstein's fucking room. <laughs> we don't know what's up. Okay. Oh, I got my Libra rant out. I feel better. It's nice to vent a little bit. It's nice to vent a little bit when it comes to, uh, to scary things. And believe me, that Libra shit is scary. Uh, let's see. What should we do here? Okay. We'll just do a little break right now. When we come back, we're going to talk about a, a lie. I think you're going to like this. A conspiracy, a secret conspiracy amongst librarians across the country to make your children gay. I think you'll like it. <laughs> Maybe you're unaware of the secret order of gay librarians and what they've been doing to your children. So we'll cover that 
because uh, <laughs> how could you not? How could you not cover that? Uh, we'll cover that when we come back. Uh, go grab a drink, take a piss, do what you got to do. I will be back in uh, five. Let us listen to a classic. Ah, uh, you know, I could, uh, I could probably go for sniffing a little bit of petrol right about now, uh, with all the crazy shit that's going on, and uh, not just Libra, of course, not just Epstein and the bizarre shit that he gets up to. We're talking about the super secret conspiracy of librarians across the country trying to make your kids suck dick. Apparently, that's a thing. Uh, let me let me just pull it all up. There's a, a few things we're going to be looking over here. I'm going to start you off with what I found. <laughs> just ah, uh, okay. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you exactly how I went through this, and then show you something odd that I found on how it was all interconnected. So I'm just going to put this up. Uh, one second here. For this morning's business meeting, we. I'm going to just put this up, and uh, well, I'll walk you through it. And you can tell me what you think. For this morning's business meeting. All right. Uh, let me pull it up here. There we go. All right. This is from the St. County, uh, St. Mary's County government. They're having a bit of an argument. See, something happened in their library. And they're very upset about it. And the librarian is talking to the county commissioners and the mayor and everybody else. They had a uh, LGBTQ barbecue meeting. <laughs> well, you know, we should, oh, we'll take a look at the clip, too. I'll show, show, show you what happened. One man's out there fighting for the truth. And he got arrested for it. They had this giant get-together to celebrate homosexuality and transsexuality. And uh, did it through the library by renting a room. And then held a get-together for children in the community. Now, uh, it didn't go as expected. Uh, one citizen had a bit of an issue with it. And he decided to storm it. <laughs> he ran around in circles. He ran around. There's 70 people in this room talking about gay stuff with kids. And he runs in there going sonic fast, supersonic fast. And runs circles around them screaming, don't let the men in dresses fool you kids. They're not real women. And the police had to come in and arrest them. Apparently that was a, that was a bridge too far for the police in the local system. Hauled his ass out of there. Well, local government hears that this happened, and uh, they're a little pissed off. They're like, hey, library, you've got to knock this shit out. You need to stop doing this. Because uh, you're making us look like assholes on a national scale, and you're costing us fucking money. And to have those cops show up and arrest them, to have them provide security for this library event uh, for these children, uh, cost us as a community roughly $3,000. So this is what the the local government, this is the conclusion they came to. We're going to take that money from you. Fuck your books. Fuck your books. We're taking that $3,000 and we're giving it to the police department because they had to arrest a man that told children not to trust the men in dresses. And that's the gist of this meeting. Uh, I'm not going to make you actually listen to a, a local commissioner uh, commission meeting of three and a half hours long. That's ludicrous. But I just wanted you to see where this starts on our little journey of exploration. <laughs> okay. Um, now, St. Mary's County. Actually, let me make sure I've got this. Let me make sure I've got this uh, queued up properly. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, the Baina. That's, that is where I wanted to go. Oh, shit. Hopefully I didn't just cut off what I... Okay, no, good. I didn't. All right. Uh, I lost my activity feed. Great. Um, okay. There we are. So this was the local news covering this. And they mentioned something that caught... It's a little surprising. So we'll... We'll, <laughs> we'll see if you pick up on it. And then I'll show you how this ties into other things. And I think you'll be surprised. Uh, this is uh, the Baynet.com article talking about them having to pay the cost of the Drag Queen Story Hour. Maybe that sounds familiar to you. Drag Queen Story Hour. Yes, this is in fact the same library that was covered by Tucker Carlson like two years ago. This is the one that keeps making national news. And when they're talking in this article about uh, you know some of the different things that were going on, making them pay money, uh, making them reimburse the police force for the ridiculous shit that's going on. Oh, let me make, let me make uh, sure I find it here. It's buried in this article, but it is I I trust me it is in this article. 
Ah, here we go. It's right in here. Uh, this is what caught my attention. Listen to this shit. Another interesting point that was brought up by Commissioner Eric Colvin was regarding a post made on the American Library Association's website by St. Mary's County Librarian Tess Goldwasser two years ago. The content of her post suggested ways for libraries to sneakily fit LGBT stuff into current children's programming while acting as a secret librarian advocate operative. <laughs> so their librarian is using a national service of librarians and putting forward a proposal to sneak in LGBT material into children's programming as a secret librarian advocate operative. <laughs> what? This woman is outright openly admitting, and when they, you know, when the library uh, itself responded to the commissioner, said, yeah, that is weird. That is weird that our librarian <laughs> would be talking about going deep cover and making kids gay. A secret cabal? <laughs> How ridiculous is that? She wants it. I, I just, I, I'm stunned. I'm speechless. And again, to put this into context, two years ago, well, what was going on? Oh, let me make sure I, oh God, hopefully I didn't. Um, yeah, here we go. I believe this is, I believe this is a clip uh, we're, we're looking for. Uh, this one's talking about, oh, you know, happening in Houston, but I'll give you an idea. Again, these people, uh, this librarian, Tess Goldwater, has this uh, political agenda. She's using her position as a librarian to influence it. Has been doing it for two years with the help of the American Librarian Association to, to get gay people and trans... Oh, I'm sorry, transsexuals uh, to come into the libraries and talk to kids and uh, just all sorts of weird shit. They bring up a lot of other really weird shit that they were trying to introduce in the library. Sex books uh, for children, sex demonstrations for children really weird shit but it all ties back into a story like this what happens when these people are setting this up well they don't vet anything and so you get well this essentially we take it out of texas and something called drag queen story time it's a real thing the houston public library system is apologizing tonight after a mishap with their regularly scheduled drag drag queen story time it's exactly what it sounds like. Drag queens, men who dress up as parodies of women, reading books to young children. How did that go wrong? Well, one of the drag queens employed by the Houston library systems turned out to be a sex offender. Not an alleged sex offender, a registered one. A man who sexually assaulted an eight-year-old boy. The library didn't know that because they hadn't even bothered to do a background check before putting him around children. Why bother? It's not like the point of this was to help children in the first place. The program will continue, of course, in Houston and many other places. But the much bigger question is, why are we putting up with drag queen story times in public libraries in the first place? Let's say, you know, that's an uh, that's an actually a good question, Tucker. Maybe you should talk to Tess Goldwater, the what did she call herself? Secret librarian advocate operative. Well, that's a fancy title. That's a fancy glow in the dark title for uh, Miss Tess Goldwasser to give herself when it comes to the wonderful world of story time. <laughs> oh, let me see if I can, uh, I'll try, let me, let me pull up the video of the guy's actual arrest. They do have a little clip of it. <laughs> this dude, he runs in circles screaming, don't trust the men in dresses. It's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> he was really fucking committed to this. Okay, um, uh, I'll just, uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at the article. Here we go. Oh, let me make sure that's in there. Man arrested Sunday at Lexington Park Library. Drag Queen Story Hour. And this is, again, this relates to the commission we just saw. Uh, due to an elevated level of interest for a private event held at the Lexington Park Library on Sunday, June 23rd, additional personnel from St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office were present. And our boy here, Ashley Kyle Morgan, 42, of Leonardtown, attempted to register so he could attend the event. They told him no, and they also told him he was... Uh, prohibited from attending and if he showed up the police would arrest him but our hero Ashley Kyle Morgan probably after seeing national news coverage of pedophiles being a part of these organizations and deciding that was a risk to children decided to, to alert the children and the parents attending uh, that maybe this wasn't a great idea and so here's the video you can see the tail end of it uh, we'll see if we can hopefully the audio plays through good enough <laughs> Don't 
You hear him screaming, don't believe these men dressed as women. They're deceivers. That's not a real vagina under there, Billy. It's a penis. Don't go into the bathroom with that man. <laughs> it's not a woman. Sorry, Claire. It's okay, he's just lost. Now, I wish they had more footage of this because the article makes it sound funny as shit. Um, <laughs> let, me, let me read this out to you. At 1.50 p.m., Morgan ran past the check-in table outside of the room and into the private room. Upon entering, Morgan began to yell at approximately 75 people inside, including 25 children. Morgan was told by police present he needed to leave. <laughs> Instead, he began running around the room and yelling at them in the room, telling them, don't believe the trannies, kids. They're lying. When he failed to stop yelling, he was arrested and brought on charges of, what did they hit him with? Disorderly conduct, disturbing the peace disorderly, failed to obey reasonable lawful order, resisting and interfering with an arrest and trespassing against a public agency during hours. They hit him with five different things. All because he had a problem with the, uh, again, what did she call herself? I, I don't want to misquote her here. The secret librarian advocate operative trying to get uh, a gay agenda brought forward into a library for some reason, setting up these uh, drag queen transsexual story times, uh, not vetting who these people were when the library commission, or I'm sorry, when the commissioners and the librarians met to talk about this, the library straight up admitted, we don't know who these people are. We didn't do any background check. We didn't vet anybody. We, we just found out about it ourselves a few hours before the event. So these secret librarians from the American Library Association are working on this fucking website to set shit up like this. And I guess this guy watches Tucker Carlson or he's heard about the news because this is like the second or third time something like that's happened and decided he didn't want the kids put at risk. And what happens to him? He gets hit with five charges ranging from disorderly conduct to trespassing. I don't know what's going to happen to him. I don't know how severe those charges are. Are they going to are they going to drop them? I mean, he didn't assault anybody. He basically just told the kids be a stranger he he went in there and did what would have been a PSA in the 1990s. Stranger danger, kids. Be be careful when it comes to men in dresses. You can't trust them. Now, there was one other article that followed up on this and it mentioned some of the other stuff they were trying to uh, trying to introduce. Let me see if I can find this. Because uh, it quoted certain books I'd never heard of uh, that they were trying to get the kids to read uh, at these different uh, events. Let's move that out of the way. Okay. Let me pull this up for everybody. Here we go. Uh, the Rise of the Drag Queen Story Hours and How You Can Fight Back. Uh, obviously, this is a Christian news site, so they've got a skew to it. But I wanted to find... Uh, here we go. Also, you know, I want you to really look at this. What library are they... Okay, this is how weird this is. This Tessa Goldwater, Goldwasser, is involved in all of these stories. She's involved in sneaking in secret curriculum and activities. She's involved in getting the drag uh, queen story hour involved. She was involved in this most recent event. And now look what they say. The Lexington Park Library in St. Mary's County, Maryland, first came under fire in March of 2017 when local homeschool mom, uh, Georgia, discovered that several libraries were planning to host a graphic sex education workshop for 12 to 17 year olds. The workshop was co-sponsored by the libraries and the Southern Maryland Area Secular Humanist, or SMASH. It was promoted as strictly kids only and led by Bianca Palamon, or Palamine Sano, a Planned Parenthood certified sex educator, author of Safer Sex for Trans Bodies, and founder of Intimate Health Counseling. So our librarian, who was already involved and doing all sorts of weird shit, wanted to set up sex education camps for preteens to teenagers and have them hosted by people in Planned Parenthood. And what is her background in sex education? Writing a book about sex for trans people. That's really weird. All of these events are connected. It's been going on for two to three years <laughs> At the heart of it are these secret operatives. These secret American Library Association operatives. 
you know, I think Alex Jones might have been wrong. It's not the water that's turning the frogs gay. <laughs> or no, the water's not just turning the frogs gay. The librarians are turning the kids gay. He wasn't looking big enough. He was too focused on one thing to see the bigger picture of what's going on out there. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Oh, yeah, and I'm sorry, the activity feed went down. I know somebody said earlier, uh, hey, Jim, come out to Texas and I'll, I'll, I'll pave your driveway and we can have a beer together. Uh, sounds like a wonderful offer. And then from Brew 98, it's just a coincidence. It's always the same people that push this shit. Well, I I don't know what to tell you. I'm sure Miss Goldwasser is just a loving woman. From HTR to you, I hope they don't add chemicals in the water. And the Afio answer... Not sure if you watch the YouTube channel Porcelain, but they finally released their documentary on Baked Alaska. And you were highlighted on the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, on there, uh, burying him. Would you play some of it on stream? Uh, yeah, I know he released it. I think it's like an hour and a half long. I haven't had, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Um, so I'll probably watch it first. And then I'll pick out like some uh, timestamps and we'll watch some of it on Monday. I, I don't know what iteration Baked Alaska is on now. He's gone through like, four or five different changes. He's like a snake. You know how a snake changes, it sheds its skin? That's Baked Alaska. One day he's a lip shit working at BuzzFeed. The next day he's a Trump supporter. Then he's back to being a lip shit. Then he's Yang Gang. Then he's back to being a Trump supporter. He's a very fair weather, uh, fair weather fellow. You know, he's the kind of guy that's there in the good times. But when shit gets bad, he's nowhere to be found. You know, I remember getting so much shit too. Uh, when I went after him for turning on his audience because he wanted some pussy. You know, I, I told him, you're, you're turning on these people and you're calling them toxic and problematic, saying you don't like them and you don't want them around anymore, even though they kind of built you up and they gave you money. And now you're saying they're not good enough, essentially. And everybody's like, oh, you're overreacting, uh, Jim. But what happened? He immediately, you know, within a year or so, turns around and says, I was brainwashed by the alt-right and those neo-Nazis. So I, I was 100% correct in my assessment of him and what he was doing, of trying to just use a community to make some cash and uh, build up a big enough profile to move on to something else later on. So, yeah, I'm sure the, the documentary probably will cover a lot of that, I'm guessing. Uh, just his different iterations of going from group to group to group and kind of uh, changing it up. I, I don't even know what he's doing right now. I think the last I heard, he's, I think he's on D Live actually. Uh, I'm not even sure if he's still around. I noticed a lot of people came over to DLive and then uh, kind of fucked off. Uh, they were here for a while and then just kind of disappeared. Uh, like uh, certain people from like Ice Poseidon's group, I can't, there's some Brit um, that was like over here streaming almost every day for like a month and then he just up and vanished. So I, I don't know what happened to him. I know PewDiePie's got the deal that they're doing with uh, DLive and there you know, other people that are globally partnered that still show up and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, I vaguely remember Baked coming over here and he was here for like a month and then he was gone. You know, so far my experience with the website's been pretty good. I mean, this we're on uh, the end of the, I guess, the third week. You know, I've, I've done seven shows. This would be the seventh. And uh, as long as I have that X tag on, we're pretty much left alone. And we really haven't had any issues. The... Uh, Site administrators haven't said anything to me, so I think we're fine. You know, I'm, I'm fine with not being on the front page. I'm fine with being uh, hidden behind the age restriction tab. I, you know, I, I prefer it, to be honest with you, uh, as long as we've got our own little corner to talk about weird shit and laugh at stuff and get angry at shit. I'm fine. You know, that's one of the things that appealed to me about Stream Me. You could restrict it and basically be hidden and just do your own fucking thing, and nobody, nobody really fucked with you. You're left to your own devices, and that's what I... That's what I like. That's what I appreciate uh, when it comes to this streaming shit. Because God knows you could not do it on Twitch, and I have a feeling that YouTube, especially with the new implementations of rules that are coming on July 22nd, and then the second batch will hit, I believe from what I heard, the end of October, the beginning of November. Uh, they're implementing new rules about creator-on-creator -creator harassment and how that affects your channel. You know, right now YouTube is doing... I don't get it, uh, to be honest with you, of what's going on with YouTube. Uh, on the one hand, they're censoring, and on the other hand, they're loosening up. You know, they moved away from the three strikes, you're out policy. They moved away from the, if you get a strike, you're banned 90 days from streaming. And they relaxed on that. 
And as far as copyright goes, from what I understand, they're going to be relaxing on that as well. Uh, they're implementing, or they're going to begin to implement a new system where if you get a copyright strike on a video, you no longer have to take the whole video down. They will make the copyright complainant uh, list the specific content that violates copyright and then allow you to edit it out and keep the video up. Uh, at least that's my understanding of what it's going to be like going forward. So, I, you know, on the one hand, they're doing shit like that. And on the other hand, they're going to, you know, her, uh, creator versus creator harassment and uh, new policies about being nice and what you can say and can't say. So I, I don't know. It feels like there are two different groups at YouTube right now that are trying to steer the direction on how they interact with people that upload shit onto their website. I mean, there's some people that are always going to be out. Um, you know, I, I really like Murdoch Murdoch. I like their show. Uh, you can't find that on YouTube. You can't even find censored versions of that on YouTube. Like, that has been, that is uh, verboten. It is not allowed. It is completely ejected from the website. They will never allow that shit. You have to go to BitChute or Dailymotion to watch it. Uh, they're really uptight about it. Like, all the up, uh, the re-uploads that I'd watched, the playlist that had, like, the whole collection, just getting wiped out left and right. You know, and so there, there are creators like that, content like that, that they're, it's never going to show up again. I mean, it's, that's just gone, which sucks. And I don't know how far they're going to extend that, how far they're going to take that out into the more absurd direction. I mean, if you're not going to let comedy and satire and uh, just straight up humor on the website, you know, what, what is going to, what's going to, what's going to count as harassment against another fucking creator? You know, a lot of the, a lot of the content that exists on YouTube is people making fun of each other. Uh, you're, you're talking about an entire decent portion, percentage of the content getting wiped out, potentially, uh, from new rule implementation. So, I don't know. But, from what I hear, sometime from the 22nd to the end of July, there's going to be some update. And then October, November, there's going to be another update. And then the copyright thing, who fucking knows when that gets rolled out in full. I don't know. Oh, Jesus. Uh, so far, I guess, at the very least. Uh, DLive is, is working out. Uh, BitChute seems to be fine. I ran into a small issue trying to... I've been uploading uh, videos over there, but for some reason I cannot get a specific video to go through. I've tried like four or five fucking times. Every time I try to upload it, it just doesn't complete. Uh, so I, I don't know why. I wrote an email. Hopefully I'll hear back and find out what exactly went wrong. Uh, because I've got like two other... Two other series uh, to put up, and then, uh, you know, the backlog is up there, I guess. So when uh, eventually all my shit disappears, there's at least one little archive of it that you can go watch on a site that won't just yank it down to make it go away. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm rambling, chat. Rambling about shit uh, all over the place today. Labor things got me, got me spooked. Got me spooked. What was the here. Uh, Coyla Dante, uh, what's the over-under on Goldwasser being a real woman? <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to say uh, the over is an overly abundant amount of testosterone in her blood, and the under would be the penis dangling from between her legs. So I'm going to say that's, that's 100%, probably. I'm going to guess uh, uh, <laughs> Miss Goldwasser uh, it's probably got uh, quite the sausage dangling from her German meat shop. Um, or, I'm sorry, transclit. Beautiful transclit. Transvagina. I'm sorry, I'm being very sexist, very ableist today about the things I said. Uh, just bigoted, really. Bigoted, terribly bigoted. I need to use a, appropriate terms. Otherwise, the fucking librarians are going to come to get me. I'm going to be taught a lesson by those tough-talking, uh, rough-riding librarian association members. Gonna make me read. They're gonna make me read gay kid stories until I want to suck dick. That's my punishment for going against the almighty, all-powerful Library Association. <laughs> Fucking Lexington County. Oh man, it's just, it's clown world. It really is. It's uh, it's uh, ridiculous shit. Uh, but that was what I wanted to focus on today. I wanted to talk about Libra because the Libra thing spooks me. I think it's just a bad direction to go into. As far as Epstein, I definitely see him going to jail. 
And uh, I guess if you have children, keep them away from the library. Terrible idea to go to the library with your kids. They're going to end up wearing dresses. You're going to drop them off for story time with Barney and pick them up, and they're going to have uh, painted nails and a wig on. <laughs> and they're going to want you to buy them high heels. Talking about your sons, your, your daughters. Uh, I, I don't know. They're going to have uh, a pixie cut haircut, wearing overalls, asking you for Tonka trucks or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very confusing for you as a parent. You're just not going to know what's going on. It's going to be all topsy-turvy on the uh, van ride home. Or I'm sorry, the van ride to the soccer field to pick your kid up, the other one, and then to go home. Yes, I see a lot of clowns dancing. In fact, I think I have a dancing clown. Where the fuck is that thing? I'll put it in chat. There we go. That's That works. A lot of dancing puddings and a lot of dancing clowns. It's one of those days. Uh, what was the video? Somebody put this up in Super Chat. Let me see if I can find this here. All right, so what was this called? Uh, a recommendation that came through. Uh, okay, so this is called Gail Reads from Jesus, the Eternal Bridegroom. <laughs> and apparently this is a... a, a, a <laughs> How did you describe it? What the fuck did you describe this as? Uh... It's a video of an old boomer lady reading her Jesus gay fanfic. Are you, are, are you like being literal? She made a, a fanfic about Jesus being gay? Because uh, that would be... <laughs> that would be something. I'll give you that much. Well, let me just cue this up. Well, I guess we'll take a listen. Uh, maybe it's good. I've just got to transfer it here. It's a hell of a title. All right. Uh, this is her book she made. I will be reading from Jesus. Okay. All right. Let me, uh, let me put this I up. will be reading from Jesus, the Eternal Bridegroom, The Forbidden Abyss, Part 2. I'm the author, Gabriel Chana. This is taken from the chapter, San Francisco Jesuit Homosexual Compound. They walked by Terrance and... I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry. What? This takes place at the Homosexual Compound in San Francisco? Is that what she said? Chana. This is taken from the chapter San Francisco Jesuit Homosexual Compound. They walked by Terrance in a procession, one by one, slapping him in the face. You're not fit to have the torture we've given to your friends, because you've never had brain-to-brain -brain sex with Gail. They pulled down their pants and flung their penises at him. She won't ever make love to you because you're black. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, we might have a winner here, folks. Uh, thank you to... <laughs> what was the username? Uh, where the fuck was this? Uh, Ronson. All right, well, let's listen to Gail's erotic sexual fan fiction about homosexuals from California flinging their penises at her. I'm sorry, at Jesus, I'm guessing. Uh, and saying that uh, he's never going to get none with Gail, uh, our reader, because uh, there, <laughs> there he's not black. It reminded me of Jesus when he faced his accusers before they humiliated him on the cross. How they all went up to him and bashed his face in with their fists. Ah, oh, Lord, the disciple is not above his master. Then they ripped off his clothes and forced him to carry his own cross, exposed, nude and humiliated before the world. How Satan loved to torture Jesus. How he writhed with jealousy that he could never be as awesome as God's son how the inferior ones punished those superior to them. How horrible that you couldn't get them to leave you alone unless you executed them because they refused to give up their evil, their murders, and their tortures. Any oh, I'm sorry. It looks like the, the, the actual Super Chat had a specific time code. Uh, we might have to jump to that. Let me, let me see what the exact number was here. Uh, go to 734. Uh, it's very funny. All right, let's... Let's jump ahead a little bit to the specific time. Uh, there, we'll, we'll start it at 7 and see what happens with Gail's erotic fan fiction. Just then another Jesuit shoved his penis into Gerard's anus, both the Jesuit and his mouth. <laughs> you know what? We're going to back up a little bit. I think you might have overshot the time code on that one. Uh, let's, go to, let's go to 6 and see how the Jesuit got a dick shoved in his mouth and up his ass. Oh, Jesus, help me. Help us all. Is this what we must endure because we love the forbidden Gale? Why is she forbidden? 
Why must we suffer for loving greatness? Oh, Jesus, are you there? After stripping Gerard Butler, they stared at him and pointed, giggling and hee high. Ah, what a fine specimen! What fun! They pulled a dress over his head and arms, dressing him like a little girl. Oh, that's cute, they said, limping their hands at him. They must have been part of the Library Association of America. It sounds like their style. With smiles so wide, you could almost see all their teeth. The Jesuit pride opened Gerard's mouth and shoved a penis in. Our wonderful psychiatrist would need some intervention after this. How I felt for Gerard. So selfless. He always thought of us. Who would counsel him when all this was over? Come on, little girl. Suck hard on your mom. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Oh, wow. Come on, little girl. Suck hard on your mama's nipple. Just then another Jesuit shoved his penis into Gerard's anus, both the Jesuit in his mouth, and the one from behind coordinated their thrusting motions like in a dance. I rubbed my eyes in disbelief. Tell me this is a dream, Jesus. Tell me we aren't doing this. But the penis was in my mouth, thrusting like a wild Indian. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I like how she really has a way with words. The penis was in my mouth thrusting like a wild Indian as Gerard in his dress was being sodomized by Jesuit priests who told him to suck it like it was his mommy's nipple. And the salty taste of semen would not let me deny the reality of my existence. When they came to Hugh Jackman, he raised his fists and shot the fist into the Jesuits who approached him. The Jesuits flew back onto the wall. About ten Jesuits then flew themselves onto Hugh and held him down. A black Jesuit with elephant legs and blubber protruding from his belly and bulges of fat on his back shoved his rear onto Hugh's face. Bubba, they said to the black Jesuit, teach him for beating us up. Oh, I don't like where this is going. A big fat black man sticks. Is he going to get brapped? This guy's getting gang raped and he's about to get brapped on by a big ass black bull? The black Jesuit named Bubba shoved his anus onto Hugh's mouth. Lick my butthole, he laughed. Ten Jesuits pinned Hugh to the floor, freezing his arms and legs. They hoisted his face onto the two balls of fat above Bubba, Bubba's legs, his rump, and shoved Hugh's face between the balls. Now lick the butthole like a good boy. Wow, this chick is something else. They twisted his arm and he grimaced in pain. His tongue came out and they separated the balls of fat, exposing the zinnia-flowered hole. <clears throat> His tongue traveling <clears throat> over its surface. Then we heard an explosion, and brown feces, ex feces exploded on the huge face and into- <laughs> He got brapped on! <laughs> this dude! This dude gets dressed up by Jesuits who gang rape him. And then they bring in the biggest, fattest black dude they can find. And they make him take a giant deuce right on his fucking face. Bring in Bubba the big black bull and have him brap right in this guy's mouth. And he just unloads a turd missile right down this guy's throat. Into his mouth. I could see a scowl on Hugh's face, but the Jesuits held him firm in his place. His arms and legs frozen. The Jesuits filmed us the entire time with cameras and movie equipment. It reminded me of my time at the San Francisco Zoo when Lori raped me, raped me with elephants, eels, and God knows what else in September 1992. Very specific date. I guess, I guess if you got raped by an elephant, you probably are going to... That's going to be something you're going to mark on the calendar, really. If you live through it. Uh, you know, I remember back in 1991 on August 15th when the elephant with its four foot long penis raped me and I was able to crawl away and not bleed to death so you, you see people <clears throat> this is from my book <clears throat> boy if I had a time making this video Jesus the eternal bridegroom I'm reading you from it this book goes really deep into the hearts and souls of Jesus Christ it goes really deep into the hearts and souls of Jesus you know like in that one uh, one, uh, one, uh, one of those uh, uh, apostles you know, one of their testimonies when they talked about black men shitting in people's faces. I remember that. I think that was the book of Timothy. I'm pretty sure that was Tim, or maybe Corinthians. 
I think that's, yeah, that's more Corinthians, really. Black men brapping in your face. Seems like a Corinthians thing. Gail Cords Schuler. I've never heard of this woman. Does she have more I... amazing... <laughs> Does she read more? Please tell me she reads more. Uh, let's see if we can... I just want to, I want to hear more about her book. That's what I'm interested in. Give me one second. Uh, it's my first time looking at her channel. Let me see if I can find more of her amazing book. I will be reading from Jesus the Eternal. Okay, the Eternal Bride. As he drove his. Oh my God, she's got the whole thing up. Children's audio book? No. There's no way she has As a children's did... audio book version of this. There's <laughs> children's audiobook the gang raping jesuit black men shitting on you book has a children's version chat do we watch it do we do we do we dare to watch this i don't know it's asking for trouble i don't know what the, what makes it the children's version uh so uh, uh, gopnik uh jim why do you always end up playing gay porn well i mean come on what better kind of porn is there? Well, <laughs> welcome to the internet. Uh, a lot of yeses. Apparently, Chad is very. You're very excited about hearing the ch children's version of <laughs> the forbidden fruit. Uh, from Joshua Moon, since you're pretty much left to your own devices here on D Live, any chance of continuing watching Photon? I liked Medicare Science Theater 3000 on streaming. Uh, yeah, I actually do plan on finishing up Photon. I think we've got about seven episodes left i'll probably spread them out uh bits and pieces here and there from the afio answer new algorithm change small youtube news channels were 50 percent of views and recommendations to corporate channels as of january last month the ratio went to 25 75 and autoplay will send you to cnn fox or nbc and from kaiser split dick something to play us out on oh, okay um yeah, you know, with the the algorithm and how YouTube works, uh, I, I watch a lot of different channels on YouTube. Uh, actually, let me... I'll, I'll tell you something weird I've been seeing. Uh, and then we're going to listen to the audiobook. So, well, we definitely will watch it. Uh, I'm not going to not watch that. Uh, what is the channel? History Buffs was the channel. Uh, it's just the dude that watches movies and then talks about the history behind the shit the movie's covering. Uh, and he, he's done like a couple of, there's nothing political. There's no social views or anything at all attached to any of this. But he gets those Wikipedia warnings put under his videos for some reason. And I have no idea why. Like, again, Google, it, it just does things that uh, I don't understand what the purpose is. Okay, enough of that. We got sidetracked enough. I hope you're ready. This is part one of eight, The Forbidden Abyss, part one, children's audiobook. I don't know, this could be shit, this might be good. Who knows? It's only four minutes long. Let's find out if we found a winner or if uh, Gail disappoints. As he drove his car underneath the Paramount Pictures cream and gold arches and into the studio parking lot, he felt his pulse rate quicken. He even now dislikes the Spanish tile roofs of the studio because it reminded him that Gail was far away in Seattle, surrounded by evergreen mountains and cool, crisp air, and she had never been here in the Southern California sun with him making love to him. He looked about and saw no sign of Lori. I'm sorry, we've already gotten to the point of wanting to fuck Gale? We're 20 seconds in and it's already talking about wanting to fuck Gale. In Seattle, surrounded by evergreen mountains and cool, crisp air, and she had never been here in the Southern California sun with him making love to him. He looked about and saw no sign of Lori. Once he parked his car, he phoned his friend and co-star LeVar Burton from inside his car. Hey Brent, what's going on with you and Lori? Brent wailed on the phone for at least a minute. Give me time to get myself together. Hey, what I'm about to tell you remains top secret, all right? Sure, LeVar paused, as if brazing for the worst. Hey, I don't like Lori. Something's not right about her. LeVar, it's horrible. I was in the green room, you know, where we got to prepare before a shoot. Patrick Stewart got me a beer, and I set it down for just a second, and that's when Lori spiked it with some mind control drugs. I wasn't feeling well after I drank the spiked drink, so I went to lay down. That's when I started having a vivid dream about making love to Gail. <laughs> okay, we yeah, this is going to be gold, really. Uh, already, already, uh, somebody's been drugged and they're getting raped. Children's story time. My God, Brent, there are mirrors all over the place in that room. 
Yeah, so we can see ourselves as we rehearse between shoots. But I saw myself being raked by Lori in those mirrors from all these different angles. Brent wailed and couldn't stop. What a little cuck. Oh, look at the little bitch boy. Aww. You got gang You got raped by a woman that drugged you. And a room full of mirrors. Kids book, by the way. Kids book. Children's book. Children's audio book. Great, great follow-up to Teddy Ruxpin and MLP. And <laughs> Barney. I, Mommy, Daddy, what's getting drugged by mind control mean? Well, I, you know, my sweet, innocent little three-year-old. Just listen to Gail talk about the gang rape first. How did Lori get in bed with you? Well, I was feeling ill, so I went to lay down. I started having a dream about Gail when Lori walked in. My vision was so hazy I thought it was Gail. It was the mind control drugs. Brent wailed so much he couldn't talk. All right, Brent, whenever you're ready. Hey, let's talk. Okay, can I, 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 maybe they're working on a budget here, but I'd like to imagine this is a, a creative choice. This guy is sobbing. He's literally on the verge of tears, probably going to kill himself. Probably going to throw himself off a fucking bridge or something, because he's been raped after being drugged, and it's fucked him up greatly. And here's his buddy, LeVar Burton, and look at that smile. Look at, he thinks this is the funniest shit he's ever heard. Oh, you got raped, did you? That's some funny stuff. Tell me some more, buddy. I need a good laugh, Whitey. <laughs> you fucking cuck. Let's talk about this at my place, okay? After work, come on over to my house. That evening, LeVar held Brent in his arms and rocked Brent from behind while Brent told LeVar his story. Oh, I got a f I don't know if I like where this is going, chat. I've got a bad feeling. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, uh, children's book. Okay. I started having a dream about Gail. Brent sniffed and cried. LeVar, I can't tell you. This just can't be real. Calm down. I'm holding you in my arms. I believe you, Brent. I believe everything you're saying, and I know you love Gail. LeVar checked out Brent's rear, with swollen flesh, bleeding and oozing. <laughs> That's what? No! <laughs> That's amazing! Can you please, can you please check my asshole for damage? I was brutally sodomized after getting drugged at a Hollywood studio. And my, I've been shitting blood for three days. My good black friend, can you take a look at my chocolate starfish and see if I need stitches. Am I hemorrhaging internally from my anus? Losing and stitches everywhere. Wow, how did Lori do this to you? My vision was so hazy. I thought Gail and I were making love. It was the mind control drugs. That's when Lori climbed on me and started raping me. What did she do, Brent? She got on top of me, cowgirl, and she was doing me on top. Brent, you have such a long penis. How in the world? Yeah, and the weird thing is, she was able to sit all the way down on it. All 18.25 inches. <laughs> Come on! Wow, Gail. Gail, Gail, Gail. 18, 18.25 inches, kids. <laughs> Just, it's absurd, I love it. It's a very specific number. My, eight, my foot and a half long cock, and she took it all. And then she fucked me with a soda can. LeVar. It was pretty freaky. Was that the only sex you had with her? No. We did it all three holes. Vaginally, orally, and anal. It was really horrible. How long did it last? After about twenty minutes, I ejaculated, and she got off and then sucked my penis. Then she got back on top of me, and this time she sat on it again, but she put it in her anus. It was all three. Did you think you were doing all three holes with Gail? No, I just thought Gail and I were doing it vaginally. It was so weird, because I was thinking Gail and I were in the missionary position the whole time. Regular sex. If you- I <laughs> just- oh, wow! Oh, if you love Gail like I do, you should purchase a copy of her amazing- at Amazon.com. <laughs> it's recommended by Jesus Christ! Well, okay. If you thought it was regular sex, how do you know you did all three holes? Because the memories came flooding back to me after the drugs started to wear off. That's awful, Brent. They came back pretty vividly. Exactly how long did your sex with Lori last? I'm unsure, since I was drugged out pretty bad, but it had to be at least a few hours. We're only three minutes and thirty- Like, this is so much sex. There's so much sex being talked about. <laughs> we already know that he's been raped, his asshole is in tatters, he has an 18.25 inch penis. He had sex in all three holes. 
She sucked his penis. Lots of ejaculation going on. <laughs> this, and it's only been three and a half minutes. Wow. Then I woke up with her in bed with me. I kicked her out, wondering what happened. That's when I started to remember. Brent wailed and his body heaved. Lavar tightened his grip on the forlorn soul who was grasping at straws just to keep his sanity. Don't you think you ought to tell Gail about this? Brent's face became ashen. No, don't tell her, Lavar. Promise me. Really? It's too dangerous to tell her. Not as long as Lori still roams about Paramount Studios. Lori keeps threatening to kill Gail if I tell her. After what she's done to me, she's capable of anything. Well, she definitely sounds capable of anything. Oh, you know, uh, let me just uh, turn that there. What other amazing things are on this particular... I mean, she's still uploading videos just from a day ago. Just from, uh, is there a playlist of her amazing literature? Let's find out. Let's find out. Create a playlist. I, I want to see if I can find more of her books. I think I think we have a prolific author on our hands. And, uh, yeah, I see people say, oh, she's got an Ed page, all oh, there's stuff out there. I'm sure there is. <laughs> How could there not be? Oh, my God, chat. The whole thing is up. Oh, I'm really tempted to watch this. I'm actually quite tempted to watch this whole thing. Um, as you can see, the entire children's book is up on Gail's page. All eight parts of it, uh, each seem to be a few minutes long, all with their own unique illustrations. Looks like he maybe fucks a cat in part two. Part three looks like a corpse is getting raped. Uh, part four, I'm going to guess somebody gets poisoned. Part five and six are dedicated to the black man fucking the white boy. Part seven... Looks like uh, Weinstein <laughs> comes in and gives somebody a job. And part eight looks like the black guy just kills everybody by lighting them on fire. Uh, what What is the description of this amazing audiobook? Jesus Christ commissioned an artist and an actor to read from chapter entitled September 1992. The stalker for a lifetime from Gail's book, The Forbidden Abyss, part one. The other 18, other 18 chapters are still waiting to be read from Gail's book, the Forbidden Abyss Part 1, which can be ordered, and she gives her website. I think this woman's work needs to be completely transcribed in audiobook format. I can't imagine letting this go. This is all from Part 1. You know, if you tally it up, you're looking at about 20 minutes here. Oh, uh, 18 chapters, 20 minutes apiece. You, you know, you're looking at a good six hours of entertainment. I don't know if that artist can can finish up this beauty of a book. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I'll put it to you, chat. Uh, you know, we can... You tell me what you want. Do Do you want to watch the rest of this? I will wait for your decision. Uh, from Man With Memes, I've yet to catch a scream. Glad to see you. Well, you turned in for... You tuned in for a doozy of one. We're reading the greatest children's book ever... <laughs> ever put to uh, paper. All right, let's see what chat's saying. Uh, play all of it. Yes, I want to hear all of it. Yes, yes, it seems like the yeses have it. There's one god no from the only sane person in chat. Uh, the rest of you seem to want to hear about Gail's adventures with gay sex and the man with the 18.25-inch penis. I don't blame you. A dick that size is just too interesting to pass up. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need a real drink for this one. Uh, let's do another small break. And when we come back, we're going to sit down and we're going to watch at least part one, which is eight videos, seven videos to go, of Gail's amazing children's audiobook. We'll watch through it all and we'll see what happens. I'm excited. I think chapter one's going to be something special. I got a good feeling about it. Uh, let me pick uh, a nice little musical interlude uh, to play while we do this. Uh, you know what? Well, maybe we'll just do that one. Uh, we'll do this one. Uh, take a few minutes break. I'm going to go grab a drink. And then when we come back, we will finish up and watch uh, part one of Gail's amazing book. And we are back. All right. Let us join in and watch an amazing story unfold. Let me just get this queued up here. Chad, I hope you're excited. Hope you're excited. We're going to be jumping into a, the best children's audio book ever created on the internet. I'm fucking psyched for it. Uh, from Anonymous, she's an insane schizo. Check out her Ed page. Uh, for anybody interested, the Ed page is encyclopediadramatica.rs backslash Gabriel underscore uh, Chana, C-H-A-N-A. -A. And from Coiladante, 
After Photon, may I suggest Lex? It's an old school sci-fi show that's essentially a porno where the sex starts, uh, never starts, so it's 45 minutes of bad special effects and innuendo. I actually vaguely remember Lex. Was that the one where they flew around in the giant, uh, it looked like a fly? Was there a spaceship? It's like a intergalactic uh, janitor, if I remember correctly. Uh, maybe we can check out some Lex, but we've got a lot of Photon to work through first. Uh, but regardless, doesn't matter. Let us jump into this amazing story. We've watched part one, so we'll continue off with part two of the Forbidden Abyss Part 1 children's audiobook. The brain control drugs Lori injected into him somewhat numbed the pain as she jammed her fist into his rear over and over. But once the drugs were off... You know, that's, when you're an author, you've really got to grab people's attention. If you're a creative type, you need to draw them in. And nothing draws me into a book more than starting it off with some hardcore fist fucking. All right? You want to get me invested in your book? Started off with a man getting fist fucked. His rear felt like a thousand knives every time he moved. Hours later, he awakened, as if coming out of anesthesia, his rectum feeling as if it had been stabbed with a thousand knives. The details flooded back to him, like a horror movie of memories that seemed endless. All the agonizing pain he felt when, he, when she smashed her fist into his rectum came back to him with full force, as if he was experiencing her thrusting motions in the here and now, with each lorry moment a memory alive rambling about his consciousness. So real and vivid, he could not shove the experience away, unable to escape as it all played back in his mind. He withdrew into himself again, hating himself for being so dirty and vulgar and violated. Oh God, he had to stop her, but how? How in the world did she get away with this? Must he stop eating? Sleeping? Drinking? Oh, God, what will she do next? You know, I'm actually really curious exactly what she's going to do next. Because uh, she's raped him, drugged him, and fist-fucked him. Like, what, you know, what's what's uh, option B on this buffet? Uh, I don't know where it's going, but let's... I, I Fingers crossed it's going to get dark. On another day, she had slipped in the drugs and brought in the cat they used on the set to play spot. She took her strap-on dildo and started slapping... No, 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 no. <laughs> she's going to fuck the cat, isn't she? She's going to fuck the cat or she's going to make him fuck the cat. Somebody's fucking a cat in part two. ...the cat in the face with it, beating the animal heartlessly. <laughs> what? She took her strap-on dildo and started slapping the cat in the face with it, beating the animal heartlessly, and brought in the cat they used on the set to play spot. She took her strap-on dildo and started slapping the cat in the face with it, beating the animal heartlessly and laughing. Here, pussy, pussy, pussy. Oh, you want some catnip? Whack, whack, whack. Oh, oh, who's a bad kitty? Who's a bad kitty? You like that? Oh, you like that dildo kitty? Oh, <laughs> come here, Garfield. I got lasagna for you. Then when she knew the drugs were at full effect, she shouted, Brent, have sex with the cat. <laughs> oh, this art is amazing. When the memories flooded back the next morning after the deed, as he awakened and the brain control wore off, he remembered forcing his penis inside Spot's tiny vagina. <laughs> oh, fuck! He's raping a cat! <laughs> oh, shit! Is it, he's really, he's fucking the cat. It wasn't a joke, he's actually fucking the cat. <laughs> Look at this artwork! <laughs> She's sitting there with a 12-inch dick. Brent, have sex with his cat! <laughs> There's some mind control drugs on the ground. <laughs> Look at the cat screaming. Meow. <laughs> Look at his ass. Look at his. Look at his ass. Oh, he's fucking a cat to death. She wrote a children's book where a man fucks a cat to death. She wrote a children's book where a dude fucks a cat to death. Forcing his penis inside Spot's tiny vagina. It was awful for her, and she was screeching. She was yowling and meowing. <laughs> cat's faces look at the cat's face holy shit it's not gonna survive he has an 18 inch penis that cat's not the cat's <laughs> that's the length of the cat his dick's gonna come out of its mouth it's like some it's like some japanese anime shit it's like hentai it's western hentai his penis is gonna come out of that cat's mouth yowling and meowing and Lori laughed and laughed spot was so traumatized that they had to get a new cat to play the role the color and breed of cat changed during the episodes due to the sexual trauma the animal had received. She would no longer come near Brent. She'd run away, and any time she saw something phallic, she meowed and had a panic attack like she was shell-shocked. 
when the you know fuck i'd be shell shocked too if somebody stuck an 18 inch long penis inside me i can sympathize with the cat if i had an 18 inch dick go inside my rectum i'd be pretty fucking shell shocked too var and brand ate hot dogs for lunch they got at the studio cafe spot walked up to them <laughs> i love that <laughs> look at the cat's face i can't believe it this is the most amazing shit i've ever seen they're laughing they're cooking I, this, they're, they're just they're having some hot dogs hey remember that time i fucked a cat to death <laughs> that was good times and then the cat's off in the corner look at the face it's making it's like a rape victim it's just completely fucked up then upon seeing brent panicked and scampered away Brent hung his head in shame that he had tortured an innocent animal with his penis, feeling fully to blame, because it was his penis, after all, that had committed the heinous act. He loved that cat. He tried to apologize to her, crying. Okay, again, children's audiobook. I love that. Children's audiobook. Amazing. Spot, I didn't mean to hurt you. Please, please forgive me. Oh, please forgive me, Spot. But Spot yowled and ran away. Brent thought, is this what Gail will do if she finds out what I've done? Brent imagined the look of horror on Gail's face. This dude busted a nut so hard his fucking eyeballs disappeared. He came so hard inside of that cat, his eyeballs vanished. He had enough force in his ejaculation to smash it into a brick wall across the room at like 30 miles an hour. That cat is now semi-retarded. That face it was making earlier? Where's that face it was making earlier? <laughs> this face? That's not a look of fear. It's actually handicapped now. He fucking gave it head trauma. The cat is retarded. Because <laughs> he came that hard. Brent imagined the look of horror on Gail's face if he dared to reveal to her what his body had done the past week to Spot, to Lori. Gail would run away from me, just like Spot. I'd scare her away forever. And to think before I tormented Spot... The cat used to cuddle on my lap. Now one look at me and she races down the hallway. My relationship with Gail has been scarred forever. Brent fought back tears, bit his lower lip, which quivered. Gail will never want anything to do with me any more. Uh, well, you know, understandable. I wouldn't want to sit on your lap either after you fucked me across the room. <laughs> Jeez, I... I can't believe I was right. I was joking when I said it looks like somebody fucks a cat. I didn't think he was actually going to fuck a cat. I didn't think it was going to get that dark that quick. Oh, part three, please. Lori stabbed injections into him and spiked his drinks and his meals at the Paramount Studios commissary. She put him into another dimension, so that he could not separate fantasy from reality. He ended up in the emergency room. She fisted him so hard, ripping his flesh apart, blood spewed out from his rear onto the floor. Holy shit. Okay, this woman <laughs> this woman is a psychopath. Look how look how pleased she is. She's so happy. <laughs> She's got the biggest smile in the world. Mind control drugs and a four foot long I do I don't even know how thick that thing is. <laughs> Those aren't bumps, they're ball bearings. She took out of farm equipment. Like this thing is enormous. <laughs> it's the size of a toddler. She fucked him with this. With no pity for the torture she inflicted on him, she laughed at him. Ha, I got you. You know you like this. You love this. If you dare tell Gail about this, I'll kill her, just like I might kill you. But I think I'd rather have all this glorious sex with you, to keep you alive so we can make love. Her laughter rocked the walls of his studio, like a vampire who had just sucked all the blood out of him and wanted more, after ravaging his neck and exposing his jugular vein. He inundated himself with painkillers to perform his scenes as Data in the Fistful of Datas, unable to keep his legs together as he walked in some scenes, walking- She fist-fucked him so hard he can't even walk straight. She- she destroyed this man's asshole like he destroyed that cat's asshole. ...with a limp, which the studio wrote into the scene as comedy. Oh, did Mr. Hershowitz think it was funny? Oh, oh, you telling me that, uh, that Laurie- Fist fucked you so hard you can't walk straight? Oh, oh, that's terrible. We're going to write that into a scene. That's funny, Goy. Lori seemed to read his mind and followed him everywhere in the studio when he was on breaks from filming. Brent was staying late in the studio one night. Macaulay Culkin had come to visit that evening because he was a huge fan of the show and wanted to meet Brent. 
Brent sat down with him and engaged him in some discussion about the show. After having a nice long chat, they both went to bed. It was nothing unusual. But as it turned out later on, that's not what really happened. During the Oh, does he f <laughs> does he anally rape Macaulay Culkin? Is that his follow-up act to sodomizing a cat? Is he fucks the kid from Home Alone? In the middle of their conversation, what actually happened was Brent got up to go use the restroom, and when he came back, Lori handed Macaulay a drink. What's in it? Macaulay said. I don't know. You know what? I, I'm going to have to pause this for one second just to... I have to skip ahead. I can't... I can't show animated scene of a man fucking child actor Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> no! No, they actually don't. She shows it. You've got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> oh, this is so dark. This is so fucking dark. Okay, I can show you this. I can show you this. <laughs> Don't drink the Jesus juice, Macaulay Culkin. You're gonna get raped. <laughs> You're gonna. He's so honest about it. Don't drink it, Macaulay. You're about to get raped. You're gonna get raped so hard if you drink that Jesus juice. <laughs> this isn't like. Oh man. How is this still up on YouTube? Who <laughs> can write a rape scene with Macaulay Culkin getting fist fucked and it's still up on YouTube? You can't talk about Trump without getting thrown off. Macaulay Culkin's getting fist fucked and that's fine. That's good. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, you, you know what? We're going to... I can't. We're going to have to skip that part. Uh, chat, that's part three. If you want to wanna read about him raping Macaulay Culkin, uh, you're going to have to go to part three. In fact, now that's made me paranoid enough that I'm going to have to just skip ahead a little bit. Just, oh my god, does he get fucked by a rhino? <laughs> he gets, what the fuck? Okay, we're past Macaulay Culkin getting brutally raped. Uh, let's jump into part four. The pinnacle of the rape happened one afternoon after he had just got out on break. At that point, Brent was afraid to eat, worried about possible contaminants in his food, so he brought his own food from home and hid his water bottles. He toted them all around the studio with him in bags so that no one else could touch them. But Lori had drugged the water coming from the water fountain, so when he ran out of water on set, he used to sweat a lot under all that makeup, so he... Can I just ask, like, I I'm so fascinated now by the characters. Like, what's Lori's deal? Does she just go around everywhere with a fucking bottle called mind control drugs? And just massive dildos and shit? Like, she's, she's drugging everybody. She's drugging child actors, she's drugging men on set... She just walks around with a kit for date rape. And she just brutally sodomizes people with her fist. And it's like a, it's an everyday thing for her. He would drink a lot of water, and it had been ten hours on set already. He consumed the drugs when he stopped at the fountain. The next thing he remembered, he walked back on set, and the day continued as normal. The next day, once the brain control wore off, Brent had perfect recall of what really happened. Though, at this stage, he was so drugged out that his psychiatrist later wondered if perhaps these events may have been false memories that Jesuits forced into him just to torment him. Lori took a... You know, those Jesuits love introducing false memories of animals at the zoo raping you. ...his hand in the hallway and led him out of the back of the building, taking him to her car where she proceeded to drive all the way from Los Angeles to the San Francisco Zoo. At the zoo, she had a camera with her and a set of keys that allowed her access to all the animal pins. She took him from cage to cage. <laughs> Are you seeing this shit, chat? Please tell me that's okay, that's full view. I thought it was a rhino. He's getting fucked in the ass by an elephant. <laughs> look at the boar. It's waiting for its turn. Look at the look at its eyes, it's so happy. And this sadistic bitch is just smiling. And I, what is that? Something's fucking a deer. I don't even I don't know what this is. It's the Grey Hulk. The Grey Hulk is fucking a deer. Well, an elephant. <laughs> Look at his face. It looks like he's taking the world's biggest shit. All the other, all the other animals behind the glass, like, thank fuck I ain't out there. I'm glad. Oh God, I'm glad I'm in my pen today. You see this crazy bitch? She's drugging everybody. She's got a bottle of mind control drugs, making that elephant fuck that dude. It made him had sex with all the animals and took pictures, laughing the whole time. Donkeys, wild dogs, turtles, monkeys, snakes, and an elephant. He felt their semen not just inside of him, but all over him. Foul, disgusting, sick. 
The elephant tore his insides so badly that they had to call the paramedics to stop the bleeding and stitch him back up. Hello, 911? Uh, yeah, this is the Anaheim Zoo. Uh, we have an incident, 13. Yeah, another one. Uh, yeah, Lori again. Yeah, yeah, uh, brought a new date with her. Yeah, it's the elephant this time. Uh, totally ripped his guts out. Uh, we can't get him off the elephant. The penis is still inside him. Yeah. Can you bring uh, police? Yeah, that's a good idea. Probably going to need a few guns. <laughs> elephant hasn't uh, come yet. Uh, no, I don't think he's alive. I think he's dead. Then she made him do it again. He begged her, No, Lori, please, my anus is bleeding. I want this on a t-shirt. I want this as a t-shirt I can wear out in public. How has this not been marketed as a product? <laughs> Fuck the hats. I want to put this on a t- For the love of all that is holy, my anus is bleeding. For the love of all that is holy, my anus is bleeding. It tore him up really bad. The elephant was so powerful it pushed its penis right through his rear, ripping flesh and smashing organs. He cried the whole time, shuddering, as the elephant raped him again and again. His horror reached new heights that day. She brought out eels, stuffing baby, very tiny moray eels into the head of his penis, and shoved the big ones up his butt. Why? <laughs> She's a real mean bitch, isn't she? <laughs> like, this chick is... She, there's some childhood trauma involved here with Lori. I, I don't know what her backstory is. Maybe they go over that in the other chapters. She stuck moray eels in his dick and then had an elephant fuck him. Scientists later decided that the part about the elephant penis may have been a false memory inserted into Brent's brain to torment him. Regardless of what really happened, Brent's injuries put him in the hospital with stitches all over his rear, offering oozing, putrefying flesh to the beholder. His sex with Lori and her zoo animals pierced his body and soul like a million knives. Now she had pictures of him being raped. You know, I gotta say, uh, the chick that's reading this isn't Gail, right? We heard Gail. This sounds like a different person. So did she... When was this made? 2013. Did she go to, like, Fiverr and hire somebody? Could you... God, could you imagine you're a voice actress? And somebody's like, hey, I'll pay you a couple hundred bucks to do an audiobook version of my children's book. And you're like, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Just send me the money and I'll read it for you. And then this shows up. <laughs> this is what's waiting in your inbox. Do you do it? I, I, fuck, I would. I, this whole masterpiece needs to be put on the internet. Raped, making his degraded image forever prisoner on those film reels. With photographic evidence, he would never be able to escape. And should he ever shed the memories of what happened, those photos would bring it all back. Feeling like pure filth, he couldn't face up to what he did. He thought, if I explain all of this to Gail, I'll scare her away. She'll see how sick and contaminated I am, and will know I am an evil and awful person. Oh, this is all my fault. How could I allow this to happen? I'm so horrible, such a monster I don't deserve. You know, I think this guy's being overly harsh on himself. I don't know if I'd be blaming myself for getting drugged and fucked by an elephant. Like, I don't know how you get out of that. Elephants are multi-ton animals. I think once he was mounted, there was really no escape. I, you can't really, it wasn't like he was asking for it. He was addressed in a slutty manner. He got raped by an elephant. ...deserved to live. No matter where he went, she leaped on him from hidden corners, jabbing brain control drugs into him. She even put brain control drugs into the water fountain he drank from. She trailed him like a bloodhound. Ah, so you went to the big shots and they took my side. Lori's laughter cackled off the walls. You better not tell that Gail about me, or I'll do worse to her than what I've done to you. I'll kill her. It took a month and many stitches to heal. The anal sex she gave him with a dildo and her fist so ravished his rectum that his rectum became butchered steak. She captured it all on film. Oh, how he loves violent sex. Lori flipped her hair, clapping her hands together, cackling with laughter. Brent has a side to him that he only reveals to me. I've got pictures to prove it. She care She revenge porned this dude. <laughs> so she's, like, just to give a, a Lori recap, in case you just walked in and are looking at an animation of a man's brutally ravaged asshole, uh, Lori likes to drug people. And so far, she's fucked him with multiple dildos, fisted him repeatedly, shoved moray eels into his penis, <laughs> had an elephant fuck him, and then forced him to rape a cat until it was retarded. 
And then she videotapes it, and she takes pictures of it, and I guess she uploads them onto, like, Vine? This is 2013, so, like, Vine and YouTube? Carefully neglected to point out the stark contrast between his violent sex with Laurie and his tender, committed love songs for Gail, who admitted to Brent that she had trained for Christian missionary service. Though he tried to suppress the horror, Laurie shoved her evidence, the picture she took to the Paramount studio heads, down his throat, stabbing him to death with it. Gloating in her victory, her rape devastated a love that towered to the heavens. Wait, did she literally just kill him? Mary service. Though he tried to suppress the horror, Laurie shoved her evidence, the picture she took to the Paramount studio heads, down his throat, stabbing him to death with it. Gloating in her victory, her rape devastated a love that towered to the heavens. Man, this chick puts, like, Bill Cosby and the rest to shame. She she had an elephant rape a dude, took videos and pictures of it, and then choked him to death on the photo evidence and stabbed him while he gagged. <laughs> she, this is, what did this guy do to her? Gail noticed his unusual silence that three weeks in September of 1992. September 15th was her birthday, and he didn't call her. Is something wrong, she wrote him. Have I offended you? Silence. Why won't you call me? What's wrong? Oh, something's terribly wrong. He never ignored her when she cried, but he was ignoring her. Oh, it's because I turned him down and now I've lost him. Oh, Lord, how I must suffer for honoring your Bible and your laws. She cried so much, she couldn't sleep, couldn't eat, and stopped attending church. All her heart she had flowed into Brent, and the flow had been blocked. It jammed into a wall that seemed a million miles thick. All she had lived for the past year, dammed up in torrents inside her, so that her heart exploded with pain and she cried all through the days and days that Brent gave her silence on her phones. To make matters worse, she knew Brent read of her despair in her letters to him, and his silence toward her continued, even when he knew she was groveling in depression because of his silence. Oh, something terrible's happened, something awful. Lord, I'm so depressed. My heart is bleeding all over the floor, and I can't stop the bleeding. I'm going to die if you don't help me. Though Gail denied Brent her body, she had given him all else, all her time, all her heart, and all her soul. Normally in church, Sunday mornings and evening and Wednesday night, she skipped church for a week, barely having the strength to get out of bed. Depression. I'm kind of like curious where this is going to go. Like, okay, so he's dead. So you're a co like, you're a crime scene investigator, a detective. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You work for the sex crime unit. And you get called out to a scene where dude's asshole looks like somebody opened it up to the size of a fire hydrant. And in his throat are photos of him getting fucked by an elephant. <laughs> do you, like, what do you think that is? You must think that's like some cartel shit. Like, who... Who gets a guy fucked by an elephant and chokes him to death on the photos of it? That's like you're trying to send somebody a message. Some cop, some beat cop is going to walk across this. And it's just going to fuck him up for life. And overwhelmed her. Tears flowed like a waterfall. As she drove on the freeway, she cried so much, she could barely see the road. The love she wanted to flow to him was blocked. Her heart had hit a wall. A lady at her church named Leslie sensed her despair long distance through prayer and laid flat on the ground to pray for Gail. At that moment when Leslie prayed, Jesus gave Gail peace about Brent. Her depression lifted over his silence. Gail had surrendered her feelings for Brent to Jesus and decided she could love him through prayer. Now the dam of love she had for him was no longer blocked. It would flow to him through prayer. She decided to pray for Brent for the rest of her life. That decision made her feel she was still loving him, and so her spirits lifted. After weeks of torment over his silence, she could sleep at night because she could now love him through prayer. Oh, well, you know, at least she's okay. Oh, you know, I, like, <laughs> she's sitting with a priest or something. Oh, I feel so much better, Father. You know, there's this dude I knew who got sodomized by an elephant and choked to death on the photos of it. But I feel better now because I prayed to, Je I prayed to Jesus. Jesus let me feel. Jesus didn't care about the dude getting butt-fucked by an elephant. But he made sure Gail felt better. I mean, all's well that ends well. Holy shit. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? We've got four parts left. I'm going to actually save that for the start of Monday. I was going to go through all of them. Uh, but I, it's like you. there's a point where you hit so much crazy, you start to become desensitized to it. 
and I want it to be fresh. We've 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 already gone through a dude getting fucked by an elephant and fucking a cat. I don't know where it goes from here. He's dead. He's fucking dead. Like chat press F. He's dead. He's gone forever. Fucked to death by an elephant. I is she going to go after the black guy? Is she going to fuck him to death too? Is Lori going to go on a rampage of fucking men to death? Is that the whole child- children's book? Children's audiobook. I don't know. You're going to have to tune in Monday to find out for parts five through eight. Uh, also, over the weekend, I'm going to, I hope there's more. I'm going to start looking to see if I can find more of this. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll, maybe I'll pace it where I get like 20 minutes of this and 20 minutes, like a photon episode. You know, that, I think that's a nice buffer for a show. That, that might work. We could, we could watch the whole 18 chapters worth of Lori drugging and fucking people. Oh, Macaulay Culkin, fuck, I forgot about that. Fucked a cat till it was retarded, had eels shoved in his dick, fist fucked, dildo fucked. Uh, Macaulay Culkin shows up and gets drugged and almost raped, raped to death by an elephant, had the photos of the rape shoved down his throat as a warning to other people. That's Lori. That's our antagonist. That's how you write a villain. You know, George R.R. Martin should be taking notes down. The Red Wedding. It's amateur shit. This is hardcore parkour villainy. (laughs) <laughs> this chick is demented on a lot of levels. Uh, let's see. We've got Lupum, phones. She said phones. I, I, I'm not, I missed that one. Uh, Brew98, I want to go back to making fun of Jews from Thorkill. Just woke up. You talked about Epstein anymore? Uh, yep, talked about him a little bit earlier on. Uh, from Man With Memes. I've yet to catch a stream. Oh, we read that one. Glad to catch one. Well, you tuned in for uh, for a unique one. Let me put it that way. And then finally, from the FEO answer, after that book, uteral lining bacon doesn't sound so bad. Uh, very true. Uteral lining bacon uh, does sound delicious at this point compared to elephant sodomy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll read over the Ed article, too. i uh, give you some highlights on our author when we return Monday to watch the rest of uh, Chapter 1. Uh, you know, we'll follow it up with the Slazzo stuff. I, I'll move that to Monday. And then, you know, if we have time, which we probably will, uh, we'll watch a little bit of uh, Photon Episode 8. I think it's 8 or 9 that I left off on. I'm not 100% sure. Either way, enjoy your Friday. Uh, have a good time at work or school or wherever you're going. Yeah, I'm going to actually, uh, yeah, I'm going to play the <laughs> Wagey and a KG song. Because that's fantastic that Amazon wanted to do that to their fucking workers. How demented is that? Uh, have a great weekend. Hope it treats you well. Uh, a video coming out soon up on BitChute. And I will be back Monday with more of uh, more of this amazing masterpiece. Thank you again for sending that via Super Chat. Uh, that's a first. I haven't watched that before. I, I guess I completely missed it. Uh, have a good one, chat. And I will see you later on. Well, good morning, chat. Oh, you've got a lovely week to look forward to. As this Monday morning greets you, I'm sure you're looking forward to the commute to go to work or to class or whatever it is that you do uh, during the weekdays. Uh, We've got uh, some fun planned today. Uh, Sadly, it's going to be a little bit of a shorter stream. I have some appointments this morning, so uh, it's going to probably be about an hour. But fear not, I've uh, divvied this up with a little pre-show, I guess you could call this stream today. Uh, And then Wednesday, the follow-up will be the show proper, I guess. Because we're going to deep dive on a girl, Gail, from the Church of Gail, the greatest thing that's ever been on the internet. You know, after that stream, I'd gone and watched quite a few of her videos. I have a better understanding of what's of what's going on, uh, who the people in that particular comic we watched were, which we'll be watching the rest of, by the way, as well as a few other videos. Um, you've got a lot to look forward to, especially on Wednesday. Now, I don't want to cock tease you too much. I don't want to blue ball you, chat. But I'll be honest with you. If you want to watch a fully live or a fully acted live action movie starring one person playing every role based on the amazing child audiobook by Gail, starring Gail herself, directed and produced by Gail, in which she recreates all scenes that we saw in the comic book, from strap putting a strap on on and simulating raping a cat. That video's out there. We're going to be watching it on Wednesday. It's an hour long. We're probably not going to watch the whole thing, but 
I think you have to see it to really truly comprehend and believe it. Uh, watching a woman put a strap on uh, on herself and then simulate fucking a cat to death. Uh, it, some next level shit, really, to be honest with you. Uh, also, find out more about who those people in the comic books were. Uh, that ties into Gale's belief systems. That was Data. Our boy Brent. Brent Spiner. That was Data. And the cat he was fucking was Data's cat from Star Trek The Next Generation. So Gale uncovered the truth, something that not a lot of people out there know. She's woke to shit. She wants to share it with the world. And that truth is, Brent Spiner has been replaced with a homosexual clone, all by his evil wife, who torments Gale because she knows that Brent truly loves Gale. And she attacks Gale on a daily basis by dropping bombs on her house from the clouds. She does that. She engages in that. Poor Gale having to, <laughs> having to dodge the munitions from Brent Spiner's wife. Wow. Uh, so we'll be watching the movie. Uh, we'll be uh, reading up on her, on her history, some of her more interesting theories. <laughs> it's, it's fucking it's it's really hard to put into words it's it's some next level shit chat I'm gonna be honest with you some uh, highly next level shit now uh, a little bit of information did come out after the stream yesterday I'll read this to you I've got to pull it up myself but I'll put it on screen right now for you this was a comment somebody re-uploaded the stream and this was a comment that appeared and I think you're gonna like it uh, this is from Angelina Ballerina uh, I can't, ba I don't, this could be completely fictional, who knows. But they're claiming they're the person that narrated that book, and they have some uh, lore for us about Gale. I'm the person who narrated the children's book. I was not paid and did not expect to be. I was in contact with Gale's handlers via IRC, and they asked me to do the narration. I got my husband to help with the drawings. I did record the entire book. Most of it isn't nearly as exciting as this chapter, though. It's actually dreadful. Boring writing for the most part. Reading it was agonizing. I don't have the audio files anymore, but I'm sure someone somewhere has them on their computer. The reason this was done was because Gail had been wrongfully terminated from her job as a cashier at Walmart, and her handlers were trying to come up with a way to get her uh, to help get her money, and thought that selling her audiobook version of The Forbidden Abyss Part 1, I actually don't know if there's a Part 2, uh, if it was ever written or released, Around the same time, Gail was, again, illegally Baker-acted, a.k.a. sectioned by her family. She was treated for paranoid schizophrenia and ended up getting approved for disability. So the audio idea, or the audio book idea was dropped. That is some, uh, that is some, that's some deep lore on that shit. So her family Baker-acted her. I think that's when they put you involuntarily into a, uh, an insane asylum. Because you're acting so bizarre. Uh, and I'm going to guess her getting put into the nut house probably had something to do with getting fired from Walmart as well. Now, maybe somebody came in and she thought they were working with a clone of Brent Spiner and were there to rape some cats or something. Who knows? We may never know the full story of why she was wrongfully terminated from the Walmart or what exactly she was Baker acted for. But she got on disability, didn't need that audiobook money, and so that project uh, apparently was dropped. However, the full thing was recorded. It's out there somewhere. Somewhere in the ether out there. And, uh, goddamn, I, I really do want to watch it all. <laughs> um, okay, so, let's see. What do we want to start with? We can jump right into the audiobook, or we can watch the trailer for the amazing movie. The, <laughs> the amazing fucking movie that Gail produced herself. Um, I, I'm gonna, you know, hold on, let me pull it up here. Uh, the trailer's a minute and 40 seconds. I don't know, you tell me, chat, what do you want to do? Should we jump right into the audiobook, finish up the last four parts? Or do you want to see Brent Spiner's Rape, a true story, the movie? What should we start, trailer time? I'm seeing people say trailer time. You know what, I agree with you. Good choice, chat. Let's watch the trailer for the amazing movie we will be watching tomorrow. Let me just get this queued up. Oh, the excitement's palpable. All right. Uh, let's... <laughs> oh, this is so fucked. Okay. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, oh. I can't forget to beg for money. All right, here we go, chat.
Thanks. Cheers to a fistful of Davis. What a long day wore out. In a world where drug rape and Jesuit conspiracy run rampant, a man on a mission for the woman he loves. My angel is raped. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. So you know, chat. Uh, this is the this is the least disturbing of the sex scenes. Uh, the multiple rapes that happen in the movie, by the way. <laughs> Director Gail Cord Schuler. Uh, with producer Gail Cord Schuler. Did she manage to ride up and down all 18 inches of my erect penis? A Gabrielle Jenna film, Steven Spielberg raves, it's the most impressive expose of Brent Spiner's rape ever made. Uh, you know what, actually, I'm gonna back that up. I think this is the fisting scene, Chad. I can, I can tell a little bit because her arm's a little brown. Remember, in the first four parts of that audiobook, our boy Data got his ass fisted like 80 times. And I think, uh, I think we're looking at this live action version. ...of Brent Spiner's rape ever made. <laughs> Friend Spider's Rape. No! No! Don't drink the Jesus Juice Macaulay Culkin! You're going to get raped! You're going to get raped! Coming fall of 2012. Fucking sold. Buy me a ticket. I'm reserving it in advance. Macaulay, they even have the Macaulay. It's, it's line for line. It's the audiobook reenacted. The whole thing. The whole thing. The fist fucking. The cat rape. Getting fucked to death by an elephant. Druggings. Stabbings. Macaulay Culkin getting drugged and raped. How can you not think this is the most excellent piece of cinema to be, ever be created on the fucking internet? And it's all Gail. Gail did all of it. She plays every role in the movie. I think she even is the cat. I think she is the perpetrator of the cat rape and plays the role of the cat getting raped. That's Wednesday. We're watching that shit on Wednesday. Oh. I got the videos this lady has up are fucking amazing. We're going to be listening to one of them. It's the Brett Spiner poop problem. She's dedicated a lot of time to helping Brett Spiner take a shit. And we're, we're going to watch that and find out, you know, is he not getting enough fiber? What's going on there? Tomorrow I've got some really good ones lined up for you. She had a Skype call with Jesus Christ, uh, and Jesus told her that he was going to inseminate her and that Brett Spiner wanted him to do it. Uh, we've got uh, another couple of videos where she was called up by Hollywood actors um, <laughs> telling her she could never defeat their Brett Spiner clone army. <laughs> There's some fucking amazing stuff on this lady's channel. It's uh, it's going to be wild. It's going to be a good time. But now, now you got a little taste of it. you got a little taste of what's coming up on Wednesday. Let us continue with um my god let us continue with our audiobook adventure because we only got so far into it we only got halfway through parts one through four and we have more parts to go through so let me just uh pull this up here and we're we're jumping right back in we're gonna go full steam ahead oh boy i'm fucking excited oh, from dieseldorf been a fan since 2009 sweetie squad forever well thank you very much we'll see how much of a fan you are after you watch do you watch Macaulay Culkin get gang raped? We'll see if that fandom's still there. Okay, I think I've got it queued up. We should be good to go. Here we are. Uh, if you remember yesterday, I'll just give a quick, a quick summary uh, for anybody that just, uh, I guess, just joined. Uh, yesterday we watched the first four videos of this part one, two, three, and four. Uh, it's an audio book for children called The Forbidden Abyss Part One. And yes, there are multiple parts. In our adventure, we followed Brent, uh, Brent Spiner, the actor who played Data, as he was viciously targeted by Lori, a horny deviant 
who used drugs and Jesus juice to rape him multiple times, using all sorts of vile instruments and her fist. She drugged him and made him fuck a cat. <laughs> she drugged him and made him try to rape Macaulay Culkin. Terrible things were going on. This all culminated in part four, where she brought him to the zoo, drugged him up real good, and had an elephant fuck his ass. And then as he lay sobbing and bleeding on the ground, took photos of him in his state of disarray, and then choked him to death with the photos so the police could find the body <laughs> and know what happens to people that fuck with... I, I think it was Lori. I think that was the lady's name. That's where we left off. We still have... We've still got a good 20 minutes. We've still got four parts to go through. I don't know where the story goes from here. Our main protagonist, Brent, should be dead. Maybe his black friend, LeVar Burton, is going to carry the story for us. I don't know. Will the gay love arc ever get resolved? Will the cat heal? Will Brent's anus miraculously stitch itself together? Is the elephant traumatized? There's so many questions. So let's get some answers. As we continue the Forbidden Abyss Part 1 with Part 5 of 8. Brent went to go talk to LeVar about getting rid of Lori. LeVar was the only one Brent confided in at the time. After that few hours with her, did you have any other sex with her? LeVar asked him, laying a hand on his arm. Yes, she kept breaking into my room. Okay, already confused right out of the gates. He's supposed to be dead. He got fucked by an elephant and choked to death on some photos. I don't know what kind of uh, na uh, <laughs> fucking Lazarus resurrection shit's going on here. Maybe Lori had her friend Jesus come and bring him back from the dead. I don't know. This is probably a robot. I don't know yet. We're going to find out. I started drinking from bottled water, but she would contaminate the water while I wasn't looking and gave me the drugs again, and wound up doing even worse things to me. Oh my god, Brent. Because Brent wailed so much, LeVar just cuddled and rocked him for several minutes. She started raping me with a strap-on. Then she moved up to fisting. She got more and more perverted. She put her hand in my butt, made a fist, and thrust it in out of my anus with her fist. Again, I just like to remind everybody that's tuning in for this. Uh, children's audiobook. This is made for the kids. <laughs> for, the, for the little ones. Bar took another look at Brent's rear. My God, she really ripped into your flesh. That explains all the blood I saw in the green room. Couldn't you feel the pain? It didn't hurt while she was doing it because of the drugs. This was all happening on and off for a few weeks. I'm so horrified, LeVar. I've betrayed Gale and done such horrible things. I'm in so much pain, physical and emotional. I just want to die. Is there any way to get away from Lori? It seems that Paramount Studios wants her in the studio. Brent, can't you stay away from her mind control drugs? It's not like I can't eat or drink. She contaminates everything with mind control drugs, even the water fountain. Oh my god. LeVar, she I kind of wonder, do you think Alex Jones watched this and that's where he got his theory about the frogs? Like, you know, Gail beat him to the punch about some psychopath uh, tainting the water and making everybody gay. Because the moment he drinks that goofy juice, he's got a fist up his ass. She seems to have friends everywhere. She has connections in the media. She told me, so it must be true. She's threatened my job and Gail's life. I've been trying to figure out where she comes from and how to keep her from entering the studio. Can you help me? Because my bodyguards aren't doing their job, and they're- <laughs> Some random woman! That's even better! It's not even somebody that works at this movie studio! He's getting fist-fucked and raped <laughs> and brought to the zoo to, made, uh, to perform sodomy on an elephant by some random person that's just walking in off the street, and his bodyguards are helpless. Poor Brent Spiner, nobody can save him from the fist-fucking. They're letting her meddle with my drinks and food, and letting her get into the studio. She apparently has a lot of friends. I want you to sleep with me. You're going to sleep in my arms tonight and every night until we get this thing licked. LeVar held Brent from behind, rocked him to sleep, and went to guard the door. Oh, LeVar, Lori is so icky. I don't want her anywhere near me. I get the shudders every time I see or hear her. When I wake up with her in my bed, I feel like a spider has crawled into bed with me. Brent, you need to tell Gail about this. Gail's crying her eyes out over you, and you're giving her silence. You need her really bad right now. 
I think she'd understand. She could hold you up, Brent. Brent's face became ashen and his hands trembled. If Lori catches me calling Gale, she'll kill Gale. Brent's lips twitched and tears streamed down his face. I have a feeling we're going to get a gay sex scene. Right, right underneath the Reading Rainbow poster on the fucking rocket ship bedspread? LeVar Burton is going to fuck Data in his ass to take his mind off all the rape he's endured. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why there's so much gay shit in this, but it's fascinating. I never knew this about Data, but we're learning a lot today. Lori said she'd kill Gail if I tell her. As long as she's still wandering around the studio, I can't call Gail. Here, call Gail right now from my cell phone. No, Lavar. Brent eased back from Lavar and looked down at the floor, nodding his head in disbelief, then staring ahead with a blank stare, a faraway look, as if a nightmare played over and over in his mind, and he saw monsters and ghosts, knives and blood, fists rapid fire into his anus, evil grins, laughter, images swirling. I, I really want to make a soundboard with this. You know, if SBCC still does prank phone calls, there's some doozies of lines in this thing. Fist rapid fire into my anus is probably probably in the top ten right now. And blood. Fist rapid fire into his anus. Evil grins. Laughter. Images whirling about, screaming at him, jumping at him. Lavar! Brent screamed. I'm going mad. Lavar, is that you? Is this real? Am I here at your house or am I at the studio? Lavar, what's real and what isn't? Lavar! Brent broke down and wailed, releasing all the shame, all the resentment, all the hatred he felt for Lori. He raced for Lavar's kitchen, looked for a knife, scraped his hands through Lavar's kitchen drawer, hands trembled, fingers scurried, trying to find a knife of the right size. But he shook so much, when he reached for the knives, he dropped them, his hands shook so violently. Suddenly, Brent felt strong arms about him, that clutched both his arms and held them back. No, Brent, you're not going to do this. Brent, this is real. I am Lavar, and I will protect you from Lori. Stop it, Brent. Stop it. Okay. I'd like to sum up, you know, Lavar Burton's a lying motherfucker. All right. When Brent Spiner came to Lavar Burton and said, I have been anally sodomized. I had a woman put on a dildo that was the size of a human leg and fuck me until I cried. She put her fist so far up me, she got up to the goddamn, to the shoulder blade. Lavar to the shoulder blade. As he was laying on the floor, sobbing and blood was pouring out of his ass like a broken fire hydrant on a summer day, just gushing everywhere. Lavar laughed. Lavar was smiling. That was the happiest Lavar has ever been when Brent Spiner got fist fucked by some nutcase off the street. So I don't know. I'd be reaching for that knife. I don't know if I'd trust this motherfucker, Mr. Reading Rainbow. <laughs> I'll protect you. Yeah, like you did in part two? I don't think so. Uh, a bit confusing. He should be dead. He's not. I don't know what's going on. Maybe this is hell. If it's hell, maybe he'll get sodomized by Satan. Let's, fi let's find out in part six. I can't tell Gail, Lavar. Don't tell Gail. Lori will kill her. Lori will kill her. All right, all right, Brent. I promise I won't tell Gail. Yeah, that's the face. That's the face the motherfucker made. That is the exact look he had on his face when this dude was talking about being violently raped. <laughs> Lavar Burton doesn't give a shit. Gail, calm down, calm down. Brent wailed and wailed in Lavar's arms. Not as long as Lori still roams about the studio. Brent's voice had become husky from hours and hours of wailing. Lavar was horrified how his best friend had been transformed from a well-adjusted, happy and loving friend into a man who looked ready for the state mental hospital. Lori stuffs her purse with knives. The guards caught her with knives. She said she was a chef. Okay, how is this bitch getting into anywhere with security? I implore you, if you're watching this, give it a shot. Grab a dildo that has ball bearings on it and is the size of somebody's fucking leg. Get a bottle and write mind control drugs on it and just try to walk in somewhere. Doesn't even, doesn't matter where it is. A supermarket, a church, a school if you're feeling risky. <laughs> I guarantee you, you're not going to get very far. And somehow, this chick is walking on to Hollywood Studio property. She must be a friend with Mr. Weinstein. I can, I can think of no other explanation. That's why she had to carry them, so they let her through, Brent scowled. 
Lori's so crazy. I really think if I tell Gail, she'll stalk Gail next. LeVar noticed that his best friend turned ashen white. All right, Brent, I swear over my dead body I won't tell Gail. Brent stared at LeVar in disbelief. Over your dead body you won't tell Gail? Over my dead body. He cuddled Brent from behind. LeVar wanted to get past this and focus on a solution. Though he felt Gail could help Brent now, he could see that to bring Gail into the picture could bring in complications that would destroy Brent. Can't you beat these mind control drugs? They're tricky. You know, uh, nigga, what are you talking about? Can't you beat the- they're mind control drugs, LeVar! <laughs> how, they, how are you expecting me to beat them? They're mind control drugs. It's- what- you- what- oh, <laughs> do I need to have a little bit of moxie? A little pep in my step? She drugs me, bro. She drugs me and fist fucks me. No, I can't beat this. Get me a gun. Give me a weapon. You feel as if you're still yourself and feel fully conscious, but you don't realize you're drugged. Even though I feel ill from them, when I'm on them, I don't think I'm delirious. It's sort of like having a dream, but you don't know what you're dreaming, so everything makes sense at the time. Can't you see the drugs or get rid of them in your system? Maybe make yourself throw up whenever you feel ill, because they make you feel ill. Have you tried that? Even Oh my god, I wish there was an episode <clears throat> of Reading Rainbow where LeVar Burton told little kids. <laughs> Just, hey kids, it's, co it's called bulimia and anorexia. Look into it. It solves your problems. You don't like something that's in your tummy? Just vomit it up. Just suck it. You know what? Buttercup, suck it up, Buttercup. Walk into that bathroom and just puke it up. All right? Man the fuck up, Brent. All right? So you got ass fucked by an elephant because some crazy bitch drugged you. You need to go into the bathroom and just puke a little. That, <laughs> that'll make you feel better. Even though they made me sick to my stomach, I didn't throw up the first time. But I started to realize that whenever I feel sick, it's Lori's brain control drugs. So I made myself throw up after that. What do the drugs look like? Did you see them in your vomit? They're clear and colorless, almost like water. That's why it's so easy to sneak them into food and drink. How'd you figure this out? Well, when the drug mixes with air, it slowly turns silver and then black, because that's what happens to my vomit when I'm under Lori's brain control drugs. LeVar tried to comfort and protect- Yeah, no, I think the black shit in your vomit after you get fucked by an elephant is deep internal bleeding. It's the blood from your organs that have been crushed by a fucking 14-foot penis. <laughs> That's not the mind control drugs, Brent. That's your body dying. <laughs> You're puking up your internal organs. Protect Brent, but it was no use, and every time they tried to thwart her, she would just find another way to get him. Brent. Oh boy, we're, the adventure continues. Only two parts left. And uh, this one, I think, has a Hollywood executive in it. Oh, we're in for a treat, I think. And finally summon the courage to tell Paramount about being raped. Lori has already talked to us about this matter. You raped her, and we won't ban her from the studio. We expect you to behave honorably around her or else. She spiked my drink. She tried to kill me. The studio executive looked over Brent with a scowl, as if he disdained the very presence of the star who made his show shine. Oh, my ears, McGoy. You're making it up. Just go on to the set. <laughs> It's, yeah, you got me too, buddy. You got me too. I see. Lori owns the studio. Brent could not hold back the tears. You think I enjoy sex that does this? Brent revealed his rear, filled with stitches. <laughs> How would you like to do that? To walk into wherever you would <laughs> just imagine that. You go into the office, it's a, it's a Monday morning. And you've been sodomized by some crazy woman. And your boss just doesn't care. So you drop your pants and spread your ass cheeks and point it at him. Look at it. Look at my fucking anus. And raw and oozing flesh. The executive winced at the sight. My, you really like it rough, don't you? I won't hear of this anymore. What an asshole. <laughs> I just, I've just been brutally raped and I'm bleeding out of my asshole. Wow, you're a real pervert, buddy. Uh, you seem to like it rough. I bet you like handcuffs and whips, sicko. Get out of my studio. How could such a beautiful woman do this to you? Brain control drugs. Get out of here, the executive scowled. You're a disgrace to this studio. 
Treat Lori with the respect she deserves. You just couldn't resist her body, could you? Her beauty just overwhelmed you with lust. If you don't give her the respect she deserves, we'll write data out of the show. We'll explain to the public that we can't have a rapist working for Paramount Studios. I remember that episode of The Next Generation. When William Riker and Captain Picard were on the deck. And, um... (laughs) <laughs> fucking Worf walked in and he's like Captain where's Data and uh, Jean-Luc turned around and said we don't fucking let rapists in here Worf the fuck is wrong with you you Klingon asshole the executive paused and looked out the window one more thing not a word of this to anyone you understand he stared Brent down as if in a dare if we find you have leaked this to anyone we'll paint you as a rapist to the media don't forget we have photographic evidence. How Brent loved Gale and how this tore at his heart. He recalled Lori's words, You tell Gale about our sex and I'll kill her. Brent realized if he lost his job as Data, that he'd be out on the streets and unable to protect Gale. Yes, sir. You're gonna get raped and you're gonna like it, kid. You're gonna get raped every day and you're gonna say thank you. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> get the fuck out of my office. The executives then produced a contract that made him promise in writing that he would not tell anyone about the rape, or else they'd be entitled to smear him to the press as a rapist. If Brent refused to sign this contract, he'd lose his job. His heart racked with pain, sinking so low, he wasn't sure he could ever feel happy again. Now if Gail wanted to, he could never marry her, at least not any time soon. Even worse, he felt he betrayed all that made him feel worthy as a man. He could barely restrain his tears, but if he ended up in jail, either as a rapist or because of his debts, how could he keep Gail his his pen friend, or even protect her, if he needed to in the future? Also, his co-stars made his job at Paramount a great place to work, and he had really bonded with them. So he decided to stay with Paramount for them, for his job as Data, so he could stay off the streets, to stay afloat for Gail. You know, he's a real team player. Most people, when they work in an environment where they get anally raped every day, they're like, yep, you know what, I'm done, okay? I'm, uh, you, you have me stay late at the office, I don't like it. You don't give me overtime, that upsets me. I don't get those pay raises I ask for or the vacation time I want, but I tolerate it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw the line. I'm going to draw the line right here at brutal, violent sodomy. <laughs> I'll put up with a lot. I'll sit in the wagey KG, Amazon, but I'm not going to let you sodomize me. That's... That's a bridge too far. And besides, I really like my I really like my coworkers. He had just finished paying off a huge debt and was finally no longer in danger from his creditors. If he lost his job, he knew he'd be on the streets and possibly in debtor's prison. He wasn't nearly as rich as the press made him out to be. Can can we start a GoFundMe for Brent Spiner? I didn't know he was suffering from such tough times. I didn't know data was on the verge of homelessness. All right, I think we all like that show, and I don't think Brent should really be living in a gutter. Maybe maybe we can uh, get a hold of Gail and get this GoFundMe going so this guy can uh, have a nice roof over his head. The world did not know of the huge debt he had incurred before he landed his jo- famous job as Data of Star Trek, The Next Generation. So Brent signed the Paramount contract, promising not to tell anyone about the rape, giving Paramount permission to smear him to the press if he did. Perhaps he could weasel out of this contract later, he thought. The contract also made him promise not to bring charges against Paramount for defamation, that is, if he violated this contract and thus force him to go to the press and expose him as a rapist. In other words, he must not tell anyone about the September 1992 rape or about his contract he made with Paramount, or he'd lose his job and would have to pay back Paramount any earnings he made after he signed this contract with them. Typical paperwork. If you've worked at one office max, you've worked at them all. I think we've I think we've all seen an employment contract like this. Brent never violated his contract until after it became invalid in 1999 because it had an illegal purpose, to protect a criminal, Lori. Once he invalidated the contract, Lori continued to intimidate Brent into silence about her crimes by threatening to kill Gail if he dared to communicate with Gail. Though he brought criminal charges against Lori in 1998, the Jesuits always got her out of jail on technicalities. Therefore, Gail never knew the full details of his rape with Lori until 2012. Brent also needed the money from his Paramount job, and he actually loved the job, because he loved his co-stars and his role as Data. 
So, despite Lori, Brent strived to have a good relationship with Paramount, who, after 1999, actually seemed embarrassed about Lori. The... Oh, it took him. It took him seven years. All right, but they eventually came around. So it took seven years of that Jewish Hollywood executive watching Brent Spiner get fucked on set in his ass every day. Seven years. <laughs> Over 2,100 days of nonstop violent sodomy before he finally said, you know what? Maybe I was wrong about this girl. <laughs> Maybe she's not the nicest lady on the, on the lot. The Jesuits made sure Brent never had enough money to survive without his Paramount earnings, forcing him to remain dependent on Paramount for financial survival. It wasn't the fault of his co-stars that the higher-ups at Paramount were Jesuits. The Jesuits made sure that despite Brent's genius intelligence, he had a pitiful career after Star Trek The Next Generation finished its television run in 1994. He landed no other roles in Hollywood that made him as famous as Data. That is the face of a man that has been brutally fucked by an elephant. <laughs> He's, by the way, Brent Spiner is aware of her, and he is aware of the audiobook. Though he, I guess, doesn't like to talk about it, maybe I'd probably be slightly unnerved by a lady writing audiobooks and literature about my violent rape on a studio lot in 1992, and then describing my career as basically in a death spiral after leaving the show. Now, in September 1992, he learned the truth, that Paramount Studios sponsored Lori McBride and encouraged her to rape him, allowing her in the studio even when she had knives, claiming to believe her story that she was a cook. That's, okay, you know what, this lady, she's talented. I, so you're telling me she was so good, so good at bullshitting people, so top tier at deception, that she can walk onto set with a four foot long dildo, a bottle that literally says mind control drugs, and a purse full of knives. And they're like, oh, that's that's just the cook. The caterer is here. Somebody get Brent Spiner. He said he wanted a sandwich. <laughs> Tell him Lori's here. He loves her cooking. So he came back to the studio later to tell LeVar about his meeting with the executives, and he ran right back into Lori McBride. She now knew he had signed the contract and felt herself invincible. She was standing outside his studio room door, with her hands behind her back, holding a syringe full of drugs, grinning at him. He stepped backward in fright, and she lunged, plunging the syringe into his neck, then threw him into the room. He struggled fiercely, and so she hit him over the head with a frying pan, sending him stumbling into the bed. Then she tied him down with ropes on the bed spread eagle. In horror, he watched her undress. But oh, Chad, I have a feeling this is going to be extra bad. Look at, look at his face! That's the face of a man whose soul is dead. His soul is dead and it's left his body. He really is a robot now. <laughs> God's gift of creation has fled the trauma. Look at her. This is his wife. In the real life, this is his wife, by the way. Uh, she's mounted him, spread him eagle, and tied him to the bed. I can, I can just imagine the beautiful lovemaking that's about to take place. The door creaked open again. It was LeVar, and he held his finger to his lips to shush Brent, so Brent wouldn't give away that LeVar was behind Lori, because she didn't see him. That was when Brent LeVar... That's, that's when LeVar Burden unzipped his pants and pulled his penis out. He kept winking at Brent, winking at him over and over as he stroked his penis, as Lori sodomized him, and he sobbed. I told you, buddy. Wink, wink, wink. Stroke, stroke, stroke. I'd be here for you. Wink, wink. And I am. The last thing he remembered was her slowly removing her top, and a split second later, LeVar rushed into the room. But Brent had passed out. When he awakened, still tied to the bed, Lori and LeVar were gone, but blood was everywhere. I gotta get out of here, he thought. It's probably from his ass. <laughs> he <laughs> Blood's struggled probably to get the ropes about his body to free himself and then got up. A pool of blood led from the bed to the door and all the way out into the hallway. He followed the blood all the way outside, to the far back of the studio, fearing the worst. LeVar stood there, facing the dumpster. Brent trotted up beside him. What happened? Then Brent looked into the dumpster and saw Lori McBride. LeVar had killed her. That's why you don't fuck with engineering, okay? You fuck with Jordy LaForge, and he's gonna gut your ass, put you in a dumpster, and light your fucking corpse on fire. <laughs> that visor ain't to look cool. It's to shield his eyes from all the arsons he commits. 
"'This is between you, me, and this gallon of gasoline,' Lavar said, lighting his match to light up a cigarette. He offered Brent a cigarette. Shaking his head in astonishment, Brent refused. Lavar threw the match into the dumpster, causing the dumpster to erupt into flames. The sound of the flames licking Laurie's body filled the air. Putting his arm around Brent's shoulder, Lavar stood there with Brent, listening to the flames, seeing the sparks fly, and feeling the heat from the dumpster. They just stood there, watching the flames. To Brent, feeling the heat and seeing the sparks, the surreal became real. The sounds, the crackling and the sparks leaping from the dumpster against the night sky and the heat from the dumpster, reassured Brent that Laurie could torment him or Gale no more. <laughs> fucking have a bar- <laughs> they, Okay, Jordy LaForge just murdered a woman and lit her corpse on fire. And now Jordy and Data are cooking hot dogs over her burning fucking body, singing songs together as the cat they raped from earlier looks on in absolute fucking horror. As the night went on, they decided to camp out and wait until the blaze finished, roasting marshmallows and singing a few songs while passing around some beer. Brent felt his spirits lift. After that, Brent figured everything would be all right. Just focus on Gale and try to put this behind you, Lavar said. So for a while, Brent did. Brent even joked, with a happy, carefree air, about having sex on an episode on the Joan Rivers show in November. Yes, he thought, he had finally disposed of that devil, and she would never come back. Let's turn all all my negative energy into positive energy and just focus on Gale. Oh, and that's the end. That is the end. Beautiful. End of part one of this children's audio book, The Forbidden Abyss, by our girl Gale. It's been a wild ride. Poor, poor Data, raped on set for seven years straight, sodomized by elephants, forced to fuck cats, forced to drug Macaulay Culkin disbelieved by everybody, made to sign a contract to say he was asking for it, finally rescued by his friend, who murdered her in cold blood, bludgeoning her to death with like a pipe or something, I don't know, threw her ass into a fucking dumpster, lit her on fire, and had a goddamn jamboree over the corpse. That is, that is storytelling. That's how you write an arc. I want to know what comes next. The whole book, there's a whole audiobook out there. Sadly, that's not online. However, the full-length movie is. So we'll not only get to watch this recreated in live action, we'll get to see the conclusion of it on Wednesday. Oh, I'm excited. I'm very excited for where this story is going to take us. I have, I have some, some inkling on where it might go, just based on some of the other videos she's put up and some of the things I've read that she's written <laughs> on where this might uh, end up taking us. Oh, Sir Scallywag, who's your favorite character so far? Oh, God, the cat. How could you not like the cat's acting? The meow! As it got fucking sodomized by an 18.25-inch penis. <laughs> the cat didn't stand a chance. Brutally raped. Brutally fucking anally raped by Data from Star Trek. Uh, from HTRTU. A narrator of the audiobook gave her takes in the pinned comment here. Oh, uh, yeah, actually, we, we just uh, we read that earlier. From Padre Speaks. Just wondering if you were in D Live yesterday. I missed notification. Sweetie Squad, roll out. No, I wasn't. Uh, a couple of people messaged me and told me that they got notifications that I went live. Um, I didn't. Uh, maybe it was due. Yesterday they were doing some like big charity event. So I'm wondering if they just sent out notifications to people to get them to show up to watch. Uh, it was. PewDiePie and Jack Black doing something for mental health awareness, <laughs> which ironically fits in with the theme of the things we're looking at. Uh, but no, I did not stream yesterday. And from uh, Fuck Chinese Lemons, uh, giving me a new a new stream outro. I can already tell it's going to be a winner. Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Adolf, what is this? Adolf Hitler's rootless international clique. I will. Uh, I'll have to give that a look over. I don't know how the Chinese feel about Nazis. Probably not great. Because <laughs> they were allied with the people that uh, did some stuff during World War II to them. Uh, we'll find out. I'm not sure how the Turks feel about Hitler either. It's a risk. <laughs> they might take all my precious Chinese lemons away. And then how will I fund our adventure into 
Brent Spiner's nonstop sodomy. Didn't really think that through, did you? Now we're, we won't be able to complete our journey on why Brent Spiner keeps getting fucked by people in his asshole. Uh, now, Gail put up a video, well, we'll take a look at that, called Brent Spiner's Letter to Gail, We Pooped. Apparently Brent Spiner is a pen pal of Gail's and likes to write her letters every so often, and one of his more recent letters was about a shit he took. So he thought, I took a pretty giant deuce, dropped a big old dump right in the toilet, I need to write Gail. Gail needs to hear about my success of taking a shit. So let me uh, let me pull this up. I, this could be terrible. It could be great. I don't know. There's there's quite a lot to choose from. We got some videos to, to go through. Again, the majority will be on Wednesday, but I wanted to play some today. So let me get this uh, queued up. And we can hear from the author herself about Brent Spiner's magical adventures and taking shits. I mean, I'm, I'm sold on it. Uh, maybe we can even find a video about her talking about how he's been cloned by the evil gay Jesuits. It's fucking Jesuits, man. You think it's a Catholics? You know, with the whole little boy thing? It's the Jesuits you gotta watch out for. They're the ones that are handing out those mind control drugs and giving people ideas on to br on bringing others to the zoo to get them fucked by elephants. Alright, let's, uh, let's cue this up. Again, this is Brent Spiner's letter to Gail. He wrote this to her. When did he write this to her? This year, January 14th. We pooped. January 13, 2019. Dearest Gail, as you well know, I've been hard at work solving the dilemma of our current poop pregnancy crisis on board Church of Gail. Well, you know, I th <laughs> is this going to be about gay ass babies? Did Brent Spiner, does data from Star Trek research gay ass babies? I'm, I'm already interested, to be honest. I sit here writing to you now with my exceptionally long penis buried deeply and warmly into my vagina butt. <laughs> I need to start opening my letters to people. That's my new That's my new uh, opener on emails. The next time I get a hold of David Stay, I'm going to write and say, Dear David, uh, I'm currently writing you with my large erect penis inside my vagina butt. Or if I may say more correctly, our vagina butt. I couldn't be more thankful than now for the blessing that is my 18.5 inch manhood as the gentle hugging from your vagina inside my rectum is perhaps the source of my strength during these trying times. <laughs> His penis got bigger. I don't know what happened from the 1990s to now, but it used to be 18.25 inches and it's grown half an inch. Brent Spiner's penis doesn't stop growing. By the time he's 80 years old, it'll stretch half a block down the street. Meanwhile, on Church of Gale, the rest of the men have understandably become deeply emotionally distressed. One must understand that for a man, pooping is an essential part of their masculinity. Aside from masturbation in the mornings, the evenings, and sometimes afternoons in the workplace bathroom, pooping... I, <laughs> I like how she snuck that one in there. You know, hey... Cranking one out's pretty, pretty normal. You know, in the morning, in the evening, sometimes at lunchtime, at work, at work, at your desk, while looking your boss in the eye and sticking your 18.5-inch penis in your vagina butt. It's one of the most magical and empowering times of a normal man's day. The physical pain of our swollen bowels, combined with the loss of a critical emotional outlet, has led many of our men to fall into depression and a constant line has since formed outside of Gerard Butler's psychiatry office. Why don't you consent to a colostomy, Vladimir, Gerard asked. No, Vladimir pounded his fist on the table. Colostomy bag is for walking dead like Hillary Clinton. I would rather be euthanasia like dog than become as Hillary Clinton. Coughing fit, pants of shit, Gail's base, she's a base megapede. Trump 2020, Gail's on board. Come on. We need to get her a, a mega hat so she can complete the look. Doesn't She doesn't believe in that Hillary Clinton shit. <laughs> She's set for the walking dead. A colostomy bag for fucking zombies. Aye, Vladimir. Hopefully it will not come to that. Gerard replied calmly in his soothing voice, with Brent working hard at a solution for all this. Soon we men may all poop honorably on our own terms. Similar conversations were had with all of the men reporting to Gerard's office for counseling. 
Okay, you know what? I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm going to pause this for one second. Um, she keeps bringing up Gerard Butler, and I'm sure that's an actor. I just don't know what from what. What is he an actor from? <laughs> Why is Gerard Butler counseling people about taking poops? <laughs> what the fuck? You've got to be... This is... I know this guy. Why is this guy involved in Brent Spider taking poops? <laughs> what the fuck? Um, let me... Let me let me pull his picture up for everybody. Oh, uh, let me zoom in on this. There we go. Uh, so this is the man that's providing counseling services to men that need to take poops. Uh, Gerard Butler. Now, I don't know uh, what insight he has into putting enormous penises into vagina butts. <laughs> or how it affects your psyche. But he's pretty fucking adamant that colostomy bags are for bitches. You heard it here. Gerard Butler, if you need a colostomy bag, go vote for Hillary Clinton. Take that lib shit stuff the fuck out of here. This is Megatown, all right? We put our penises in our vagina butts proudly here. <laughs> fucking Gerard Butler. <laughs> how did he get roped into this? Oh. You know, there are calls, uh, recorded Skype calls on her channel uh, that are allegedly from Gerard Butler telling her about his nefarious <laughs> plans with gay clones. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's what did it. Similar, except for one strange outlier, Bubba, the morbidly obese black Jesuit. Bubba, of course, is not a man on the marriage list, nor did he receive a vagina butt. However, Bubba, murmuring to himself through tears, has joined the line time and time again to speak with Gerard. Lick my butthole, Bubba would sob weakly. Lick my butthole. Lick my b -b butthole. I, yeah, I'm going to have to make a soundboard out of just a majority of the things that she says. Jesuit. Bubba, of course, is not a man on the marriage list, nor did he receive a vagina butt. However, Bubba, murmuring to himself through tears, has joined the line time and time again to speak with Gerard. Lick my butthole. Bubba would sob weakly. Lick my butthole. Lick my b -b butthole. I, laddie, Gerard would say. I cannot understand ye. You need me to lick your butthole? It wasn't until after recruiting the help of Hugh Jackman how the fuck did Hugh Jackman... You know what? Uh, okay. We need to keep track of this. I'm going to create a celebrity... You know, we're doing this now. <laughs> Just because there's no other way I'm going to keep track of this. So who do we who do we have involved in the gay ass sex and uh, licking black men's assholes? Uh, so we got Gerard Butler. Let me... Let me I'm, I'm grabbing his picture. We're putting this up on screen. I don't want anybody to get lost. And so it's really important. <laughs> it's really important... That, um, you know, every, this is accessible to everybody. So let me let me put his picture up. You're going to have to give me a second chat to get caught up so we can keep all the characters straight. Uh, all right, <laughs> Gerard. Oh, all right. Here's our boy. So this is our psychiatrist, uh, Gerard Butler, uh, the expert on anal. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't even, I don't know, I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, somehow Hugh Jackman is involved. Oh, let me, let me just. Just do that. Uh, where's our boy Hugh Jackman? You know, was, wasn't he Wolverine? Am I thinking of the right one? I don't even know what he's... Yep, yep, he's uh, Wolverine. Wolverine's involved in this. Let's grab a good Wolverine picture. Again, important for the story so everybody uh, doesn't get lost on this. <laughs> oh, Jesus, this lady. Okay, I'm going to pull his picture up. So these are the men having this conversation. So just like when you're listening to her letter that was written by Brent Spiner, you know, Data from Star Trek, when he's talking about this, uh, these are the guys that are involved. These are the dudes that uh, are involved in the, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what you'd call it, I'll be honest with you. I don't think you're really, the video, watching the video itself, the uh, not really important, so I think we're good. Okay. Who can understand Bubba speak that we finally figured out what he has been trying to talk to Gerard about. It turns out that poor Bubba has never healed from the loss of his late ginger boyfriend. As you may remember, Bubba's ginger boyfriend died in 2017 at the extremely fat hands of Sarah Avery. Sarah Avery, 
the massively obese biological weapon of the old Jesuit order, devoured Bubba's ginger boyfriend in one gulp while the two lovers were on a romantic stroll through San Francisco. Bubba had planned to propose to his ginger that same day. He had even had the ring in his pocket. Bubba, still faithful to his ginger boyfriend, refuses to let death keep them part. He is still committed to the one true love of his life and cannot bear to move on. He would rather allow his butthole to become dry, cracked, and withered from being unlicked than ever give his butthole to the tongue of any other man on this earth. You know, that's <clears throat> that's true love, folks. <sighs> I know, you know, it's hard when you lose a loved one. But when you say, when you make the commitment to never let another person lick your asshole again, because the one you love, your dead ginger boyfriend that was eaten by an obese biological weapon, <laughs> when, you, when you commit to that, that's, that's fucking passion. That's true love. And I think Gerard Butler and Wolverine agree with Gail on this, that that is a, that is a, a, a beautiful commitment, really. Gerard was moved to tears as Hugh Jackman explained Bubba's passionate and overwhelming grief, wiping the wetness from the crease of one eye as he scribbled down notes onto his notepad. I have since asked our church to pray for him, and I ask that all of our followers do the same. As to the physical health crisis at hand, or should I say at vagina butt, I have been making slow and uneven progress. While I understood the anatomy and biology involved, I didn't quite understand the science. I knew I was going to need more help. I needed a real scientist, someone who knew everything from the three phases of matter to how weather balloons worked, someone with real knowledge, with a solid reputation that one could trust. It was while I was on my way for a coffee break that my prayers had been answered. Rolling up on a skateboard, a white lab coat sailing behind him in the wind, was none other than Bill Nye the Science Guy. <laughs> okay, let's add him too. Hey, Bill Nye the Science Guy. You know, I actually could believe that one. <laughs> if you're going to tell me somebody's talking about licking assholes and gay butt vagina sex, Bill Nye, I, that's a believable one. Let's add Bill Nye to this. Oh, we've got a whole... This is like... Uh, it's like so, <laughs> I don't know. This is like Celebrity Jeopardy. Oh, what's a good Bill Nye picture? We need to find... Is there one of him on a skateboard? Dare I dream? Is it possible there's a Bill Nye photo with him on a skateboard to really set the mood? No, sadly. Sadly, there's not. Well, that's okay. That's okay, Mr. Nye. <laughs> I'll still put you in here. Yeah, that's that's the picture I'm going to go with. Bill Nye the science guy. Just She needed somebody to explain balloons to her. So she went to a real scientist. You know, Bill Nye. <laughs> Bill, Bill Nye the real scientist. Oh, I wonder if the Jesuits are trying to make him like assholes too. Fucking Jesuits, man. Uh, there we go. I think you, you could... There we go. That's... That's Mr. Knight. Boy, we got a whole, a whole fucking group of them now. Gerard. Oh, you know what? Let me move that down. Oh, no, there we go. Want to make sure. <laughs> no, this is disastrous. There we go. All right. Let's get back to our story about uh, licking assholes. What's up, dude? Bill Nye proclaimed. One of our church members in the hallway gasped. Bill Nye, the science guy, they exclaimed. This got the attention of the entire floor. Church members began pumping their fists, chanting, Bill, 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 Bill Nye, I said. Boy, am I glad to see you. You're like an angel sent from God himself. Thank you, Brent. I got many tweets from Gale followers telling me that you all needed my help. So what kind of poop situation have you boys gotten yourselves into now? Well, not to sound like a party poop. Now, I like how that implies that this has been a convers this has been a situation that's happened once before, at the very least once before. <laughs> Are you crazy guys? It's Mill it's me, Bill Nye, Gerard Butler, and Hugh Jackman. Gail told me you had another poop situation. <laughs> I skateboarded down here. Pooper. But our vagina but Christmas gifts from Jesus came with one dilemma. We can't poop. Well that's just shitty, he chuckled. <laughs> Come on, my constipated friend, let's get to the lab. Bill Nye slid his goggles down over his eyes. 
He then dropped his skateboard and motioned for me to hop on. I jumped on board, wrapping my arms around his waist, and the two of us were off to the lab like a pair of superheroes flying down the hallway. The first thing to do was get Bill up to speed on everything I had already tried. So far, our initial experiments had been performed on monkeys. Using my surgical prowess as a doctor, I had attempted to simply reroute the colon through the urethra. Obviously, Holy shit, Bill. What the fuck? Bill, Bill Nye the science guy is doing monkey experiments and rerouting their assholes to the tips of their dicks. Bill, that's uh, that's sort of fucked up, buddy. That's, uh, that's some next level degeneracy, Bill. We first tried to get the mon monkeys to poop through their penises. Their penises were simply not fit to deliver poop babies. The urethra ruptured, filling the testicles with poop until they exploded. When that didn't work, we tried to create an additional hole in the vagina that could pass poop. The monkey labia simply swelled with poop until the monkeys once again exploded. By the end of the... Again, I just like to remind people, uh, this is a letter from Brent Spiner, the man who played Data on Star Trek, to Gale, explaining that Bill Nye's wacky science experiments of making monkeys explode by filling them with shit isn't really helping out their buddies Gerard Butler and Hugh Jackman with their ass baby problem. The experiments, all monkeys involved had died. It just doesn't make sense, Bill, I said. Indian women poop from their vaginas. That's how they lubricate themselves before sex. Why can't I just perform a race change operation on our vagina butts to get them to function like an Indian woman's? Well, Indian women also excrete small amounts of poop through their lungs and their pores. Yeah, I can confirm this. This is scientifically verifiable. All right, the designated street shitters do extrude fecal matter from every portion of their body, every pore on their body. She doesn't mean Indian is Native American. <laughs> she meets Indian dot on head. And um, yeah, you know, they've, they've mastered the art of shitting out of every part of their body. So the actual amount of poop that, that is excreted from their vaginas is relatively small compared to the poop babies you men need to deliver. You're right, Bill. I hadn't considered that. What else can we do? First things first. These experiments need to be done on humans, not monkeys. But Bill, all the monkeys involved so far in our experiments have died. Trust me, Brent, the U.S. pharmaceutical industry does this all the time. I realized that Bill was right. If we were going to handle this like a professional government study, we were going to need to select eligible human volunteers. Very soon, we had collected a diverse testing group consisting of prison inmates, welfare recipients, illegal immigrants, mentally retarded orphans, <laughs> What? <laughs> Bill Nye is collecting mentally retarded orphans and illegal immigrants to make them explode with shit. Prostitutes, and of course the homeless. Each participant was promised $5 for their cooperation. With no time to lose, we dove straight into the testing phases. My laboratory desk turned into my literal drawing board. As each idea rushed to mind, I found myself scribbling furiously like a madman. Sketch after sketch, formula after formula, I drew out plans and diagrams that would be immediately handed off to Bill Nye for implementation. No can do, Brant, he would report. The subject pooped from every orifice then immediately died. Or, hey, Brant, they died again. Oh, golly gosh, Brent. Hate to tell you, it's me, Bill Nye. All those kids I kidnapped, you know, the illegal <laughs> the illegal foreign immigrant orphans. Uh, yeah, they all died. They exploded, Brent. You know, I tried to tell you, uh, uh, Brent and Gerard and Hugh, uh, that filling little children from foreign countries with poop <laughs> would result in <laughs> explosions. But you wouldn't listen to me. Now I got all these dead fucking orphans over here and I don't know what to do with it. I can't skateboard through their <laughs> the viscera that's coating my lab now. But this time they came back as a poop-craving zombie. Or, hmm, that didn't work. I, it had the same result as the human centipede idea. Hundreds of ideas. Hundreds of sketches. Hundreds of formulas. My mind churned like a machine. And after every failure, I found myself right back at my desk, head in my hands. Finding a solution was beginning to seem hopeless. 
This should do it, Bill said as he eyed the syringe in his hands, flicked it with his fingers and squirted out the air bubbles. He turned and stuck the needle into the bicep of a large prison inmate. Moments passed as we waited for the results. All of a sudden, the inmate's eyes bolted, <clears throat> and he began screaming. Startled, I jumped to my feet, my body stiff with full alarm as I gripped my desk with one hand. The screaming crescendoed like a siren. The inmate clawed at his face, full teeth bared. As his eyes rolled back into his head, mountains of poop began pouring out of his eyes. He continued screaming. He screamed until his entire bowels had emptied themselves. Can so please, for the love of God, I know some of you guys can draw. Can somebody draw me a picture of Bill Nye making an orphan inmate explode shit out of his eyeballs? <laughs> can somebody please draw this picture? I need this picture in my life. So we could use it on the next stream. I need to see Bill Nye drugging orphan, illegal immigrant orphan children and making shit explode out of their eyeballs. From his eye sockets, and covered the floor of the lab. I sighed and collapsed back into my chair. I peeled the latest sheet of paper off of my desk and crumpled it up into a ball, tossing it into a now overflowing trash can of discarded failed designs. Bill Nye patted the now blind inmate on the shoulder, handing him a $5 bill on his way out of the room. Sorry about that, buddy. No, your eyeballs exploded with shit from your tummy, but here's a $5 bill for being such a... A good guy about it. <laughs> Have a nice day. Our team of retard janitors in hazmat suits promptly arrived on the scene. <laughs> Fucking retard janitors. <laughs> you need them to be stupid so they don't report you. On the shoulder, handing him a $5 bill on his way out of the room. Our team of retard janitors in hazmat suits promptly arrived on the scene to mop up the latest explosion of poop. What's next, Brent? Well, I said, looking at my overflowing wastebasket, I should take this trash out, then we can regroup. Just then, one of our nanotechnology research techs entered the room. No need to take out the trash, Brent, he said, pulling out his Android phone. He fiddled with his phone for a moment, then pushed a button on the screen. The trash inside the trash can began to glow a brilliant blue, and within seconds, the trash dissolved seemingly into thin air. Wow, Bill exclaimed. So you guys switched to vaporizing trash. That's very environmentally conscious of you. Actually, the trash was transported, the tech explained. We invented a new app that allows us to take our trash and transport it out into deep space. You know what? I think I know who she's talking about here with all the high tech science stuff. Let me grab his picture so we can put him up with everybody else. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to leave our inventor out of this amazing story. He deserves credit. <laughs> I, I know exactly who uh, turned nanites into a fucking phone app. So let me just get his picture here. <laughs> we'll add him to the list. Oh my god, this is a great story. Gail, you, you, are, you really outdo yourself. Let me just say that. You really know how to tell a tale. I'm sorry, this isn't... Uh, what am I saying? This isn't a story. This is a letter that Data wrote her. Talking about Bill Nye's ass baby experiments. <laughs> Killing orphan children. Okay, let me get uh, our inventor's picture up here. Oh, boy. It's gonna... We're running out of screen space. Here we go. Here we go. I'm fairly certain this is who she's talking about. Put him... Put him right there. There you go, Elon. <laughs> welcome to the... Welcome to the adventure. Uh, okay. Well, let's, uh, let's continue on. I'm, I'm dying to know what happens next. Well, that makes sense, Bill replied. There's a lot of space in space. Interesting, I remarked, narrowing my eyes and rubbing my silver five o'clock shadow. Wait, Brent, I've seen that look before, Bill said. What are you thinking? We hadn't another moment to lose. With Bill's help, we quickly got to reverse engineering the app and adjusting it to fit our needs. Within the next hour, we had a migrant worker with an expired work visa on our treatment table. Okay, I announced. Are you ready, Bill? Ready. I love the idea that fucking Gerard Butler, Hugh Jackman, Brent Spiner, Elon Musk, and Bill Nye are abducting immigrants and bringing them to some, like, fucking prison facility to inject them with super drugs and nanites so, so they can shit out their dick.
Energize, I called. Bill flipped the switch on the wall beside him. It was a tense moment. The migrant began to glow a sparkling blue. All of a sudden, there was a loud zing, and we all covered our eyes from the brilliant flash of blue light before us, a wet plop. We uncovered our eyes and looked back to the table. The migrant worker was gone, and in his place was a pile of poop. I stared, mouth agape, as a single rogue piece rolled off the table and onto the floor. I was aghast in shock and frustration. Bill... Instead of transporting the poop into space, we transported the migrant worker into, into space, and his poop was left behind. Based. That's see, Okay, hey, Trump, are you taking lessons? You need to get a hold of these guys. All right? You don't need to build a wall to get rid of the Mexicans. Elon Musk and Bill Nye's nanite transport technology that's integrated into iPhone apps could just shoot them into fucking space. This was the moment I finally lost all hope. We were nowhere closer to finding an answer. I'd given my last remaining ounce of strength to this project and felt like I could give no more. I sunk to my knees and covered my face with my hands, praying to Jesus. Brent, Bill called. I think I know what went wrong. Bill rushed to a computer panel on the wall and began tapping on the screen, making adjustments to our code. We just need to invert the fecal phase discriminator and compensate for relativistic harmonics in the subspace matrix. Only problem is we're out of test subjects. He was right. Take me, I said. Bill's eyes widened. But Brent, this is too big of a risk. And you, my friend, are not an expendable. We need you. Look, there's plenty more homeless people in California. <laughs> Bill Nye is a cold-blooded motherfucker. Look, Brent, listen to me, buddy. We'll just abduct some more homeless people. So we've been doing this for years. Nobody's ever going to believe them. Nobody's ever going to believe that I, Bill Nye, you, Brent Spiner, along with Gerard Butler, Elon Musk, and Hugh Jackman, are abducting immigrants and children and teleporting them into space so we can harvest their poop. We just need to bait them with spare change and pieces of bread like we did last time, and we don't have time. Test it on me. Brent, it's just a theory. I don't even know if it will work. I'm not an expert in this field. Bill, I said, placing my hand on his shoulder. Your experience as a scientist on television is exactly what makes you qualified to tackle tough scientific and social issues, such as climate change and helping men poop out of vagina butts. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> That's correct, Mr. Nye. Your your science your your television science puts you in the best position to do this. Okay, you're the you're the expert here on vagina butts. I believe in you. You can do this. Bill exhaled, stoking himself up for the task. He nodded to me. You really are a vast and red blooded man, Brent. I appreciate your faith in me. I smiled humbly. Now let's do this. You're right. Let's do this. I climbed up onto the table and laid back. Bill went back to the panel on the wall, checking his work and prepping for the final testing phase. I closed my eyes and prayed to Jesus for support. We're ready, Bill announced, pulling his goggles down over his eyes, transporting in three, two, one. My final thoughts were of my precious smiling Gail wearing her blue blouse. Clank! Bill slammed down the metal switch on the wall. I felt a warm, fuzzy sensation in my lower abdominals. My abdomen glowed a brilliant blue, and within moments, the pressure was gone. My poop baby belly deflated, and I felt my body release a cocktail of endorphins and oxytocin, the kind of happiness and bonding chemicals a man's body releases after a really good poop. I, <laughs> so, Brent Spiner wrote her a letter to tell her this is like this is breaking news i mean we really should get a hold of cnn brent spiner the actor that played data has given birth through teleportation to an, a gay ass baby he's a mommy now brent spiner is a mommy slash daddy to a beautiful gay ass baby i opened my eyes and sat up bill we did it i cried we did it bill cheered we hugged each other and laughed in manly victory. With our solution finally at hand, 
we proudly got to work on employing a convenient way for all the vagina butt men affected by poop pregnancy to use this technology quickly and easily whenever they need it. Without further ado, allow me to announce the official release of iPoop. iPoop is a free app available for all Android phones that allows any man to transport their poop directly from their bowels and into deep space with the simple press of a button. This In other is words, amazing. push to poop. TM. The poop inside your bowel was detected and safely transported out of your body without needing to pass through your penis, vagina, butt, or any other orifice of the body. This app works on women as well, so it may appeal to morbidly obese women and men who refuse to leave their armchairs and who run the risk of becoming fused to their couches by poop. It's also convenient for any millennial on the go when they really need to go and man children who still sit around playing video games in their mid to late 20s. I can see Mill Millennials blown the fuck out. Oh, you, you lazy kids can't even get up to take a shit anymore. Now you can use Brent Spiner's phone app, iPoop, to teleport your shit into outer space. Say that using iPoop is just as pleasurable and emotionally satisfying as having a real poop. So far, the men have given positive feedback remarking that the app is fun, addictive, a good time killer, and that gives them another excuse to be on their phones. Most men are on their phones while pooping anyhow. This app adds convenience and makes pooping easy for everyone. One word of warning is that users of the app should hold very still after pushing in order for the scanner to detect the correct coordinates of the poop. So far, we haven't had anyone disappear or accidentally teleport their intestines into deep space but it helps to remain cautious. I hear that Bill and I have been elected to receive a Nobel Prize for our work and our invention of the iPoop app. With you know, chat, make sure to go on to Twitter and thank Bill Nye. Congratulate him. He's won a Nobel Prize. Say, <laughs> say congratulations, Bill Nye, on the development of your iPoop app. <laughs> teleporting, teleporting poop into outer space is quite the achievement. With great relief, I now look forward to enjoying many good years with my vagina butt and the vagina butts of all the men still on the marriage list. I look forward to the day I look into my precious Gail's adoring eyes, and instead of spreading open the legs of Vladimir, Hugh, or Gerard, I will spread open Gail's and enter her true vagina. Your safe and adoring husband, Brent Spiner. What a beautiful, what a beautiful letter Brent wrote her. It's heartwarming. What an adventure he's been up to. I had no idea this is what Data's been doing after Star Trek. I, I didn't know he was like, you know, just chilling with the boys, making teleportation poop technology for vagina ass babies. You know, not the first thing that would have come to mind when I think, what is Data doing? And then again, I didn't know that he had to fuck a cat and got sodomized by an elephant either. So there's some wild shit going on in Data's life. It's good to know he's got friends, though. You know, like Elon Musk and uh, yeah, Hugh Jackman, uh, Gerard Butler, and of course, our Nobel, uh, Nobel Prize winning TV scientist who abducts immigrant children and orphans, Bill Nye. <laughs> it's great to know. Oh, just just warms my heart, really, it does. Oh, we've got a few, a few things here. Uh, chilled milk. RCMP apologizes for streaming the press conference on the double slaying with cat filters activated. <laughs> From Rodson, would Jim let Bubba lick his butthole? Oh, God, yes. I would jump at that opportunity. Of course, he'd be breaking his vow to his dead ginger boyfriend. <laughs> his dead ginger boyfriend who um, got eaten by an obese woman. Uh, we've got one from Sir Scallywag. Am I sensing a new art contest? I know probably not going to do an art contest, but if you feel like drawing a picture of Bill Nye making shit explode out of the eyes of an immigrant child that he abducted off the street, feel free to. And I will proudly display that on stream. From uh, <laughs> Unirock TV, wow. Yeah, I know. I think you summed it up with that one. Uh, wow, indeed. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, this stream just an hour today. I've got a couple of appointments this morning, so I've got to cut it short. Uh, Wednesday will be the big one. We're going to watch Gail's movie. 
the live action version of the children's audiobook that we watched on Friday and today. We're going to go through Gale lore. We're going to find out about the Church of Gale. We're going to find out about Brent Spiner's gay homosexual clones that have taken over his life. And about his wife trying to bomb Gale from the clouds every day when she goes on walks. There's a lot to explore. We'll also find out why Jesus wanted to put semen into her. <laughs> and and we will find out why Gerard Butler is so interested in gay ass babies. Because apparently he's been on a Skype conversation with her multiple times. Explaining the, the whole reason behind the cloning and those fucking Jesuits. That Jesuit conspiracy runs deep. I know you guys don't, don't believe it. But Gail has no reason to lie to us. She's pure. <laughs> She's a pure girl. Oh my God, I uh, you know by the way she has a thousand videos on her channel. There's so much. There's so much. There's so many stories. She's written so many novels, had so many Skype conversations with uh, quote unquote celebrities. Uh, there's tons of letters, uh, live action movies, children's books. Very talented woman, and I look forward to Wednesday, and to however much time we end up dedicating to this. <laughs> it's, I uh, I love this kind of shit. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, I hope you guys have a good Monday. I hope you have a good week. 